It's 2 o'clock. I'm James Spann in the Weather Center with an update on the severe weather situation. First off, we still have this high risk of severe weather. You all know by now this is relatively rare and very substantial threat for much of north and central Alabama. And a new tornado watch has just been issued. Let's go right to the radar and we'll kind of get you up to date on that. This new tornado watch will be in effect for basically all of our viewing area and most of Alabama until 10 o'clock tonight. And this watch is a PDS watch. That means that this is a particularly dangerous dangerous situation. And again, uh, that means that we could see a few potentially violent long track tornadoes across the region this afternoon. And uh, we encourage everybody to be close to a good source of severe weather information in that storms are starting to form. Now, what we're going to do here in just a moment, we are going to go back to regular programming. There are no formal tornado warnings for any part of our viewing area. No severe weather in progress uh, at this point. I think there will be by three o'clock, but we are going to stay on the live stream on abc3340.com. So if you'd like to watch our continuing coverage, fire up your browser, your iPhone app, your Android app. There are many ways of watching that. But I do want to show you this before we uh, go to regular programming that this storm is already starting to show signs of rotation. This is a thunderstorm that is forming near Barry, a town that was hit very hard. Extremely significant damage this morning in uh, Fayette County from the morning thunderstorm complex. And you can see the system showing a TVS. That's a tornado vortex text signature now. The town of Barry is here. That's Alabama Highway 18 coming through Corona. And the uh, tornado impact number is a 4.4. Now, 12.6. Wow. wow. I've never seen that before. No. The significant tornado index is at 12.6. and I thought it went to 10. I did too. Uh, so that's something we've just learned. But understand that uh, the dynamics are as strong as they will ever be today. We don't say that to scare anybody, but we say that to let you know that we do have potential for a few long track violent tornadoes this afternoon and tonight. So we'll take off this data and again uh, just to show you and the weather service might consider a tornado warning for this. This is Walker County. This is Fayette County. So the tornado signature is sitting on the county line moving northeast and that will be passing to the west of Oakman coming up here toward Townley and then ultimately crossing Interstate 22 maybe a little to the uh, uh, west of Jasper. But again that is a very strong rotational signature. So I tell you what let, let, before we do anything here. Let's let's hold it here uh, and let's see if the weather service is going to warn for this one. And if they don't, they probably will in a matter of moments. So uh, more than likely what's happening at this point is we're starting to see the capping inversion beginning to erode. Uh, that's a layer of warm air off the ground that tends to prevent parcels from rising above that. Once we reach the convective temperature, the air parcels go through that. Storms explode rapidly and with the dynamics coming into play, uh, any of these storms could produce a tornado. Uh, so again, uh, let's hold it here for just a little bit. In fact, we might be holding it here for 10 hours. Uh, but again, we have indication of a possible tornado now sitting on the Fayette Jasper or Fayette Walker County line uh, a little northeast of the community of Barry. And again, Barry was hit so hard by uh, very strong winds and possibly a tornado this morning. And again, uh, this would be the possible signature moving uh, northeast. Let's take the Jasper Sky Cam. Now, this is an interesting shot because we've got major damage across the state from the morning storms. In fact, we'll let Jason uh, pan down on that and understand that that uh, is damage from the thunderstorm complex that came through this morning. Uh, that building in downtown Jasper. And the, the one thing that we really want to stress here is this is a very odd situation. I have been doing this since uh, in Birmingham since 1979. And I cannot recall an event in which we are going into this with about a quarter million people with no power from the morning convection, the morning storms we had, which means that we are going to have a much harder time providing warnings for people this afternoon and tonight. Now, if you're watching me on television, more than likely you've got power. Uh, but many people do not, and that means that we've encouraged people all morning to charge your batteries, get your weather radio battery set, so that if we have new warnings, you can get those. Uh, there's the Fayette Sky Cam. And we just lost Jasper. I'm sorry? We just lost the Jasper Cam. Okay. Yeah, power yeah. is coming and going. Alabama Power has done an amazing job. I know they have restored at least 80,000 people since this morning. They have come a long way, but there's a long way to go. Uh, this is the uh, Fayette Sky Cam. And again, look at the metrics here. The temperature 71, a dew point of 72. You, you might see that in July or August, but you don't see that in April around here. That's an amazing number. And uh, that storm is between Fayette and Jasper that we're watching here. So again, we'll go back to the uh, radar 
And uh, we're going to hold it on the television side here for just a little bit. I have a funny feeling the Weather Service might consider a tornado warning here soon. So they're watching it closely. So yeah, uh, as I, I think we are. In you know, yeah. it's in a development stage. When the cap starts to break, uh, you'll know within a few minutes where the hot spots will be. Uh, clearly, we have dangerous rotating storms back over parts of central Mississippi, and those will be moving in here later today. Uh, but again, this storm is the one to watch. This one down here has prompted a tornado warning that's approaching Philadelphia, Mississippi. And again, if you notice, if it follows that track, that's going to wind up in Pickens County, maybe North Tuscaloosa County, and maybe ultimately affecting places like Jasper. And these are not going to be the kind of storms like on a summer day where they pop up, they rain themselves out, they go away. These will be storms that have sustained long-lasting rotating updrafts and they will stay there perhaps for hours and uh, many of you that have lived here for a long time know that we've had these before and, and those are the ones that traditionally produce the strong violent tornadoes that can be a direct threat to life and property and it's tragic to report that at least five people have died this morning in the state five deaths in the state from weather this morning from that lead batch so again this is a very serious situation so we're watching this storm and again that's got a TBS and that will be approaching Pickens County in Alabama probably in about 40 minutes and, and more than likely a warning is will be required there and again this storm it's got that kidney bean shape and a hook back in the back edge there's your inflow notch potential for a tornado now uh, a little to the south of Townley and that's going to be out here cutting across uh, uh, Interstate 22 in the old US Highway 78 now called Alabama Highway 118 uh, relatively soon and remember that's the live radar there. No, right. uh, the, the live radar, we, we lost some communication with it this morning. Okay. It's spinning, but we're not getting any data. Okay, so we're I got you. So we're going to work with that. Uh, that is Columbus, Mississippi. So you're getting a little bit of a different perspective on uh, what the storm looks like relative to the radar side. And, of course, with the uh, different radars, they're coming in with their volume scans at different times. The difference between our live radar... And the, na the National Weather Service next red, there are a couple of differences, but the primary one is that live radar gives us a sweep every 60 seconds. Uh, the National Weather Service radar on a day like this is about three to four, sometimes five minutes, depending on the uh, latency of the data and how quickly it can get in. So you look at a storm from a different radar, it's going to be in a slightly different position, uh, not just because of the angle of the radar, but because sometimes those volume scans come in in a little bit of a different time. Uh, from Columbus, we still see a, a pretty well-defined pendant on that. Let's look at the velocity display, and I think you're still going to notice that we have an indication of circulation there on the southwest flank of the storm, which is in the spot that you would expect it. It appears to have intensified a little bit. I'll use the highlighter here and uh, highlight that spot for you just east of Townley. Uh, that's up there pretty close to the Townley rest stop. So uh, we don't know that there's a tornado on the ground, though. There is no formal warning. But this thing is the first storm of the day. It is in an uninhibited, uninhibited environment. Uh, anything that's flowing up into that moisture-wise and uh, heat and humidity helping to fuel it, so it will likely continue to rapidly develop. Uh, this is a look from the Birmingham next rad, and we'll just take the, the different perspective on it and uh, see what it looks like from the other side. And it looks like it's wrapping up a little bit. Uh, check out the parameters here on the TVS. And once this pops in here, I think we're going to see numbers that might even be a little bit higher than earlier. Uh, tornado impact of a 5.5, it has lost that significant tornado impact number that it had, but the actual tornado impact is a little bit higher than it was a few minutes ago. Movement to the northeast at about 47 miles per hour. Uh, we've had uh, quite a bit of lightning with develop in the last five minutes over uh, Highway 124 out toward Highway 102 and uh, Alabama 69. And the circulating part of this storm would likely come over the west side of the city of Jasper based on the direction that uh, that things are moving here. In fact, uh, we can put a fan on and uh, put in an estimated storm motion of about 47 miles right, per hour. We've got a tornado warning for Walker and Winston. All okay, right. There first, it is. First tornado warning of the day. And again, let me step out and I'll step back in. Uh, and again, we, that's the reason we wanted to hold it here uh, on the air uh, because we knew this was coming. So this is the first tornado warning of the day. Uh, the Weather Service uh, issuing a tornado warning for Walker and Winston counties. A possible tornado has actually uh, been reported based on this warning. And again, this is a day where we have multiple uh, sky watchers out watching these things. These are trained spotters. And uh, uh, so again, uh, I'm sorry, I take that back, Jason. What I saw here, the, the spotters reported a tornado up in Moulton. That's up in Lawrence County. This is going to be a 
uh, radar indicated possibility. Okay, so again, this is not a uh, one where somebody has actually seen it. I, I, the two came back to back, and I just uh, looked at the wrong one. This is a radar indicated tornado, but again, let's show you who's in and who's out. We'll take off the radar data, and if you watch us, you know we'll do that. We'll show that bright red, and that represents the polygon where there is a tornado warning in effect. And you can see it does include the city of Jasper and points north up to the Winston County line. It includes Highway 257 all the way up to uh, uh, Arley and Meek High School, which is right here, and Addison, which is right here. And of course, that would include the uh, western shore of Smith Lake. So this is a tornado warning in effect for Walker in Winston counties. It does not include Double Springs. It does not include Haleyville. It does not include Lynn. Uh, this does include Jasper, Curry, Manchester, uh, we'll say Nauvoo. Nauvoo is right here on the uh, very edge of that. Uh, but there's the polygon. And again, this will be moving uh, across the western and northern part of the city of Jasper. I bet you the power is still out at the SkyCam site. We're going to check that. Yeah, let me look at uh, that really quickly. We've got, uh, and again, understand if you're just joining us and are not aware what happened this morning, at one point we had more than a quarter of a million people in this state without power from a massive line of storms this morning that produced widespread damage. And five people were killed. Uh, this morning. All right, let's go back to our sky cam now, and I think we've got the. Uh, no, oh, we still oh, have Fayette. Okay, uh, we, we don't have. Okay, yeah, we, let, me, we, let me pop that up so you can see it a little bit better. But uh, Jasper's okay. out right now. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, this is a situation, and this is going to be the kind of day today, and again, with a high risk, you've heard me say this before, and, and I know that we have a lot of tornado warnings in this state and a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings, but you have to respect them today uh, because of the atmospheric conditions. This is a day where we could see some violent tornadoes, uh, perhaps long track tornadoes that get down on the ground and stay down on the ground for 20, 30, 40 miles or longer, and uh, I'm afraid we will have multiple instances of these today. So again, we'll take a closer look at this. This storm again this is the standard reflectivity display we'll check the uh, velocity the rotational couplet looked pretty good as we saw that earlier and of course the, the triangle you see on the screen that is a TVS or a tornado vortex signature and again right back here in the back flank of that storm is where there's potential for a tornado and it's moving northeast about like that uh, this is downtown Jasper so this uh, rotational signature probably is crossing interstate 22 right now a little west of downtown Jasper if you're in downtown Jasper points north and west you to be in a safe place. There's Manchester. This is the split right here. That's uh, 257 that goes up towards Smith Lake and Curry. Uh, and of course, uh, this is Alabama Highway 195 that goes up toward Double Springs. That's Alabama Highway 5 right here that goes up toward Nauvoo. And again, strong indication of a tornado right now. So, uh, Jason, I'll kick it back over to you. We've got a big team of uh, folks out in the field today. And again, we're going to be looking for the live streams. And if we'll get a guy on this storm, we'll take a look at that here in a second. Okay, uh, what we're looking at here, this is the velocity data off of the Columbus, Mississippi next round. Uh, it looks a little stronger. Of course, we're a little closer to that radar, so we're seeing the storm at a little lower angle uh, from Columbus than we are from uh, the Birmingham radar. It's kind of in that no man's land right there where it's not the perfect situation, but you've got at least two vantage points. From Birmingham, it doesn't look quite as good, but uh, certainly from Columbus, Mississippi, that uh, circulation is very strong. It's just north of the Hilliard community, which is on Highway 124, just west of the split there with 124 and Highway 69 at McCollum. Uh, Hilliard Loop Road is out there. So this is a little bit north of Hilliard. Uh, it's very close to I-22, west of the point where you can exit and get off on Old 78 and go back in down toward uh, downtown Jasper on the north side of town like you uh, typically would. Uh, this is passing a little bit west of uh, Alabama 269. This will be a west Jasper storm. And uh, there are a lot of communities up on the area where this is headed that are familiar with tornadoes from the past. Saragossa, Manchester, Marigold. Uh, this may stay just just a little south of Lupton, but it's close enough that you should be in a safe place. Uh, the Jasper Airport is and uh, and the Farmstead area. You're also in line. Uh, this possible tornado working up on the west side of Jasper is uh, very well headed in your direction. No reports of damage so far from uh, this storm as it's moved through Walker County, but uh, we're watching it very closely uh, because uh, there is uh, there's. Communication problems. I, I don't know any other way to put it. We have uh, severe infrastructure damage in Walker County. Uh, the EMA earlier this morning was just having trouble communicating with each other, trying to figure out where damage was and make sure people were rescued. And we got some incredible pictures from Cordova earlier. Imagine this. The atmosphere is a little bit more ripe for tornadoes now than it was at about uh, 4.30 or 5 o'clock when all that rolled through Walker County earlier on today. So 
we have a much more favorable environment for tornadoes. With a velocity couplet like that, uh, I would give you a very high probability that there is something down on the ground there. And as it interacts with a boundary, that's a uh, cool air that moves up into uh, Winston County and Coleman County. Of course, that boundary is becoming a little more diffuse as we're seeing some daytime heating. But let me pop on the temperatures here and let you get a look at that. Uh, what we have seen is that uh, we have had a big warm up. It's up to 82 now in Birmingham. Uh, we've got 79 at the Jasper Airport, 79 over in Hayden, 79 at Pleasant Grove. It's in the 70s over in Millport. But uh, when you get to the north here, Haleyville and Coleman are a little bit cooler. It's 66 up at Coleman. So there is a rain cooled boundary somewhere between Jasper and Coleman, somewhere between Haleyville and Jasper. I would say roughly uh, Double Springs down toward Houston. Somewhere in there, we have a boundary. Anytime storms cross boundaries, that's those mesoscale issues that we talked about uh, the last couple of days. If you've kept up with the more technical discussions on the weather blog, we've talked about how a synoptic setup or the, uh, the weather maps can tell us that we have potential there. You can have potential all day, but it takes those small scale or mesoscale features to uh, get these thunderstorms to actually produce tornadoes. So there's one there that we know for sure somewhere in either northern Walker or southern Winston because we're a little bit few and far between with our data reports in that part of the state. Uh, we, we don't know exactly where it is. So as it crosses a boundary. Uh, somewhere in Walker or Winston County, there's an even higher potential for a tornado there. And uh, just based on the way that storm looks, it has a fairly high potential of producing something because of the uh, the strong hook echo that shows up. Uh, we uh, looking at it from the Birmingham radar there. Uh, this is the look from Columbus, Mississippi, from uh, the technically called the Greenwood Springs radar, GWX. Uh, that, where's that other video from? Uh, I was just about to ask, where's that video? Let's see, is that, if that's coming off the uh, MacBook Pro in the office, uh, and it is, that is John Brown's stream. Uh, uh, John, I believe, and again, we're, we're getting the uh, sky watchers in place. John and Mike Wilhelm are together, and uh, I do believe that they are located in Pickens County near Gordo. Okay, so, you know, the, the way this thing works, the, these storms today will be popping up in random locations. You know, people ask, I need to know an arrival time in my hometown. We can't give you one because these pop up at totally random locations and they will be moving northeast. There will be multiple storms like this. We can give you a window between now and midnight tonight. So that's the deal. And again, that is a very impressive looking couplet. So again, the, the, the streaming video you're seeing coming from John Brown is uh, near the Tuscaloosa Pickens County line. Uh, and so in the, the, the storm that's on radar is the storm which we have a tornado warning and right now just one warning and uh, that is in effect for Walker County. So if you're just joining us, it's 217 and understand I'm afraid this might be a day where Jason and I and Ashley and, and the group will be on television maybe for 10 hours or more. Uh, so uh, a lot of regular programming will not run today uh, and we apologize in advance for that. But again, we've got circulation that is now coming up across the northwestern part of Jasper. Uh, and again, so everybody in the city limits of Jasper in points west and north, you need to be in a safe place. And, and if you're new here, many people move here and this whole thing can be horrifying. Uh, if you take some simple steps, you'll be fine. Uh, number one, you have to be out of a mobile home. There, there is no choice. You have to be out of a mobile home if today you come under one of these polygon tornado warnings. And we'll be calling out specific locations and and neighborhoods and landmarks that you'll understand. And if you are close to any of those we call out, and you know you're in that polygon, you'll need to go to a more substantial shelter. And everybody that lives in a mobile home in this state should have a plan on what to do, whether it's 3 in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, weekday, or weekend. The other place you don't want to be is a car. Uh, a large percentage of the people that die in our state from severe weather outbreaks like this are in mobile homes or cars. But on a day like today, with potential for large violent tornadoes, even site-built homes. You've got to do the right thing, and, and by that, we want you in a lowest level, basement if you've got one, if no basement, first floor is fine, small room, that's a hall, closet, bathroom. Uh, you want to be away from windows and near the center. Don't worry about northeast or southwest corners. Forget all that. Just be near the center and you'll be fine. The most important thing is the lowest level. Uh, so, and you can see that, that we have no other storms in progress that are severe. Uh, th there's some rain falling in Anniston and Gadsden, some showers here. And, and uh, if you've been watching the Facebook and blog posts, you know, we said any of these storms could erupt and go severe in a heartbeat, and that's what's happened. And again, Jason is highlighting these other storms that are forming uh, in this region. Region. And again, that's the storm right there that's coming up through uh, Jasper. That's the one that initia uh, initialized west of Tuscaloosa. Let's, so, so again, let's go, look, go for a closer look, and we'll keep uh, 
watching and, and, and again because of the damage to the infrastructure we suffered this morning we're going to have a lot of power issues and communication issues this will be a challenging severe weather event a lot of people are watching this via their uh, the smartphones because they have no power uh, and, and again if you are in that situation you know I hope you charged your batteries because you might we might be on the air for a long time but again back in the right rear flank of this storm we have the possibility of a, of a tornado that's just west of downtown Jasper and again a very strong velocity couplet that's about as strong as they get uh, and again uh, the uh, and this is Columbus or Birmingham that's Columbus okay this is coming from Columbus Air Force Base in Mississippi okay so that's the uh, situation there green those are the inbound red those are the outbound pixels and uh, that's going to be scooting across the northern part of the city limits of Jasper. And again, you can see now the couplet is showing up north of downtown Jasper by maybe about three miles, pretty close to Manchester. Uh, and again, this is the split. That's 257 that goes up toward Curry. That's 195 that goes up toward uh, Double Springs. And uh, that will be continuing to move pretty much up in this direction toward Curry. So uh, the, the danger now is in the northern city limits of Jasper. Uh, uh, and again, that will be moving northeast. And uh, ultimately, it will be crossing over into Winston. Winston County. This is the county line. That's 257 right here. Now, of course, this is Smith Lake, uh, one of the largest lakes. It's got these big fingers that spread out across parts of Coleman, Walker, and Winston counties. Uh, but that is a clearly dangerous storm that will be coming uh, up here uh, very close to Curry. So, again, clearly, if you are in Curry all the way down to Jasper, you need to be in a safe place. Now, in about three or four minutes, we can give Jasper an all clear. Uh, but that will be coming up right toward uh, the middle of Curry which is right here, and anybody on the western shore of Smith Lake, on the Winston County side, the Walker County side, you need to be in a safe place right now. It looks like this uh, uh, circulation could go right on top of the lake, and of course, for the, the few moments in which it's over the body of water, this thing becomes a water spout. Then it's going to exit uh, Smith Lake and then come up into uh, uh, perhaps Coleman County if this uh, thing continues on that track. And unfortunately, this is not one of these days where these will weaken. If anything, they'll be getting stronger as the uh, uh, lift increases with the dynamics approaching from the west. The uh, temperatures continue to warm. Uh, the uh, instability increases, and again, a lot of the severe weather parameters are just off the charts today. The uh, STP, the Significant Tornado Index, we've seen values like we, we just we don't see these values. Uh, we, we've seen the supercell composite index, and that's the combination of lift, instability, and shear. So everything is in place, and again, that's going to be coming right up toward Curry, which is right here, and then coming across the southern part of Smith Lake, the southern and the western part. Uh, we encourage everybody around the Smith Lake Dam and points north to be in a safe place. And I said the western shore, really anybody around the whole southern part of Smith Lake, even on the eastern shore, you want to be in a safe place as well. Uh, even if we don't have a tornado, this storm is capable of knocking down a lot of trees with strong straight line winds as the storms move through here. Uh, so again, Jason, uh, at, at this point, we're looking for ground truth, and most of our folks are not on this storm. They position themselves, and I think the where John and Mike are is a great spot over there near Gordo, near the Tuscaloosa Pickens County line. We'll see more issues for him, but uh, with our other sky watchers, we have not seen any specific reports of any damage from this storm. And another thing, Jason, this is going to be an odd day. It's going to be hard determining, you know, separating the damage this morning from the damage that occurs this afternoon. I mean, we've had so much damage from this morning. All right. Uh, and uh, with, the, with the situation as it is at this moment, with no reported damage around Walker County, doesn't mean it hasn't happened. In fact, earlier this morning when the storms came through Jasper, it was more than an hour before we were able to actually find out the kind of damage that had happened in Jasper and uh, in Cordova and around the rest of Walker County. And it was up to an hour and a half before we really realized how bad the situation was in Coleman County after the system passed through there. Uh, it, James mentioned the conditions around around the rest of the state. Let's look at that Tuscaloosa sky cam. Uh, this is far south of our tornado warning, but it's 83 degrees with a dew point of 71 and a southwest wind at 14. The peak wind gust of the day showing 43, but that was after we had a, uh, a power hit. We lost the data from the big wind that came through uh, with the storms earlier this morning. And there are storms developing over North Tuscaloosa County right now. I want to go back to the radar, though, and there is a very impressive signature here on radar. Tornadoes have a signature that is like none other. When you see a hook echo that's like that one, uh, it's almost a C-shape just north of downtown Jasper, and it's uh, really north of the... I'm sorry, uh, just got a tornado warning for Coleman now for okay. the storm. Yeah, and that, that makes sense. That's uh, just an extension of that warning, and this time it'll be the western side of Coleman County. Uh, unfortunately, 
out around Bremen and Brushy Pond, there was extensive damage earlier this morning. So if you know someone there, there's a chance they don't have electricity. There's a chance that they don't have uh, any way of getting a warning. So if you know somebody that lives on the uh, southwestern part of Coleman County, uh, out around Brushy Pond or Trade or Ardell or uh, Smith Lake Park, West Coleman, West Point, uh, Jones Chapel. Uh, same thing in northern Walker County, Boldo and, uh, and uh, Manchester and Curry and then southern Winston around Arley. If you know somebody there and you are sure they're without electricity, call them and let them know. Send them a text message. Get them some way of knowing that there's a tornado warning there and there's a possible tornado uh, that's uh, just north of Jasper moving northeast. It's going to clip all three of these counties. It's in northern Walker now. It'll cross over southeast Winston and wind up in southwest Coleman in a matter of about five or ten minutes. They'll likely be preceded by some heavy rain, maybe some hail, some strong gusty winds, and then the tornado will be on the back side of that. And James, we're talking about no ground truth with this one yet. Uh, we do have ground truth that a tornado is uh, in the city limits of Decatur. I've seen that on Twitter from a couple of re reliable sources that a tornado has been sighted within the city limits of Decatur up in North Alabama. Our environment here is much, much more conducive to tornadoes than it is up in Decatur and Morgan and Limestone and Madison counties. So with what we see on radar there in Jasper, uh, even though I don't have a confirmation of a tornado on the ground right now, I would suggest that uh, you need to be in a safe place immediately. Don't wait on it. We've already had some rough weather this morning that looked nothing like that on radar. Uh, this is the classic supercell. It's out by itself. It's intensifying, and it's about to cross that boundary, that mesoscale feature. We talked about just a few minutes ago, and when it does that, it has a much higher probability of producing a tornado. Uh, and uh, we're, we're looking for any kind of report that you can give us. If you have a picture you want to send, please don't stand on the front porch and watch the storm come in. Wait until the storm has passed. Send us, we'd much rather see a damaged picture as opposed to a storm coming at you kind of picture. We don't want anybody putting themselves, themselves in jeopardy uh, with the uh, storms as intense as they can be today, and especially uh, with the fact that most of our tornadoes in the south end up being rain wrapped. Uh, our tornado warning extends all the way to the western side of Coleman and up toward uh, the area just west of Battleground near the Winston County line. All of Smith Lake is included in this. Uh, so there's a tornado warning literally from the Smith Lake Dam out through almost every finger, slough, and main part of the body of the lake. So uh, if you are in, uh, in an area there where some of your neighbors may not have a, uh, a way of getting these warnings, that's one of the things we've got to stress today is we've all got to work together to make this warning process work due to the damage that we already had this morning. Let's look at the uh, stats on this storm. The tornado vortex signature is still there based off the Columbus, Mississippi radar, and uh, we have a Titan impact number of eight. Let me, uh, let me retry that to make sure we can get it all on the screen. A significant tornado index of 11.7 and a tornado impact of a 4.6. Back on April 15th, we were seeing numbers around 9 and 10. We've never seen an 11 or a 12 until this moment on that uh, significant tornado index. So in Jasper, in Walker County, if uh, something is going, if something's likely going on there north of Jasper. But if you're in Jasper or Townley or Parrish or Cordova or Summerton, it's not a problem for you anymore. This is now confined to the northeastern part of Walker up Alabama 257 around Curry. You need to be in a safe place right now. Uh, the, I'll tell you what, Jason, let's look. Look at the uh, uh, MacBook Pro. We got a picture of this thing. Um, there it is. This is from Manchester. All right. You see the wall cloud. All right. And again, at this point, I, I, it doesn't look like there was a tornado down from that wall cloud. Uh, and again, this is the uh, same storm. Uh, so I just wanted to to give everybody a visual on this. And I, I'm sorry. That, I, I take that back. That was from Huntsville. We, we've got one photograph here coming from. Uh, uh, Manchester, and that is the one uh, that was uh, taken within the last couple of minutes. So, uh, what we have right here is a uh, wall cloud that is uh, a well defined lowering of the right rear flank of the storm. It looks like a very well organized storm, good inflow structure. But at that point in Manchester, we're not seeing uh, any evidence of a tornado. Uh, and again, uh, and this is from Billy Parker. And, and let me just remind everybody that. Uh, if you have images, and like Jason said, do not put yourself in danger. Now, we've got about 700 trained sky watchers on our team that we've trained over the years in November. Uh, they know what they're doing, but we don't want anybody without training to go out there and try and take pictures outside if you're in a tornado warning. Uh, but if you clearly know that the storm is moving away from you and you are in a safe place, uh, the pictures will be of great help today, but again, because of the infrastructure problems.
problems we're having. Uh, the uh, address is pictures at abc3340.com. And of course, we can't show all of them on the air, but we show a bunch of them and we see them all in real time. And it is extremely helpful for us. Uh, so again, that is coming from Manchester. So again, let's go back to the uh, radar. And I will give an all clear to Jasper. If you are uh, watching or listening to us in downtown Jasper, all clear. Curry, stay in your safe place for about five more minutes. Uh, the storm is almost at that triple point here. And again, this is the Smith Lake Dam. My finger is on the Lewis Smith Dam right here. This tornado signature is crossing the southern part of Smith Lake. And that's basically where Walker, Coleman, and Winston counties all come together. Uh, it is very clear that the signature of the tornado will be passing south of Arley. Uh, Meek High School is right here. So again, if you are in downtown Arley or near the school, uh, again, just to, for protection. I would be in a safe place for about the next five minutes, but it's clearly passing south of there. And again, it continues this northeastward motion here. And this is, uh, of course, Coleman County. Uh, and next up will be around Brushy Pond, as Jason said, uh, coming up toward uh, Bremen. And these are areas hit really hard this morning. The, the damage in Coleman County was extremely severe from the storms we had this morning. And there's the fan. And uh, again, Jason, uh, you, you know how bad it is in Coleman uh, around uh, Dodge City and Hansful and Holly Pond, the, the city of Coleman took a lot of trees down. And so we've got a lot of people here with no power. And uh, uh, so if you know somebody that is in any of these communities, we're calling out. And if you know their cell number, we're going to ask you for your help today to call them because a lot of them can't watch television. Uh, in, in some cases, perhaps they can't watch, you know, the, the live stream on their cell phone or, or they can't hear us on a radio station. If you know somebody in the path of these storms today, we call out, call their cell phone and tell them you just need to go to a safe place and explain what you're seeing here. We're basically going to need you to assist us today because of the tremendous number of power outages we have from the uh, massive issues we had this morning. So we have a tornadic supercell storm that is sitting at the triple point where Walker County, Winston County, Coleman County all come together. This is passing over the southern part of Smith Lake. Uh, it's really in the area near or just below Duncan Bridge Marina. And as it comes out on the Coleman County side, you've got Brushy Pond. And uh, again, based on that photograph, again, we'll go back and show you what this thing looks like. This is from Manchester, uh, just north of Jasper. We'll go back to the uh, uh, MacBook Pro, and uh, that's the wall cloud with this storm. Now, that was probably 10 minutes ago, and at this point, Jason, it could be down, and we want to stress that. You know, that's a still picture, but that is a very well-organized storm with good structure. It could have an invisible funnel. This might have been the point where it actually began, and uh, often when a tornado just gets started, the funnel is invisible until it can be uh, clouded up with debris and dust, and eventually that condensation funnel gets all the way down to the ground. Uh, looking at the parameters on this storm, the tornado impact is now at a 9.6, and the significant tornado index at an 11.5, and given Given the fact that uh, we had those numbers back on April 15th, two weeks ago, well, a week and a half ago, uh, I would almost guarantee there's a tornado on the ground. It may not be a big tornado, but it doesn't take a big one to do a lot of damage, especially to mobile homes. It can knock trees down on substantial structures and crush them. Uh, 90 mile per hour wind may not blow a house away, but if a tree is right next to it, the tree could fall through the house and cause a significant amount of damage. We don't want you outside watching this from the front porch or from the back porch. We would prefer that you get into an interior part of your house. If you don't have a basement to get to, uh, just get in the middle of the house in a small room, a closet that's away from windows, a good bathroom that's away from windows on the lowest floor. Uh, storm pits and storm shelters are common in that part of the country up in uh, southwest Coleman County. So if you got one of those, it's a good time to go ahead and go to it. Uh, we'll take these, uh, these numbers off. And again, uh, that tornado impact approaching 10, that one does max out at 10. I was not aware that the significant tornado went much higher than that. But we have a bounded weak echo region, this little donut hole that shows up uh, near Alabama 257. Now, this radar image is about four minutes old, so you would imagine that this circulation that's uh, showing up in Northeast Walker is now either over extreme Southeast Winston or Southwest Coleman. It's somewhere there close to the Winston Coleman County line, a little bit northwest of Cold Springs High School. This will come across Brushy Pond, uh, across the uh, areas uh, there along uh, what's known as a uh, Brushy Pond Mountain, Ben. South Mountain, uh, and then uh, come up uh, Coleman County 109, and then stay maybe just a touch northwest of Dodge City. So that would put anybody from a roughly uh, Crane Hill and Bremen all the way to Jones Chapel at a threat uh, from a possible tornado. And look at that. 
it's wrapping up a little bit more intensely as uh, as the storm continues on its northeast track. That and thing's spinning like a top. Yeah. Let's look at it from the Columbus perspective. You got, and, you got a uh, bee weird, don't you? Yep. Got the donut hole still showing up. Earlier it was a hook. Now the, a, a, a weak echo region is the hook. A bounded weak echo region is when it, you have that donut hole shape. And from Columbus it looks a little bit different. Uh, and uh, James, one thing that uh, may be happening here too, other than a tornado, is some extremely strong rear flank downdraft winds. Uh, notice that tight gradient on the back edge of the storm that's uh, there near Arley. Uh, sometimes that can be an indication that you have extremely strong winds running into the storm and they can't go through the storm, so they either go up or go down or around, and sometimes when they come down, you can have uh, damaging straight line winds behind a tornado that can be on the order of 90 miles per hour. That so, happened in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Uh, I I'm convinced that the damage on Loop Road was RFD damage and not from a tornado. So you're right, but look, look at the structure. Let's look, take a closer look at this thing. This is a very dangerous storm, and again, I, I don't want to get hung up in hyperbole today. You, you've heard us warn you about this day for, for several days now, but clearly this is a situation where if you are under a warning, you want to take it seriously. Uh, there's the hook echo right there. And again, this thing is wrapped up a possible tornado back in this back flank of the storm. That's Alabama 257. This is Arley that goes down to Curry. For Curry, the danger is over. For Jasper, the danger is over. Unless you live right around the Smith Lake Dam or near the southern part of Smith Lake, uh, you know, in Walker County, you're fine. It is that far northeastern tip. And again, Winston, Walker, Coleman. Uh, large hail is falling on top of Smith Lake, and again, a tornado right now is crossing over the lake, and that will be on the Coleman County side here in just a matter of minutes. So if you are anywhere close to the school at Brushy Pond in that southwestern corner of Coleman County, you need to be in a safe place right now. Uh, we are continuing to watch for reports, and we've got our, our sky watchers. Not only are they uh, out looking at this, they're also, in many cases, uh, excellent at scanner traffic and uh, so far we've got a report first off from brian peters and dr tim coleman our colleagues they are west of jasper and they watched a wall cloud with this go almost overhead it had brief rotation uh, briefly to the southwest but they did not see a funnel at that point but this is much more organized right now uh, that was as of a a few moments ago. Uh, no reports of any damage in Jasper around uh, uh, the Five Points area. That's north of town, up around Farmstead School. Uh, the only reports I've seen coming out of Walker County in terms of damage, it's some uh, trees down up around Saragossa. So, so far, so good. Now, look at the tornado impact number, 9.4. And the significant tornado index, we always thought that maxed out at 10. This thing has been running over 10. Uh, so, again, these numbers are just about off the chart, as are almost all of the severe weather parameters today moving northeast. And remember, occasionally, severe storms that are wrapped up like this will move maybe a little more to the right of that mean northeast flow if the thing really starts to wrap up. But at this point, it still looks like it's on that steady northeast track. And that hook, the tornado signature, is sitting on the county line between Winston and Coleman. Now, for most of Winston County, you're not involved in this. Haleyville, Double Springs, Lynn, this is not going to affect you. This is down here in the far south, uh, southeastern corner, really pretty close to uh, the Smith Lake Dam or just north of there. And again, that's going to be coming out on the other side of Smith Lake and then moving up here toward uh, uh, Brushy Pond. And then ultimately the I-65 corridor, and then again, Jason will expand this out for those people that are traveling, uh, will encourage now no travel along Interstate 65 from uh, Blunt Springs to Coleman and that uh, this strong tornado indication on radar will be crossing over the interstate, uh, perhaps somewhere pretty close to Good Hope. Uh, of course, this is uh, the Good Hope exit right here. That's Highway 69 North going up into Coleman, that intersects with 31 right here. That's Highway 69 South that goes down to Jasper. And it certainly looks like this thing wants to come right up here, Jason, in the general direction of Coleman. And they've taken a rough hit this morning and here comes another one. Right, we'll put the fan on this and, and give it an approximate movement uh, up to the northeast. Over the next 28 minutes, this will be affecting places like Good Hope, West Point, Coleman, Vinemont. Uh, that's at about uh, 3 to 305 between Coleman and Vinemont. Of course, those are estimated times for the center of the city. And of course, we know that Coleman and Good Hope are much larger cities than just the center of town, uh, especially Good Hope going all the way down to the edge of Smith Lake. City limits uh, go all practically down to the, uh, the, the the park down there on the edge of Smith Lake, uh, close to Spiegel's. So uh, with, with that in mind, uh, we've got a, a potential tornado that could affect uh, a pretty large area here. You start to get into some serious 
seriously large population on the west side of Coleman, and then it comes across there about uh, 20, 25,000 people in a uh, clustered region right there around Coleman and Good Hope and Vine Mine. So uh, this may stay a little northwest of our original tornado or damaging wind path. We're not certain which one it was earlier this morning, but uh, certainly something happened uh, that uh, produced something that uh, looked like a tornado over eastern Coleman County. And one of the things that you need to be aware of today is that regardless of whether it's 100 miles per hour in a straight line or 100 miles per hour as a part of a, of a, a spinning tornado, it's got the same force behind it. It doesn't matter if it's spinning or not. Uh, if you're getting that kind of wind, it's going to do some substantial damage. And that couplet just looks incredible over southwest Coleman County. It is moving over Brushy Pond as we speak. Well, let uh, me pass this report on, Jason. This is from a person that lives in Curry on Burroughs Crossing Road, and they watched this go by, and uh, they saw strong rotation, and they say it looked very low to the ground which means there could be a tornado there. And understand, uh, you know, people that uh, perhaps have watched uh, severe storms in Oklahoma and Kansas, uh, there are no hills and no trees out there around here. We have hills and we have trees, and it's very hard to see these even in broad daylight like this. This is why many of the uh, our colleagues say it doesn't make any sense to chase in Alabama, chase storms, because you just can't see them that well. You can do it, but it's awfully hard. Uh, but again, based on that report, again, we need to take this thing very seriously. And again, this is a possible tornadic storm moving northeast. Uh, I think we can give it all clear now if you're from Dodge City South. Uh, Dodge City sits here. That's the Highway 69 South exit. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 91 uh, right here that goes up to Hansville. And again, we had the severe damage in Hansville and Holly Pond this morning. This storm will be on a far uh, northern track than that. And let's look at that Coleman sky cam. We, we've got a sky cam on US 278 right here. Now, we're not going to see anything at this point. We're not looking for a tornado on this shot. We're looking for the environmental conditions. And I'll tell you right now, that's, uh, that's amazing. The dew point is 70. The in wind Coleman. is not from the north. Right. That, 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 that is an incorrect. Uh, wow, vector. look at that. And gosh, goodness gracious. Let, let's take a look at those cloud bases. Are you kidding me? And, and, you know, I the, cannot believe we can see that that far wow. away. All right. So that is our wall cloud. So now we can just focus on this thing. This is a, uh, the, the camera is a little east of downtown Coleman, but the one thing about it, that this storm is totally isolated. Uh, in that uh, there's nothing around it, and it's not competing with other storms for inflow. Just got a report of structural mm -hmm. damage near Crane Hill. Okay. So I think we can safely say this thing's probably on the ground now. Yeah, and, and again, just because you don't see a condensation funnel out of that lowering, uh, you know, hey, there could be one down right now. And of course, Crane Hill is uh, on the Coleman County side of Smith Lake, and a whole lot of people have Crane Hill addresses that live around Smith Lake, but that tornado, or what apparently seems to be a tornado, came down uh, right through uh, one of those neighborhoods that's in the Crane Hill, uh, the, with the Crane Hill mailing address. And uh, that was reported to the uh, Coleman County EMA. So again, uh, we've got some structural damage from this, and we're watching uh, a severe storm right now. This is the right rear flank of the severe storm. This is the lowering back on the back side from the Coleman Sky Cam. And again, let's pull this out a little bit, Jason. Let me just show up. Let's look at the structure of this thing. Uh, the, one of the things you look for, you want to look for striations. And I think we can safely say that is a rotating updraft. This is the kind of thing where that looks like something you see in Kansas. It's amazing. All right, now let's go back in a little bit tighter. We'll scan the uh, base of this thing. And uh, this is a storm coming right for downtown Coleman. So again, look at there. Look, that, right. there, there's right. your funnel. Okay, if, not right sure here. if it's down. But. Right. You, and remember, just because you don't see the condensation, this thing could be down. The next thing you look for would be debris. Now, it's so far away from this, I, I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Uh, the, the debris this far away, but clearly this is an urgent message. This is uh, uh, what I would go ahead and call a tornado emergency for the city of Coleman. Uh, if you are watching us in Coleman, we want people right now to be in a safe place. If you're anywhere in the city limits of Coleman, if you are in uh, Good Hope, uh, you want to be clearly in a safe place. And again, we're just going to watch this thing together. We're going to have this on our camera for a long time. Uh, coming from Coleman, we've got an incredible wrapped up tornado, uh, wrapped up thunderstorm that is rotating. We have, uh, this is the wall cloud, and from time to time we've seen that try and come down. We've had reports of structural damage uh, around uh, the Crane Hill, which is uh, on the eastern side of Smith Lake, and uh, we are going to watch this whole thing together. And, and the good thing about this, this is the only severe storm for now in our television market. Uh, so we can uh, focus on this, and, and we're not uh, not having to bounce back and forth between multiple storms, which we can do. 
So again, uh, uh, we are just going to watch this thing together. The, the camera, the SkyCam, is located at the water treatment facility, which is just a few miles east of downtown Colvin on Highway 278. It's on top of the large structure there, and it's got a, a great view of the sky in all directions. That's one of the reasons we chose that. And uh, again, uh, this is what we're watching right here. And understand, there could be a tornado down. Just because you don't see a large wedge tornado doesn't mean there's nothing down. Uh, in a situation like this, something... You know, James, I think in the contrast there, if you look at the contrast, I, I can look at it from one monitor here and I can see some darkness. So I think there may be a funnel that is very faintly visible from this perspective. Uh, you have to look at the monitor at just the right way. Either that or it's the, the curtain of rain wrapping around the back side of it. But there is, uh, there, fr from one monitor that I can see here that has a little bit higher contrast, I can definitely see some darkening underneath that funnel. It's hard to tell if it is, uh, if it's tornado or if it's rain on the back side of it because this thing should be wrapped in rain based on what we're seeing from the radar. And uh, I'm leaning toward it being a rain curtain that's coming around the back side of the mesocyclone, uh, but uh, certainly uh, interesting to say the least. Right. Um, and again, uh, we, we are getting the one thing that is so great about uh, communication these days, we get so many reports in real time uh, from a huge, huge army of those folks that uh, are with us on, on the social networks, on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, again, um, uh, at this point, uh, we do not see any new reports of damage here in the last few minutes. Um, Look at that. The funnel's getting yeah, tighter. I see it. There. Okay, again, let's no. get let's get tighter in on that thing. I'm going to take the, uh, the the higher compression off so we can move faster. That's a tornado on. That's got to be on the ground. Look right. at that. We got a tornado down. This is a tornado a, emergency for the city of Coleman. Yeah, and I think at West Coleman, you are in most danger of this. Uh, it, look, I can see the debris cloud at the bottom of it. Uh, that is west of downtown Coleman right now. So if you are in All right, uh, again, this is uh, a tornado emergency for the city of Coleman at 246. Uh, this is west of downtown Coleman approaching the city. So again, right now, this is the time to go to a safe place. Do not wait and watch the television right now. You need to go to that tornado safe place in your home, small room, hall, closet, bathroom, lowest floor near the center, away from windows. This thing is clearly down. You can see debris coming around the bottom right now. It's moving very rapidly, moving at about 50 miles an hour, moving to the northeast. And again, uh, more than likely down and through here, we have uh, debris uh, that is swirling clearly in the base of that tornado. And this looks like it is beginning to become a large tornado. Just because you don't see the condensation funnel all the way down doesn't mean it's not there. Uh, so again, uh, it, it, we don't want anybody in mobile homes. Nobody, nobody should be in a car in Coleman. In the city limits of Coleman, you need to be uh, stop at a, a convenience store, a, a gas station, uh, some type of uh, site built structure and get in there and wait until this thing passes. This is a uh, tornado that is live uh, approaching the uh, downtown Coleman area. We're looking from our uh, sky cam on top of the water treatment facility and again clearly, clearly this tornado is down and uh, you can see right now that it is causing uh, uh, probably major damage at this point. Uh, Jason, this, uh, you know, th Yeah, we, we lost your mic, Jason. Uh, again, okay, I've got, I've got to change it right. And again, it, it, this is from quite a distance. Okay, this is from a long way away. This could be a large, violent tornado, and this could be the kind that stays on the ground for a long time. Uh, so again, uh, uh, this will be getting closer and closer to our camera site, and closer and closer to downtown Coleman. And again, uh, uh, tell you what, I'm going to bring up. Um, radar scope. But I want to stay with that shot full screen. There's no need for us to show radar because we'll, we'll tell you exactly where this thing is. Uh, this is a tornado that is approaching downtown Coleman uh, from the uh, west. This came over the southern part of Smith Lake. And uh, again, it's just making a beeline right, right toward downtown Coleman. Uh, this could be a large tornado. Uh, but the truth is, it doesn't matter if it's an EF-0 or an EF-1, that is life-threatening, but this is a tornado that looks very significant. Uh, again, uh, just because you don't see the darker clouds underneath that, it's down. You can see the debris swirling underneath this thing, and uh, this is a tornado emergency for the city of Coleman. Uh, beyond a tornado warning, because you're looking at it, and again, it's right here. Uh, and that is about to come right through uh, downtown Coleman, watching the radar screen. And again, clearly in terms of travel, nobody, nobody should be driving along Interstate 65 or US 31 between the, uh, uh, let's say, the Dodge City exit 
and just the Morgan County line up around the lake on exit. Okay, so nobody should be on Interstate 65. In fact, I would suggest this tornado is crossing the interstate right now. And goodness gracious, this this is this is absolutely incredible. So again, this is a violent tornado that is down approaching downtown Cullman. Uh, it should be close to Interstate 65 right now. And of course, uh, within a matter of moments, that will take it right into downtown Cullman. Uh, everybody in downtown Cullman should be in a safe place, hunkered down right now. Do not, you know, stay up watching this on television. Uh, just take your phone. You can watch us on an app. Uh, in, all you've got to do is be safe at this point. And That's a multiple vortex tornado. Yeah, it sure Look looks that. like that. Those are very you've, got, you've got multiple vortices rotating around a common center. Yep. And uh, again, uh, the, the as this comes through downtown Coleman, more than likely this could actually uh, begin to become darker as debris gets involved. We have noticed the debris ball signature on radar, which means that there is uh, clearly uh, debris uh, in the base of that. And I'm going to send. Uh, tell you what, Jason, you might put a note. Okay, you put a note in the uh, uh, Weather Service chat in Huntsville. Yeah, yeah, they're they're aware of this. Okay. This is a, uh, and, and again, this is uh, if if you're anywhere from Coogler Creek to downtown Coleman, I, we we can't. I mean, it, it's obvious. You've got to get to safety. You middle of the house. If you don't have a basement, if you are in, if if, if you're listening to us at Walmart in Coleman, this is going to be. This may even come close there. I mean, the entire city of Coleman, from top to bottom, you need to be aware of this. Uh, we are. We're going to watch this thing come right up into the middle of the city, most likely. If not there, it's going to cross over the exit right out there, close to the flea market. So if you're near the flea market on Highway 278, just saw a power flash in the yep. screen there. It's going to get uh, close to this site. Too, yeah, here. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking very close. I think it may be just a little west of here, uh, but uh, you can see how it's getting bigger in the screen as it's coming right. toward us. That's clearly a multiple vortex tornado. You, you've got these uh, vortices rotating around a common axis, which is the core of this tornado. And again, more than likely, this is right on top of downtown Coleman right now. So again, the next call to action, if you are north or east of downtown Coleman, you need to be in a safe place. Clearly, everybody in downtown Coleman has to be in a safe place right now. And if you're north or east of Coleman, you need to be in a safe place as well because that is a violent, large, dangerous tornado that is coming through the uh, city of Coleman right now, more than likely producing extensive, extensive damage. And uh, soon that it'll be interesting to see. Again, I, I, we're watching the radar feeds, and, and we're not. We want to take that full because that's all that matters. But we'll tell you right now that this uh, this thing is going to come right up through downtown Coleman, and then continue northeast. Jason, it looks like this one, instead of affecting Holly Pond, will affect the areas north of there. This maybe is Gold, the, Gold Ridge and Fairview and places like that. Yeah, this is this is the classic Coleman County path, the uh, Highway 69 path, uh, based on the high top radar. Uh, the circulation ought to be crossing U.S. 31 in a matter of a few seconds. So East Coleman, East Elementary School, out towards St. Bernard, you need to be at a safe place. We are near St. Bernard with this camera. You're looking live at a tornado. You can see those small things. That's debris. That is large debris flying around in a funnel that is approaching downtown Coleman. Uh, this is this could be a devastating tornado moving into the city of Coleman. Now it is very large uh, based on that image right there. I'd say it's at least a quarter if a quarter mile wide, if not bigger, maybe a half mile wide, and it seems to be getting stronger. It seems to be getting bigger. So if you're in Coleman, please, please take our advice and get to a safe place right now. I realize the power is probably out. I'm really surprised we're still able to see this on the camera, uh, but uh, this is just an incredible shot of a tornado moving into the city of Coleman. Right now, there is large debris flying around in it. Don't stand outside and watch this. Uh, if, if you have to, just turn the television up as loud as it can go, and as long as you've got power, you can hear us. Uh, and if not, if, if the power goes out, just give it 10 minutes after the power goes out and until you know everything has calmed down, until the rain has ended again, then you can go out and check things. Uh, we're, we're, it's going to take us a while, too, to understand what kind of damage has been done here. Yeah, because I, I want to point out, you know, you're going to see this change in character as it comes through the city. You might see a point where you're not going to see this dark-shaped cloud. That doesn't mean that it's not down. This is more than likely a, a long-track tornado that's going to stay down for a long time. Uh, this could be a half 
mile wide down there at the surface where it's touching the ground. And again, we've seen these multiple vortices from time to time, but that is a large wedge tornado that is coming through downtown Cullman. And again, do, do not worry about the change in the structure. Uh, this thing will probably stay down for a long period of time. So again, we are calling a tornado emergency for the city of Cullman and points north and east. That corridor going, going up uh, Alabama Highway 69 up toward Joppa and Arab. And as Jason said, you know, that is a very famous tornado corridor. And again, notice how it seems like you don't see the dark wedge down here. It's on the ground. Uh, you will notice that we've got a lot of debris down here in the base of this. Uh, this tornado is probably only about uh, five miles now west of the SkyCam site. The SkyCam site is on top of the water treatment facility in downtown Coleman. And again, uh, let's go into the bottom of that, Jason. Let's look for debris. We're going to check the bottom of this uh, uh, large tornado, okay? See the debris? We've got debris that's flying around in the base of this violent tornado that's coming through downtown Cullman right now. And you can see all the different vortices involved with it, how the condensation funnel continues to change. Uh, you probably cannot see the entire impact of all the wind here. Uh, and, and again, please do not try to get it. It's in this, it's, it's in downtown right now. Look at that. Mm. That's pieces of buildings in downtown Coleman flying apart. So uh, again, I cannot stress it enough. Please, if you are northeast of Coleman, take this very seriously. Uh, this is a life-threatening emergency in Coleman County, northeast of downtown Coleman for about the next 20 minutes. A tornado is on the ground. We know it's on the ground. We see it. Please take cover immediately. And again, you can see the debris. What happens, the radar beam will bounce all of, off of these the shrapnel, if you will, that's called the debris ball. But in this case, we don't need a radar. We'll just, we'll, you're, you're looking at it live. And again, this is coming right through the middle of downtown Coleman. More than likely, it could be crossing uh, US 31 right now. And uh, again, uh, this will be coming out uh, in that general Highway 69 corridor up toward Joppa and Arab. We're going to stay with this as long as we can. Uh, this is uh, perhaps one of the largest tornadoes we've caught on our tower cams over the years. Typically in Alabama, tornadoes are rain wrapped and uh, typically you can't see them because of darkness, hills or terrain. But we actually caught this the minute we first looked at the sky cam shot. And, and again, remember, I stress just because you see this thing changing in structure, it's still down. You're going to see it looking different from time to time. And there could be a time where it lifts temporarily. But clearly we have uh, debris right down here that is on the ground. And again, this is going to be very close to the sky cam site. So let's pull that thing out just a little bit, Jason, and you can see uh, how just, uh, just, just for perspective, James, that tower on the right hand side of the screen, that's the Channel 52 that's First tower. Baptist Church. That's First right. Baptist Church Coleman. So right, it is passing to the right over let's the courthouse right now. Uh, the Coleman County Courthouse sits across the street from First Baptist Church, and that is a low power TV transmitter in Coleman. And again, uh, this thing is coming right through the middle of downtown Coleman, right near First Baptist Church, right near the Coleman County Courthouse. It will continue moving roughly out Highway 278. Again, this is a, a tornado emergency, and, and I think we just, we just lost, lost power. We hmm. just lost it. All right. Uh, <clears throat> if, if we can double box this, Okay, what we're going to put me in a box and the tornado in a box, and if we get the power back, we'll go right back to that. But again, that is a freeze frame of a violent tornado that is coming through downtown Cullman right now. All right, and that is moving northeast. Uh, the tornado uh, could be very sizable based on what we're seeing on the sky cam. That tornado down at the base could be one half mile wide potentially. Again, we'll find out later with the storm surveys, but obviously there's been major damage in downtown Coleman from this. And again, that is going to be coming out to the northeast. This is Fairview right here. Uh, this is US 278. And again, the circulation is in downtown Coleman moving northeast. And that's Alabama Highway 69 right there. And Jason, this is your world. You grew up in Holly Pond and Holly Pond took a big hit this morning, but this one again will be passing farther north. Right. Uh, so uh, Alabama Highway 69, folks have known that area from Simcoe to Fairview uh, up to Bailenton for years. And this is that classic path that will go from Coleman northeast up through that Highway 69 area. In fact, the tornado may actually be a little bit south of 69 for a while, and then it may wobble back and forth along it. That last image we have is very telltale. You can see those large black specks. That's where we have debris uh, that has been picked up in the funnel and tossed around it and uh, from one side of that to the other it may be as much as a solid half mile wide uh, so if you're in Fairview if you're in Berlin if you are in uh, the say the, the northwest side of Holly Pond up around New Hope uh, up the county up the the Fairview Holly Pond Road and then uh, up into Bayleton and Birdsong you need to be in a safe place now 
also along US 278. Uh, if you're just north of 278, close to the, uh, the, the, the refuge, which used to be called uh, the, uh, the East Point Church of God, uh, if you're out in that area, you need to be in a safe place immediately. That's just beyond our sky cam image here. So a large tornado passing on the east side of Coleman. It will pass over uh, the, the new uh, auto part manufacturing plant, uh, Yataka Industries. It'll come very close to that. In fact, it may be there right now. You're, the radar image you're looking at and the sky cam image. Sky cam image is now dated by several minutes. Uh, we have a radar image, though, that's dated by just a couple of minutes. And uh, I think uh, we've got a little microphone problem yeah, here. Just have it uh, ready. Little, is that my microphone? Or that your was microphone? me. I was, I was talking with Alexander here. Okay. We're, we're going to re-rack some of that video in just a minute if you missed the, the, the tornado. And again, what's happened, uh, the, 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 the power your, has... Your mic just went out. Okay. My Let's, mic, uh, I think, is on. I'm good. Uh, one of us just went okay, out. Okay, I'm good. Uh, the power went out at our SkyCam site. And the SkyCam site is just east of downtown Coleman at the water treatment facility here on U.S. Highway 278. And again, this is moving in this direction. And we encourage, and I say encourage, we, we uh, plead that if you are northeast of Coleman, from US 278 up through Alabama Highway 69, this whole corridor up to Fairview, Joppa, Arab, uh, north of Holly Pond, Berlin, you need to be in a safe place because again, what you see down there is what's coming your way. Uh, and uh, I don't know if we're gonna get power restored. If this thing came right over the water treatment plant, there'll be major damage. And that sky cam might be halfway to Atlanta, Georgia at this point. But again, we wanted to show you that that's what's coming your way. And in just a little bit, we're gonna re-rack that uh, video if you missed the live look at that large tornado coming through downtown Coleman. But again, this in the good thing, I say if there's any good thing here, this is the only, okay, this is what it looked like uh, not too long ago. Uh, this was uh, live coverage of our sky cam as the tornado was dropping west of downtown Coleman, uh, down around Good Hope, and at that point it was crossing Interstate 65. It continued to strengthen. It became one of these large wedge tornadoes coming right through downtown Coleman. And again, that is the storm that is now in the process of moving in areas north and east of Coleman. We, we call this a tornado emergency whenever we have a confirmed tornado like that. You don't need anybody to confirm that. You are all looking at it. The world is looking at it. Uh, understand uh, that tornado is moving northeast, and then ultimately it's going to wind up in, in Marshall County. Uh, but again, uh, everybody uh, in Coleman County that is northeast of the city of Coleman, especially up Highway 69, from Coleman on that stretch up to Fairview and Baileyton and Joppa, you need to be in a safe place. Please, we encourage everybody to take this thing seriously. We, we uh, you know, a lot of times you'll hear in our voice, it's kind of a marginal situation. This is not marginal. This is serious business. And uh, that is a life-threatening tornado that has just come through uh, downtown Coleman. So let's go back to the radar. And again, that's what you're seeing. That was video of the storm as it was coming through downtown Coleman. And uh, again, uh, this is Alabama Highway 69 that comes out of Coleman, and that circulation is back here in the back flank of that storm moving northeast. This community of Gold Ridge right in here, but again, uh, Simcoe, Fairview, Baileyton, uh, Berlin is right here on Highway 278. But again, Jason, these folks have taken a big hit this morning. And the last thing you want to do is see this coming. But th again, this is serious business. You've got, right. you got to respect this. And we know that power is out in the Holly Pond area up toward Baileton, and Fairview and Arab. So uh, if you know somebody that's in this area right now, you need to call them and let them know. Uh, if you're south of Holly Pond, south of US 278, it's not a problem. Uh, if you are north of Holly Pond, uh, northwest of Oak Level, uh, the Walter community and the Oak Level community are right out there close together, about halfway between Berlin and Holly Pond. So uh, from uh, about uh, the tractor company on Highway 278 uh, up toward Fairview and then back over to Bailenton, uh, this is a potentially life-threatening emergency uh, now moving across East Coleman County. There will likely be some large hail, some very heavy rain, gusty winds, and then on the back side of this, we have a very visible tornado that has now crossed through Good Hope and Coleman. Uh, Coleman County Emergency Management has uh, told us that the, the tornado actually came across uh, County Road 222 in Good Hope and then came up across South Coleman. So downtown may not have gotten the worst of this. It might have been just a touch south of downtown, closer to uh, the, the Walmart Supercenter, the Compass Bank, and all those uh, businesses down there, uh, the new Walgreens, the Blockbuster Video area in South Coleman at the intersection of, uh, well, King, King Edward Street, Highway 69, and US 31. And 
uh, a very well-known tornado in this part of the country back in 1988 followed that same path right up 69. It actually hit the Kmart and took it out and then destroyed the King Edward Cigar Factory back in January of 88. So this is a very similar path to that. If you were affected in that tornado, you may be affected by this one. The radar image here is a little bit old. So from Berlin to Simcoe to Fairview, uh, this is on top of you right now. And if you are in the Holly Pond School District, Holly Pond School District is huge. It covers a large part of East Coleman County uh, all the way from Berlin County Road 747 up 1669 a good ways. The Holly Pond Fairview Road a good ways, about halfway between Holly Pond and Fairview. Uh, we need you in cover immediately. This is not a time to stand on the front porch and watch this. You need to take cover as soon as possible and and, and protect yourself from this interior closet, bathroom, hallway, lowest floor, a basement, a storm shelter, no mobile homes whatsoever. While, while Jason's talking, let's re roll some more of that video. If you guys have that of the actual tornado back in the back and uh, again, Jason, I think the important thing we need to remind everybody here, uh, the power is out in a lot of these places. And, and, you know, we can sit here and talk till we're blue in the face. And I'll say this again. If, if you know anybody in any place that Jason just called out, call them. There's a good chance you can't get them, but just by golly, maybe you can uh, with a cell phone, but because that might be the only way they know that is coming. Uh, so again, this is a tornado emergency for the northeast part of Coleman County. For the city of Coleman, we can give an all clear. Uh, the concern now is northeast of Coleman. This thing is rolling right up uh, Highway 69, uh, Fairview and Baileyton. Uh, more than likely large hail, maybe the size of golf balls falling up in the hail core of this storm. And James, let me pass along this message. I just got to note that uh, Pleasant View Baptist Church in Holly Pond. Uh, if you are, if you're in Holly Pond and you need to take shelter, you've got just a couple of minutes to get there. Pleasant View has a basement. Uh, you can go there. Uh, they, they've opened that up as a storm shelter. They, they have built a brand new facility there for situations like this. And it looks like uh, today is the perfect opportunity to use that. So Pleasant View Baptist Church, just east of Holly Pond on Highway 278. You can go there and take cover. And again, we are not ignoring any other part of the state. This is the only severe storm in our part of Alabama. There are other tornado warnings in parts of Mississippi and up in the Tennessee Valley, but this is the only storm in our television market that includes Coleman County. And we should point out that the Weather Service has gone ahead and issued, uh, war I, I take it back, we have a new tornado warning for Lamar and Marion. All right, so what we're going to do, let's go off of the... Uh, uh, image and let's put me with a radar behind me. This is a new tornado warning for Lamar and Marion counties. It was nice while it lasted. The, the, the Coleman County storm will be exiting Coleman County into Marshall County in a matter of minutes. But I think everybody knows the danger there. So now the focus is going to be up here in northwest Alabama for a new supercell storm that is moving out of Mississippi and there will be many today. Uh, but again, this is a very dangerous looking storm. And again, it's the classic Look, it doesn't get any more classic than that. Uh, possible tornado signature now just west of the city of Hamilton. If you're watching us in Hamilton, go to a safe place now. That's a small room, lowest floor near the center away from windows. Nobody should be driving uh, on Interstate 22 or U.S. Highway 78 or Corridor X at this point. And uh, again, uh, that is a very dangerous storm that is coming right up toward downtown Hamilton. So let's go from the Coleman Sky Cam. Now we have two Sky Cams in Hamilton. We're very fortunate here. We're going to take a look at both of them, and we're going to see if we can see the same thing. It looks like we got another great shot at this looking back off to the south and west. Century Tell is still out in Hamilton. Okay. So I think that we're going to have trouble getting anything from either sky cam. And this is what we talked about this morning. We have major yeah, infrastructure nothing. problems here. We have widespread damage from this morning. We have major internet outages, and all of the sky cams are delivered via the internet. So again, at this point, we do not have the sky cam from Hamilton High School or the sky cam at the uh, Stratus Station uh, facility, uh, and that is not good. Uh, all right, we've got reports of debris falling out of the sky in Macon, Mississippi. Oh goodness! This is uh, again. This this is going to be one of these red letter days. We're just going to sit back, take a big deep breath, and we'll get through this thing together. But again, Hamilton, take cover. This new tornado uh, coming out of Mississippi will be moving into Pickens County, and a new tornado warning will be forthcoming for Pickens County within the next five to eight minutes. Uh, so again, just to let you know that we have another strong rotation that's coming out of eastern Mississippi and a tornado warning 
will be required for Pickens County within the next five to eight minutes. And again, we've got uh, just got uh, a report tornado on the ground in Bailenton, a wedge being seen from Fairview. So yeah. this is Pat, the, the one in Coleman County is now past Fairview. We got confirmation it's still on the ground moving toward Bailenton. Yeah, so again, th th this is a tornado emergency for the northeast part of Coleman County. Let's put the reflectivity back on this real quick. Just wanted to take a look at the storm structure. This is the storm that's coming up into Pickens County. And again, this will involve a new tornado warning in a matter of minutes for Pickens County. And again, we have had reports of debris falling from the sky. Remember, tornadoes are rotating updraft. Items are picked up and then at some point deposited back. Everything that goes up must come down. So there's a very serious business. And we've got uh, John Brown in reform. So again, uh, if you are watching us in Pickensville or Aliceville, be ready to go to your safe place in a matter of minutes. Now let's go up to our Hamilton uh, storm. This is a di dangerous storm that could produce a large tornado that is approaching uh, Hamilton. Tremendous lightning output. This is a classic supercell storm. Uh, the red triangle is a TBS, a tornado vortex signature. And again, uh, that's your TBS, and that's coming right up toward downtown Hamilton, maybe a little north of there. It's just too close to call. The uh, We've got two pendants back in the back of this, and again, the system is suggesting maybe it's the farther back one. It doesn't matter. If you're close to Hamilton, you want to be in a safe place right now. So again, uh, this is uh, Interstate 22. Uh, technically right now it's still U.S. Highway 78 that goes south of Hamilton. That's the major four lane through here. Nobody should be driving along Corridor X from the Mississippi State Line down to Winfield for the next 30 minutes. And if you are in the city limits of Hamilton or anywhere close to that, you need to be in a safe place right now. This is uh, a storm. And, and again, unfortunately, because of uh, the Internet outage, we do not have available the sky cams in Coleman. We have two of them. But I would tell you if we were looking back at this, we might see the same kind of scene that we saw in Coleman. So that is a tornado warning for Marion County. Specifically, we're concerned about the city of Hamilton. For Lamar County, it's the far northern part, north of Detroit. Now, let's check the Coleman storm, and Jason, looks like that one's about to exit Coleman County, moving up into Marshall. Right. This is going to be an ARAB situation very soon, but uh, just a minute ago, we got the report that there was still a large wedge on the ground near Fairview, moving up toward Bailenton, and look at that supercell. That is just an unbelievably powerful storm. Uh, I know a lot of folks watch us in Marshall County normally on the live stream, but because of the situation that happened, we already had significant damage around ARAB and Gunnersville, so power's out. So if you know someone in ARAB, Gunnersville, Scant City, Union Grove, uh, even as far south as Albertville or Nixon Chapel, you need to get them to a safe place right now. North Holly Pond to Bailenton. Up to ARAB. Bay Bailenton reports tornado on the ground. Bailenton tornado on the ground, and I just saw a report that the courthouse did take a direct hit in Coleman. So downtown Goodness. Coleman, do mm. not try to go into downtown Coleman. In fact, don't go into any of these areas unless you are an emergency responder. Yeah, you uh, let those no, guys do their jobs. No business going into these emergency areas because all you're doing, you're putting people's lives at risk, the people that need to be rescued, and those first responders. So do not go sightseeing today. Stop now and don't even think about it. So again, we have a tornado uh, that is on the ground near Baileyton, coming up here toward uh, Joppa and Arab. It's about to go into Marshall County. Now, we'll go back to the uh, Hamilton storm. The, the warning, by the way, the tornado warning for Lamar has been taken out. This storm will not affect Lamar. We have a, a dangerous storm that is approaching uh, downtown Hamilton. We have a sky watcher, in fact, multiple sky watchers in Hamilton. Uh, one of them reported a wall cloud just west of her location in Hamilton, and she is now headed to the storm cellar. And that's what we teach folks to do. I mean, the storm spotters know what's the dangerous part, what's the safe part. And clearly, if you are in downtown Hamilton, you need to be in a safe place right now. Look right here. Uh, that more than likely could be a debris ball right here. And that is coming right down the highway, down toward Hamilton. That's Alabama Highway 17. That's Interstate 22. And it looks like this thing might stay a little west and north of Hamilton. But again, we could have a tornado much like the tornado we saw in Coleman, just west of Hamilton. The tornado impact number is now a 7.5 here. The numbers are not as extreme as the Coleman numbers, but that is very, very significant. And again, you can see based on the radar signature here, that could be a uh, perhaps a very significant tornado. Every storm today is capable of producing a violent tornado. This is not the kind of day with the small spin-ups. And, you know, we talked about the whack-a-mole thing before, where those are so hard to identify within squall lines. Like we talked about, this is urgent business today. So if we call out the name of your neighborhood or your city or a restaurant or a barn or a farm near you, you need to be in a very safe place. And clearly, everybody near Hamilton, especially west and north, 
uh, needs to be in a safe place. Now down here, you know, you go down uh, Interstate 22 and that's Guin and Winfield. This tornado will be passing well to the north of Guin and well to the north of Winfield. So this will not be affecting that southern part of Marion County. Guin, Winfield, and Guin. This will be affecting we Hamilton. Have Okay, we've got we the have Guin the Sky, Sky Cam. Guin. All right, let's, let's take a look. This is our Guin Sky Cam. Now, this is going to be a lot farther out than the ones in Hamilton, but again, we're going to look back and see if we can see any evidence. Guin is about uh, 15, 10, 15 miles down the road from Hamilton. Uh, Guin was almost wiped out by a violent tornado April 3rd, 1974. That was the super outbreak, the largest outbreak of tornadoes on record in this country. And uh, people that are old enough to remember that, like me, uh, still respect tornadoes so seriously there. And again, I don't think, Jason, we could be able to see it from that distance, but you know, it was surprising we saw the Coleman tornado at right. such a great distance. We've got excellent visibility today. These are totally isolated. They're out there by themselves, and they're more like the uh, LP storms you see with these uh, events out in the Plain States, the uh, light precipitation storms. But again, uh, we're, we're scanning the uh, sky cam from Guin, which is in Marion County. It's in the southern part of Marion County. And again, I just don't believe we're going to be able to see it from that vantage point. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. But a little trouble controlling that. Yeah, let's go back to the uh, uh, radar. Uh, so the, the, the storm that produced that large tornado we saw in downtown Coleman on the Sky Camp, that is exiting Coleman County, moving into Marshall County. Marshall County belongs in the Huntsville television market, so they will be serviced by the Huntsville stations. We will stay on these storms in our market, and for the moment, we just have one. There will be many more uh, this afternoon and this evening, but again, let's go back to the reflectivity. This is velocity, and again, right there is uh, what we've got. That is going to be an extremely violent hook echo signature that is very close to downtown Hamilton. So again, if you are near in the city limits of Hamilton or near Hamilton within maybe five or ten miles, especially to the west and north, we encourage everybody to be in a safe place. All right, uh, this is Birmingham or Columbus. Uh, uh, you're using Columbus. There. Okay. The oh, I, no, I'm sorry, it, it is Birmingham. Okay, let me, let me get right. to Columbus. That, what happens, the, the beam is a lot higher from Birmingham. We're going to go to Columbus, which is closer, it gives us a, a lower look at that. And again, there you go. Uh, that's your tornado right there that is very close to downtown Hamilton. Uh, this thing has crossed over Interstate 22, and it's cutting right across the northern part or maybe very close to downtown Hamilton. And again, due to Internet outages from this morning's storms, we do not have access to our two sky cams in Hamilton, which is sad. But And weather radio is out, too. Right, yeah. So if you know someone in this area, call them. Call them in Hamilton, Hackleburg, Bear Creek. Uh, anywhere in eastern Marion County that's, uh, that's north of Hamilton, northeast uh, toward Hackleburg up Highway 43. Give them a call. Make sure they know that there is a tornado that may be on the ground. Uh, based on the signatures that we've seen, we have seen substantial damage uh, with the tornado that happened in Coleman a little while ago, and that looks very similar to it. Uh, in fact, firefighters in Coleman are now reporting homes completely demolished. Yeah, well, it's, it's they, what's happened. They're gone. Here. It's so what happens. We I mean, had we had at least an EF3 tornado out of that, maybe something stronger. Uh, right. And the same thing could happen in Hamilton. Right. The new tornado warning for Pickens and parts of Tuscaloosa. This is for the storm coming out of eastern Mississippi. So we're going to go down the line. We will bounce between these two supercell storms, give them equal time. But again, clearly, if you are in Hamilton or points north, or northeast of Hamilton. Be in a safe place now. Now, this is your new polygon. Now, the polygon does extend into Tuscaloosa County, but it's going to be a while before it gets there. Uh, and more than likely, we got horns going off in Tuscaloosa, the sirens, but again, you can see that uh, uh, this affects Northport and the areas north of Northport. This thing is going to be moving up in this direction. So I'll tell you now, this storm, unless there is a radical right turn, will not be affecting the University of Alabama campus or the city of Tuscaloosa or areas south of the Black Warrior River. This will be affecting the northern part of Tuscaloosa County on the journey. And it's got a long journey. It's got to come all the way through Pickens. This is Pickens County. This is Tuscaloosa County. And again, this thing is wrapped up like a top and that's crossing the state line. So let's take a closer look at this. And, uh, and while we're doing that, let's look at the live stream. We've got uh, uh, John Brown and Mike Wilhelm on this one, uh, two of our better uh, sky watchers. And these guys are fantastic. They are in uh, uh, Pickens County, and, and I'll see if I can get a, a specific location from these guys, but uh, they are moving down in a position to intercept that storm, 
uh, as it moves up into Pickens County. Uh, this is a pretty rural part of the state, as you know, so we don't have a wealth of reports or trained spotters down there. But again, on a day like today with uh, John and Mike and uh, Ashley Brand is out in the field today, by the way, in the Storm Chaser 3340, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of the live streams and uh, we'll get a specific location in a moment. Let's go to the radar. Let me just kind of show you what we got here. And, and as soon as John is close enough to see that, we'll let you look at the 12.2 on the significant tornado index. Uh, that, we've never seen numbers like this on this system. We've had this system for about three years now. Uh, but again, this is the storm that is coming up into Pickens County. Uh, all right, now this is Aliceville. This is US 82 right here. This is Reform. This is Gordo. Carrollton sits right here. Aliceville sits right here. And that circulation is back in the southwestern flank. So it's still in Mississippi. It looks like it will be crossing the Alabama border probably in about five minutes. And again, this is the uh, velocity coming from the uh, Columbus, Mississippi next rad. Just got uh, a report of a tornado on the ground near the Hamilton Airport. I believe that and that's that's close to town. That's like in the yeah. middle of town. So let, let's let's go back up to that storm. But again, Pickensville, Aliceville, Carrollton. You want to be in a safe place if you're anywhere close to that. Uh, so again, for um, yeah, we, we've got a re here's a report of a tornado uh, along Interstate 22 or Corridor X at Hamilton. Uh, and again, a report a tornado is on the ground west of the Marion County Airport. So we're going to call this a tornado emergency for Hamilton, the city of Hamilton. Uh, anybody near Hamilton, specifically in the city limits, you need to be in a safe place. You should have been uh, 15 minutes ago when the warning was issued. But again, we have had train spotters seeing a tornado along Corridor X or Interstate 22 and just west of the Marion County Airport, which sits right here in downtown Hamilton. And again, that circulation is awfully close to town. Keep in mind, this is the Columbus, Mississippi next rad. The beam is fairly low, but even at that distance, the beam is still off the ground. Radar beams go in a straight line. The earth curves, so uh, knowing exactly what's underneath that on the ground, sometimes correlating radar data to what's actually on the ground can be somewhat challenging, but it looks like the core of this thing is passed near or just north of downtown Hamilton. Uh, so that we're based on the reports we are getting now and again here's another report the EMA reporting a tornado on the ground uh, with this within the last couple of moments this is a tornado emergency for the city of Hamilton and points north and northeast okay now this is moving northeast up in this direction and again we stress if you're in the southern end of the county in Guin or uh, Winfield, this will not affect you at all. There's no need to do anything right now. You might have storms that affect you later, but this storm will not affect you. Uh, and I, I guess the Gue and Sky Cam, we still can't see anything. This is no, we're so far away yeah, from it, I, I, and it's moving away. And that's US 43 coming up toward Hackleburg. And of course, Hackleburg and Bear Creek, everybody, this is the Franklin County line. This is Franklin County, this is Marion County. But the clear message here, if you are anywhere close to, uh, uh, between Hamilton and Hackleburg, you need to be in a safe place. And again, we, we stress for those that maybe are new here, we, we often forget that people do move here and this is a bewildering concept to them. You need to be in a small room on the lowest floor near the center away from windows. Nobody should be in a mobile home during a tornado and nobody should be in a vehicle of any kind, car, truck, bus, or van. Uh, in a site-built home, down low, middle, uh, away from windows, and uh, lowest floor. This will be exiting Marion County, moving up into Franklin and Lawrence counties. And in advance of that, the Weather Service in Huntsville has gone ahead and posted warnings for those communities up uh, to the north of there. So again, uh, this is a storm that has multiple reports of a tornado down. And again, that is uh, moving to the northeast. All right, and this is a new tornado warning now. This is another one. This is for a dangerous storm 10 miles west of Sulligent. Okay, this is a separate storm, and it looks like it might be right down there. Yep, there it is. All right, so now we have. Let me get these, back to Columbus with that. Yeah, we have a supercell second. storm that is in northeast Marion County, north of Hamilton. To the south, a new supercell storm that will be affecting northern Lamar County. Uh, so this is a tornado warning for northern Lamar and parts of southern Marion. And understand the way this one's going to work, that will be coming right up here towards southern Marion. So this lead storm is, in, is approaching Hackleburg, uh, north of Hamilton, moving northeast. That's about to go up into uh, Franklin and Lawrence counties. This will soon be out of our territory, but clearly everybody in Hackleburg, 
and Bear Creek be in a safe place now. Uh, this tornado will stay west of Haleyville, but that's about to cross over. Here comes the new one. And again, that one will be affecting northern parts of Lamar County. Uh, Detroit is here. This is Sullivan. And then moving over into southern Marion County. And you've got Ewan here and Winfield here. So this new storm will be more of a threat to the southern end of Marion County. So again, tornado warning for extreme northeast Marion for this storm exiting the county near Hackleburg, moving up into Franklin and Lawrence. A new tornado warning warning for this storm that will be approaching Sullivan, Detroit, and then perhaps ultimately uh, areas near Winfield, Ewan, or Brilliant. Now let's go down to our Pickens County storm. We got uh, three we're working. We're about to get one off the board moving up into the Huntsville television market. And again, let's take a look at the uh, live stream. This is crossing the state line. We'll, we'll kind of check what we'll watch together and we'll take a look at the uh, live stream coming from John Brown. Uh, and John is going to be intercepting uh, this storm in uh, Pickens County and understand that this produced apparently a large wedge tornado east of Macon, Mississippi. And there was debris falling from the sky from that tornado. And, and again, what happens, a tornado is a, a region of rotating updraft and, and large objects are carried up with the updraft. And of course, at some point they're deposited back down. And uh, that is the storm that is coming into Pickens County right now. Uh, so again, uh, at this point, we have a tornado warning for Pickens County uh, for the possibility of a, a tornado from this storm that is coming up toward uh, Aliceville. Let's go back to the radar. We'll take the, the radar full here. And again, this is the storm that prompted that warning. And again, this is Aliceville. Let's look at the velocity. A lot of times when you look at the reflectivity, you begin to lose this. And this might be in the process of changing storm structure. But the velocity will tell more of the story. And again, you can see the velocity couplet. It's not especially tight uh, like we saw earlier, but still based on the history of the storm and based on the atmospheric conditions we have today, you've got to have a healthy respect for all of these warnings. And uh, this is moving northeast. And this, this warning does include western and northern Tuscaloosa County. It does not include the city of Tuscaloosa or the campus of the University of Alabama. This is still 30 miles west of Tuscaloosa. But again, uh, this will be moving, we think, north of the city of Tuscaloosa. And again, this more than likely could offer, and again, right back in here, seems like the greatest potential is maybe back in that southwestern flank still across the uh, Mississippi state line. But clearly, this is moving up in this direction like this. Uh, this is Aliceville. That's Alabama Highway 17. That's the main north-south highway. Uh, this is the Sumter County line. Down below that, you've got Geiger that was hit back on April 15th by an EF3 tornado. Uh, but that will be moving northeast about like that. So everybody between Aliceville, Carrollton, Pickensville, you need to be in a safe place right now from this dangerous storm that is crossing the state line out of Mississippi. So that's a storm, the southernmost storm. Now let's go up the line. We'll go back to our middle storm, the one that is coming into Lamar County from uh, eastern Mississippi. Yeah, we're getting a lot of reports of damage from this Coleman thing. I, and I, I, just, I just got a yeah. call from uh, Bob Cuz who said they were able to see the tornado from Holly Pond, and it's still on the ground in Marshall County, and they can still see it. It's uh, like 10 miles away from Holly Pond, and it is massive. Uh, so if you're in Marshall County, uh, Oleander, Arab, I, I know it's not in our television market, but some folks are watching on the live stream and listening and getting messages sent to them. So if you've got family that live in Gunnersville, tell them to take cover immediately. There is a large, violent tornado moving up uh, from Scant City from near the uh, Arab Gunnersville Hospital. I believe it's called Marshall Medical North now uh, up Highway 69 toward Gunnersville. Call them, let them know that that's happening. Uh, then the other tornado is near Hackleburg. Uh, if you're in Hackleburg, you need to be in a safe place now. Same thing up around Phil Campbell. And if power is out in Phil Campbell and you know that folks are, are there and we keep repeating ourselves with this, but it's a very serious situation because we had so much damage earlier. So many folks are without power and without an ability to get a warning because our weather radio tower up in northwest Alabama has been compromised. Uh, there, there may be some folks who just don't know who normally would. So call them anyway. Uh, in this case, it's a cliche, but better to be safe than sorry. Let them know that something's coming their way, James. Okay, and again, we're getting more images, and this is going to be a day where we're going to get a lot of uh, pictures of, of, of severe weather. And again, I'm in the process of, of uh, loading up a shot near um, Hackleburg, and we'll show you this here in uh, just a moment. But the storm that is in northern Marion County, that is in the process of exiting uh, Marion County and uh, moving up into Franklin and Lawrence counties. 
so again, uh, at this point, uh, that northernmost storm, the one you see right here, that is exiting our service territory. So let's focus on this new one, Jason, that is coming into Lamar County. Uh, this is a storm that uh, in all of the storms today, could easily drop a large, dangerous tornado. This is the kind of stuff where we really, really ask you to pay attention. I know a lot of times people pop popcorn and they you know, play the games and stuff when we're doing the live coverage, but if you can kind of focus in on this, and again, you can see right here, uh, very strong indication of uh, what could be a tornado crossing Highway 17 right now, north of Sullivan and south of Detroit, and that's moving northeast. And again, that more than likely will take this potential tornado uh, uh, down to the south of Hamilton. And depending on its net motion, it could be fairly close to Guin. So again, uh, Jason, in just a moment here, we're going to want to look at that Guin uh, Skycam. Uh, which could provide a pretty significant look uh, uh, at this particular storm. We, uh, that, that's the Guin Sky Cam. And again, look at the numbers there. The, the temperature is 83 and the dew point is 72 for an Alabama day that is pretty uh, remarkable. Okay, and, and while we're looking at this, uh, we've got uh, Christy from the Cullman County EMA. Christy, uh, again, we watched a dramatic tornado cross over downtown Cullman and obviously a lot of concerned uh, uh, relatives uh, and folks. What, what can you tell us about the damage in Cullman? And maybe if our guys in the back can roll some of the video of the tornadoes that come through, that would be good. Uh, all I can tell you right now is we took a direct hit here in downtown Cullman. We have reports out in the county of some houses damaged. Um, as far as anybody uh, trapped or anything of that nature, we have not had any reports. We're just um, we're trying to get crews to um, these locations and things like that. So at this time, I don't have a lot of information other than we did um, have a direct hit here in downtown and it um, continued into the county. What, what is it like in downtown Coleman? Uh, I, I, as I recall, you were not in the courthouse building. You were a few blocks away. What, what does it look like in downtown Coleman right now? Um, I have not had the opportunity to look downtown. Um, I did see the tornado come through um, downtown myself um, and it had a lot of heavy debris in it. Um, we have been told that there's been a hit to the courthouse, the Chamber of Commerce, which is um, half a block up from that, and the church across the street. But as far as uh, what type of damage they received and things like that, we're not sure yet. We're getting crews there. We have uh, staging areas set up for the um, personnel and things like that. So we're just now starting to get our uh, boots on the ground and find out information. And what I know that the, the information is limited. Do you know of anybody that was injured? Because this is the kind of tornado that can totally flatten a home. Do you know of any injuries coming into the hospital out at the Coleman Regional Medical Center? Not that we've been made aware of, um, but like I said, we're just now starting to, because uh, we lost power and communications for a brief period here in the city. So as far as we know, not yet, but that still may be to come. There's no confirmation on anything of that nature. Okay, well, thank you. And if you get any additional information, please pass it on. And thanks for taking the time to uh, talk with us. Not a problem, thank okay. you. All right, uh, so again, we're going back to the radar. Let's put on the reflectivity. This is the velocity. We've been looking at that for a while. We're gonna switch from that to the reflectivity product. And again, we'll look at the storm structure. This is a severe storm that could produce a large tornado that is over northern Lamar County. Now, let's clearly point out the storm that was near Hackleburg has exited Marion County. Uh, so that storm is up in uh, Lawrence County and is no longer a threat. And again, this is a look at the storm that is coming into uh, Lamar County. And again, it seems like based on the structure, the greatest circulation potential could be near Detroit. And again, that is moving northeast like this. And uh, again, that uh, it might be more close to Hamilton than uh, Ewan. Traditionally, uh, storms on a day like today that come through Sullivan wind up going through Ewan, and the storms that come through Detroit are a little closer to Hamilton. So I know that Hamilton, you've already been in your tornado safe place once within the hour. Uh, we are going to ask you to go a second time into your safe place. And in addition, we're talking people in Ewan and Winfield as well. But by nature of the threat today, our areas we call out will be a little wider than normal simply because this is uh, such a dangerous situation. So again, this is a possible tornado near Detroit in northern Lamar County. That's Alabama Highway 17 moving northeast. And uh, again, that's going to be crossing Interstate 22 right here, US 78. So we advise no travel on Corridor X. And for people that are watching this that are new, we call this road different uh, names. It will be Interstate 22 soon. But for the moment, it is technically US 78 or Corridor X on the Appalachian Highway project. It's the main four lane from Birmingham to Memphis, but nobody should be driving between Winfield and Hamilton 
uh, for about the next uh, 30 minutes. We have had multiple vehicles turned over today in those storms this morning, and we don't want to see a repeat of that this afternoon. And these storms are much more violent than the storms we had this morning, as bad as they were. We had five people killed in the state this morning, and uh, these storms are more violent uh, with the potential for large tornadoes. So again, that's a tornado warning for northern Lamar. This is well north of Sulligent, well north of Vernon, way north of Millport and Kennedy. This is for the far northern part of Lamar County and the uh, southern and uh, uh, western parts of Marion County. And again, it looks like this one might be pretty close to Hamilton. And let's go down to our Pickens County storm. And, and let me show you a picture off the internet uh, this is from a viewer that snapped the shot. That's the storm that came through Hackleburg a few minutes ago. And again, it has a well-defined uh, wall cloud, and there could be a tornado down. If you look real carefully on that tree line, you'll see that uh, there could be an extension, and that might be a tornado down. And again, that storm is now up in Lawrence County in the Tennessee Valley. And of course, once they get out of our television market, we hand those off to Huntsville. But I just wanted to show you that. So let's go back to the radar. And, and now the two storms we are actively working, it is the Pickens County storm, which is this one. And this has prompted a warning for parts of Tuscaloosa County, but more than likely, the greatest potential of circulation is still near the state line at this point. Um, and... Uh, we do have uh, John Brown who is out in that. Let, let's take John's uh, live stream. And um, we got a report that Fairview School has damage, uh, Jason. This is from the Coleman County tornado. And this will be a day with multiple reports of damage and tornadoes. And again, uh, we will be sorting them out as clearly as we can, but timing will be important as well because we had the big issue this morning. And I'm telling you, after the, this next wave comes through this afternoon and tonight, it might be hard uh, you know, telling the difference between the damage from this morning and the damage this afternoon. The damage this morning was primarily uh, straight line winds with embedded tornadoes. This stuff today is going to be tornadoes. Uh, and again, uh, another late report, a tornado was moving through downtown Hackleburg. That's the one that's up in Lawrence County now. But John, they are down in uh, the Pickens County storm. And um, uh, I still don't have an exact location of where these guys are. But uh, again, Jason, maybe you can find out. Uh, where, and John, John is with Mike Wilhelm today. And again, he is on that uh, southern storm. And uh, we're going to be watching his stream uh, uh, very carefully, but that is a storm that has prompted a warning for Tuscaloosa County. We'll go back to the radar, and again, uh, this is uh, a strong rotation right back in through here that is near Pickensville, moving northeast. So again, uh, more and more as we look at this, I think we can clearly determine that the greatest danger is north of Aliceville. However, I'm not ready to give Aliceville an all clear. Uh, everybody from the community of Memphis, Alabama, in Aliceville, in Pickens County, north, all the way to US 82, ought to be in your tornado safe place, especially Pickensville back over to Carrollton. This is the county seat. You know, this is the uh, uh, face in the courthouse window that never goes away. Many people uh, re recall that. Uh, that is Alabama Highway 17 going up to Reform, and then you got Gordo over here, and uh, we'll see. The, the trajectory of the storms today seem to be more northeast. I have not seen that due east motion like we saw back on April 15th, and it seems like the uh, mean wind flow is carrying these to the northeast. So clearly, there is great danger here to Carrollton, and Gordo and maybe reform. This could pass south of there, but I, I can't assure you that. So we want everybody in Pickensville, Carrollton, Gordo, reform uh, to be in a safe place until these uh, storms pass. Just saw a report come over Twitter that uh, Coleman Regional Medical Center may have hey, taken a direct hit. Goodness gracious. Hey, uh, let's go back to that John Brown uh, video. And I'm trying to look at those signs to determine where he is. Um, okay, he apparently John is northwest of Pickensville. He, he is on that storm, all right? There, look at the lowering here, all right? I mean, we are looking at what could be a, that could be a tornado right there. This is in Pickensville. Uh, this is the uh, southern storm that is in Pickens County. Again, this is a live stream from our sky watchers, John Brown and Mike Wilhelm. Uh, this is a very dangerous storm in the vicinity of Pickensville, moving steadily northeast, and this could be a large tornado. Uh, we're going to watch this together, and it, the, the thing that always bothers us, you see those people driving, nobody has any business today driving close to any of these large circulations. Um, okay, we got John now, and it looks like he is uh, close to Alabama 86 and Alabama 14. Is that, is that the intersection, Jason? I, I think that's where they are from getting the traffic on the uh, Skywalk. Yeah, John, John says it does not appear to be down. 
uh, at this point. Uh, again, you, you're watching a severe storm with a wall cloud and potentially a tornado underneath that. And John is in Pickensville. This is in Pickens County in far west Alabama. This is the storm that is moving up toward Carrollton and Gordo. Uh, and we are encouraging everybody that in Pickensville, in Carrollton, reform Gordo to be in a safe place until this thing passes. And again, John will, he's going to stay on the back side of the storm where it's safe. And uh, we're going to watch it both from the live camera perspective and from the radar perspective. Uh, but again, this is a, uh, a very dangerous storm that is coming into uh, Pickens County right now. Uh, we're getting more reports of uh, serious uh, issues in Coleman uh, County and the city of Coleman. And James, I got a report uh, from Greg Nords from Mississippi State. He's out chasing tornado on the ground headed in the vicinity of Aliceville, but he's lost the visibility on it. Yeah, they're all they're all there together. I think Nordstrom, a Greg yeah. from Mississippi State is probably with John and they are uh, in, in this uh, all together. And again, uh, we are watching a severe storm that is capable of producing a large tornado at any time in uh, Pickens County. Now, the Weather Service has issued a new tornado warning. This is for a different storm. This is for parts of Green, Hale, Pickens, Sumter, and Tuscaloosa. This is for a storm north of York and west of Emel. This is not the storm we're watching right now. So let's do this. Let's go to the radar and let's do a reset because we are getting to a point where we might have five, six, or seven tornadoes down at the same time today and it's going to be important to point all of these out so that's the velocity display this is the storm that is coming into sumter county right here and this has prompted a new tornado warning okay this is your tornado warning for this new circulation that is coming into sumter county this is way north of york and way north of livingston but that is the new tornado warning that includes the northern half of green uh, extreme northern hail. This does not include Greensboro. This includes Moundville. This includes places like Union and Pleasant Ridge, uh, West Green. This includes Geiger and points north. And this includes uh, uh, southern Pickens. So we have a tornado warning for two separate circulations. One will be coming through northern Sumter, northern Green, possibly affecting southwest Tuscaloosa County. The other one is here at Pickensville, moving northeast up in the direction of Carrollton and uh, Gordo. Again, that's the circulation in the north. That's the circulation down here in the south. The course circulation in that storm coming into Sumter County is still across the state line. But again, on this one, we've got John Brown. So let's go to John's camera. And again, you, we've got this thing double boxed and uh, John is fighting the uh, tree issue as we all do here in Alabama. But the Weather Service continues the warning for the storm that John is on. John and Mike until 415. A tornado is near Pickensville, moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. And again, uh, uh, John is uh, on that storm and he's going to stay on that storm as it moves northeast. You've got a well-defined lowering. Uh, John has told us in the uh, chat room that we have not, uh, he is not, it doesn't, doesn't appear to be down, but Greg Nordstrom said uh, from Mississippi State that maybe it was down at some point. We, we, we have reason to believe it was clearly down back in Mississippi, and it could drop again at any time. These storms are not going to go away easy today. They, they are in an environment that they absolutely love. Uh, these storms, uh, th this setup today, and they're going to last for a long time. So again, uh, uh, that is uh, John's live stream on this storm that is now north of Aliceville, moving up toward Carrollton, and reform. And again, by nature of the atmospheric conditions today, we're going to make the areas a little larger than we normally do. So, Carrollton, reform, Gordo, uh, Aliceville. Uh, now, Aliceville, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. Aliceville, this is going to be north of you. So, Aliceville, I'll give you an all clear. This storm is going to pass south. This storm is going to pass north. So, Aliceville, you're, you're fortunate. You're living right. You're, you're going to, uh, these th things are splitting the difference. This next storm coming in from Mississippi will affect northern Sumter and parts of uh, Green and maybe southwest Tuscaloosa counties. But both of these storms, this lead storm will affect north Tuscaloosa County. This will pass well to the north of the city of Tuscaloosa. But this one is in a position to come right up toward uh, town. So of the two storms, the two supercells in West Alabama, the northern storm passes north of Tuscaloosa. The southern storm, it might want to make a beeline for the city. Now let's go up to the third storm. We're working three. We've got these two. There is a storm north of there in Lamar County. Uh, that is capable of producing a large tornado. All of these storms will be today. 
And you can see that this thing is approaching Hamilton once again. And again, we do not have access to the sky cam at Hamilton, but clearly this is taking on a, a very well-defined northeast track. So we can give Winfield an all clear from this uh, latest tornado coming up into Marion County. And we can uh, give Guin an all clear. And again, Hamilton, this thing is coming up right up in your direction. So well, let me pan this over just a little bit. I saw a report of debris in Nettleton, Mississippi, which is southeast of Tupelo. Oh boy. And that's with that storm that's just north of Amory that's uh, going to pass very close to the radar site uh, that may be just a little bit north of it, close to Amory, Mississippi. That one too will move into Marion County. And as it encounters a boundary that's laid out by the rain cooled air from this first storm that's moving through Hamilton, actually the first series of storms that have moved through Hamilton, it too may have the potential to create a large violent tornado in northwest Alabama. Uh, we are getting all kinds of reports of damage in from Coleman. We don't have any formal reports uh, in from Pickens County yet. Uh, and uh, the reports from Marion County have been few and far between, but we did hear that there was a tornado on the ground and that one went uh, near the Hamilton Airport and tracked up to the uh, area around downtown Hackleburg. So uh, same areas that we've been talking about for about the last 30 minutes in Marion County. If you know folks who don't have any other way of getting a warning, forget NOAA Weather Radio. That transmitter is out. That's at Winfield. It was knocked out earlier this morning. The weather radios are not going to go off. So if you live in uh, Jasper or Birmingham and you have family in Marion County, let them know that a large tornado may be possible near the city of Hamilton uh, and it's going to cross this one a little farther south near downtown Hamilton or maybe down Military Street a little bit toward the state trooper post and then cross over uh, 278 a little east of there. Hey, let, let's take the internet, uh, the, the MacBook Pro. Uh, this is another shot of the Coleman tornado. Of course, you watched it live. That was seen from Holly Pond. That thing looks like a large wedge tornado. And Jason, here's our first shot of downtown Coleman. That's the Coleman County Courthouse. The roof is gone. Right. Uh, and again, uh, I, I, we, we do not know of the injury situation. Uh, we, we have heard of, you know, that, that ambulances are running in Coleman County. Uh, just a lot of a lot of traffic right now, but it's, it's kind of chaotic. But again, this is uh, uh, coming from Coleman, uh, and that is the storm that just came through. So again, that's the Coleman County Courthouse. We just wanted to show you that. So let's go back to the radar. And again, uh, we are the, the way we do this. We, as long as we have these life-threatening storms, we stay on them. The damage reports can come later. We, we let you know as soon as we hear things that are very important. But we focus on the life-threatening storm. So let's zoom into Hamilton. I want to take a closer look at this. Uh, this is. One of many violent supercell storms out here today. And uh, this is a day, and again, this is a high risk day. And there's Hamilton, and again, right back almost over downtown, potential for what could be a tornado right over Hamilton. That's Interstate 22. This is the uh, US 43 exit coming up into a town, which is Military Street. And again, that's moving northeast. And again, uh, this is brilliant down here. This is Hackleburg. This is Bear Creek. And this one might be more of a problem for Haleyville. So again, uh, Winston County, just a heads up, that storm that is producing a tornado over Hamilton now, potentially, uh, could make a pretty close move up toward Bear Creek or Haleyville. So if you're watching up in there, be ready to go to a safe place as this thing gets close. Now let's go down to the south. We'll work these other two storms. And uh, again, we, we're watching the uh, live video feed coming in from John Brown and Mike uh, Wilhelm. They are in a part of the state that is very challenging for data. I'll tell you that, uh, that we, we were able to see their feed in uh, Pickensville. But we've got two distinct circulations here. We've got the southern circulation that is coming into far northern Sumter. The northern circulation, this thing is really wrapped up right here. Uh, it looks like it has come through Pickensville. It's going to be passing north of downtown Carrollton. Again, this is the county seat. This is US 82. And that's just amazing. A 15.3 significant tornado index. Uh, so again, the, the system is telling us that this could be a very large, dangerous tornado. And of course, we knew that coming into today. But another reminder to please take this seriously. And because of the damage we had this morning, you'll hear us say this a lot, but people come and go during weather coverage. If you know of people, relatives or folks you know that are in these areas we're calling out, call them on a cell phone and on their cell phone and just maybe cellular service will work if the conventional service is not working. So we'll take off this data and again, let me just show you where this is in relationship to uh, reform, all right? That could be a violent tornado moving northeast. 
and clearly the greatest danger is to reform. I, I think the one thing I'm starting to learn with every outbreak they're different with, there's a clear northward component of motion today. So instead of uh, moving more east, these are moving more northeast and a clear northward component of motion. So uh, clearly the greatest danger will be to reform and not to Gordo, but that's uh, an intense circulation on radar, intense. And again, uh, this is US 82, so nobody should be driving along US 82 right now in Pickens County, period. From the Tuscaloosa County line to the Mississippi State line, nobody should be driving on US 82. These large tornadoes can take cars and toss them like a car, uh, or like a toy. And uh, again, uh, this is not the place you want to be. And the same thing for mobile homes. Nobody should be in a mobile home during an event like this. And in a site-built home, you want to be down low, underground if you can, uh, away from windows, small room, hall, closet, bathroom, near the center. Forget the northeast and southwest walls and things like that. doesn't matter. So, again, this is coming northeast right up toward Reform. And, uh, again, that's US 82 right there. Downtown Reform sits right here. This thing is racing. Uh, these are moving probably at about 50 miles an hour. And, uh, you know, there, there are no traffic lights. Uh, you got nobody in the way. They just fly and uh, they move very quickly. So this thing basically is on downtown reform right now. So uh, we have a potential for a violent tornado that is near reform in Pickens County moving northeast. And of course, if that continues, that will carry it north of US 82 up toward Fayette County and maybe extreme North Tuscaloosa County. There is technically a tornado warning for a part of Tuscaloosa County on this storm. But again, based on this more northward component of motion here, that might be more of an issue for Fayette, maybe clipping far northwestern Tuscaloosa County. So let's look at the southern storm down below that. And that is a very, very dangerous storm at reform in Pickens County. Uh, the second one, Again, back here, you've got this intense circulation near the Alabama-Mississippi state line. And again, the velocities are almost maxed out. Geiger was hit by an EF3 tornado April 15th. And again, this circulation is moving like that. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 17. That's the last north-south highway in Alabama before you cross over into Mississippi. And uh, obviously, nobody should be driving along Alabama Highway 17 in northern Sumter County. Now, th this will be clearly north of York, north of Livingston, north of the campus of the University of West Alabama. Uh, this is for northern Sumter, crossing the Tom Bigby, which is right here. That's the Sipsy right here. This is where the Tom Bigby and the Sipsy Rivers come together. Uh, but that will be moving northeast, uh, basically up the uh, Sipsy Swamp, up toward Benevola and ultimately into uh, Tuscaloosa County. So circulation number one is at Reform, circulation number two near Geiger, both of them moving northeast. Got a tornado now, on the ground from Mike Wilhelm, uh, Highway 86. We have trees and power lines down east of Pickensville blocking the road. So a tornado on the ground headed for Reform right now. And again, like we have said over and over, if you are in Reform or if you are right there in the reform area. You don't even have to be in the city limits here. If you're near reform, Alabama Highway 86 and uh, Alabama 17, you need to be in a safe place immediately. You don't have any time to bother with the uh, watching and waiting to see what happens. You need to protect your life. Forget the property, protect your life from a possible large damaging tornado that's moving into reform right now in northern Pickens County. It will pass by Gordo, but it's going to come right in on reform. In fact, it might be a little bit on the western side of the city out there close to the old Jitney jungle. Uh, so uh, if you're in that part of reform, you need to watch out for this. This is coming in fast. Don't stand on the front porch and watch it. I know I've said that over and over, but Seriously, we don't want you taking pictures of this. We want to get pictures afterward. If you have them after the storm is safely passed, that's fine, but don't take them as the storm is coming towards you. And if you do have some post storm pictures, send them to us at pictures at abc3340.com. And the same reiteration over and over. If you know someone there, the weather radios are not working properly, let them know, call them, text them, do something to get their attention and let them know that we are talking about a possible significant tornado that is life threatening moving into reform right now. Right, and again, we're going to call this a tornado emergency. We both got John and Mike together, and again, they are reporting a, a large tornado with this storm that is right on reform right now uh, as it came through. In fact, I'll, I'll just read the, the report. They don't have enough bandwidth to get a stream out. Uh, the, it's trying, you know, it's like trying to get a golf ball through a garden hose. We, we can't get that video out of there at this moment because of the infrastructure issues. But again, in a moment, as soon as we get their stream established, we'll pass that back on. But uh, uh, coming from them, uh, uh, they are reporting um, a tornado on the ground on Highway 86, damaged trees and power lines east of Pickensville blocking the road. 
And, and again, that is the circulation that is right over downtown reform right now, moving northeast. The second circulation is coming up this way. And again, this is for everybody in northern Sumter. But that is, we're going to call this a tornado emergency now for Pickens County because of Mike's report of a large tornado that's come through here. And again, that is coming right through reform right now, moving northeast. If you're in Gordo, just for safety's sake, I would still say in a safe place, clearly the greatest risk is at reform moving northeast. And again, we've got that other circulation for northern Sumter. Now, let's go up to the storm that's near Hamilton. We're working three storms. We're going to bounce back between all of them today. And again, uh, this is the storm that has come through Hamilton. Uh, and I have not, Jason, heard of any damage with this latest storm from Hamilton, to my knowledge, which is good. Uh, but you have to respect all of these things because even if you don't have damage, you might soon. Look at this. Right. We still have a, a really, really strong right indication. Toward Haleyville. Yeah. Hey, hey. A no, Haleyville sky cam. Now, now look, we got a sky cam in downtown Haleyville. Uh, we're going to point that thing back to the west. Now, there is no formal. We don't have a Haleyville sky Oh, it got power outage up there, too. But yeah. I mean, this it's been down since 528 a.m. Took a beating this morning. And accordingly, the infrastructure and the power outage is going to be a very problematic situation for coverage today. But I'm just telling you right now, a wrapped up storm is coming right toward downtown Haleyville. I would go to a safe place now. I know there's no formal warning for Pickens County, and this will be a day where there's going to be so many tornado warnings that it's going to be hard to keep track of them. But if you hear me calling out your community, you want to go to a safe place. So again, uh, Haleyville, you need to be in a safe place. Bear Creek, same thing, safe place. This storm is past Hamilton. For Hamilton, the danger is over for now. There could be other storms coming later, but from this storm, the danger is over. Potential for what could be a pretty large tornado. Large wedge tornado on the ground in northeast Kemper County. Okay, in and Mississippi. that's in Mississippi, all right? Yeah, that's near the state line. So let's back out and look at that that's one. That's the one coming up in the northern Sumter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, this is from Alan Gerard. Alan is the uh, meteorologist in charge of the National Weather Service in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, they've got uh, spotters reporting a large wedge tornado on the ground in northeastern Kemper County. And again, that's this one right here uh, that is coming up into far northern Sumter. And again, that one's going to want to move in this direction. So I'm just telling you, if this stays on that same track, that's going to wind up in Tuscaloosa. This one, it's over reform, is moving northeast. And again, you can see that's going to come up here toward Newtonville uh, near the Fayette Tuscaloosa County line. It's moving like that. And uh, that's going to be far, far north of Tuscaloosa. And uh, this is Highway 171. Uh, that's US 43 right here. And, and look at this thing. I mean, it is just wrapped up right over downtown reform. Uh, and again, that is moving to the northeast, and uh, that is about as strong of a signature as you'll ever see. When you see that swirl like that, how they, uh, how they twist. Right. It looks like Valonia, Arkansas a few right. nights ago. It's the exact same thing. Well, it, look, it looks like the tornadoes we had back on April 15th, too. The, right. We, we've seen couplets before, but when you get these two things twisting around each other, there's almost certainty. There's almost 100% certainty that there's a tornado in reform now and uh, up Highway 17, just north of reform, and then this will cross over Highway 150. 59 up around the Palmetto community north of Gordo and then as James mentioned coming toward uh, the uh, Newtonville area near the Tuscaloosa Fayette County line. So uh, highways that are in line for this. It's over 82 right now. It's over 17 right now. It will cross 159 north of Gordo. It will cross 171, probably just a touch north of Brownville, maybe close to Brownville and Moore's Bridge. Uh, it's going to be awfully close because these things can make a little bit of a right turn or a left turn. And then North Tuscaloosa County and Southern Fayette County, you need to be in a safe place immediately. We have confirmation that a tornado has crossed through Pickens County. It is likely in reform now or passing slightly north of reform. And if it's anything like what we have seen in Coleman so far, and what we've seen across Mississippi so far, this could be a large, violent tornado. That's the kind of atmosphere we have. There are a few times in a lifetime that you have an atmosphere like we do today. Please do not take anything we say for granted. This is a violent tornado situation. It's a life-threatening situation. Please take cover anytime you're under a tornado warning on a day like this. Again, a few times in your life you're going to see anything that's on this kind of magnitude where we can almost pinpoint a tornado just by the signature like that. But uh, from Reform Northeast to Palmetto, Newtonville, Moores Bridge, and uh, down toward uh, Brownville, you need to be in a safe place immediately. 
Now, boy, we got another nasty couplet west of Hamilton. I, you know, let, let's expand this thing out. What I want to do is show a big picture with the reflectivity, and we're going to do a reset here. It's uh, coming up on 4 o'clock. This is Alabama's ABC 3340, WBMA Birmingham, WCFT Tuscaloosa, WJSU Anniston. Uh, we have violent storms, and this thing right here is really wrapped up, the one across the state line. That will be entering Marion County here shortly, and, and there's a tornado warning for that. We have one possible tornado approaching downtown Haleyville. If you're in northwest Winston County around Haleyville or northeastern Marion County around Bear Creek, be in a safe place now. And as Jason said, this is serious, urgent business today. We don't take this tone of voice very often. We don't say this to alarm anybody, but based on the fact that we had five people killed this morning in the state, and we have to treat this stuff with great, great respect. Uh, so again, a tornado possibly approaching Haleyville. Haleyville should be in a safe place right now. A second storm that is very, the rotation is extremely tight. This will be affecting areas mainly north of Hamilton. We have a third storm of the tornado near Reform. That's coming up in the northwestern Tuscaloosa County uh, near the Fayette County line. That'll be splitting the difference between Lake Tuscaloosa and Fayette. And then we have this other storm that's coming up into Pickens County. And you can see a circulation here and a circulation here. This is one that is wrapped up that's uh, going to be coming up pretty much along the Sipsi River. And again, the Sipsi River separates Green and Pickens counties in West Alabama. And uh, if that continues on that track, this tornado could wind up approaching downtown Tuscaloosa. That's and the it, storm that had the wedge tornado in northeast Kemper County, too. Okay, and we the got one that's in Sumter now that's moving into the edge of Pickens and Northern Green is the one that had a violent tornado reported with it uh, by some storm spotters who were tracking it. And we got that information from the National Weather Service in Jackson, and uh, that has been relayed through Birmingham. So Northern Sumter County around Geiger, uh, Pickens County, Cochrane. Dancy, uh, then over toward uh, West Green, Hebron, Union, uh, and then near the Sipsi River in Green County, rural Green County up north of Utah, uh, Highway 14. You need to be in a safe place immediately. And I say immediately, get there, stay there. If you have a uh, problem because you're in a, a mobile home, uh, then uh, you need to get to a sturdy shelter now. You've got a few minutes in Green County to do this. In Sumter County, it's almost too late because this thing's on top of you. Uh, it would be better to get out into a ditch or a culvert, even though the Rain is coming down hard. It may be hailing. There's all kinds of thunder and lightning. It's better to be protecting yourself on stable ground than sitting in a mobile home. And certainly don't be in a vehicle trying to outrun these things. All right. Uh, and again, if you're just joining us, we've had a major tornado touchdown in Coleman. Uh, I don't know how many people have been injured. We are still assessing that. And again, we will pass that information along as we can. But again, we are here to provide current ongoing information about very dangerous storms in West Alabama. So again, to get you, get you situated here, this is Sumter County. That is a dangerous storm near Scuba, Mississippi that's going to be crossing the state line, passing into Sumter County. This is a possible tornado that's going to be skirting the county line between Pickens and Greene counties, uh, basically moving right up the Sipsi River toward Benavol in western Tuscaloosa County, and one of these could perhaps make a run at downtown Tuscaloosa if it continues. We have a new tornado warning for Coleman County. Again, uh, for Coleman County, uh, this is for eastern Coleman County. We have a storm right over Holly Pond uh, that could be producing a tornado. We saw pictures just a few minutes ago of a tornado that passed just north of Holly Pond. So uh, if you're in Holly Pond, take cover immediately. Uh, National Weather Service in Huntsville has uh, indicated that a rotating thunderstorm over eastern Coleman County situated near Berlin, tracking northeast, will likely affect Holly Pond, Birdsong, Fairview, Bayleton, same spots over and over uh, up toward Thrash crossroads and up to Arab. So uh, it may even, if it can drift a little bit to the east, it might even clip places like Strawberry in northern Blount County. So if you are near Strawberry on Highway 231, you need to be in a safe place immediately. But Union Grove, Rough Edge, Holly Pond, again, in Holly Pond, Pleasant View Baptist Church has opened as a shelter. Uh, that basement is open. That'd be a good place to be for the rest of today if you have to, because we are going to continue to see these things roll through this part of Coleman County. Again, uh, that's the look from the Huntsville radar. Or the, the Columbus radar. This is going to be a better look from the high top radar uh, in we we, a down the Week Echo region. All right, this is a new tornado warning, and uh, this one is going to be for parts of Fayette, Pickens, Tuscaloosa, and Walker for the tornado near Reform. Uh, the Weather Service is calling this a large and extremely dangerous tornado. And uh, what the Weather Service is doing, and again, this is the storm with this new warning. It's moving up in this direction. This will not impact the city of Tuscaloosa. 
or Northport. This will be clipping far northern Tuscaloosa County. It will be south of Fayette. This will pass between Northport and Fayette, moving up in this direction. And again, if it continues on that track, it could wind up affecting places like Oakman and Jasper and Cordova. These places were absolutely raked by severe weather this morning. There is power out across a large part of Fayette and Walker counties. The, the warning for Fayette County includes a little sliver here, but the bottom line is, if you know anybody near Newtonville, New Lexington, Moores Bridge, uh, Oakman, call them on the phone and tell them that there's a tornado and they need to go to a safe place. So that is a new tornado warning for this storm that is moving up in the direction of North Tuscaloosa, extreme South Fayette, and the uh, western part of Walker counties. And again, that thing is very well wrapped up and that's going to continue moving northeast. This will pass north of the city of Tuscaloosa and north of the city of Northport. Again, moving up through northern Tuscaloosa County. Uh, but again, uh, it is a clear heads up and you can see uh, the circulation is uh, really just northeast of reform moving northeast about like that okay so this is Tuscaloosa County this is Pickens County that's Fayette County up and through here and there's your bounded weak echo region right there that is a violent tornado uh, based on weather service reports they've got people watching this thing and that is continuing to move up to the northeast this is Moore's Bridge in Tuscaloosa County along Highway 171 uh, right here that's Alabama 159 that goes out of Gordo back up towards Fayette nobody should be on Highway 159 or 171 over the course of the next 15 minutes and ultimately US 4 is going to cross all three of those highways, but clearly from this storm, the danger is now north of US 82, which is right here for reform. We'll give you an all clear from this storm. Uh, Gordo, this is passing just north of you. It's awfully close, and because it's so close, we'll say for about 10 more minutes, if you're in Gordo, you need to stay in a safe place. Uh, now, let's go up to the Haleyville storm. And again, we've called out downtown Haleyville. We're encouraging everybody in that northwestern corner of Winston County to be in a safe place for a possible tornado that is coming right into uh, Bear Creek and Haleyville up in uh, northwest Alabama. Uh, this is a storm that came out of Hamilton, and again, it's right here. Uh, and notice the new storm. This is a new rotation that's passing north of Hamilton. Uh, that's going to be scooting up into the far northern part of Marion County. So as we look at this, we've got one rotation near Bear Creek. We've got one rotation west west of Hamilton. These are moving northeast, so this uh, new circulation coming in from Mississippi will be staying north of Hamilton. If you live north of Hamilton, be in a safe place. Not from this storm, from the new storm. That, in fact, that, that is a, storm has a history of producing yeah. damage near Nettleton, well, Mississippi. There's a debris ball. Yep, right it's there. on the ground. It's got to be. This is a large, violent tornado that is on the ground. And again, this is Corridor X, Interstate 22. The, the debris ball or the large tornado is crossing the interstate right now. The significant tornado impact is 11.5. The tornado impact is almost maxed out at 9.7, racing northeast at 63 miles per hour. So again, we've got what could be a large tornado down crossing Interstate 22, and that's going to be passing north of the city of Hamilton. This is Hamilton. This time it's going to stay north of the city coming up into Franklin County. But if you're in Hackleburg, uh, that could be pretty close to to you. So that storm, extremely dangerous. A large tornado could be down right now about eight to 10 miles west of downtown Hamilton, moving northeast. This will not affect the city of Hamilton. This will affect areas north of Hamilton. So that's the storm there. Uh, that's about as wrapped up as they ever get. Let's look at the Haleyville storm. That structure is not as impressive as this, but still the Haleyville storm at one point looked like that. Uh, so again, we've got a secondary uh, rotation right here. And again, clearly the structure on this one is not as great. And it looks like the rotation is going to pass near Bear Creek instead of Haleyville. And the Weather Service maintains tornado warning for far north eastern Marion counties and up into Lawrence County. So Haleyville, that will be passing just just north of you, clipping that northwestern corner of Winston County, which is right here. And by the same token of how we're asking people to call and make sure people know that tornadoes are happening, uh, there is a half mile wide tornado on the ground along Highway 157 at Highway 101 near Hatton in Lawrence County. So if you have family that live in Lawrence County, up around Moulton and Hatton, call them now. Let them know that there's a large, violent tornado on the ground moving across Lawrence County. I know that's out of our television market, but uh, we're, we're trying to save as many folks as we can today because of the uh, the nature of these storms. Let's look at the storm north of Gordo. That, that thing is, uh, again, uh, we're watching multiple radar displays, and, and the radar display that I'm seeing here, it, it's... Uh, the, velo the, the, the delta is over 120 knots on, on the velocities, which means that this thing more than likely is a very large 
violent tornado that is in uh, Pickens County. This thing right here, you're seeing it on your screen now. Uh, what that's going to be doing, that's going to be clipping. This is uh, Highway 159 going up to Fayette. That's Highway 171, Northport to Fayette. That's crossing 159. It's about to cross 171. Uh, the community of New Lexington is right here. Moore's Bridge is right here. Nobody should be on Highway 171 between, let's just say, Northport and Fayette over the next 10 minutes. In fact, that thing is going to be crossing right over uh, Alabama Highway 171 and then ultimately uh, kind of hugging the Tuscaloosa Fayette County line and that continues moving northeast. That's going to take it through the uh, point where Tuscaloosa, Fayette and Walker counties all come together. And Jason, go ahead. Tornado on the ground in Cullman County. Again, emergency management reported a rain wrap tornado near Fairview moving northeast at about 65 miles per hour. So there's another tornado on the ground near Alabama Highway 69 up in Cullman County. We need you to take cover immediately from Fairview to Bayleton up toward Joppa, Thrasher's Crossroads. If you're in ARAB, uh, the ARAB area around Strawberry down into northern Blount County. It's a call to action for you as well. I want to move the radar up to that part of the state very quickly uh, because that's very very rapidly approaching the Huntsville television market, but we'll pop on the Huntsville Velocity product. You can even see that from Columbus, it's Mississippi. Up. The whole thing's wrapped yeah. up. Yeah, uh, but uh, here comes the Velocity product, and look at that. That is an obvious problem in northeast Coleman County. It is now north of Holly Pond. It's uh, right uh, past Fairview. It's past Fairview High School now. It's moving up toward Parkside Elementary, toward the uh, the Catfish Restaurant there on Highway 69. This might follow 69 right across the what we call the four-way uh, up there where there's a gas station. There used to be a little shopping area there. There's a fruit stand. So at the four-way stop at 67 and 69, uh, safe place immediately. City of Arab, Strawberry, Oleander, Scant City again. If you got family up that way, let them know that there is a sig possibly significant tornado on the ground. Emergency management in Coleman County have reported yet another tornado in northeast Coleman County with that storm. And that one looks just like the ones over in West Alabama. Yeah, let's go back to the West Alabama storms. And again, these are exiting Coleman, moving up into Marshall and Morgan County. So we're going to hand those off to the Huntsville television market. And we're going to be concerned about the storms on the western side of the state. And you could just pick them out. I mean, you could just pick these things out. I mean, the one, two, three, four. Uh, without even looking at the uh, standard reflectivity products, we can see it right there in the velocity products. Uh, we've got one storm west of Hamilton that is showing signs producing a large tornado. It's going to pass north of Hamilton. One clipping uh, that northwestern corner of Winston County that's passing north of Haleyville. We've got a very violent looking tornado that is near the community of New Lexington, near the Tuscaloosa Fayette County line. That'll be crossing Highway 43 in a matter of minutes north of Northside High School, north of Samantha. Uh, and then on the Sipsi River, a violent looking tornado. It's uh, on the Green Pickens County line. And again, this is uh, the Sipsi River, which uh, separates the two, those two counties. And that large tornado will be coming right up that, that old Sipsi swamp, right in through here. And uh, this is between Utah and Aliceville, uh, moving up toward western Tuscaloosa County. So for those of you in places like Romulus and Coker and Buell and Tuscaloosa counties, this is coming toward you. Geiger, a violent circulation right on top of you. And that town was pretty much taken out by a big tornado April 15th. It was an EF3 but Geiger is a very small community and uh, many of the structures were severely damaged at this point. So uh, we have uh, again multiple reports uh, or indications of what could be violent tornadoes uh, across parts of West Alabama. And uh, if we call out your hometown, two things. If you're in that area, don't wait. You go to a safe place. And number two, if you have relatives or family or friends that live there, do me a favor and call them because we have so many people without power. At one point this morning, a quarter million people in the state had no power. And even now, we've got a whole lot of folks without power, without cell service. Communication is a major problem. That is, if you watched us this morning, that's one of the greatest concerns for this second wave. This is the violent stuff. I know it was horribly violent this morning with five fatalities, but this has potential to do even more damage and harm and is more of a threat to uh, 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 life and property. Got a ham radio operator in Northport saying you can see a wall cloud and a funnel but cannot cannot determine for sure if it's on the ground and a note that Coleman City emergency officials are asking folks to stay out of the city. Uh, just just stay out of Coleman if you don't have anything to do there other than sightsee, please stay out of town and get out of their way. They've got a big problem there. All right, let, let's look at the uh, Tuscaloosa Sky Cam. And again, uh, Jason is working that. Now, what we're doing here, we're looking from the top of the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse, looking back into that storm that is crossing far northwest Tuscaloosa County. We're talking above Brownville, really above Moore's Bridge, almost on the Fayette County line. And that's a good 35 mile, uh, uh, you know, 
distance from that sky cam up to that uh, area of rotation that could be a violent tornado. And it's just going to be hard to see it from this distance. Uh, but again, uh, this is a situation where uh, those of you in far north Tuscaloosa County, uh, if you're close to Newtonville or Moores Bridge or north of Samantha or near Samantha, uh, we want you to be in a safe place right now. Uh, and again, all of these storms are extremely dangerous today. Um, so that's the storm that is in North Tuscaloosa County that's going to be hugging the Fayette County line and uh, that will be ultimately moving over into Walker County, maybe affecting the communities of Oakman and Parrish and places like that and maybe Jasper. Now, these things have a clear northward component of motion today. So let's go back to the radar. It looks like we can't see much coming from that sky cam right now. Uh, and again, we're watching for this circulation, very violent circulation now that's kind of hugging the Fayette Tuscaloosa County line. It has crossed over Highway 171. It's crossed over Highway 159. It's about to cross over US 43. So nobody should be driving on US 43 between Lake Tuscaloosa Tuscaloosa and uh, Bankston here and then that keeps moving northeast and that's going to take it a little south of Barry but in Barry you're close enough perhaps to be impacted by that thing. So uh, again, you took a major, major hit this morning with major damage in Barrie, but that dangerous storm is gonna be close to Barrie, probably passing a little south of there. It's close enough to go to a safe place, and that is clearly a case where you gotta call somebody. You gotta pick up the phone and call somebody if you know them there, and then that's gonna keep on moving northeast up here into Walker County, perhaps affecting the community of Oakman, which is right here, and just maybe affecting Parrish or Jasper or Cordova. Cordova took a major hit this morning from the storms that happened during the pre-dawn hour. So that's our storm in North Tuscaloosa County. Let's check the storm that's coming up on the uh, Sipsi River. And this is more of a concern for the city of Tuscaloosa. This is a storm that is hugging the county line here of uh, Pickens County and Greene County. Now, if you are in Utah, and again, look look at the circulation. We've got two circulations on this thing, all right? It's like the southern one is really right. becoming dominant, Th though. That thing is, is spinning like a top out of control, and that's right over Geiger. A, a town that was devastated back on April 15th, and they've got this again. This is the northern circulation. We've, we've got these two distinct circulations. Both of them have tornado warnings. The northern circulation, that's on the Sipsi River, which is right here. That's kind of coming up toward uh, Jenna and ultimately Romulus and maybe Coker and Buell and maybe parts of Tuscaloosa and Northport. And the second one down here, uh, that's going to be crossing the Tom Bigby. This is the Tom Bigby. This is where the Sipsi empties, empties into the Tom Bigby River, and that'll be crossing the Tom Bigby. And let me just say this, you know, we saw some amazing images back on April 15th of uh, tugboat operators with shots of tornadoes, and they might see the same thing today. And boy, you talk about being in a bad spot. They can't do much if they're out there in the river, but that's going to be crossing the river north of Gainesville and then coming up through northern uh, Greene County, affecting places like West Greene and Union. Uh, and Pleasant Ridge. So if you live anywhere close to those communities in Greene County, you want to be in a safe place. And again, if you're near the Sipsi River, you want to be in a safe place. So these are the two circulations, uh, one near Geiger in Sumter County, one uh, crossing Highway 14 right at the Sipsi River Bridge on the Pickens Greene County line. And one or both of these could affect the city of Tuscaloosa and Northport, Jason. Very quickly, let's go to Ebony Hall, who is live by phone in Coleman. Ebony, are you with us? Is Ebony Hall with us? Hello? Ebony, Ebony, it's Jason. Uh, tell me, you're in Coleman, right? Tell me what you've seen. Um, well, let me tell you, we were driving through downtown Coleman five minutes before this thing hit. We rode through a little bit of hail, and thank God we pulled over to the city hall because right after we pulled in, we could see the tornado. It just dropped out of the sky, and it seemed like it was headed right towards us. And right now, I'm telling you, downtown Coleman is uh, basically, um, it's destroyed. There are there's destruction everywhere. And we're looking, um, Ebony, while, while we're talking to you, we're looking at a few viewer pictures that have come in. Uh, I see a picture of the First Baptist Church, which is right in the middle of downtown. Goodness. Uh, how, what does that look like all the way around it? Well, right now I can tell you that we're standing on top of the uh, Am South parking deck at First Avenue Southwest, and I think that's 4th Street, I believe I'm saying. And um, our co workers, Gina and John, were here shooting uh, some things, and they said that people was basically just leaning in the wind, that the wind was so powerful, I'm surprised that it's still on top of the church. So what the description that I have heard is that the church has been destroyed. Um, I can even see the steeple and parts of uh, where the trees are down in the front lawn there, but um, you can tell that the tornado did hit over there, and it hit strong. And I'm telling you, as far as my eyes can see right now, there's destruction everywhere I turn. Goodness, I've been in that church. 
Uh, that, that is stunning to me. This brings back memories of, of April 1974 for downtown Coleman. Uh, Ebony, again, everybody's asking, do you know of anybody that's been injured? And we've heard reports the hospital was hit. What do you know about the, the Coleman Regional Medical Center? I don't know about that. I haven't been able to talk to anybody. Reports that I've heard is that people have been trapped. They're trying to rescue people. I know that there are different agencies from all over here. When we were at City Hall, um, I was told that the National Guard called and said, do you need help? And they were like, absolutely, yes. We do need help here. Ebony, I, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but we need to pass this along. Volunteer Fire Department uh, in Tuscaloosa County says tornado on the ground four miles east of 171, damage at the 21-mile marker. Uh, so uh, in North Tuscaloosa County, we have a tornado emergency now. That's close to Newtonville. That's very near the Tuscaloosa-Fayette County line. Go ahead, Ebony. Um, so they were asking, the National Guard called to ask if they needed help, and they said absolutely, absolutely yes, we do need help. Hmm. And um, I, when we first came out of City Hall um, and started riding back towards downtown, uh, you just couldn't believe what you were seeing, um, the buildings that were destroyed. And also, for a while, we were smelling a lot of gas, so they had us move back. I think they have that under control now because I don't smell it anymore. But um, just a lot going on here. And also, a lot of people walking around just looking. Um, and I think that's kind of gotten in the way of the emergency personnel because they want everybody to stay back. They're trying to park buildings right now, trying to search those buildings and see people boarding the forefront. Um, so they're trying to get the cleanup started and try to make sure everyone is safe because there's still a lot of debris on the ground as far as like metal awning and stuff like that just blowing uh, through the downtown streets and wind things up. I don't know if you can hear it, but the wind is still really, really going. And, um, very yeah. loud and it's very messy right now. And again, Ebony, for, for those watching on television, we're watching a, a replay of the tornado as it came through downtown Coleman. It's captured by our sky cam. That was riveting live television, heartbreaking. Uh, and after seeing these pictures of, of downtown Coleman, it just breaks your heart uh, for what these people suffered this morning and they're suffering again today. So, uh, Ebony, thank you. And again, we're going to have to move on. We've got other dangerous storms. And I'll tell you right now, out of everything I see on the board, probably this thing right here is the most dangerous. Th this is... Uh, 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 the, the delta is almost maxed out uh, uh, in terms of gate-to-gate -gate shear, and this is sitting on the Tuscaloosa-Fayette County line. Uh, th there's your large tornado, and, and more than likely, it's about right here. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 171, so clearly, clearly nobody should be on Highway 171 right now on the uh, Fayette-Tuscaloosa County line. Um, uh, so, and again... Uh, one note, we're going to leave the radar here. We've got that storm with the debris ball that is exiting Marion County. That's the one north of Hamilton. The Weather Service has warned for Franklin County for that. That debris ball is approaching Pig Eye, which is south of Hodges. Uh, so on the Marion-Franklin County line, north of Hamilton, again, that is a large tornado, more than likely, that is, uh, that is down. With this storm, Pickens County Sheriff reported a tornado on the ground uh, in uh, the community of, of Lubbub, which is north of Reform and north of Gordo, and uh, that's the one that's coming. Everybody, uh, multiple people have seen a large tornado here. This is a tornado emergency for people that live near the Tuscaloosa-Fayette County line, all right? Let's expand this out. Let me show you where we're going from here. Again, out of all the signatures on the board, this is the most serious at this point. Uh, this is Barrie, and this town was hit with a violent storm this morning. There is major, extensive damage in Barrie, and this is moving about like that. It's so close, you've got to be in a safe place, okay? See, it's coming out like that. And again, notice, more than likely, this thing might pass just south of Barrie. It's too close. You can't take chances with this thing. So again, if you're watching in downtown Barrie or point south into the adjacent parts of northern Tuscaloosa County, be in a safe place. Okay, uh, uh, out of Barrie, you've got uh, Alabama Highway uh, 18, which runs over here to this community, which is Oakman in, in Walker County. And I'm just telling you right now, Oakman, you are right in the path of this thing. So if you live in Oakman, Alabama, which is uh, in Walker County, between Barry and Jasper, you need to go to a safe place right now. Nobody should be in a mobile home. You've got to go to your sh shelter now. In fact, I would recommend on a day like today, if you're in a mobile home, just go to a shelter and stay there until this thing is over. Large uh, tornado witnessed on the ground at uh, Highway 43 and North Side Road. It's large on the ground witnessed by deputies in Tuscaloosa yeah, County. There you go. So we got a large tornado down. This is a tornado emergency. 
And again, if you live in a mobile home, just get to a shelter and stay there the rest of this afternoon and tonight. Don't risk this. Uh, I, I've been doing this for 32 years. I've maybe had three days that have been like this in terms of violence uh, over the last 31, 32 years. Uh, so if you're in a mobile home, I would suggest just going to a safe place and stay there until the whole thing ends tonight. Tomorrow's going to be a beautiful day, but we've got extremely dangerous weather. So again, this is Parrish, and what's going to happen, this large tornado, and this thing is a very large violent tornado, will ride along that triple point. This is Fayette County, this is Walker, this is Tuscaloosa. Uh, it has crossed over US 43. The next major highway in line is Alabama Highway 69. You go south that highway that goes to Northport. That's an old, nasty, curvy road through here. Uh, then uh, you come up here to Oakman. And again, that's Alabama Highway 119. The town of Corona sits right here. Uh, we encourage everybody along Highway 18 from Barry to Oakman and south down Highway 69, almost to Wyndham Springs. You need to be in a safe, secure place. Get underground if you can. If you can't, lowest floor near the center away from windows and we'll get through this thing okay but this is a sparsely populated part of the state but again we have great concern that once this thing uh, hits a town like oakman we could see some really serious problems here now let's go farther south our storm in marion county is in franklin county that's up in huntsville television market this is the northernmost tornado right now so let's go down and work these other two and we've got two circulations right here number one Number two, this is the circulation that is riding now the north bank of the Sipsi River coming up toward the community of Benevola, which is in Pickens County. And uh, that's going to be moving up into Tuscaloosa County, maybe affecting Buell and Coker and Elrod. If you live along Highway 82 or anywhere close to those communities at Romulus, you want to be in a safe place until that the storm passes. So this is the lead circulation. The dominant circulation, more than likely, it's the southern storm because it's taking all of the good inflow away from this one, but both of them are dangerous. But the southern storm, is going to be doing the same thing. It's, these are parallel tracks. This is reminiscent of November 10th, 2002, uh, north of here. You got these things just like on parallel tracks. The northern storm is uh, more than likely going to impact perhaps Coker, Buell, Elrod, maybe Northport. The southern storm, maybe the dominant one down here, could be affecting the city of Tuscaloosa. So everybody near the Pickens Green County line, near the Sipsi River, you need to be in a safe place. This is Union. The well, community right here is called Jenna, baseball country. If I call out your business or your camp, you want to be in a safe place until these things pass because, again, this is a situation where these are life-threatening storms. We don't say this this often. We don't say it to scare anybody, but this is stuff that... I, I'm just telling you, we don't want to hear loss of life tomorrow. We've already had loss of life today. Five people died this morning. We don't want that to happen this afternoon. And, again, that's going to be moving up in the direction uh, Romulus, Coker, Buell, Elrod, maybe Northport, uh, this one, and then the southern one is going to be affecting more of the city of Tuscaloosa. The fact that the two are competing with each other for moisture, that might perhaps lessen the threat, but we're not even going to go there. Uh, based on the dynamics today, sometimes it just doesn't matter. So northern circulation, southern circulation. Now let's go back up to that uh, storm in North Tuscaloosa. We're working three right now. Um, and uh, again, the Weather Service continues the warning for the northern storm. And in the times of expiration, you know, that's not the important thing. The important thing is hearing us call out these communities. This one right here, a large tornado was seven miles south of Bankston, moving northeast at 55 miles an hour. That's a debris ball. Okay, this is Barry. That is debris. That, that, that's uh, the radar beam bouncing off the stuff in the tornado. Cars could be in the air, boards, bricks, glass, nails, shrapnel, pieces of homes. And that's the reason for the enhanced reflectivity. And this is moving northeast about like that. So this is Barry, more than likely in Barry. Look at this thing, 17.5. I guess we'll see how high this thing goes. We thought that was a 0 to 10 scale. Uh, but again, we have a debris ball, which represents a large tornado that's about to cross the Tuscaloosa-Fayette County line. The tornado is going to pass south of Barry. But again, it is close enough where you need to be in a safe place in Barry until the storm passes. It's racing. I'd say it's moving probably at 50 to 60 miles an hour and again this is a small community called Bowley Springs right here uh, and then ultimately it's the next really sizable municipality in the path of this thing is Oakman and Oakman has been hit so many times over the years with tornadoes they know it well and they should know this drill but if you live anywhere near Oakman 
or Corona, or in Tuscaloosa County, north of Wyndham Springs, up Highway 69, you need to be in a safe place. That is a small room on the lowest <coughs> floor near the center away from windows. Jason? Got, got uh, three or four structures destroyed near Moores Bridge. Uh, uh, authorities are checking for entrapment and asking for ambulances from Fayette County to come down to Moores Bridge. And I uh, just got a report from Facebook, a violent wedge tornado just north of Gainesville about a minute ago. And, of course, that one is on a path just like the April 15th storm that went through Gainesville. Ultimately, that one will wind up somewhere in the vicinity of the city of Tuscaloosa. So yeah, that's uh, you're, you're under a warning, Tuscaloosa. And, uh, it, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just go ahead and go to that safe place and turn the television up and wait for us to give you an all clear because there are storms all around the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport, none of them imminently threatening either city, but it's awfully close. So uh, the one we're looking at right now on radar is near the Fayette County line. That's south of Barry and Bankston, Bowley Springs, and the community of Sandtown immediately in the path or very near the path of what could be a violent wedge tornado somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, EF3, EF4. Uh, it might even be stronger than that. Uh, we've got some significant damage reported around West Alabama today, uh, significant damage in Mississippi, and uh, this is just going to keep on rolling. We have just begun this tornado outbreak. Yep. And, and I, I'll tell you, uh, Reed Timmer is on that uh, on the storm that's uh, uh, coming out of Sumter County. Uh, our friend Reed, and uh, you know, he's done this a lot, and he's got a large wedge, and that is the one that is primed to move up toward Tuscaloosa. So as that gets closer, we'll focus on that. But again, th this thing is as classic as it gets. And uh, again, this is Oakman right here, okay, right by the S in the word Storm Alert Radar. That's the community of Oakman. So we're calling a tornado emergency for the city of Oakman. It might miss downtown Oakman, but if you have an Oakman mailing address, you need to be in a shelter right now. Ultimately, it keeps moving up in the general direction of either Parrish or Jasper. We'll see how that northward component of motion continues. Occasionally, when storms are wrapped up so tightly, they veer to the right of the mean flow, but again, clearly, uh, this is making a beeline toward Oakman and then ultimately perhaps downtown Jasper. So this is a tornado emergency for extreme North Tuscaloosa County, extreme South Fayette County, and that southwestern part of Walker County. So Oakman, you are the next municipality in the path of that. Now let's go down and check the other two storms. We're working three right now. This is one of them. The other two are south and west of the uh, city of Tuscaloosa. And again, uh, we are getting more reports of damage from these things. And again, uh, just another reminder that this is serious business. Uh, it is interesting to note that in Barrie, they are reporting debris falling from the sky from that tornado that is down just south of Barrie. So in the city of Barrie in Fayette County, we have debris falling at this point uh, from the sky. Uh, and again, that is a sign that there is indeed a large violent tornado that is on the ground. But this is the situation in West Alabama. This is the southern most storm. This is the northernmost storm. More than likely, the southern storm will become dominant, and uh, this is the one that is moving up in the direction of Tuscaloosa. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 14. This is Utah. That's Aliceville, and there's your circulation. This is not as classic as the one we have up there uh, approaching Oakman, but still, it is a very strong indication of a tornado, and again, uh, a violent wedge tornado was seen with this when it passed north of Gainesville. Uh, and a violent wedge tornado was seen with this when it passed north of Gainesville. Uh, and that is moving in the general direction of Tuscaloosa. And again, more reports of debris and gumball-sized hail falling in downtown Barrie from that violent storm that is to the north up on the Tuscaloosa Fayette County line. But just a reminder that that is a very serious storm there. But again, if you follow this out, this southern storm is just in a position to wind up in the city of Tuscaloosa here. So this is the northern circulation. This northern circulation will be more of a threat to uh, Coker, Romulus, Buell, and Elrod. The northern part of Northport, Lake Tuscaloosa. The southern circulation is more of a threat to the city of Tuscaloosa and the campus of the University of West Alabama. So when you look at the tornado warnings here, we have two distinct rotations. Number one and number two, they're about 20 miles apart. The northern circulation coming up here toward the US 82 corridor, Northport, Coker, Buell, Elrod, Romulus. The southern circulation coming right up toward downtown Tuscaloosa. So if you are in Tuscaloosa County, there are two distinct circulations moving your way. Way, both of them uh, could easily produce uh, a violent 
tornado. These are life-threatening, and again, if you know people that are in the path of these, have relatives or friends, give them a call. They might have commercial power, they might be watching this, but they might not because so many people still have no power from the storms we had this morning. So again, uh, it is an urgent situation that everybody in western Tuscaloosa County be in a safe place right now, and ultimately, the cities of Tuscaloosa, Northport, and the campus of the University of West Alabama, they're still far enough away where we can make that call to action here in a few minutes, but I'll just tell you now if you want to be safe and if you're in Tuscaloosa Northport go to a safe place but clearly right now for the northern circulation now uh, this deal near Benevola that's coming right up here toward Romulus Coker Buell Elrod southern circulation that'll be coming closer to Knoxville and Jenna and Ralph and Foster's and Tuscaloosa now let's go to our third circulation these are two we have another one that is near the point where Fayette Tuscaloosa and Walker counties all come together uh, so this is the third circulation and out of all of these signatures this this is the most dangerous. Uh, this is a tornado that uh, has been confirmed. We have debris that is falling from this in Barrie. The tornado circulation is south of Barrie, but debris, uh, twigs and, uh, uh, you know, debris is falling in the city of Bayet now. 17.1. Yep. You know, what, what do you say? I mean, if, if, if this is a violent tornado, okay? And there's the track. This one could stay a little south of Jasper. Now, Cordova was hit hard, major structural damage this morning. But look at this thing. That's your tornado. That's your debris ball. It's sitting on the county line. This is Oakman, all right? Now, if there's any good news for Oakman, it seems like it might pass south of you, but I can't guarantee that. We're still calling. If you have a mailing address of Oakman or Barry or Wyndham Springs, you need to be in a safe place right now as this extremely violent tornado is moving northeast. Again, this is Alabama 69. Nobody should be traveling on Highway 69 uh, between Jasper and Lake Tuscaloosa. We'll just make that big expanse there uh, for the next 30 minutes. Nobody on Highway 69 between Lake Tuscaloosa and Jasper, okay, as this uh, violent storm continues moving to the northeast. And again, we'll just watch how it goes. Oakman, Parrish, and Jasper are all going to be close to the path of this thing. Now, uh, we got the Jasper sky cam up. All right, let's take a look at that. Now, uh, again, this is a live look at downtown Jasper. And show that damage. For people that missed out this morning, maybe you're watching in some other part of the world, uh, I want to show you what happened this morning. This was part of the line of storms that came through this morning about 6 o'clock. Look at the damage to this structure in downtown Jasper. This, we, we had five people killed this morning. We had damage in almost every single county in our coverage area, all 22 counties. Uh, and, uh, again, it was a very serious situation. So we've still got power out in many areas from the morning storms. And this is one of the few times I can ever remember working a situation where a lot of people have no power, no electricity, no commercial power, no easy way to get access to watching us on television. Uh, thank goodness for uh, the web and Ustream and smartphones where people can watch this while they're, you know, huddled up in a safe place. But again, we're going to be watching the sky cam, but you can see the damage here in, uh, from this morning. And that's why we're saying it might be hard to distinguish what happened this morning from what happened this afternoon when the whole thing is said and done. So let's go back to the radar. And uh, again, that is the most violent tornado on the board right here. This this thing is coming right up toward uh, Oakman right now. It is almost knocking on the door. And the note from the Weather Service is saying that Storm Spotter is still tracking a large and extremely dangerous tornado near Jenna, uh, 15 miles southwest of Northport that's moving northeast at 55 miles per hour. So that's the that's the storm that doesn't even look that good. Right. Th that is the, 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 the only thing in Jenna is baseball country, Kenny Burns place, all right? And that is moving right up here toward the western suburbs of Tuscaloosa on US 82. So with that, and, and like Jason said, that is the least impressive signature on radar, uh, a large and extremely dangerous tornado around Jenna moving up in the direction of Coker, Buell, Elrod, and Romulus. The second one, that is the more southern track, and that is the one that seems to be headed right toward downtown Tuscaloosa. And again, uh, Reed Timmer was on that when he said it was a large wedge tornado. So both of these are capable of, there's the, look at this thing. Goodness gracious. Hmm. There's some major, major, major damage in here from Reform up to Newtonville and Moore's Bridge uh, back up here approaching Oakman. 
That's amazing. All right, here comes the lead one. That seems to be weakening, but forget that. It doesn't matter what it looks like on radar. All that matters is what's happening in the real world. And that and that, both of them are capable of producing large, violent tornadoes. So the, the northern circulation coming out of Pickens County will be affecting that US 82 corridor. And again, we're specifically calling out Buell, Coker, and Elrod, and Romulus. The southern circulation, the one that's coming through Northern Green, uh, is approaching Union. That'll be coming up here and uh, impacting perhaps the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport. In just a matter of minutes, we'll be able to check that Tuscaloosa sky cam. But let's go up to this northern circulation. I, I, we're going to work on this one right now, Jason. This is the one near Oakman. And again, you can clearly see that that is moving right up in the direction of Oakman. And uh, the, uh, the delta velocity here is way over 150 knots. Uh, almost maxed out and more than likely a large violent tornado is on the ground. This is Oakman. This is the Oakman Parish Road right here. That's Alabama Highway 269. That's Alabama Highway 69. Nobody should be on Highway 69. Everybody in Oakman should be in your safe place now. You should have been 20 minutes ago, but you should be for sure now. Do not go try and see this. Don't even think about it. We'll show it to you. I, I probably got 5,000 pictures today of tornadoes, and we'll show them to you later. You need to be in there and take care of your family. Be sure the kids, and, and if you have time, get a bicycle helmet on your kids. Uh, in many cases, the treating physicians in the ERs have told us that if the kids had a bicycle helmet, they, they would have survived in those tragic cases where children lost their life. Every kid's got a bicycle helmet. So if you're near these places, put on a bicycle helmet, and that enhances their chance of survival. That's the debris ball. That is a large, violent tornado that is coming right up toward Oakman. It's also going to be awfully close to Parrish, and more than likely, it's going to be crossing the Oakman Parish Road close to Oakman, and then crossing Highway 269 between Parrish and Jasper, and then ultimately crossing Interstate 22 or Corridor X. So again, nobody should be driving on Alabama's 69, 269, or U.S. Highway 78 for the next uh, 40 minutes as this extremely violent tornado comes up into Walker County, moving out of the far uh, western part, eastern part of Fayette County. So uh, the call to action here, again, is for Oakman, Parrish, Anybody along Highway 69, anybody along Highway 269 from Parrish down toward Pumpkin Center in Good Springs uh, and Gorgas, stay in a safe place until this thing passes. Nobody along Interstate 22. So that is the most impressive signature on radar right now. This storm coming right up into Oakman. We're going to go back down and uh, again, uh, you know, what's amazing, you, you, we've still got, you know, people in Walker County trying to cut paths from the morning damage and I see now in downtown Jasper very heavy rain is starting to fall uh, from the, the northern part of this and it could be a situation where downtown Jasper gets the hail shaft uh, and down below that we have the tornado but it's going to be a close call I, I would say if you're as far north as Jasper out of respect for this signature on radar and the reports we've had you want to be in a safe place so again everybody in Jasper Parish Oakman Cordova or anywhere close to those communities be in a safe place right now so that's the situation in Walker County. Let's go down to our situation in Tuscaloosa County and Pickens County and Greene Counties. These are counties down in uh, farther to the southwest. We've got two distinct circulations coming out of Pickens and Greene Counties, and both of these will be affecting the Tuscaloosa metropolitan area here within the next 30 minutes. And we're just encouraging everybody uh, in the cities of Tuscaloosa, Northport, around the campus of the University of Alabama, the communities of Romulus, Coker, Elrod, and Buell to be in a safe place uh, for about the next 20, 30 minutes. I know it's horribly inconvenient. I know it's 4.30. This is a time where many people uh, go home, uh, but this is where you don't want to take any chances. The last possible place to be would be a car. All right, this is Tuscaloosa. This is Northport. This northern circulation, uh, it's going to be pretty close to the uh, Pickens-Tuscaloosa County line. Uh, this thing is going to be coming more out here toward Buell. This southern circulation, which uh, of the two, it does seem to be the most violent. Uh, this will be moving close to the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport, Jason. And let's look at John Oldshue's live stream on the internet computer. Oldshue is uh, in the Knoxville community looking back west. Uh, you can't see a lot. He says uh, he's had some sizable hail. He didn't give me an exact size, but uh, hail has been falling in Knoxville, and uh, he's been uh, noticing a lot of cloud and ground lightning strikes. We're going to watch that stream and look toward that direction. He's looking right toward the northwest, almost from uh, Knoxville straight to Union, so he's got a, a bead on this. Uh, the trees may be in the way, though, uh, and and that's, uh, that is always a problem. We noticed that a couple of weeks ago that 
we can have gigantic tornadoes. They can be a mile wide, and as long as you have trees in the way, it's hard to tell. Uh, he's zooming the camera in a little bit. Of course, I know he's listening to us on the radio there in, in Greene County, but he's near Knoxville looking back into that storm, and uh, that's, that's what he sees. Hey, and, and we're getting reports of insulation falling out of the sky in Jasper now, okay? Uh, this is from the northern store. Pack. Let's take our sky cam in downtown Jasper. Uh, we're getting many reports of insulation and debris falling from the sky. When you've got these violent tornadoes, ultimately what goes up in them will come down, no matter what it is. And uh, we're getting reports of that, and it's more than likely that this will be passing a little south of Jasper. But again, that's just a reminder that this is a uh, very serious storm that is passing through Oakman and near Parrish and near Cordova and awfully close to Jasper. So for those folks in that area, be sure and go to a safe place uh, right now as that is the most violent signature on radar. Uh, let's check the Tuscaloosa sky cam, Jason. We haven't looked at that in the last few minutes. We have two circulations coming up into Tuscaloosa County. Uh, that's a big water tower out there by the Tuscaloosa Country Club. And uh, again, w we had an amazing view of the Coleman tornado. If you missed that, we'll re-rack that later. We don't have time to do it right now because of the ongoing severe weather. It is going to be very hard to see the storm structure right now. Uh, but again, we've got uh, folks that are down there on that, including uh, John Olshue. So I'm watching John's stream. But let's go back to the radar. And let me just, again, give you some calls to action. And we're pretty much going to leave the radar in the velocity mode. Uh, if there's any good news, it seems like the northern circulation continues to weaken. The southern circulation is becoming dominant. But I don't want to take away from the northern circulation. It's out here around the Pickens-Tuscaloosa County line near the Sipsi uh, River where the uh, the US 82 bridges cross over the Sipsi down there in the, the swamp. Uh, so for those of you out around Buell and ultimately Brownville and uh, Moore's Bridge, we've called these places out before, this lead circulation is moving up in that area. And I'd say Northport as well, maybe toward Tuscaloosa High School, Huntington Place, Elementary School, uh, those neighborhoods, that lead circulation, which seems to be weakening, but we have to respect it today, be in a safe place until these things pass. The strongest circulation is coming up from Green County, and again, that will be coming up toward the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport, and this is in a position now in rural Greene County. Uh, this is pretty close to Jenna, and uh, again, that's going to be moving up into the southwest part of Tuscaloosa County as well. Uh, we have had multiple spotters with a large wedge tornado on this thing. So again, uh, for everybody in Tuscaloosa County, we have two distinct circulations. The lead circulation will be passing north and west of the city of Tuscaloosa. Uh, places we're calling out again on that one would be uh, uh, Buell in far west Tuscaloosa County, Brownville, Moores Bridge, Samantha. The southern one, the one you're looking at on radar here if you're watching this on television, this is the one that is in northern Greene County and that is clearly the dominant circulation and that is about to cross over into southwest Tuscaloosa County near Ralph. The community of Ralph sits right here and that's going to keep on moving northeast. More than likely this passes north of Ralph coming awfully close to Romulus and again it could be awfully close to downtown Tuscaloosa and downtown Northport. But as I look at the spectrum velocity on my uh, on my board here, this deal at Oakman is just mind-boggling. So let's go back up and look at the storm that is in Walker County near Oakman. This is uh, potentially a very violent tornado. Uh, it is a direct threat to life and property. Uh, this uh, tornado has exhibited characteristics of producing a major tornado in many ways. It's this one right here. And again, we know a new one about to come into Lamar. we got to watch that. And that one's right over the radar site. Goodness. Too. You know... Uh, we've had radars destroyed uh, back in uh, 73. The primary Alabama radar was destroyed uh, May 27th of 73 down near Brent. All right, but again, this is the debris ball right here, and it looks like it's, it's come near or just south of Oakman, and it's about to come through Parrish. This is the uh, Oakman Parish Road. This is Cordova. So clearly, this tornado is going to pass south of downtown Jasper. I can say that now with confidence, still out of respect. If you're in Jasper, I'd stay in your safe place. But this thing is sitting almost right over Parrish right now. And next is Cordova, where there's no power. The damage was extensive. Downtown Cordova was extremely heavily damaged this morning uh, in a pre-dawn round of storms. And this is going to go right over that community. Now we have a new tornado warning for the new storm coming out of Mississippi. So let's look at this one. This is going to be another one. And again, looking at this on the radar, this one is extremely impressive. This is a uh, tornadic supercell that is coming out of uh, northeastern Mississippi. And uh, this will be impacting uh, Lamar counties. And again, we'll put on the uh, reflectivity. That's the velocity display. And again, that thing is awfully near that radar. Goodness. I mean, it is. this is the Columbus Air Force Base next rad. 
And again, that's your tornado right here. And again, this is Seligent, so it looks like this could be a direct threat to the city of Seligent. And again, if that continues moving on that direction, it's going to wind up perhaps affecting Guin. That's U.S. 278 right there. And again, uh, uh, one of the most violent tornadoes in Alabama history occurred that night of April 3rd, 1974. This track is extremely reminiscent of that. Uh, and I'm not saying the same thing will happen. That was a night where 23 people died in Guin, but that uh, uh, supercell storm will be affecting Seligent and maybe Guin or areas just north of Guin, up toward Hamilton. So the, the tornado warning, it is for northern Lamar. This will not affect Vernon. This is for Seligent and points north up toward Detroit. And then the area roughly down Highway 278 over here toward Guin. Uh, a lot of damage reports are coming into Walker County EMA. Uh, right now uh, at, uh, Hilt, uh, at a home was struck on uh, Bethel Road in Walker County. I uh, don't know the extent of the damage, but uh, there was uh, definitely a tornado that did strike a home in Walker County. I would right, assume we, that's very close to we, Oakman. We got Brian Peters on the line with us. Brian, you're, you're seeing a tornado right now, and you're out there on Interstate 22. Tell us what you've got. This is the Walker County storm. Yes, James, we're on uh, the future of US 78. We're looking, uh, we're about a mile from Cordova exit 72. We're looking at what appears to actually two tornadoes uh there's there's they're both on the south side of i-22 uh there's uh there's one um fairly large well they're both about the same size one has lifted and the second one is definitely on the ground it is uh it is below the tree line and uh it is uh it is um uh it's hurling out right now, actually. It's, uh, we can't, I'm not close enough to it to see any debris, but I want to tell you right now, it's actually coming in our direction. It is coming at us, so uh, we're not going to be able to, we're, it's on the Cordova Gorgas Road. So we're not going to be able to stay here very long because this this thing is actually coming at us. Hey, hey Brian, you get out of there. I mean, you do it. You don't. You don't worry about me. If you got to hang up, you go. But but have you noticed any debris falling out of the sky? No, sir. But it is definitely on the ground. We can see the the uh, visible funnel goes down. Uh, when we punched the uh, core to the to the north of it through heavy rain, we got a little bit of hail. I can't tell you what size. And uh, the. Um, uh, we're, uh, there's definitely debris now, James. I can see there's a debris cloud near the bottom. It, uh, it looks like, it actually it doesn't look like it's moving at us right now. It looks like it's moving uh, in the, uh, a little bit to, uh, to the north. It, uh, it looks like it's wrapping uh, almost as if it's uh, taken a little bit of a northward turn uh, from, it was moving right straight at us just a moment ago, but now it looks like it's actually almost wrapping up in the in the uh, cyclone, in the mesocyclone, uh, and it looks like a, a, almost a northward extent to uh, the movement, James. For people that don't know, Brian is a longtime morning coordination meteorologist for the Weather Service in Birmingham. He's trained for uh, 6,000 Alabama storm spotters. If so anybody knows what he's looking at, it's Brian. Now, are, which, which one of those exits are, are you at, Brian? Are you, are you at the actual Cordova exit on I-22? I yeah, we're we're one mile east or southeast of exit 72, and uh, uh, the uh, the tornado is is not moving at us right now. It looks like it's going to cross the interstate, uh, probably very near exit 72. There's tremendous lightning with this thing. It is uh, it it is it has gone much smaller, James. Uh, it's still on the ground, but uh, the funnel has gotten smaller. Now it's getting it's bigger. Getting again. Now it's getting bigger again. Yeah, uh, and Jason, if you can move the radar down a little bit, we're starting to getting out of the radar image here. We're, and again, just to get, get you situated, Brian is on Interstate 22. Okay, right here. He's looking back at this large tornado, and I say large tornado, Brian. We, we've got debris falling in Jasper, and uh, again, I'm just going to let you kind of call this, and again, in, in a minute, we're going to go back to our storm that's approaching uh, Tuscaloosa County. John Oldshue also has a tornado on his live stream, so Brian, you give us a play-by-play -play there, and we're going to take a look at Oldshue's live stream, too. All right, let, yeah, let me, yeah, I, I, uh, goodness gracious. All right, I, I tell you what, take... Let's take John's uh, live stream on the uh, MacBook Pro here in the uh, weather office. That is a large wedge tornado. Well, James, this is Dr. Tim Coleman. It's a multiple vortex tornado also. Okay, and, and again, I want to be sure our people listening and watching understand you are watching a large tornado that is approaching Tuscaloosa. Dr. Coleman and Brian are in a tornado that's near Cordova in Walker County. And uh, so for just briefly, Tim, if you could describe what you've got there, and we're going to go to John's audio. So go, go ahead. The eastbound traffic is stopping.
to uh, to our east now. The eastbound traffic is all stopping. I think they're they know what we're doing uh, somehow or other, and they can see it because we're on a hill. And again, we're a mile to the east of Cordova exit 72 uh, on US 78 or okay. the future 22. It looks okay. like it's probably getting ready to cross or is crossing. I think it's crossing the interstate right now. This right, is a launch tornado. All right, we got a large tornado crossing I-22 at Cordova. Now, we have John Osho on the line. If anybody back there in the back can tell me, John's got a large... Well, Brian, I don't see any video coming from you, so I got uh, John's video of a separate tornado. Uh, and is John Osho on the line by any chance with us? I don't think he is. Uh, and Jason, again, I want to clarify what we've got. We've got a large wedge tornado crossing Interstate 22 near Cordova. The tornado that you're watching on television is the one that is coming up, uh, I believe John's on Interstate 59, is that right, Jason? He's in Knoxville looking up at this thing as it's coming up toward Highway 11. Okay. Uh, so it's actually going to pass just a little bit north of 11, but uh, he's got a great vantage point on it. Okay, so John Olchew has a large wedge tornado that is now uh, near Interstate 5920 at the Knoxville exit. And understand this is the one that uh, uh, many of our friends have been reporting on prior to it arriving there. And this is moving in the general direction of Tuscaloosa and Northport. So we are now calling a tornado emergency for Tuscaloosa and Northport. Uh, this might track a little north of the city of Tuscaloosa, but I sure can't guarantee that it's way 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 too close so at this point we are asking that everybody in Tuscaloosa and Northport based on that live stream to be in a safe place small room lowest floor near the center away from windows this includes the campus of the University of Alabama as we are now looking at a large violent wedge tornado that is near uh, the Tuscaloosa Green County line and again that seems to be making a beeline up toward either the city of Tuscaloosa or the city of Northport I would say maybe at that spot that tornado it could be like the tornado that came through Coleman that was very destructive. It might be over one half mile wide. Uh, and again, that is one of the classic looks. This could be one of these uh, uh, tornadoes that is a serious direct threat to uh, life and property. So uh, we are now calling a tornado emergency for Tuscaloosa and Northport. And at the same time, we are calling a tornado emergency for Walker County, uh, specifically around Dora, Summerton, and Cordova, Sipsy, and Empire. If you're listening to us, and, and Brian Peters, are you still on the line with us? James, we're trying to get back to where we can get a view. The, the hills and trees to our north have obscured it. It is definitely now on the north side of I-22. It crossed somewhere very close to the exit 72 on, uh, on the future I-22, U.S. 78. Um, we've now got to go to the next exit to try to get a, a vantage point back to the okay. north. Okay. Uh, the town's right. getting out of my rearview mirror. It looks like it's become larger. <laughs> Uh, James, I'm going to try to cut to a stream. We're coming up on a hill. I'm going to try to get you a stream here in just a minute. Okay. Uh, thank you, Brian. You guys stay with us now. Again, you're watching John Oldshoe's stream. This is a separate stream from a large wedge tornado that is moving up into Tuscaloosa County. Ralph, Foster's, Romulus, Tuscaloosa, Northport. University of Alabama, be in a safe place right now uh, because that is a large, dangerous tornado that is approaching Tuscaloosa from the south and west. And again, we are calling a tornado emergency for the cities of Tuscaloosa, Northport, and the campus of the University of Alabama. And again, it uh, looks like John uh, maybe has lost control of that camera. That's uh, John Olshu that is on the storm approaching Tuscaloosa. Uh, keep in mind, there is a separate circulation, a smaller circulation coming up through the northwestern part of Tuscaloosa County. So again, if you're around Brown, or Moore's Bridge. Uh, you need to be in a safe place as well, but that's a look at the tornado that is coming up toward Tuscaloosa. John is right here. The Knoxville exit on the interstate, it's right there. That's US 11, that's Interstate 5920, looking up into this. And again, you can see this thing is moving right up toward Tuscaloosa. Uh, this is Tuscaloosa right here. The new uh, Western Bypass is right here. So again, the, everybody in Tuscaloosa should just be shutting down. And I guess we can't see anything on the sky cam, Jason, from Tuscaloosa because no, rain's going to be yet. blocked because we got rain falling up here. We're looking right into the core of rain and hail that'll come into Tuscaloosa, but uh, given the trajectory of that storm, I think we're going to be able to see it with this camera. Uh, there is still a significant debris ball that's northwest of Foster's. Uh, this tornado moving to the northeast very rapidly at 60 miles per hour. So if you were near the path of the tornado that hit almost two weeks ago, you need to be in a safe place now. This one will probably be just a little bit northwest of there, but it's better to be safe in this situation because these things can take slight right-hand turns. Anybody in the city of Tuscaloosa 
west of Tuscaloosa on Highway 11 uh, out there toward uh, Romulus. Uh, you need to be in a safe place immediately. Downtown Tuscaloosa, we've seen the wind still out of the south at about 20 miles per hour. There you can see it uh, in the image. The peak wind gust has been 52 and that's a non thunderstorm wind gust. That's what's helped to shove all this warm, humid air up north into Alabama. Now, so we're still we, tracking we, we that get, debris we got, ball. We got John stream just back. Yeah, so let's just, let's take John Old Shoes uh, camera live uh, there looking up to the uh, large violet tornado that's now in South Tuscaloosa County. Uh, that thing is huge. That's covering the entire screen there, and uh, we're, we're confident that it's down because one, we have a debris ball, and two, it has been very consistent with that shape and that form. And you can see the inflow going into it. The trees that, that at Old Shoes location are uh, just bent over right going into that storm as the uh, as the, the inflow takes them in. Uh, inflow into storms like this can be as high as 60 to 80 miles per hour. So even if you're not in the tornado, you may still get some damaging wind from being nearby it. But that is a very large wedge tornado that is about uh, 15 miles southwest of downtown Tuscaloosa. If you're in Tuscaloosa, take this one extremely seriously. Use extreme caution. We don't recommend that you travel on Highway 11, uh, up Highway 69, stay off Lurleen B. Wallace. This thing is going to come right through the city of Tuscaloosa, and it could be just as strong, if not stronger, than that storm that hit Coleman a little while ago. Uh, so Tuscaloosa County, tornado warning right now. Forget about the expiration time. We'll let you know when it's over. Uh, it is out of Greene County. It's now solidly into Tuscaloosa County, but uh, yeah, we're, it, we're it's... We're losing uh, his picture, so let's go back yeah. to the radar. And again, John is going to read. John was in a very safe place. And again, John was right here looking back up into this. That's that circulation coming right up toward downtown Tuscaloosa and downtown Northport. So again, we, we've made it perfectly clear a tornado emergency for the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport. Look right here. There was a debris ball right there coming up toward Tuscaloosa. Now, this thing, we have a new tornado warning for the tornado near Cordova, okay? Uh, this is going to be moving up into parts of western Blount County, clipping northern Jefferson. This is going to be one of these problematic cases where a little sliver of Jefferson County is under a tornado warning. This does not include the city of Birmingham. This is for far, far north Jefferson County around Warrior, but we have a new tornado warning for parts of Walker, far northern Jefferson, Blunt, southern tip of Coleman for that large tornado that Brian and Tim are tracking uh, coming out of Cordova. And again, uh, if you are near uh, Dora, Summerton, Sipsy, Empire, be in a safe place right now. Ultimately, Blunt Springs, Warrior, uh, places like that. And then we have this other uh, very violent tornado that is near Sullivan. Let's look at this one. Uh, and, and again, we're going to be bouncing back between all of these today. Uh, this is a severe storm that is capable of producing a violent tornado near Sullivan. Uh, this thing uh, is going to be maybe just north of Sullivan, moving northeast. And again, uh, this could be awfully close to Ewan or points just north of here, up here toward Twin. Uh, so uh, if you are watching us anywhere along or north of US 278, Sullivan, Beaverton, Ewan or points north. Be in a safe place. Uh, again, because we have so many tornadic storms now, we're not going to be able to call out uh, these cities often. Let's go to the Tuscaloosa Sky Cam. I right. can at least see the wall cloud if that's not the tornado. All right. So oh, yeah. we can see it from downtown Tuscaloosa, and that is headed right toward that Sky Cam. Uh, if Campus University of Alabama, uh, Shelton State, anybody in the city of Tuscaloosa, Northport, you need to be in a safe place immediately. This is not a game. This is uh, this is for real. This is not one of those days where we think there might be something there. And each tornado warning we've had, we've had some kind of confirmation of a tornado on the ground. And so far, we have seen three live on video. Uh, this is the uh, this is the third one. Uh, and uh, well, I guess, I guess it's technically a, a second angle of the one that we saw from Old Shoes camera. But uh, it, it's hard to tell if that is wall cloud or all tornado. But that is something significantly wicked on the horizon of Tuscaloosa that is just about to move into the city. It's large, it's violent. The wind in that thing is probably going to exceed anything that we saw this morning. So we beg you, please go to a safe place. Do not try to take a picture of this thing as it's moving into Tuscaloosa. I don't care if it's moving north of you. Go to a safe place now. Debris may be falling all over the place. And uh, sometimes even miles away from the storm, people can be injured by falling debris because you're out there watching it. So that is a large violent tornado southwest of downtown Tuscaloosa that is moving into the city right now. Take cover.
All right, this is Alabama's ABC 3340, WBMA Birmingham, WCFT Tuscaloosa, WJSU Anniston. Our 5 o'clock news starts now, and the news is weather. You are looking at a live, large, violent tornado wrapped in rain approaching downtown Tuscaloosa. This is a tornado emergency for the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport and the campus of the University of, uh, West, or University of Alabama uh, for that uh, very dangerous storm. While we look at the live look at the large Tuscaloosa tornado that is approaching the city, Again, we should point out there is potential for a violent tornado near or north of Sullivan that will be moving along and north of U.S. Highway 278. And again, that will be affecting Sullivan, Beaverton, Ewan, or areas just north of there. So a tornado warning for North Lamar and parts of Marion counties. Uh, we have a large tornado in the Doris Summerton area of Walker County. We'll take a closer look at that. Uh, this has prompted a warning, and this thing is just extremely, extremely violent. Uh, it's coming through Dora and Summerton now, Sipsy, Empire. Ultimately, it's going to be crossing Interstate 65 near or north of Warrior, maybe around the Blunt Springs exit. Nobody should be traveling along Interstate 65 right now north of Gardendale or south of Good Hope. Uh, this could be a large tornado. Uh, uh, Brian Peters and Dr. Tim Coleman both uh, saw this. Many have seen it. Uh, and again, the signature has not changed at all. So a large violent tornado moving from Dora, Summerton, Sipsy Empire approaching the uh, Interstate 65 corridor between Warrior, Blunt Springs, uh, and maybe the uh, Colony exit here, Alabama uh, Highway 91. Nobody should be on the interstate if you're anywhere close to that. And in Jefferson County, there are horns sounding. It does not include the city of Birmingham. It does not include Hoover, Vestavia, not even close to you. This is the northern tip of Jefferson County. Uh, so again, this is a tornado emergency for extreme northern Jefferson County. Uh, this is north of Say Reed. This is north North of Corner, uh, and really the, uh, it's mainly going to stay in Walker and Blunt counties, but it's close enough to where they clip Jefferson. But again, in the other box, that Let's is go an back amazing, to this Tuscaloosa that is storm. That is scene. unreal. That this, is just this, unreal. It's, sur it's surreal. Right, and again, uh, ladies, the, the, the reporter we have is not close to this. We're going to have to stay with this tornado emergency. This is a large, violent tornado that is approaching downtown Tuscaloosa from the southwest. And this will be, uh, I would say, from, and you saw it from John Olshue's camera down in Knoxville at the Knoxville exit. Uh, it looked like it might be a half mile wide. It could be larger than that. Nobody should be driving. Everybody down there listening to me on radio in Tuscaloosa, stop now at the next exit, the next convenience store. Go into a business that will let you in. Uh, if you know anybody that maybe doesn't have electricity and cannot watch us or listen to us, make a call. If they live in Tuscaloosa, if they live in Northport, if you have a child on the campus of the University of Alabama, call them and tell them now to go into a safe place around one of the buildings around the University of Alabama campus. Uh, if they are close to Northport, across the river, it's the same thing. Uh, this is a large wedge tornado that is live on our tower cam atop the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse, and this is making a beeline for uh, downtown Tuscaloosa. Velocities continue to be all Almost maxed out. Uh, the delta on the radar is about 150 knots. And again, uh, this is a very serious situation. Uh, so if you are watching us in Tuscaloosa, in Northport, and again, the, the troubling thing we see are people that are driving down there in that uh, sky cam down on Lurley and B. Wallace Boulevard. If you're listening to us maybe on the interstate, don't pull over and get under a bridge. Just stop at the next exit. Get into a gas station, a convenience store. That's where you should be. And again, this is the uh, tornado signature coming up to Tuscaloosa from the south. Downtown Tuscaloosa, downtown Northport. Uh, this is Interstate 5920. That's Interstate 359. This is McFarland Boulevard, the Woolsey Fennell Bridge here, the William King, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, 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 King Bridge is right here, and uh, this is the Warrior River, and clearly uh, this thing is coming right up toward town. So, uh, and while we do this, again, don't forget the other is issues, Sullivan, Beaverton, Ewan, be in a safe place, Blunt Springs, uh, uh, Sipsy, Empire, Corner, Warrior, Points North, be in a safe place. We've got three tornadoes, Jason. Uh, and, and this one is the one we're watching live right now, but all the other ones will look just like this. Uh, this thing is probably wrapped in rain. Uh, the Coleman tornado that you saw earlier was not wrapped in rain. Uh, that was an extremely violent storm that came through downtown Coleman. This tornado looks like it might be rain wrapped, and that's the reason it's got that fuzzy appearance. And sometimes you can't tell exactly how wide that is, but based on John Olshue's live stream, when it came up through northern Greene County and the other uh, reports we've had, uh, this thing is clearly a large, violent tornado that is down on the ground. Uh, so we're calling a tornado emergency for uh, Tuscaloosa and Northport.
Uh, and let me also mention there's a new tornado warning farther <coughs> southwest, and we're not going to worry about that at this point. We've got the a new storm for a, a new tornado in New York and Sumter County moving northeast at 55. Sumter County is in the Meridian Market. It does include parts of Greene County, but again, uh, this is this new storm down here. So that's tornado number one, tornado number two, tornado number three. The circulation north of Tuscaloosa is much weaker. There still could be maybe a tornado north of town, but the big one is the southern storm in Tuscaloosa County, and that's the one on the tower cam. Let's take the tower cam full. And from here on out, we're just going to uh, ride with this thing. Uh, we're going to get up under it, and uh, Jason is operating the camera. And uh, we've been through this rodeo before earlier today with a Coleman uh, tornado. And again, it looks like there might be debris underneath that, Jason. It looks like a very large debris cloud. It may be yeah. picking up dust from some of the agricultural land in Tuscaloosa County. Of course, wouldn't imagine there's a lot of dust considering that we've had so much rain, but uh, sometimes it can get up underneath that uh, first layer of soil and get to some drier soil. But uh, that's a look at uh, what is most likely a very large tornado. Uh, we can see the wall cloud. Uh, in fact, it looks like the wall cloud is a little bit bigger than, uh, than maybe it was when Old Shoe was looking at it. Uh, we can't see the tornado as well as I think we could just a few minutes ago. It seemed to have brightened up a little bit underneath here, but I think there is a tornado right in there. You can see where the cursor is going. It looks like there's, there's debris. There's debris down there. There's yeah, clearly there, debris. There's it? a debris cloud that extends out that far, so we might have an invisible funnel that is very large and only have a little bit of area that's visible there. Look at that. We yeah. got a multiple vortex tornado on the ground. There it is. You can see the multiple vortexes, vortices that are rotating around a little the to the uh, left, and, and we'll get that thing centered. This is a large multiple vortex tornado that is uh, almost into uh, downtown Tuscaloosa. And again, uh, you should have been in your safe place 20 minutes ago. Uh, but if by chance you're hearing me at the last minute on the radio, get into a safe place right now. Small underground if you can. No underground, first floor, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. While you're looking at that, don't forget we have a possible tornado, could be a large one, that's uh, moving up into Marion County, out of Lamar County. Another one that's passing uh, way north of downtown Birmingham, affecting the far western tip of Blount County. It's moving from Sipsy and Empire. Look, look at the debris. Look at the debris in that. Zoom, zoom in tighter, Jason, if, if we can go in tighter. Look at that. Goodness gracious. This will be a day that will go down in state history. And all you can do is pray for those people. This is a large, violent tornado coming up on downtown Tuscaloosa. Be in a safe place right now. And if we've called your, the, the name of your community in any of the other tornadoes, the same thing. You know, we're not able to show every single one of them live on television like that. That's, that thing's Look at huge. That. that is, and it, it's still three or four miles away from us right there. Right. It, it, and again, uh, the, the camera, for those of you that are, that are watching maybe for the first time, this is on top of the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse. Uh, we're we're going to back, back up a little bit so that it's not west. so shaky, but look at that. Right, and this thing is still southwest of downtown Tuscaloosa, moving northeast right toward the middle of Tuscaloosa. Uh, the last time we had one like that in that part of town, one this big was probably March 21st, 1932, even before my time. Uh, that destroyed so much of uh, Tuscaloosa and Northport. Uh, but again, that is a huge tornado that is moving right up on downtown Tuscaloosa. Uh, and again, so, uh, and I want you to use this as an example when we show these other uh, radar signatures, that's what you're gonna get today. Uh, that is why there is a high risk today. This is a very rare day, maybe a, a once in a career type day, uh, reminiscent of the outbreaks of the 70s, uh, uh, the super outbreak of 74. So if you're just joining us, so now we're starting to see the, uh, the flashes. Those are the fuses adjacent to the transformers designed to protect the utility system, Alabama Power Company's infrastructure. Uh, but again, uh, that is uh, uh, something that, that you pray that you never, ever, ever see. Uh, but we're looking to the southwest from high atop the uh, Tuscaloosa County Courthouse. And uh, again, uh, we're going to stay with this as long as we keep power. Uh, if you watched us earlier this afternoon, we had a tornado just like that that came through Coleman. I would suggest this might even be larger than the Coleman tornado. I think it's much larger than that one. Uh, th this thing looks like it might be over one half mile wide, uh, maybe up to three quarters of a mile wide. It's coming across Joe Malisham Park. Well, actually, it just passed Joe Malisham Parkway. Goodness, uh, look at that. That is huge. This, this is uh, a... If you're down around Calusa Avenue, uh, 35th Street, Stillman College. Greensboro Avenue, Stillman get to a College. safe place. There goes the sky cam. Get into a safe place. Uh, let's use the tower cam. Can we pull up the microwave yeah. camera, please? Let's uh, go to the Tuscaloosa Tower Cam on Remote 2. Uh, okay, we lost the signal there. All right, let's zoom into it. 
Uh, let, let's double box this. I still this want to. Is, this I, is down. I, I, so. I want to double box it with a still of the last image we've got of that large tornado in Tuscaloosa. You saw that flash, and then that's when everything blacked out in downtown Tuscaloosa. Uh, but again, this is the. Look at this. There's your debris ball right here, okay? This is, it, it seems to be pretty much on the interstate, and obviously nobody should be along the interstate. We've got this debris ball. It's picked up a lot of debris now that it's over a populated area, and that'll be coming right through the intersection, uh, right down Skyland Boulevard here and uh, Interstate 5920. Uh, and again, it is so close, I can't rule anybody out. It looks like it's gonna be the southern part of the city of Tuscaloosa with the greatest issues here. But again, uh, you're seeing the, the, the last image we were able to show you of a large, wedge tornado coming up into Tuscaloosa. This is the radar clearly showing that this thing is wrapped up maybe along Interstate 5920. Uh, this is McFarland Boulevard. Right, we, okay, got we, got we got it back. We got it back. Here it back. goes. Let's pan over to the oh left. Oh my Let's goodness. Take it full. goodness. Look at that. Are you kidding me? Look at all the stuff flying around up that, there. That, that, that's coming over. Uh, that's coming over near Interstate 359 in Skyland. Nobody should be out there. Uh, this thing is going to be coming basically right down Skyland Boulevard. This is an extremely violent situation. Notice the power flashes. Please. It just past the Tuscaloosa County or the Tuscaloosa City the, Police the, the Department. The police department is down there. It's the, crossing over the industrial area in South Tuscaloosa near all the places where they take the cars when you have an accident. If you're down that way, down Greensboro, it's on you now. It's moving toward McFarland. If you're between Greensboro and McFarland, south of Bryant and south of University, get to a safe place right now. Right. Uh, so again, everybody near Skyland Boulevard. Be in a safe place. Everybody in the city limits of Tuscaloosa be in a safe place. We can clearly tell you from that image that this will be a tornado that is affecting Tuscaloosa and not Northport. But if you are in the city limits of Tuscaloosa, be in a safe place right now. Don't take any chances with this. Uh, this is as violent a situation as you'll ever see. Again, there's your debris ball. It's coming up now near uh, the intersection of uh, Alabama uh, 69 going south down toward Moundville and McFarland Boulevard. It'll be crossing very close to McFarland Mall. Uh, McFarland Farland Mall directly in the path. We got it of this back. Thing. We got it back. Take All it right. full. All right, take take it full. There's okay. the back side of it. Again, that is moving basically down Skyland Boulevard, and uh, uh, again, you can see debris falling from the sky. And uh, uh, this is a uh, again, the power is going to come and go. Let's go back to the double box, and as soon as we get the power back on on top of the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse, we'll go back to that. But again, this is your debris ball right here. Again, that's downtown Tuscaloosa. That's Interstate 359 right here. Uh, this is coming out toward McFarland Mall. And it's, th there is a northward component of motion here. So understand this will be ultimately moving north of Interstate 5920 up here toward uh, really some of the same communities hit back on April the uh, 15th, uh, out, out toward uh, Loop Road and Circlewood, the Veterans Hospital. Uh, but it, I, I don't want to be so specific. I want everybody in the city limits of Tuscaloosa to stay sheltered underground if you can get there until this thing passes but especially over here the urgency now is for those of you out here in the eastern side of town over here toward Cottondale and Holt and Alberta City uh, everybody out here needs to be in a safe place the University of Alabama still needs to be totally shut down nobody should be on campus walking nobody should be driving another note a large tornado just passed through just passed northeast of Bagley through the Dora Summiton area so uh, Walker County Coleman County uh, we we have so many things going on and we're, we're trying to show as many things as we can at the same time while maintaining uh, the information for everyone. What you see there in Tuscaloosa, a large violent tornado that is right on the interstate now moving up north uh, up toward McFarland. That'll be uh, coming pretty close to the University Mall if it indeed crosses the interstate and clips McFarland right there. Uh, maybe Snow Hinton Park. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, Hargrove Road. Actually, we've got it back now. All right, let's. We've got it back, so let's uh, let's scan over here. Bring it full. Bring it full. Keep panning. Oh, it's it's near as the full stadium. as it'll go. Okay, uh, pan. It's near the stadium, and again, we're, we're going to get in very heavy rain here. And again, in a, look at the look at the rain streaming. The inflow streaming into that large tornado. Off in the distance, you can see Bryant Denny Stadium on the campus of the University of Alabama. Just went down again. All right, and again, you know, if this thing veers a little to the left of the flow, that could clearly put it right over the campus of the University of Alabama. I don't want to be so specific with this one. Again, based on the size of this, if you are in the city limits of Tuscaloosa or on the campus of the University of Alabama, stay sheltered for at least another 15 to 20 minutes until this thing clears.
Collier's Town. If you can, get underground. Uh, other than that, remember to put a bicycle helmet on your children uh, to keep them safe. You want to be in a hall closet bathroom, lowest floor near the center away from windows. And understand this is moving northeast, which means if it stays down, it could be an issue for the Birmingham Metro in about an hour. Worry about that with time, but these are long track violent tornadoes that are not going to go away. But you can see how the whole thing is wrapped up. And again, that is coming right up toward the Birmingham Metro area. Let's check the storm north of Birmingham. And again, we focused on this Tuscaloosa situation. All of these are life threatening. Uh, we've got a violent tornado that is potentially about to cross Interstate 65 uh, just north of Jefferson County. And, and again, uh, Corner is right here. Bagley is down and through here. The tornadoes come through Sipsy and Empire. And again, it looks like it will be affecting maybe around Blunt Springs. This is that boot heel of Blunt County that sticks out uh, on the western side. So clearly everybody near Blunt Springs, as far south as Warrior in Jefferson County, as far north as Colony in Coleman County, need to be in a safe place and again that is more than likely a very large tornado that's about to cross interstate uh, uh, 65 that is alabama highway 160 that uh, goes up to hayden uh, and again, uh, Hayden is right here. That's Alabama Highway 160. That's US 31. Uh, Blunt Springs is here. The Top Hat Barbecue is here. This is Garden City. This is the uh, Warrior River. That's Coleman County. This is Blunt County. So again, a violent tornado about to cross Interstate 65, maybe near or just north of the Blunt Springs exit. It looks like this violent tornado is going to stay maybe north of Hayden, but still, if you're in Hayden, be in a safe place. Blunt Springs, no doubt be in a safe place. Garden Got a report City. that uh, numerous homes have been flattened in the Flatwoods community. Uh, okay. In Tuscaloosa County. That's not good. All right, so let's go back and show the uh, big picture at this point. We, we have other violent storms as well, uh, but this is the one that's coming up toward Blunt Springs. We've got the one in Tuscaloosa. You've been watching that. We have another one that's up here in northwest Alabama. This third one, uh, let's take a look at that one. This is the one that's coming up into southern Marion County, moving out of Lamar County, and uh, that storm is going to be awfully close to Guin. Uh, and again, we... we I think the sky cam is live again, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the Tuscaloosa sky cam is live again. Okay, so now it looks like the tornado is beyond the range of the Tuscaloosa sky cam. So it's moving away from the city. But again, I would say for about the next, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes, I would stay sheltered until we can come out and assess the damage. Uh, this is another dangerous storm that is passing just north of Guin. And that's moving northeast. Everybody in Guin and Brilliant and Twin, uh, you want to be in a safe place until this thing passes. Uh, this will continue moving northeast up toward Hackleburg and Bear Creek. So again, for Marion County, a tornado warning, a dangerous storm north of Guin moving northeast. And again, there's the circulation right there just north of Guin. Uh, so that is that storm. Let's go back to our Tuscaloosa County storm. And again, uh, I don't think we have the uh, Channel 33, uh, old 33 tower camera, the tower cam. Uh, that is not available at this point. So again, let's go to the Sky Cam in Tuscaloosa. And again, you're, you're looking back off to the east, and uh, you can see the steeple of the First Baptist Church, uh, the old Stafford Hotel building down below, and uh, uh, it, we are totally blocked by rain, but just because you cannot see it doesn't mean that it's not there. More than likely, we have a violent circulation that could be coming through Alberta City and Holt and Peterson and Cottondale, uh, Alberta City. Uh, if that, that is in the eastern part of Tuscaloosa County, and if you're the city of Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa in the metro. So if you're in the eastern part of Tuscaloosa, Cottondale, Peterson, Holt, Alberta City, be in a safe place. This will keep on moving northeast. The next community I'm concerned about would be Brookwood. And then ultimately, if this thing stays on the ground, it's going to wind up in Jefferson. John Brown is following it. I cannot get his live stream to work, but he says it's about a mile wide now. Goodness gracious. Do, do you know One exactly? mile wide. He's following it. The communities that you just mentioned, uh, that's where he's, he's watching it try to go. Uh, so uh, we're, we're, we're trying to get the live stream from John and Mike uh, from Tuscaloosa County. He says he's got a mile-wide tornado. Um, it's just unbelievable. Mm. Just unreal. Yeah, th this whole thing is surreal, and again, I, I hope everybody understand, uh, understands we're not here to alarm people, but we are here to warn people, and this is probably the most serious event that we have worked, I have worked in the 15-year history of this TV station, and quite frankly, going back maybe over the 30, uh, uh, 32 years I've been here. Uh, so this is a, a very serious, 
life-threatening situation today. I know that many of you in Anniston and Gadsden and Sylacauga and Talladega, it's been quiet so far, and, and just please bear with us while we cover that western side of the state. But as the storms move east, you know, we'll stay with them, and we stay with them until they're totally out of here. But you can see how they're cellular. They're not in a line, and we had great concern that would happen today. But again, we have one tornado, maybe a large one, crossing Interstate 65 near Blunt Springs. We have a large tornado in the eastern part of Tuscaloosa. Could be one mile wide. You saw some incredible footage of that. This is the Blunt Springs tornado. And again, that's going to be crossing uh, near or north of Blunt Springs. I think that's uh, actually closer to exit 291. Okay, the uh, uh, based on the based on the rotation and uh, a di we did hear a report of a funnel at exit 287 from an ambulance crew. Uh, so if you're at 287 looking north, you could pretty clearly see what's going on up there toward 291. So from Colony uh, up toward Hansville on Highway 91 uh, down around the American Proteins plant in South Coleman County, Garden City. You need to be in a safe place immediately. Hansville, you need to be in a safe place immediately as another tornado is moving through there. We had significant damage early this morning in the area around Wallace State Community Cross uh, Community College as well as Johnson Crossing on the west side of Hansville. This one will be more of a south and east side of Hansville thing uh, that comes right up through Garden City and maybe uh, just a touch between Hansville and Garden City close to Morton Buildings and uh, Louisiana Pacific. Uh, so uh, very, very strong indication of a tornado now that is right on the Mulberry River. Uh, that's going to move northeast through East Coleman County and West Blunt County. It looks like the actual circulation is north of the city of Hayden, uh, but along Highway 31, close to the Top Hat Barbecue, close to Bangor, Garden City, Hansville, eventually Bluntsville. This will cross over 26 uh, in uh, Blunt County, somewhere in the vicinity, uh, just east of the uh, what they call the uh, Racehorse Johnson Bridge. It goes over uh, a little overpass. It goes over some county roads. Then you cross over the Mulberry River and go into Blunt County from there, headed up toward Bluntsville from Garden City. So if you're on Highway 26, US 31, or uh, Highway 91 in Southeast Coleman County, that western edge of Blunt County. We need you in a safe place immediately. We have a large violent tornado uh, that we believe has done some significant damage back in Walker County. Uh, this storm, we uh, do note that I got a report a minute ago, a uh, some entrapment, some injuries possible in Bowley Springs in Fayette County. And that was at the same time that we were seeing the debris falling from the sky over Barry. We saw debris falling from the sky over Jasper. Uh, and I would imagine that we may start seeing debris falling from the sky embedded with some hail and some high wind around parts of Hansville and Garden City very soon. Got that Tuscaloosa sky cam back live. The peak wind gust downtown was only 64 and I'm going to pan around here and see if we can see anything off in the distance and there's just not enough contrast now that we're looking at it from the west looking back to the east. Everything looks the same. Everything's got the same coloration but our sky watcher John Brown tracking a mile wide tornado. Yeah, he, he uh, said, you know he says uh, he's got some equipment issues. Just tell people just warn people. That's all he's saying. Tell them to get to a safe place now. Uh, we've got a report now of major damage uh, on uh, I-65 with this tornado apparently that just crossed out of Walker County. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Deborah. What? Okay, the Tuscaloosa uh, EMA building, and you know, I, I'll be the first. I, I grew up in the Tuscaloosa Civil Defense. We used to be in the, the attic of the city hall. Uh, I don't know if it's still in the city hall complex or down at the police station. That thing probably hit the police station. I, I'm afraid we have serious, serious, serious damage uh, at this point uh, around Tuscaloosa. All right, we, we've got, uh, oh, wow. Uh, Okay, we, we got a lot of streams coming in here. Uh, John Oldshue, first off, tell us uh, where you are and what, what you've got. Well, my best guess, James, is we're about three miles uh, south of the uh, exit 69. The, the tornado path uh, apparently got right on the interstate. And, and, got, and, and let's, let's, I'm sorry, John, let's take John Brown's stream while John Oldshue is talking because he's on that storm. Go ahead, John Oldshue. Yeah, and uh, traffic is completely stopped. I guess uh, we've probably got trees on the interstate up here, but I can't see. There are a lot of trees down uh, that have been toppled in the median. And, uh, uh, yeah, it looks like it followed the interstate uh, or just to the north of the interstate coming into Tuscaloosa. So we're going to try to get past this and, and give you uh, give you some shots of the damage. Okay, John, now we got a new tornado warning. Let's go back to the uh, radar. And, again, we're going to monitor 
And again, this is just a very dangerous storm. This is the one that came through uh, Cordova, Sipsi Empire. We're getting reports of major damage along I-65, and uh, this thing will be crossing U.S. Highway 31, Blunt Springs, uh, Garden City, uh, moving over into Blunt County. Uh, again, this is the storm that produced all the damage in Tuscaloosa. Large wedge tornado, a mile wide. Uh, last report from uh, John Brown. And again, this is Alabama 216 uh, that runs from Peterson and Holt over to Brookwood. Uh, the, the debris ball is clearly north of Interstate uh, 5920 right now, which is a good thing. And uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of watching the, the sky cam as well. It's getting farther away, but again, that is a very dangerous storm. We may have another storm. one developing on the west side of Tuscaloosa. Right. We got to watch that too. So again, uh, we, th th at this point, let's look at the velocity on this. We got another. Oh goodness. Yeah, we've got another. We've goodness got another tornadic gracious. circulation hey, back there. Hey, uh, Tuscaloosa Northport University campus, stay sheltered. Uh, right now, we've got another tornadic circulation coming into downtown Tuscaloosa. Uh, let's swing that camera back to the west, uh, Jason. Let's go to our, you're watching the Tuscaloosa sky you're, cam. You're looking west. Okay, okay, that is looking west, all right. And again, um, we just lost it. Lost again. the power. The, the power is coming off and on in the city of Tuscaloosa, but uh, we don't see anything. But that is a very clear radar signature that there could be a tornado down. So we are still maintaining and asking everybody in Tuscaloosa, Northport, and the university campus to stay in your tornado safe place until this signature passes. All right, now let's DCH go to this. and University Mall total destruction reported by Ham Radio. Are you kidding me? Uh, DCH Regional Medical Center? DCH Regional Medical Center and University Mall. The word is destruction. Mm. That's, uh, that's, that's coming along from a ham radio report. Another circulation <laughs> is going to pass north of there. The second one that's going through the city of Northport right now is dangerous. And I'm going to try to swing this camera back around because that one is moving up to the north pretty quickly. And I, I don't have a confirmation that there's... A, look at that. I think we've got another one. Yeah, get down underneath that. This is another one coming up. And uh, that, that's out around Hunt Oil. No, no, that, no that's, that, a, that's, that's a smokestack. That's coming from Hunt Oil. Smokestack. That, that's coming from the refinery, uh, the Hunt Oil refinery out there in the river. But again, uh, uh, let's everybody stay sheltered in Tuscaloosa and Northport. Don't get out yet. Um, There's our wall cloud. Yeah. Uh, again, that is a lowering. This one wants to go over Northport. We're looking north. Uh, but again, that is, uh, uh, those are scud clouds. And again, we're watching to see if there's anything down. There is rotation. Uh, there's a rotating wall cloud. We don't see any rapid rotation or anything on the ground right now. Uh, but again, uh, Tuscaloosa Northport, stay in your safe place. Uh, I tell you what, we've got a new tornado warning, and again, we're going to have to work all of these. Uh, uh, we, we're going to go back and forth between the storms. This is a new tornado warning for Fayette and Lamar County, a dangerous storm near Columbus Air Force Base, moving northeast at 65. We have not uh, uh, provided information on this one yet because it is still in Mississippi, but it's about to cross the state line. Let's go back to the radar. I just want to show you this very quickly. And again, uh, this is uh, the new storm you see right down here, and this will be affecting the southern part of Lamar County. All right, uh, so we've got a tornado tornado warning in effect primarily for South Lamar County and this time we're talking Vernon and maybe down to Millport and uh, uh, down here Millport and Kennedy so that storm is moving northeast so this will be affecting Fayette County and Lamar County specifically the southern part again the rotation is back here near Columbus Air Force Base moving northeast so just wanted to show you Lamar County uh, we've got a possible tornado coming up south along or from Vernon south and that's headed over toward Fayette County so uh, that is a dangerous storm that requires action so if you're in southern Lamar County or Fayette County be aware that's coming your way let's check the uh, Tuscaloosa storm as it exits the city of Tuscaloosa. And again, you can clearly see it's right there. Uh, this thing is going to be close to Brookwood. Wow. Mm. It looks just like the Arkansas tornado the other night. It is right at Brookwood. This is Alabama 216. Now, the Mercedes plant is down here at Vance. So this is north of the Mercedes plant. But from the Mercedes plant, uh, you know, you're going to have tremendous inflow coming up into this thing. And this is moving right up toward the Birmingham metro. All right, and again, we have another circulation that is coming through Northport, and we're watching that on the Tuscaloosa Tower Cam. So far, we have not seen a tornado down with that, but look at the circulation right over Tuscaloosa and Northport. So that's why we're telling everybody in Tuscaloosa and Northport to stay in your safe place. I think I can clearly see a funnel cloud now over Northport, James, right over the RBC. It's, it's not directly overhead, but we're looking over the RBC building, and look at that west wind at 35. 
we're in the uh, in, on the southern flank of a very strong low level circulation that may not be on the ground or it might it might just have an invisible funnel, but a west wind at 35 looking into a wall cloud is a pretty good indication that there may be a, a, a significant development very soon, if not a tornado already on the ground. I think that is a clear indication that we've got a funnel cloud moving over the city of Northport uh, that is going to move in the more the direction toward Holt and then cross the river into a more rural part of Tuscaloosa County. All right, uh, so again, uh, everybody in Tuscaloosa and Northport stay sheltered. Uh, we're watching this secondary rotation that's coming over uh, Northport, really, the area across the river. Uh, so for those of you uh, across the Black Warrior River or near, to, again, everybody in Tuscaloosa and Northport, just stay sheltered for about the next uh, uh, 15 minutes. Uh, there are multiple storms that are producing major problems today. And again, uh, we, we want to be very careful when passing along the damage reports, but our sky watchers have done a great job and we're getting reports of major damage in Tuscaloosa. Major. Okay, uh, Diane Carroll, you're with DCH. We, we've had reports of major damage at the hospital. What, what's happened there, Diane? Yes, sir. We have some windows that are broken, uh, some awning on off, and some trees that are blown down, and they're checking for structural damage at this time. Did you have the hospital and the tornado plan when the storm hit? Yes, sir. We did. Okay. Do you know before, any? Before. Do you, before it hit. Do you know of any uh, injuries or, or any issues involving people there in the hospital as a result of this? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Uh, now, I would assume, do you have commercial power or are you on generator out We're there? We're on generator right now. Okay. I've been for some time. Okay. So, so again, we, we've had reports that the damage is pretty serious. If you would, again, just describe the damage at the hospital that, you, that you're aware of from your vantage point now. Okay. Uh, security has reported to me that we have some windows that are broken and uh, some of our awnings have blown off and uh, trees are down. And they are checking for structural damage at this time. And as you can hear, all our fire alarms are going off. Right. I know it's total chaos. Well, Diane, thank you for that preliminary report. We'll get back with you shortly. Thank you so much okay. for taking the time to talk with us. You're welcome. That's uh, Diane Carroll from uh, DCH Regional Medical Center in Tuscaloosa, which is good. You know, we, we, we first heard of this big destruction, and obviously there's damage to the hospital, but it sounds like the hospital is intact, and they are operating on emergency power there. Uh, we, have have, we have a rapidly developing circulation northeast of yeah. North. North I see that thing. Uh, you, and you can see it on the radar. You can see it on the sky cam. We've got that southwest wind at 38 downtown feeding into that. So uh, if you're up on the uh, north side of the river from Holt, uh, and that's going to be uh, some of the communities up here, uh, basically around Lake Tuscaloosa. Uh, if you're in uh, on the Lake Tuscaloosa area now, uh, and then uh, up north of Peterson, north of Holt, a more rural area, thankfully, up here across North Tuscaloosa County. I say thankfully because it's not hitting quite as many folks, but uh, there's still people that live there and we want you to be in a safe place as soon as you can get there. Uh, there not won't be as much traffic in that part of Tuscaloosa County either. So if you are in that area, make sure you're in a safe place right now. Could be another tornado on the ground on the north side of the river just across from Holt. But uh, clearly the big circulation is this uh uh, the one that's uh, near Brook. We have a new warning, Jason, for that circulation. The Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for parts of Jefferson, Shelby, and eastern Tuscaloosa counties until 6.30. I, I don't even know what time it is now. We'll just stay with us. We'll tell you the situation here. Uh, and uh, this is this very violent tornado that has come through Tuscaloosa moving northeast. Uh, to me, this will be more of a problem for Jefferson and not for Shelby. Uh, again, we'll check the polygon in just a moment, but again, uh, uh, that is um, a violent circulation that will be moving up into the Birmingham metro area. And again, we'll expand this thing out just a little bit. Of course, this is Bessemer right here. Uh, this is moving about like that, and that's going to come right up into Birmingham. I know that Shelby is technically in the warning uh, with the polygon, and, and, and like you've heard me say before, on a day like today, we do have to respect that, uh, the polygon very clearly. The, the polygon uh, probably clips northern Shelby, but that's that uh, violent tornado. That's the secondary circulation. This is coming right up here toward the Birmingham, right toward downtown Birmingham. Uh, and again, there's the secondary circulation back off to the south and west. Tuscaloosa, Northport, we still advise that you stay sheltered for about another 15 minutes. Well, I'll give you an all clear when we can, but this thing is coming right up the chute toward uh, downtown Birmingham. Um, and again, we're getting uh, some um, 
other live streams here of damage. There's so much damage at this point, uh, it will be hard for me to describe all of it. And, and you've heard me say before that during a situation like this, we report the damage when we can, but when there's life-threatening weather, we have to focus on warning people about that at this point. So again, uh, we'll go to some of the live streams coming from the damage in just a moment. But uh, again, we have one circulation that is just northeast of Tuscaloosa, uh, out here, uh, I don't know, around Rock Quarry Elementary School, that part of town moving northeast. The big circulation, the one that produced that incredible tornado in Tuscaloosa, is now between uh, uh, Brookwood and Million Daughter Lakes. And uh, again, it's so right have here. that debris ball. That, that has been very consistent. All right, now we got John Olshu that, is, that was involved in that tornado. John, tell us where you are now, what you've got. Hey, uh, James, we have just come up the interstate 2059, and as we approached mile marker, oh, I guess it was 69, uh, we had three 18-wheelers uh, that are blown over uh, and a lot of insulation, trees down, roof damage on the uh, few structures that were out that way, and we're proceeding northward. Are, are you storm stream on Ustream, John? Uh, that's I am. A, okay, I, I, it looks like your, your video is locked up and, and what happens often in a case like this the cellular networks are so overworked it, it's kind of hard to see the stream we, we'll punch up john's stream in that second box down there off, off the uh, macbook pro and again it looks like john at that point you were approaching tuscaloosa where were the 18 wheelers blown over uh you know there's the uh the uh, 69 of uh, uh 2059 359 junction about right. a mile and a half two miles south of that so down be below there down toward that new western bypass in interchange Right. Okay. Uh, so where, where are you now, John? And, and, and again, we're, we're very interested in damage. Where, where are you now exactly? We, we are on 2059 in between uh, uh, 359 and McFarland Boulevard. I'm coming up on the McFarland Boulevard exit now, exit 73. Okay. And uh, all right, John, well, again, as you see things, be sure and let us know. Uh, and we'll talk with John in just a moment. We've got Terry Sasser's live stream. Uh, Terry is, uh, he's near that uh, damage that uh, the tornado that just crossed Interstate 65 coming up into Blunt. And again, we're gonna show that in just a moment. But that is a debris ball, a large violent tornado that has moved out of Brookwood coming up toward Million Dollar Lakes. And uh, everybody out here, now this is Oak Grove. This more than likely will be passing south of Oak Grove this time. But again, out of respect, out of the strength of this thing, if you are in Oak Grove or point south, down to Bessemer, uh, Hueytown, Concord, Pleasant Grove, Rock Creek. Uh, we encourage everybody uh, in that part of the area, Bessemer, of course, uh, McCullough, and again, McCullough took a major hit this morning with major damage, but you need to be sheltered as this thing comes up into the Birmingham Metro. Downtown Birmingham, all of the major hospitals in downtown Birmingham need to go through their tornado plan. Uh, UAB needs to go into the lockdown mode where the kids are uh, safe, the students are safely in, in places here. We don't want anybody driving. Again, I have no idea what time it is. It's 536, so uh, a lot of the businesses probably have closed for the day, but uh, this is a time where nobody in the Birmingham Metro, nobody should be driving. Nobody should be in a mobile home. Uh, you should be sheltered until this thing passes. Again, that is a violent, violent tornado coming right up toward the Birmingham Metro area. Uh, Hueytown, Pleasant Grove, and again, these uh, numbers are maxed out. That's the significant tornado impact number at 13.5, just about as uh, strong as they get. So, uh, Jason, let me let you check the storm that is the northern storm up in Blunt County. Okay. Uh, we've had reports of damage with this as it came across Fayette County and Walker County. Let me pop the radar in behind me. Uh, we've uh, also had reports that a funnel cloud was sighted near exit 287 on I-65. A tornado warning remains in effect for Blunt and Cullman counties. This one, thankfully, does not include the city of Cullman. It's going to stay a little bit southeast of Holly Pond, although it's going to be very close to Bluntsville. So uh, if you are uh, on the Holly Pond Bluntsville Road, when you cross the Mulberry River, get into Blunt County. This is a tornado very, very close to you. Looks like we have a debris ball associated with that one, too. This will cross over 231 north of Fowler's Crossroads, probably right around J.B. Pennington High School, downtown Bluntsville, Bluntsville City Hall and Police Station right there off of uh, County Road 26 at 747, the Double Bridges Road. Uh, so if you are in that part of Blunt County, Highway 26, Highway 231, uh, uh, County Road uh, 747, as well as US 278, now north of Bluntsville toward uh, the Rainbow Crossing and over toward Sneed, a significant tornado may likely be moving up the valley there. And this is prime terrain for these tornadoes to actually strengthen. Sometimes mountains can interfere with them. You're actually coming down a big slope from the uh, higher hills over southern Coleman and southern Blunt to more of a plateau there. In fact, a valley, the plateau kind of ends in Bluntsville and you go up a ridge line. 
the US 231 follows that. Uh, so uh, in Bluntsville right now, you need to be in a safe place. City of Bluntsville, Rainbow Crossing, uh, Royal in Blunt County, you need to be in a safe place as well. This will pay, uh, pass just a little bit west of Susan Moore and uh, come up uh, toward US Highway 278 near the Highway 231 intersection where the Rainbow Cabin Cafe used to sit. Uh, it's not there anymore. Uh, there are a couple of gas stations around that intersection. This will be west of Sneed. It could also come pretty close to Brooksville. So uh, that uh, that uh, area there along Highway 79 at US 231 where the uh, there used to be a couple of gas stations there as well. They're, they're not there anymore, but there is a definite potential for a tornado on uh, Highway 231, uh, just northwest of Royal, just northeast of downtown Bluntsville. That's moving up. The community there says it's Blue Springs, but there, this is really just one community there. It's Bluntsville to Rainbow Crossing, going up 231 and Alabama Highway 79 all the way to US 278. It's a life-threatening situation in eastern Coleman and western Blunt County. It looks like the greatest threat is probably in Blunt County, but we can't completely erase that uh, small sliver right there along the uh, river in the eastern edge of Coleman County because some of these storms have had two rotations with them. Uh, let's look at the velocity display from Birmingham. We'll kind of shoot this from the bottom side and see if we can get a good look at it. Uh, again, we're getting a good ways away from the radar here, so it's tough to see, but the the velocity couplet seems to be more centered around Bluntsville and Royal, a uh, little west of Susan Moore. This is not going to be a Highway 75 issue, so if you're in Sneed, Susan Moore, Friday's Crossing, this is passing to your west from Bluntsville to Rainbow Crossing and to Brooksville, which is the, the spot that's uh, about a quarter of the way to Sneed from the Rainbow Crossing. You need to be in a safe place immediately. Okay, uh, uh, tr try this. There, okay. there you are. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's uh, tell you what, we've got a tornado indicated by radar, so we're going to take the radar, and again, we're going to work all of these storms. This is one that is north of Demopolis, down there in southern Greene County, and again, this is for parts of Bibb, Green, Hale, Perry, and Tuscaloosa counties until 645, and uh, again, right there is this tornadic circulation. So again, everybody down here in southern, goodness, Forkland, Alabama Power Generating Plant, Southern Green, Southern Hale, uh, Greensboro, uh, everybody from Forkland to Greensboro and the Rory River, be into a safe place right now. This is a very violent storm. Green County near Forkland coming up toward uh, Greensboro. So again, wanted to show you that. Uh, now let's bring in uh, Mayor Walt Maddox. Uh, Mayor, uh, everybody wants to know what has happened in your city. So tell us what has happened. Well, right now we're in the incident, incident command center and it appears that the damage is substantial. Uh, we know of one fatality that is likely linked to the storm that came through here just a few minutes ago. And right now we are deploying every asset of the city to deal with the damage all across our community. Uh, Mayor, could you, and again, we're watching some video of the tornado coming through earlier. Can you tell us some of the hardest hit areas of the city? Well, I caution, because these are the first reports, so some of this may change, but it appears the Rosedale community along 15th Street, Bruno's, um, all along that corridor seems to be the hardest hit areas. We know that the REMA in the Curry facility has been damaged. We also know that the East Police Precinct out in Alberta has been damaged, and we're right now taking reports across the city of damage in our neighborhoods. Uh, Mayor, how did the Tuscaloosa Police Headquarters fare? Because it looked like they were awfully close to this thing. It was awfully close. We were following it on our cameras and on your live feed from my office at that time. And um, they seem to fare pretty well. PD is up and operational. The city is up and operational. We are at full go right now, and every resource we have is going to be with our citizens to uh, deal with this matter, matter. We're assessing it. And then by later tonight, hopefully we have an idea of, of what has exactly happened and transpired over the last few minutes. Now, Walter, I've got probably got countless mamas and daddies wondering how their kids are doing, how are they doing at the University of Alabama, any damage on the campus there? Uh, we've heard of reports, but they haven't been confirmed, so I'd caution to give any exact reports until they confirmed. One thing I know during any emergency is what you hear in the first 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes you have to caution in, in taking that as fact. Uh, we do know that the hospital is prepared, uh, they're staffing up, and that uh, we're going to be ready to deal with any emergency. And I think in about two or three hours, I'll be in a better position to uh, give my citizens uh, an understanding of what has happened and what we are doing to deal with it. Okay, and I tell you what, for your sake, Mayor, Jason, let's pull back. We, we want to show 
the mayor and everybody in Tuscaloosa what is ahead. The, the dangerous circulation has clearly exited the city of Tuscaloosa. And the good news, we'll look at the uh, reflectivity display. Uh, there are no tornadic storms approaching Tuscaloosa from the west. Well, I take that back. Having said, let's look at this storm right here near Buell. We, we put on the uh, reflectivity, and this is a newer storm that has popped up within the last few minutes. And, and again, we're just going to hold the mayor on the line for just a second because they need to get an idea of what to expect as, uh, over the next uh, few minutes as they begin their uh, search and rescue operation. Operations there. We've got another storm that is located out around Buell and Coker and Elrod. We don't see any sign of organization with this, and there's no tornado warning on that. So at the moment, Mayor, we've got a storm we'll watch, but there's no sign of rotation here. And beyond that, there's nothing in Pickens to the west. So I think once we get past this last batch, uh, you'll be okay for about an hour. Can't promise that there won't be any more tornadoes for the rest of the evening, but at least for the next hour, it looks like you'll be okay. Thank you, James. We appreciate that. Okay, you saved a lot of lives today with your coverage. Okay, thank you, Mayor, and we'll talk thank with you, you soon. Bye-bye. All right, uh, let's, let's look at our storm coming up toward Birmingham now. And again, there are so many out there today. It is, it's going to be a challenge, but we're going to work them all uh, uh, one at a time. This is the storm right here that produced all of the damage in Tuscaloosa County coming up toward Birmingham. And again, it is a clear, clear, clear call to action. There it is right there. There's your debris ball. This large tornado is coming right up. This is Pleasant Grove. Hueytown, Bessemer, Concord, Rock Creek, Oak Grove. The large tornado this time is passing south of Oak Grove. If, if those of you familiar with the April 8, 1998 disaster where 34 people were killed, that tornado moved on a track about like that. Uh, it came from Oak Grove back up to Sylvan Springs and lifted at Pratt City. This one is going to take a track farther to the south. So again, this is an urgent, urgent call for people in Bessemer, in Hueytown, in Lipscomb, uh, Pleasant Grove, Concord, uh, Rock Creek, and even Oak Grove for about 15 more minutes uh, to be in a safe place. And again, we don't want anybody driving. Uh, Interstate 5920, that's the major uh, thoroughfare going northwest and southeast here. Uh, nobody should be driving on any of these highways out here in the western part of Jefferson County. Continues moving steadily to the east northeast. It's going to take it right into downtown Birmingham. So again, Wylam and Inslee, these uh, southern uh, Powderly, these uh, communities out in the southwestern part of Birmingham, uh, downtown Birmingham, all the major hospitals should be on your tornado code right now where you've got the patients in hallways away from windows. Uh, all major businesses in downtown Birmingham should have your uh, employees away from windows. Uh, every restaurant should have your customers away from windows. And uh, again, this is a tornado emergency for the city of Birmingham in that we have had major major damage. At least one person has been killed in Tuscaloosa this afternoon from this tornado, and that is very preliminary. There is m severe damage in Tuscaloosa, and there's been absolutely no change in structure with this storm. So this is a tornado emergency for the city of Birmingham. Uh, and Jason, there's some of the arrival times. And uh, again, uh, it is a clear-cut case where there's no doubt you have to do what's right to keep you and your family safe, you and your employees safe. Uh, debris is falling now in downtown Birmingham. Let's go to our downtown Birmingham Skycam. The, the debris that we're getting in downtown Birmingham uh, is uh, falling from the Tuscaloosa tornado. There's a chance you might find check stubs and papers from people in Tuscaloosa. Uh, sometimes it, with, a, with a severe situation like this, we might find papers from Tuscaloosa in uh, Georgia or even uh, around Chattanooga, Tennessee. So again, uh, in downtown Birmingham right now, we have a situation where uh, debris is falling from the sky. And uh, again, this is a very, very, very serious situation. This is a tornado emergency for the city of Birmingham as a violent tornado is coming into the western suburbs. Now, do we have the Birmingham uh, Tower Cam available, uh, Monroe? Or uh, Okay, uh, the, the Birmingham Tower Cam is farther west down Red Mountain. And uh, if you're familiar with that uh, camera, April 8th, 1998, we saw the power grid. Let's go back to the radar. And again, uh, there's your tornado right here. This is the North Johns community. That's Interstate 459. McAdory High School sits right here. So the tornado is north of McCullough this time. And again, you're going to see pretty much where it's going. Uh, there's Hueytown, Pleasant Grove, Concord. This is Warrior River Road. Uh, this is 15th Street Road right here. Uh, so if you are in any of these places we're talking about, Virginia Mines, be in a safe place. Uh, uh, this is where 15th Street Road intersects with uh, uh, Warrior River Road, the old Rabbit's Barbecue used to sit right here. This is going to be a little farther south this time, and that's going to come right up through here, and clearly it will be impacting uh, Hueytown. This is Brighton. Speaking of Hueytown, insulation falling at Hueytown by Hueytown High School.
Yeah, we, we've got debris all over downtown Birmingham, and this is probably coming from Tuscaloosa, where we've had severe tornado damage. So again, uh, uh, reports from Twitter and Facebook are lighting up with debris in, uh, in Tuscaloosa. Uh, falling over the city of Birmingham. This is a violent, violent storm. This is a tornado emergency for the city of Birmingham. Uh, again, I cannot stress the importance of being sheltered. Uh, if you live in the Bessemer city limits, Hueytown city limits, if you live in Pleasant Grove, if you live in Concord, Virginia Mines, anywhere along 15th Street Road, uh, be in a safe place right now. And again, this will be moving up in this direction about like that. Uh, this is, of course, the interstate down here, Interstate 5920, uh, and that will continue moving right up toward downtown Birmingham. Uh, this is Midfield, Western Hills Mall sits right here. Uh, our tower cam on Red Mountain is actually overlooking uh, Winona High School and Western Hills Mall, and that's why that might offer a better look at this thing. So, again, if you guys can get the old tower cam on Red Mountain, uh, on the BOE Tower, uh, that would be fantastic. Okay, all the cams are down, but except for the SkyCam network, we've got that. But again, that's that violent circulation that's about to move right up into downtown Birmingham. And remember, there are other circulations. We encourage everybody in Greensboro and Hale County to be in a safe place right now. Anybody near the Warrior River between Forkland and Greensboro to be in a safe place. That's going to be moving over into parts of uh, Perry County once it exits. Okay, this is the, uh, uh, one of the Aldot cameras. That's Interstate uh, 65 at uh, uh, Oxmoor Road. And please don't drive. Clay Barnett in Hueytown says he hears a constant roar. Mm, yeah, this, th this thing is probably huge. Clay, if you're listening, take cover. Yeah, li it's, listen, It's coming guys. right up on you. Uh, and again, we're, we're getting uh, thousands of photographs coming in from Tuscaloosa, and I promise as soon as this emergency is over, we'll go to some of the damage, and we'll get specific on the number of deaths and injuries in Tuscaloosa. But again, we've got to get through this event so we don't have any more loss of life. Uh, but again, this is a violent tornado that is coming into the western suburbs of Birmingham. Uh, maybe we can double box me in the Birmingham Skycam uh, from top of the Daniel Building. We're probably getting soon into a position where we're going to be able to see something. You know, this is about the range where we've seen this over the course of the last several years. All right, now we're looking at the uh, right rear flank of the storm, and Jason will hit that windshield wiper, and we're going to watch for uh, uh, where this thing, I'll tell you, it's down. Uh, we have a large, violent tornado. There's no if, it's a matter of where and when. And uh, again, this thing is awfully close to best. Bessemer, Hueytown, Pleasant Grove, Midfield, Powderly, Winona, uh, Inslee, if I've called, Fairfield. If I've called out your community or your neighborhood, you should be in a safe place. And this extends into the downtown Birmingham area. Uh, there is a decent chance the greatest risk here will be from Red Mountain north. Uh, but for south of Red Mountain, if you're in Homewood, if you're on the campus of Sanford University, even there, we recommend you must respect this uh, deadly situation today and be in a safe place. So uh, as far south as Homewood, I would be in a safe place. And I know that Shelby County was initially in this warning. This will not affect Shelby County. This is clearly a Jefferson County problem, and this is coming right down the chute toward downtown Birmingham. Uh, so let's take that camera full, and we're going to, uh, uh, Jason, you kind of work the base of this thing, and we're going to do the same thing we did in Tuscaloosa. So we're looking uh, uh, from uh, the top of the Daniel building back off to the west. And uh, if you watched it come through Tuscaloosa, you saw the uh, initially we had that big fuzzy uh, lowering. And as it got closer and closer, we, we saw the violent tornado in Tuscaloosa. And again, we're going to be watching the uh, western suburbs of Birmingham. Uh, if you're listening to us on radio, we're on 104.7 WZZK in Birmingham, the big blowtorch, the uh, Cox radio family. And uh, again, we uh, ask that uh, everybody stay sheltered and stay off the road. Uh, the Weather Service uh, continues their update for this uh, tornado warning. They're tracking a large and extremely dangerous tornado. Uh, near Hueytown, moving northeast at 55 miles an hour. And keep in mind, uh, this tornado does not have to stop and go in traffic. Uh, this thing just trucks on through here. It, it, it will be through here in a heartbeat, and that's why it's urgent to be in a safe place. And again, uh, we're looking at the cloud bases from the top of the Daniel building, and right in about that spot, that's where it's going to be. Now, we're going to get a better view as it gets closer, uh, but this thing will be probably large and rain-wrapped. Our sky watchers out in the uh, western suburbs are telling us that... Uh, uh, they are hearing constant roars, 60 knots of inflow coming from John Brown uh, into this thing. And again, uh, tell you what, let me, uh, I'm going to change over to John Brown's stream, and he might be on this. I know that John is awfully close. Uh, John had a couple of technical issues earlier, but let's, uh, all right, let's go to John's camera right now. There it is. That is a large oh tornado. 
It looks like that's the U.S. Uh, pipe uh, facility in Bessemer. Uh, that is a large tornado uh, seen from Interstate 5920 in Bessemer. Uh, John Brown is right on that. Um, goodness. And, and you know, words don't do this thing justice. Uh, we have uh, debris falling in Birmingham. The debris is coming from Tuscaloosa. There's been major, major severe damage in Tuscaloosa. Uh, we had Mayor Walt Maddox on the phone. At least one person was killed. Uh, others have been injured. We do not know a lot because they're in the initial stages of the damage uh, assessment. Let's double box this if we can. We're gonna put the radar in one box. We'll put John Brown's stream in the other box. And uh, again, the uh, large tornado is right there, okay? And again, this is uh, coming up a little north of Interstate 5920. Uh, John was around uh, the Bessemer exit around U.S. Pipe looking north, looking right up into this from his vantage point. I think we're starting to see it on the, the sky cam, too. Yeah, I bet Start, you we're starting to see a lowering. It's so difficult with the contrast to really get a good bead on it, that's but it. right there in the middle I, of the I'm, screen. I'm looking, yeah, there it is. Yeah. I mean, look, well, it's there. Uh, that, that's a large tornado we're looking at right there coming into downtown Birmingham. Um, Inslee, Fairfield. Right there, okay. That is a large tornado that is down. This is the one that came through Tuscaloosa. When we talk about long track tornadoes, this is what we mean. This has probably been on the ground now for at least the last two hours. It originated back in eastern Mississippi. And again, that is making a beeline for downtown Birmingham. In the other box, we have John Brown, who's on the interstate. Uh, and again, I firmly believe the greatest danger will be along and north of Red Mountain downtown Birmingham and points north. Still, though, as a course of least regret, we encourage everybody over the mountain in Homewood uh, to be sheltered as well. Uh, you go farther south down toward Hoover, you, this will not bother you. This is a problem mainly for Birmingham, but again, Homewood is close enough where we think that we should uh, keep everybody sheltered. So again, we're watching the uh, tower, the sky cam. Debris is falling from the sky in highlands near Bottega, insulation and roof tiles. Yeah, and this is probably coming from the city of Tuscaloosa. Uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, the kind of thing where you're going to find maybe some personal belongings of somebody that's been hit so hard in Tuscaloosa. Uh, don't go out there and try and gather debris right now. Do not do that. But when this whole thing is over, if you find photographs or mementos or something important, hang on to it. They really will appreciate that. Look at the, look at that. Let's take John's camera full. Are you kidding me? There it is. Now, John is coming up on it on uh, Interstate uh, 5920. Uh, and he is out in the uh, Bessemer area, out there around Valley Creek, and uh, he is going to make that turn. And again, we'll go back to the double box. I just wanted to take a look at that thing full. We're, we're double boxing this. We've got a large tornado approaching downtown Birmingham. You're seeing it in the lower left from John Brown and Mike Wilhelm. Uh, and uh, from the sky cam, you're seeing it from the top of the Daniel Building. There's the building. full view. Look at that. Yeah, that thing's huge. It's, it's a monster. Uh, this is a killer tornado. Uh, we know at least one person is killed in Tuscaloosa. We don't you see know. the trucks flashing their lights as they're coming east. Yeah. Uh, you know, now, John, people always say, you know, why do you let your people drive? John knows what he's doing. He's in a very safe spot, but other people don't have built in radar. They don't have navigators. They don't have this equipment. And we encourage nobody. Nobody should be driving in downtown Birmingham right now as we continue to watch the uh, the live uh, view coming from our sky cam and also the view coming from uh, John Brown. Uh, again, we're looking for damage reports. Boy, I'm, I'll tell you what, this stuff in Tuscaloosa was bad. Um, in the old Cahaba neighborhood, debris falling in the subdivision, that's around Helena. Uh, a four by eight piece of plywood flew across I-65 in Gardendale. Uh, pretty amazing stuff. Uh, so again, uh, don't go out in this. Clearly, we, we've got a, a, a very dangerous, violent tornado approaching downtown Birmingham. Again, that is the view from uh, high atop the uh, Daniel building. There's the, the upper... tornado. Yep. There it is. That thing looks huge. Uh, Fairfield, Inslee, areas around Legion Field, Baptist Medical Center, Princeton, Powderly, Wylam, I'm calling out, the, any, if you live anywhere close to these places, you should be sheltered immediately. Nobody should be driving. The debris ball on radar is uh, at Pleasant Grove. Uh, some of the communities it's moving through, based on the radar presentation, would be Sherman Heights, Thomas, Village Creek, uh, Forestdale, uh, Minor, Sandusky, uh, the north end of Fairfield, Owenton, uh, out there around the Legion Field area. Uh, this could come pretty close to Smithfield Estates. And
you know there's a historic that was April fourth, nineteen seventy seven. You got a his, history there in Smithfield too. So uh, anywhere in the uh, northwest quadrant of what you might call the core of the Birmingham metro area, there is a violent tornado on the ground right now. That thing looks like it could be over a mile wide. It may pass by downtown just a little bit to the north, but it is not safe enough to say that you've got an all clear in downtown Birmingham whatsoever. You need to be in a safe place right now. Uh, we I think we can give. Homewood and Hoover are clear from this. It's going to be a little bit north of those two cities, uh, but from downtown Birmingham, north and west, uh, essentially from the junction, northwest to the junction, out 5920 and up I-65, up 78, and uh, over toward uh, Fountain Heights, Village Creek, Thomas, uh, Pratt City, Sherman Heights, Wylam. This is on top of you right now. You do not have time to do anything other than go to the center of the house on the lowest floor and hunker down and wait for this thing to pass. John Talbot says he has major damage in his neighborhood out in the Hueytown Concord area. And let me say this, we have other storms. We're not going to change any video here, but I, I want to tell everybody there's a tornado warning in effect for parts of Fayette and Lamar counties until 630. A, a tornado was located east of Vernon, moving northeast at 55. And Everybody in the path of that in Fayette and Lamar counties need to be in a safe place. A tornado is located near Sawyerville, in, uh, uh, that's near the Warrior River on the Green Hale County line, uh, moving northeast at 45. If you're in Greensboro, be in a safe place. That's a violent storm coming at you. Those are two other dangerous storms in our uh, market, but again, we're focusing on this one uh, because this is affecting the largest city in the state. We have a violent tornado coming up into uh, downtown Birmingham. Uh, and again, uh, you, you saw the incredible uh, images of this thing coming through Tuscaloosa, where the damage is so severe. We don't know exactly the loss of life. We, we don't know the injury count. Our news folks are working on that. And as soon as this emergency is over, we'll be able to come in and tell you more specifics about the damage. But please respect the fact that we're trying to keep people in advance of these storms in a very safe place. And again, uh, there's a large wedge tornado in the western suburbs of Birmingham. And again, this will be coming right up into the downtown area. I, I think it is very clear to me and to Jason that the greatest danger will be along and north of Red Mountain. Uh, so for those of you downtown Birmingham and points north, that's the extreme danger. Uh, down to the south uh, in Homewood, uh, I would stay sheltered. Below that, Vestavia, Hoover, this will not affect you. It's 6 o'clock. This is WBMA Birmingham, WCFT Tuscaloosa, WJSU Anniston. The news at 6 o'clock starts now. And the news is the weather. Uh, you are looking at a large, violent tornado approaching downtown Birmingham. This is a large wedge that could be one mile wide. Uh, you're watching it live from the uh, sky cam on top of the Daniel Building in downtown Birmingham. Uh, down below, that is John Brown and Mike Wilhelm, two of our sky watchers. They are uh, on this storm coming up Interstate 5920 from the south. They, will, they are safe. They will find a good vantage point and look back at it. We'll have multiple views of this thing. But the debris ball on radar is just amazing. Uh, that uh, debris ball is coming through Pleasant Grove right now. Uh, it will be coming out through Wylam and Inslee, uh, Sherman Heights, uh, ultimately coming out toward uh, Thomas, Forestdale, Sandusky, uh, Minor, uh, then ultimately perhaps affecting the areas just north of downtown Birmingham, perhaps uh, uh, skirting the uh, area around the BJCC in downtown Birmingham. Uh, I do not know if there's any event scheduled for tonight. This is a Wednesday night. More than likely, there's not a major event down there. Thank, thank the Lord. Uh, but if anybody is at that place, they should be sheltered. All of the major hotels in downtown Birmingham should have their guests in a safe place away from windows, including the big high-rise hotels with the uh, large glass windows. Uh, the Birmingham Municipal Airport should be uh, on their tornado emergency plan now. Nobody in that airport should be near a glass window. Uh, everybody in the Birmingham airport should be away from windows in safe places until this thing passes. Uh, we recommend, obviously, uh, that the air traffic stop. The FAA takes care of that, but uh, we were concerned about the safety of those folks out there at the airport. So this debris ball is going to be skirting the northern part of downtown Birmingham. And again, that, that image is just creepy. Uh, let's take that sky cam full. Um, I have it zoomed out all the way. You can't even see the entire tornado. This is, th th this is huge. I mean, uh, you know... Let's, if we can, uh, Monroe, let's take the sky cam full for just a moment. We'll go back to the double box. Um, wow. Uh, you can see the old Banker Savings Building uh, right by the Daniel Building, and uh, this thing is massive. Uh, this will not affect, uh, uh, I, I think it's safe to say, if you're south of Red Mountain, you're fine. For Homewood, I'm going to give you an all clear. Uh, Homewood or points south, this will not affect you. Downtown Birmingham and points north, please, 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 Stay in a safe place. Don't try and take pictures of this. Don't even think about it. Uh, we want you to uh, uh, just stay put. Did we lose the power on that camera, Jason? Or is it uh, it, it's having trouble. We're, we still have a connection, but it's just not fast enough to actually uh, to get anything. All right.
Uh, and again, uh, let's go back to our double box. We've got uh, John Brown, who is uh, on this storm. In fact, uh, let me, there you go. I think you got control of it there, Jason. We, we've got uh, John Brown stream. Uh, again, this is a large, damaging, violent wedge tornado. It's a killer tornado. Uh, there's been loss of life in Tuscaloosa with this as it came through. And again, this is going to be skirting the northern part of downtown Birmingham. I cannot stress the urgency of everybody from downtown Birmingham and points north. Uh, this would include Forestdale and Fultondale uh, to be in a really, really, really safe place. Nobody should be driving close to this thing. I-65, forget it. From Malfunction Junction North, nobody should try that up to uh, Warrior. Uh, if you're as far north as Gardendale, I'd be in a safe place. I think the core danger is south of you, but from Gardendale all the way to downtown Birmingham, you should be in a safe place. And again, uh, this thing is just a monster. You know, when we watched it coming through Tuscaloosa, it was not this wide, uh, but the camera is zoomed out as far as it can go in terms of the width, and it's just amazing. Um, I'm having trouble moving it to the right, so we may actually lose this thing in a second. But if you look very carefully in the right-hand corner of the screen, you can see the scud racing into it from the east. Yep. We probably have inflow of 80 or 90 miles per hour just away from the, the funnel. We're, we're getting reports now of houses leveled in Hueytown. Um, and uh, again, possible injuries there. First responders are now being called. Uh, we encourage all of the emergency rooms and Birmingham area hospitals to go on uh, standby for a triage alert that you do during major tornado outbreaks. Uh, the hospitals uh, have drilled for these situations. Well, now is the time to put that into uh, uh, use and that there could be multiple uh, uh, folks coming into these hospitals. Okay, we've lost the Birmingham live feed. Right, and again, uh, we've got John Brown's feed. Uh, if we, in, in, uh, well, let's look at the Red Mountain yeah. Aldot camera. We'll put that in that upper box. Uh, we've got the uh, traffic cams around Birmingham, and we're going to replace the Sky Cam with an Aldot camera. And again, those are fixed. Obviously, we can't control those Aldot cameras. Look at that. Are you kidding wow. me? Goodness gracious. That is the Red Mountain Expressway, uh, probably around St. Vincent's Hospital looking yeah, north. That, that's right at University looking north. Yeah, that, that is. Uh, that is an incredible, an incredible sight. That is a violent tornado. Uh, is seen from uh, a point near University Boulevard in St. Vincent's, and that hospital is churning toward the Birmingham airport. Again, this is an urgent call for the Birmingham airport. Get people away from windows at the airport. There's a lot of industry uh, out there near the airport. Uh, everybody should be uh, totally sheltered. The industry should be shut down. Nobody should be operating at this point. Uh, you can see how some uh, folks have turned on their flashers down there. Uh, we don't want anybody driving north into that. That's going to be coming out across Tarrant. Uh, look at the power flashes going on down below that. Uh, uh, no, uh, we're talking places like Tarrant City and ultimately East Lake and Huffman and Roebuck and Center Point. The, these are the suburbs northeast of Birmingham. But that is a, a violent tornado passing north, just north of downtown Birmingham. Again, we can't give an all clear to the over the mountain suburbs. This is all passing north of you, but that thing's, look, look at the power flashes. Uh, that thing's about to come right through the uh, Birmingham Municipal Airport or maybe just north of there. Uh, again, we're getting more reports of major damage in the western part of uh, uh, Birmingham and obviously in the northern part of Birmingham, in the North Birmingham community, uh, the area around the old uh, uh, Caraway Norwood uh, out there. Uh, be in a safe place right now. And again, this is going to continue moving over toward the uh, Birmingham airport. There's a little bit of a northward component of motion. It's not moving due east, and we're hoping that we'll carry it north of the airport. But it doesn't matter. Wherever this thing goes, it's, it, it's a life-threatening situation. John Oldshue has something to add to us. John? Uh, we have gotten to the uh, center here of uh, 15th and 82. It, and, and by the way, John, John, John is in Tuscaloosa. Let me, let's make that perfectly clear. You're looking at a tornado in Birmingham. John is in Tuscaloosa. John, what do you have there? Right. It was an F4, F5 tornado, 15th Street from uh, 82 going uh, uh, south is unrecognizable now uh, for about, as far as I can see, which would be about uh, 150 or 300 yards. Um, it looks like we got hit by you know 5,000 pound bomb here. The pawn shop that used to be there, the Krispy Kreme, the uh, X Chevron on the corner, uh, the Taco Casa, uh, they're all gone. What, what about the mall, University Mall? University Mall. It clipped University Mall. It clipped University Mall. It took out the CVS that is across the street, across uh, 15th from University Mall. Uh, it also uh, got the Mattress King. Uh, there is just, I, I don't understand how this is going to uh, 
uh, go without any loss of life in this area because there are, there are buildings that are missing. There, uh, you know, the whole skyline is now unrecognizable here on 15th Street here at the, uh, the corner of 15th and McFarland, extending uh, back down 15th Street, uh, you know, for 300 yards at least. And I just can't see over the rise down there. It may be even larger, longer. All right, John. I'm trying uh, to get some video to you. Yeah, I'll uh, say if you, if you get your stream up, we'll take that uh, as soon as okay. we get rid of these tornadoes. Uh, uh, Absolutely. And I tell you what, in, in that upper, there's John. He's, he's on the tornado. You can see it off in the distance. Uh, John's coming up on it from the southwest. That's John Brown. Right, John Brown, not John Olshu. And, and let me mention again, we've got a tornado in Hale County near Akron, nine miles north of Greensboro, moving northeast at 50. If you are in Hale County, Greensboro north to Moundville, be in a safe place right now. Uh, that is a very dangerous tornado. We have a tornado warning for Green, Cuba, and Sumter counties. We've got a tornado 16 miles west of Cuba near the Mississippi state line. Uh, the tornado moving northeast at uh, 50 miles per hour. Uh, we have reports of multiple homes destroyed in Bluntsville from the uh, tornado. That's the one that came out of Walker County. And again, that's the big picture. This is the tornado coming through downtown Birmingham. That's the tornado north of Greensboro. That's the new tornado near Cuba. Uh, and that is the tornado that has exited Blunt County that's coming up into uh, the Huntsville television market. So we wanted to give you a big picture reset. And let's go back to the uh, double box in the uh, video here. Yeah, let's take, uh, this is Brian Peters' live stream. He is uh, approaching Malfunction Junction, and Brian is on the phone with us. Brian, what do you have? Yeah, uh, Jason, the tornado appears to be just north of the downtown area. We're coming on to 2059 from I-65, and uh, the tornado is just, it's just massive. I mean, there, it's just like a cloud on the ground. I'm um, trying to find a spot to get you the stream. Um, it's on Ustream at Helena WX, but it's, uh, you know, the car has to go a certain way here, J uh, Jason. Uh, so it's hard to, you know, get it turned around because there are a few cars on the interstate, not very many. Uh, but uh, there's just a few, so I'm going to try to get to a spot. I'm going to try to get to a spot where I can turn the car, where you can at least see past the uh, BJCC, and you can see uh, what we're seeing out the car window. And I think uh, I think that's probably a pretty good view right there. Uh, I can turn the camera a little bit, and uh, and you can see there it is, uh, just north of the BJCC. It is urgent, Brian. Uh, the, the John Olshu described the damage he saw in Tuscaloosa as EF4, EF5 type damage. Uh, th this is serious, serious business. Uh, it, and, it is and again, dangerous. you know, Brian, this is a very rare event. And this tornado coming through the northeastern part of Birmingham uh, is capable of producing major loss of life. Uh, and again, that tornado, let me just call out some of the neighborhoods Huffman, East Lake. Roebuck, Centerpoint, ultimately Trustville. Uh, you've got to be in a safe place. You have to be at this point. And again, we're watching your stream. Now, while we watch Brian's stream, and again, we're calling for everybody in the northeast part of Birmingham to be in a safe place. And again, Huffman, Roebuck, Trustville, Roebuck Plaza. Uh, Trustville is right here. This thing is uh, approaching Trustville right now. Everybody in Trustville, everybody in Argo, you've got to be in a safe place. This is urgent, urgent business because this is a large, violent tornado that has caused death and injury in Tuscaloosa and that will continue moving northeast up into St. Clair County. It's basically going right up Interstate 59. So after you go out of Trustville, you've got Argo, then you've got Springville. So for those of you in St. Clair County, this is coming right up your way and ultimately Gadsden would be down the line. So again, right now, the call to action, everybody in the northeast part of Birmingham, Center Point, Roebuck, Huffman, Trustville, Argo, Chalkville, uh, Argo, and then across into St. Clair County up to Springville. Now, Isaiah Harper, uh, we're watching this tornado in Birmingham that came through Tuscaloosa. It sounds like it is a total disaster down there. And I think we've lost him. Again, it, it is very challenging to get uh, video and communication out of these disaster areas as we have uh, talked about. So, again, as soon as we reestablish contact, we have Isaiah Harper and John Olshue down there. I Isaiah, t t tell us where you are and what you got. Well, uh, uh, James, I'm on 13th Street. Uh, if you know anything about Tuscaloosa, before you go under the overpass, just before the University Boulevard uh, on ramp off of uh, uh, McFarland Boulevard, Highway 82, it's where the Hobby Lobby, the Big Lots, the Milo's, the, uh, uh, the, the the barbecue restaurant, the Full Moon Barbecue, the Shell Gas Station across the street, the Krispy Kreme. I'm looking. I'm standing right here in the parking lot. Those. 
businesses are no more. They have been completely leveled. It is a total mess. You have cars on top of cars, buildings crushed, no more big lots, no more milos. Many of the, the apartments that some of the students from the University of Alabama were living in, uh, uh, privately owned apartments off campus, uh, those have been touched by the storm, as well as uh, 15th Street that Oshu was talking about. Uh, just a complete disaster here, James. Okay, and again, we know that there's loss of life, and we know there's a lot of people that have been injured. We don't know. Uh, the Mayor Maddox doesn't know. Nobody knows. Uh, what they've got to do is get in there with the first responders and do search and rescue and get people to the hospital. Druid City was hit, the DCH Regional Medical Center. So, again, it is a chaotic situation in Tuscaloosa, but they are good. The city and the first responders, they have been through these things so many times, and they're heroes, right. and, and they will get this thing done. But, Isaiah, you, you, you know, be safe and... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're right, and, and right now what we see, we see a lot of University of Alabama students, of course, they frequent a lot of these restaurants, and we don't know if any of them were in them at the time, but of course a lot of them are standing around right now. The first responders, as you said, are moving back and forward. You probably hear some of the ambulances and, and the fire rescue in the background there. They're trying to get to the rubble to make sure there's no one missing or there's uh, no one else that's, that's been injured. But as of right now, uh, uh, we have at least one confirmed fatality, and of course, it's possible that could climb. As of right now, they have not found any more uh, that have been seriously injured. James. Mm. Okay, Isaiah, thank you. This whole thing is just heartbreaking. But again, we have to carry on because this thing is far, far, far from over. Let me see what time it is. It's 6.14. And again, this is, this is the storm that produced the deadly uh, uh, destruction in Tuscaloosa and the western suburbs, the northern suburbs of Birmingham. Uh, it is now moving northeast. And again, Trustville, Chalkville, Argo, Springville. Uh, these communities up here are at risk from this uh, violent tornado. And again, we encourage everybody to stay sheltered, even back into downtown Birmingham until the back edge of this thing passes. Uh, but uh, this is a long track violent tornado that has produced, in John Olshu's opinion, EF4 or EF5 damage in Tuscaloosa with loss of life. This is a serious life-threatening situation as this thing moves on to the northeast, uh, moving up into St. Clair County out of Jefferson County. And again, you're watching, is that Brian Stream, uh, Jason? I think, is it Brian yes, or John? That's, that's Brian. Okay, this is Brian Peters and Dr. Tim Coleman. You're looking at it uh, uh, in two different ways. You're looking at it visually with the dash cam coming from Brian Peters' uh, vehicle and Dr. Tim's vehicle. And of course, you're looking at it here on radar. Uh, and, and again, this thing, we've got debris falling from the sky. And the, the tragic part of this, those places hit in Tuscaloosa, the debris could fall as far away as Rome, Georgia. Uh, that's often how far the debris will carry with this. And when you see debris falling from the sky, you know you've had a major tornado disaster. And we've got a lot of debris in Birmingham from Tuscaloosa. The problem is we could have a lot of debris from Birmingham and Gadsden or parts even farther away than that. So, again, that is the storm in the northeast part of Birmingham. Let's look at our Hale County storm. Again, we're, we're going to go look at that. At the same time, we'll leave the double box up, and we're going to have Brian Peters' live look at the tornado down there in that lower left-hand part of the screen. Uh, but, again, right down there, you can see this tornado vortex signature that is passing well to the south of Tuscaloosa. We stress this will not affect the city of Tuscaloosa and the cleanup efforts there. Look at look that. Look at this. That is a very, very violent tornado signature right here that is sitting on the Hale-Perry County line. This is Moundville. That's Highway 69. That's the junction. This is uh, Havana Junction right here where J.B. Elliott grew up. And uh, that tornado is in the Talladega Forest. This is Bibb County right here. So, again, that is moving in the direction of Centerville and Brent. Uh, so nobody should be on Highway 25 between Greensboro and Brent. If you are in Brent, if you are in Centerville, be in a safe place now, please. Please do not take any chances with this. Uh, and I would say uh, Bibb County, as far north as West Blockton, be in a safe place. As far south as Randolph, be in a safe place. So that is a violent tornado signature that is sitting on the Bibb Hale County line coming up towards Centerville and Brent. Uh, so that is the other violent tornado in our television market right now. And again, back to the south, we have another signature you saw back down and through here. Uh, again, th there is a evidence of circulation north of Demopolis. But the, clearly, the big signatures are this one right here approaching Centerville and Brent. And again, uh, what can you say? We've had loss of life today. We've had incredible, incredible damage. And we could have that going on right now. So Centerville and Brent, you've got to be sheltered. Uh, this uh, significant tornado index is at 13.0. It's a scale we thought stopped at 10. So let's go back to our double box, and, and I want to show the 
situation northeast of Birmingham. And again, we're going to do some bouncing between Actually, the. Uh, let's go to the Birmingham Sky Cam. We have another wall cloud passing over just north of downtown Birmingham. It's kind of what happened to Tuscaloosa. We had yeah. a secondary circulation. There's a secondary circulation. I cannot pan the tower cam any farther to the right. So can we go back to that ALDOT cam, uh, the one in front of uh, St. Vincent's? It's looking back to the north. We've got a clear shot of a wall cloud moving on just just north of downtown Birmingham. So a secondary circulation is developed. There may or may not be a tornado involved in it. And if you guys can pop up that ALDOT cam on the Red Mountain Expressway looking north from near St. Vincent's. I tell you what, Jason, real quickly, let's go to uh, Mr. Bass from the airport. Uh, sir, can you tell us if there was any damage out there? Oh, miss, um, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Right now, what we have done is we have not experienced damage, but we have uh, evacuated the concourses and have passengers in a safer location within the airport. Okay, well, uh, that's fantastic because, uh, you know, it, this was a very close call for you. Is the airport operational now? And if not, when do you expect for things to get back to normal out there? Well, we are open. However, um, we don't have any flights coming in right now. They've been delayed. So we are just encouraging uh, anybody that is traveling to check with their airline to uh, find out what it, any updated flight information. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and we appreciate that. We're glad to know that there's no major damage out there. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you. Uh, um, so the Birmingham airport is okay. It passed north of the airport. Now, next in line is Trustful. we got a sky cam that is uh, right at Chalkville Mountain Road uh, near Interstate 59. Uh, and, again, we're, we're kind of blocked in that particular quadrant. But uh, if we got that uh, ALDOT camera you were talking about, Deborah, the one uh, out in Roebuck. Uh, okay, it, it went down. Uh, but again, this is a violent uh, thunderstorm that is uh, producing a large tornado in the northeastern part of Birmingham. And again, this is moving northeast. It seems as though, and I don't want to lessen this at all, the signature is not as intense as it was when it came through the western suburbs. And again, we noticed there is a secondary circulation back over downtown Birmingham. We've seen nicely from our sky cam in downtown Birmingham. So again, because of, out of respect for the secondary circulation, we advise everybody in the Birmingham metro to stay in a safe place for about the next 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, and again, the main circulation is out to the northeast. Let's check out the velocity display on this thing, Jason, now that the reflectivity is getting a little noisy. We'll put back on the velocity display, and this will probably tell the story a whole lot better. It's done an excellent job of doing that today. Uh, and again, it's right in through here. Circulation pretty close to Trustville. Secondary circulation near Terrence City uh, and the uh, airport. Uh, that is not, not an indication of a tornado. Uh, we've seen a wall cloud out there, but again, we've got this uh, big circulation coming up into uh, Trustville and Argo. The, the good, uh, to me, Jason, it's not as organized as it was 30 minutes ago. No, I think the, the, it may be two different things that could be happening here. First of all, the circulation that's to the west may be a supercell that's developing and robbing it of some of its energy. So we had that circulation, the wall cloud that was just coming over the area north of downtown Birmingham. Uh, so that may be robbing this and interrupting the circulation a little bit. And two, we may have a terrain issue typically it doesn't happen every time, but usually when a large tornado starts to get interrupted, the flow with some mountains, some rough terrain like we have up here in northeast Jefferson County, that will cause it to weaken and sometimes completely dissipate. I don't think that's happened yet. I don't think we have a completely dissipated tornado, but we do have what we might term an interrupted circulation. Uh, so uh, in uh, northeast Jefferson County, you still have a great potential for a tornado on the ground near Trussville, and we're watching that sky cam, and it still has some extremely good inflow. We're looking at a south wind at 19 gusts into the 50s. The peak wind gust there at 52 miles per hour. The dew point still at 70, so the atmosphere is still rich enough over northeast Jefferson County for this to uh, be a, a very powerful tornado. But the terrain may be interrupting it a little bit. We'll see what happens with this. And that, that's always an experiment. You never want to count on the terrain interrupting it, but sometimes it can do that. Got reports of major damage in Forestdale, major damage in Pratt City, major damage to Birmingham Station 18. Uh, this is all from this uh, violent tornado that came through Birmingham. Uh, and again, the warning continues for parts of Blunt, Jefferson, and St. Clair. The tornado is located uh, around uh, the uh, uh, low circulation is out around Trustville, Chalkville, Clay, Argo. And again, uh, at this point, uh, it looks as though the organization has weakened somewhat, which is a very good, uh, very good thing. Uh, so again, we're going to keep a close eye on that, and, and, and certainly you've got to respect this. If you're in Springville or any uh, area that is 
uh, near Springville, up Highway 11, Interstate 59, be in a safe place. We're looking at the trustful sky cam. Uh, just because it is weakened to some degree, the organization does not look as good. I'm not saying anybody, anybody should disrespect this storm. You've got to stay sheltered until this thing is passed. Uh, and I think Ashley is on the phone with us. Is that right? Deborah? Okay, apparently, uh, okay. Uh, we were looking for a stream, and I don't see her. We do have... Uh, uh, John Brown, and John Brown is in the process of going after this thing. Let's take John's uh, live stream. Uh, and again, John is uh, on Interstate 59 headed northeast, and I, I think clearly that from all indications, the storm structure is not the same as it was as it came through Tuscaloosa and the western and northern suburbs of Birmingham where there's major damage. Uh, and again, uh, I'm telling you, that the damage in Tuscaloosa is bad. Uh, it is very bad in the area between University Mall and uh, DCH uh, Regional Medical Center on McFarland Boulevard. Uh, and we've got reports of major damage in the western part of Birmingham out around Hueytown and Pleasant Grove. Brick structures have been completely destroyed. That, that's in Fultondale. In Fultondale. Yeah. The, these, again, this is the kind, we, we saw that large, large tornado that came through uh, uh, the Birmingham Metro. and. Uh, again, it looks pretty bad. Uh, we're getting reports of uh, roofs off houses, total destruction in Fultondale. Um, and again, for those of you in Grayson Valley and Trustful and Clay, uh, you still need to uh, stay in your safe place. And again, uh, that's, uh, let's take John's camera uh, full, uh, the uh, uh, Sky Watchers camera. That thing still looks pretty good uh, from that vantage point, doesn't it, Jason? Um, yeah, I mean, there's still clearly a wall cloud there. Uh, it, it doesn't look as good on radar, but sometimes it just doesn't. Uh, radar is not the end all be all. It tells us about the thunderstorm, but there are so many other factors that play into that. Now, I just noticed, and I want to stay on this image, the Trustville Skycam, the wind just shifted west to 26 and the rain stopped. So I think that mesocyclone, what we might term as the bear's cage, is right over Trustville right now. Uh, that Skycam might be on the southern end of it. That would give us that west wind that's about uh, 20 to 40 miles per hour. But uh, so the tornado would likely be Grayson Valley or a little bit north of there. And we'll stick with John's view. I think he's going to have a better shot well, at it. I'll tell you what, I've got oh, some Oh, wow, images. let's look at the Trustful Sky Cam right now. Well, the, wind, the wind is just howling up there. It just it went calm, and now it's howling. You can see the trees that are just waving the in the wind The mesocyclone's going right over there. Yeah, the wall cloud mesocyclone right on top of Trustville. Uh, if there's a tornado, it may be just over the ridge because our wind direction is westerly. Uh, and In fact, that may be the tornado we're seeing there. It's just hard to tell because we're looking uphill and trying to see through trees, and it's just impossible. Um, all right, and let's take the uh, MacBook Pro. Just wanted to show you a damage shot from Tuscaloosa. You will see a lot in coming hours. Uh, that is McFarland Boulevard. And uh, let me tell you what, uh, this is a big one. Uh, I, I have great fear that we have uh, significant loss of life. If we get away with only one fatality, then the warning system is amazingly working well today. Uh, but that is uh, McFarland Boulevard uh, uh, out there uh, just north of University Mall. And uh, Ed is incredible. So again, the search and rescue procedures are in progress in Tuscaloosa right now. So I just wanted to show you that. Uh, let's go back to the radar and let's take a look at our Centerville Brent storm. We're going to bounce back between these two storms. And I'll be honest with you, between this storm northeast of Birmingham and the storm approaching Centerville Brent, the Bibb County storm has the better structure. You've got to pay attention to both of them. Uh, but this thing right here is just... Uh, this is tough stuff right here. This is the one we're going to watch now. This is coming right up into Centerville and Brent. Uh, and again, that's US 82. That's your tornado. This could be a large, violent tornado. Uh, it looks like it might be closer to Brent than Centerville. Brent is down on the north side of the Cahaba. Centerville is on the south side up on the hill. Uh, this is US 82 right here. That's uh, Alabama Highway 5. Uh, there's the possible tornado, and again, that's going to be coming up very close to Brent. So from downtown Brent back to the northwest, that's the greatest concern. And again, that's going to be crossing Highway 5, maybe close to West Blockton. Centerville, I honestly think the worst will be north of you, but because of the respect of this day and the violence we have seen with the weather, uh, Centerville and Brent, both cities, the Twin Cities should be sheltered right now in a small room, lowest floor near the center away from windows uh, as a violent circulation will be passing very close to Brent, probably crossing US 82 toward Eoline and then crossing Highway 5 uh, just north of Brent and maybe south of West Blockton. And of course, if that circulation continues, Shelby County, you've got a problem. Uh, so if you are in Shelby County, the southern part of the Birmingham Metro, this circulation is going to be moving up in your direction within the next 
40 minutes or so and a tornado warning will more than likely be required for Shelby County. This is not the kind of day where these things just go away. These are violent long track tornadoes and again uh, this is in a situation where uh, we could clearly have some problems for the southwest part of Shelby County around Pea Ridge and Montevallo. And let's go to the storm that is farther south. We have one more I wanted to look at Jason uh, while we've uh, uh, got uh, got the radar up. This is the one that is located north of Demopolis. And again, this is a uh, uh, storm that is, uh, again, possibly producing a tornado getting awfully close to Greensboro. So uh, again, this is a storm north of Demopolis. If you're in Greensboro, we recommend you be in a safe place in Hale County for this storm uh, uh, out here towards Sawyerville, Wedgeworth, Wedgeworth, Sawyerville, and Greensboro. So Greensboro, be in a tornado safe place now. Very dangerous storm. Centerville, Brent, be in a safe place now. Northeast of Birmingham, up to Springville, be in a safe place now. So having said all of that, I think we're down to working three violent storms, Jason. Um, and let's go to John Brown's stream. We'll take that. Again, we're, we're watching the various streams. It looks like John's getting into the uh, uh, rain shaft. John is northeast of Birmingham, and I honestly think that the organization has diminished a little bit. But as Jason said, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Uh, you know, because it doesn't look that good on radar, you still have to do what you got to do, and you got to be in a safe place. Uh, these storms today, that storm northeast of Birmingham has produced uh, extensive, widespread damage. Uh, we have had loss of life in Tuscaloosa, major damage in the western and northern suburbs of Birmingham. This one missed the Birmingham airport. It passed just north of there. We're fortunate there. Uh, a couple of other quick notes. Let's go back to that radar. This is a good look at the big picture. I, I know that we, there are other storms out there. We have one that's showing up here in uh, Winston County. Let's take a look at that. This is a uh, severe storm that could possibly produce a tornado that is sitting on the Winston-Walker County line. And uh, this thing is awfully close to Nauvoo, and that is moving northeast. Uh, so again, the call to action, folks, along Highway 195, Alabama Highway 5, ultimately Highway 257 around Arley, uh, you should be in a safe place. So again, Arley, back over to Poplar Springs, uh, or Nauvoo, Poplar Springs, Arley, and Smith Lake. That is a circulation coming toward you. And on these kind of nights, we, we did this a few times over the years, I'll just say if there's a storm approaching you, you might want to assume there's a tornado nearby and go to a safe place. There's so many out there, it's going to be hard for us to work these things one at a time like we typically do. So if you have a, a storm that is approaching you, I would recommend that you go to your safe place. Even if we have not said to do that, you'll have to use your own judgment tonight because there's so many things that are happening here. Uh, there's a tornado warning in effect for uh, Walker and Winston counties for this storm. Uh, the storm is located near Nauvoo, uh, moving northeast at 65 miles per hour. And again, we've got the other tornado that is near approaching Brent, moving northeast at 50. Uh, that will be uh, uh, affecting uh, that will be affecting uh, Brent and possibly West Blockton. And again, for those of you from Trustville, Clay, Chalkville, up to Springville, uh, be in a safe place. All right, let's come in uh, now and take a look at some uh, video from Yenny. Uh, uh, down in Tuscaloosa, who's got some uh, storm damage. Uh, so, Yenu, can you hear me? This is James. You know, it's absolutely unlike anything that we have ever seen. We are looking right now in Tuscaloosa. We just arrived on the scene, and I want to show you some of the damage. And I can tell you that right now we're seeing officers who are trying to retrieve some weapons from apparently sort of a gun shop or some sort of business that must have been destroyed. But when you look, all the way down 15th Street. This is McFarland and 15th Street, right across from the mall. It's unlike anything that we have ever seen before. When you look at the damage, absolute mess, destruction are the words that I would use to describe it. And this is you know, just some of the buildings. These are the ones that are standing. But look at the rubble here. On the sidewalks, hard to get through. When you look at the roadways, it's absolutely just difficult to get through. And look at the numbers of the people who are out now, who are serving what is going on. Confused, trying to figure out where they will go, walking through 15th Street. So, and listen, they're seeing some lines down as well, so people need to be very careful as they're moving through this area about what lines are still alive and what aren't. Look ahead, and this damage that we are seeing homes in this area along 15th Street. Cars that are here. We are hearing people who are telling us that they were in this area when obviously this tornado moved through here. And there are just no words to describe what we are seeing.
And again, you, you, listen, we, we've got a lot of people that are greatly concerned about uh, uh, relatives and kids down there at the university, and I think we just lost her. Now, we had Mayor Maddox on earlier when this thing was just breaking, and understand that, uh, you know, Walt didn't know a lot at that point. He will have a, probably a news conference later this evening uh, to tell us what they know and what they don't know. But we know at least one person was killed in Tuscaloosa. Uh, the, some of the most serious damage was near McFarland Boulevard between Druid City Hospital or DCH Regional Medical Center and uh, University Mall uh, in that part of Tuscaloosa. But again, this is the big picture. The storm that uh, produced the damage in Tuscaloosa, major damage north and west of Birmingham, is coming up into St. Clair County. And again, we advise everybody in Springville, uh, Argo, uh, Asheville, be in a safe place. Whitney Junction, we've got a major tornado approaching Brent, uh, Centerville and Brent in Bibb County, a tornado approaching Greensboro in Hale County, got a tornado on the Walker Winston County line. It's coming up toward Arley. Uh, that's going to be uh, crossing Poplar Springs. Uh, and again, all of the, these are our big storms right now. So again, uh, one tornado near Greensboro moving to the uh, northeast. One tornado near Brent moving to the northeast, one northeast of Birmingham around uh, Argo moving northeast up into St. Clair County, and one near Nauvoo and Poplar Springs moving northeast toward Arley. Uh, if you have a storm approaching you tonight, the best thing to do is just to go to a safe place. That's the storm near Greensboro, possible tornado downtown Greensboro. Uh, we've got this very, very dangerous storm right here. That is a debris ball that's going to be passing very close to Brent uh, moving northeast. It might uh, just skirt the northern part of Brent, but obviously nobody should be along uh, US 82. Uh, there's your large tornado right there continuing to move to the northeast. And again, you'll see the deal that keeps on moving in that direction. It's going to be a problem for Shelby County. This is uh, Calera, this is Alabaster, Montevallo, Pea Ridge, Helena, Pelham. So that large tornado is going to be an issue for Shelby County. So if you're watching us in Shelby County, just be aware that is on the way. And again, Centerville, Brent, West Blockton, uh, you should be sheltered right now in a safe place until this storm passes. And uh, like we've talked about, really any storm that happens to come through tonight, wherever you are, if you're within the sound of my voice on the television side, you need to be in a safe place. I realize there are people watching worldwide on the Internet, but we're, of course, focusing on those folks, our home folks here that are watching this. And again, uh, we've got the live stream up from uh, Terry Sasser. Uh, okay, here's a, uh, a continuation of a tornado warning. This is for parts of uh, Bibb. Uh, Chilton, Hale, and Perry counties in effect until uh, 715. That's for the storm near Greensboro moving northeast at 55. Um, Just got a report from Twitter. A Milo's Cup from Tuscaloosa likely has landed in Oxford. Mm. That would have been right in the spot that was hit. So that's where that debris is. I mean, we're, we're seeing debris falling all over the place. So it's safe to say that if a, if a storm is to your southwest, and you start seeing things like insulation fall out of the sky or smaller or, or, or even larger pieces of debris, you need to be in a safe place now. And I would suggest that uh, southwest Shelby County, from Alabaster to Pea Ridge to Montevallo, as James mentioned a moment ago, uh, there's a good chance that uh, this storm, if it's able to hold together and maintain this circulation, which it should, because this is an untapped part of the state. There have been hardly any storms here since the ones came through in the wee hours of the morning uh, before sunrise. So we have an extremely unsafe air mass uh, up there in the uh, southwest edge of Shelby County, northern Bibb County. So there's no real reason why this supercell should not uh, should not continue to maintain its circulation as it comes north of Centerville, likely through Brent, comes up uh, near Alabama Highway 25. It's more than likely to going to affect Montevallo more than it would Alabaster, but it's a very, very close call at this point. Yeah, let, let's take uh, the internet computer again. I changed the stream over to Old Shoe Stream, and again, the, the bandwidth is going to be very challenged with everybody using cell phones in uh, Tuscaloosa. That is a uh, uh, live stream coming from John Old Shoe. John is on the scene of that severe damage down in uh, uh, Tuscaloosa, and again, we will, uh, we're, we're, we're going to work between the ongoing tornado uh, emergencies and the damage uh, as best we can, but first priority uh, for the rest of the evening will certainly be for uh, uh, the tornado emergencies that are in progress. It is 636, and again, uh, we've been here, I don't know how long, but we'll stay here uh, through the night until this thing is over, and uh, the, the next tornado that will affect major population center will be this storm that is near Brent. A violent tornado is very close to Brent in Bibb County moving northeast and that's going to be affecting Shelby County. And again you can see the debris ball is right there at US 82. Alabama Highway 5 is right there and it looks like the tornado is going to be maybe passing just a little a little west northwest of Brent 
but it's going to be awfully close. And again, we still recommend everybody in Centerville and Brent be in their tornado uh, safe place. 12.8 uh, on the significant tornado uh, index, which uh, again, technically is a zero to 10 scale. These numbers have been off the chart. Uh, today. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 5. And again, the deal is that's going to be cutting across into uh, Shelby County. Uh, so if you are in Montevallo or Pea Ridge, that will be the point of entry. And then that will ultimately be moving up toward Alabaster. And if it stays together, we might have an issue in Chelsea and places like that. So we're just giving you a long heads up. And unfortunately, based on the atmospherics, this is not the kind of night where the tornadoes and the severe storms just die. They pop up and they die. These are long track violent tornadoes and we've warned about this for days and we were afraid that this would happen and sure enough we've had that uh, this evening uh, up in West Blockton you might be getting some debris falling from the sky maybe from areas down to the south of there but again that will be moving steadily northeast we advise nobody traveling on Alabama Highway 5 between Brent and West Blockton so let's go up to our storm northeast of Birmingham the storm clearly has lost some of its structure but that doesn't mean that it's not dangerous just saw a Twitter report of a tornado on the ground on Blackjack Road in St. Clair County and that would probably make sense. Uh, and again, the, that, the you know the structure looks good again. It does. I mean, it look, seems to have ramped up. Now it's gotten used to that terrain. Maybe that right. that could be what it was. So again, uh, Odenville is here, and this large tornado. With, and it, again, it looks excellent. Uh, that looks like a very violent structure. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 174 that runs from Odenville back over to Springville. It's come through Argo and Margaret, and again, that's going to keep on moving northeast. This is the split. This is Asheville. Asheville High School sits right here. That's U.S. 231 going down to Pell City, U.S. 411 going down to Odenville. Everybody from Odenville and Springville and St. Clair Springs. That's Alabama Highway 23 coming up toward Asheville. Uh, you should be in a safe place. The St. Clair Correctional Facility. Everybody should be in a safe place uh, until this thing passes. That is a wrapped up large tornado that has produced major uh, severe damage, loss of life uh, in Tuscaloosa, major severe damage in the Birmingham Metro, and that will continue moving northeast up in the general direction of Gadsden. That, that will be the next major city in, involved in this thing. So clearly for those folks that are located in St. Clair County, uh, be in a safe place until this thing passes that is coming up in the direction of Asheville, uh, clearly Odenville, St. Clair Springs, Asheville, Whitney Junction, Steele, safe place, right now. New tornado warning for Coleman County and Morgan County because of the storm that's in Winston. Uh, that storm will likely pass just a little bit northwest of uh, the city of Coleman, but it's going to come awfully close and we already have significant damage in Coleman from the first storm of the day. Uh, so if you're in Coleman County, hey, uh, uh, I'm sorry, take that stream real quick. Let's go to the live stream. This is for uh, Forestdale. Or is it Forestdale or Fultondale? This is Terry Sasser's stream. He said, I know he said Fultondale. Fult Fultondale, right? Yeah. This is Fultondale. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. This is the first video coming out of Fultondale. That's uh, US 31. It's a mess. Uh, th this large tornado came right through uh, Fultondale, and that is a big, big mess. And that's just how wide this thing was. Um, this thing was gigantic. So it went from Fultondale to just north of the airport. Yeah, down to North Birmingham. That's the width. Um, it, again, this damage does not look as severe as the Tuscaloosa damage, not to lessen anything here. That is clearly a life-threatening situation up there. And again, this is coming from Terry Sasser, one of our uh, uh, sky watchers. So Jason, you go ahead with that new warning for Coleman. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to get that on the air. We, we, let's leave that stream up while Jason describes the uh, Coleman situation. Yeah, the, the new warning for Coleman County is for a storm that has not moved into the county yet. It's still sitting a little south of Double Springs. It has a very well-defined rotation. It likely has a hail core. It's intense. And the environment still has not been completely juiced from the storms that we've had earlier. So uh, northwest Coleman County, this will include places like uh, Baldwin, uh, Jones Chapel, Vinemont, the city of Coleman, especially north and west parts of the city of Coleman. Again, uh, maybe just a touch northwest, maybe a couple of miles northwest of where the initial tornado came through. Vinemont and West Point. Uh, and then the Polygon also goes across the interstate in US 31 up Highway 69 again for Fairview, for Simcoe, and for the northwest side of Holly Pond. So Berlin, Holly Pond, Fairview, South Vinemont, the city of Vinemont up near the Coleman Airport, uh, West Coleman County out toward the Jones Chapel and Baldwin. And uh, 
it, really anywhere west of I-65 and I would say north of Highway 69. So west of the interstate, north of Bremen and Brushy Pond and Crane Hill and Dodge City, a possible tornado coming out of Winston County will cross through Coleman County. And while we're at it, let's get to where this is in Winston County. The, uh, the storm itself is approaching the city of Arley from the west. We've got a well-defined rotation right there that's almost over Meek High School. This will cross over the highway and get into Coleman County very quickly. So if in, in southeast Winston County, you need to be in a safe place. I want to hit this from the Columbus, Mississippi radar and get a little better shot at it and see if we can see any difference in the way it's uh, formed. And it does look a little different. Uh, there seems to be more of a, a, a circular shape to the to the uh, supercell itself. This strong gradient on the south side of it near Arley, though, is the indication where uh, the possible tornado would be. And the velocity display on this is uh, still pretty impressive. It's not quite the same magnitude of the storms that are happening to the south, but that's still a pretty strong uh, rotation uh, based on the radar coming from Columbus, Mississippi. That's moving over Arlene now. This will move into southwest Coleman County, likely clipping the northern edge of Smith Lake, staying north of Brushy Pond, this time up, up closer to Trade and Ardell, and then uh, Jones Chapel in West Coleman County. You may be the, one of the first communities that are in that is in line for that. James? We're watching this damage coming from Tuscaloosa. That's John Olshue's uh, camera. Uh, and uh, again, please, we're, we're going to continue to broadcast these uh, emergency messages for the, the ongoing severe weather. And again, if you're in Brent or West Blockton in Bibb County, over to the Shelby County line, be in a safe place. In St. Clair County, Asheville, Odenville, Springville, Steele, be in a safe place. In the areas Jason just called out, up in Northwest Coleman County and Winston County, be in a safe place. Having said that, John, uh, quickly, uh, we're watching your stream and, and you're right in the middle of that horrible, horrific tornado damage in Tuscaloosa. Okay, apparently we, okay, I thought John was on the phone. I'm sorry. We're, we're watching uh, live streaming from John uh, Olshu, our colleague down in Tuscaloosa. This is uh, McFarland Boulevard. Uh, this was the tornado that you saw live on uh, on our channel. If you watched uh, it come through Tuscaloosa, uh, incredible scene as it was coming through with our uh, sky cam, and the damage is severe. John is describing the damage possibly as EF4 type damage, and uh, again, we, we, we are clearly looking at that spot and, and I'm afraid there's a lot of other damage surrounding that spot that we have not seen. Uh, there's, there's a Hobby Lobby there. This is where that Krispy Kreme is right there. This is near the intersection of 15th Street and uh, McFarland Boulevard. I literally grew up in a radio station uh, right down the two blocks away from that spot. Uh, WTBC, the Big 1230, that green concrete block building now in the midst of all those apartments. And that is just uh, absolutely uh, heartbreaking to see. But let's double box that now. Let, let, let me go back and we're going to show this storm. And this is a whopper of a dangerous storm. This is extremely dangerous. Halfway between Brent and West Blockton. This is a very violent storm with a very violent potential tornado indicated here moving right up into Shelby County. There is damage uh, near the community and I never get the name right. Eileen? Eileen? Eileen. You know, the, what the deal was that used to be the end of the line of a railroad and that's where that name came from. Okay. So it's Eileen. But uh, yeah, that, that came right through there and again that's going to be coming right up into uh, western Shelby County. So Pea Ridge, Montevallo, uh, out here in this western side of Shelby County, then ultimately that's going to continue moving to the northeast, and you're going to see it's going to be maybe affecting Calera or Alabaster. Uh, it's Alabama Highway 119 that runs from Alabaster down to Montevallo. I'm just telling you right now, get ready to go to your safe place in Alabaster and Maylene and Montevallo and Pea Ridge, and then if it stays down, it's going to cross Interstate 65 and then uh, perhaps move close to Chelsea over on the U.S. 280 side, and it'll just keep on going. You know, these are long track violent tornadoes. Uh, many of the outbreaks, you'll watch us, and they pop up and they go away. These won't do that tonight, which is unfortunate. But again, we're going to be here for a while uh, as this uh, life-threatening weather event continues across our state tonight, one of historic proportion. Uh, but again, that is a violent circulation just below West Blockton. That'll be crossing the Cahaba River out here near where the Cahaba lilies bloom. People go there every year in May uh, to watch that, and it'll be crossing over into Shelby. So that is a very violent tornado. Uh, more than likely, they just crossed Highway 5, just below West Blockton, moving towards Shelby County. Now, let's go to our storm that is exiting Greensboro, and then we're going to check on the storm northeast of Birmingham. And let's keep that double box going if we can. I, it very, I know that we've got people all over the world interested in seeing the damage in Tuscaloosa, so if we can keep that up. Uh, in the other box, that is John Olshue uh, and uh, his live stream coming from Tuscaloosa, where uh, they were just hit so hard. 
uh, by a tornado this afternoon. All right, another uh, violent circulation is northeast of Greensboro. And that is moving to the uh, northeast. That's Alabama Highway 25. And again, if that continues in this direction, it might affect, again, Centerville or Brent. Uh, again, this track is the historic track reminiscent of the May 27, 1973 tornado that was on that same track. And I'm not saying this is as big as that, but it could be on a day like today. So for those of you northeast of Greensboro uh, and then moving up towards Centerville and Brent, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Ainsley, uh, Okay, they're saying that you can stand in the University Mall parking lot and see Coleman Coliseum. That's remarkable. Uh, there's a lot of infrastructure that's just gone. Uh, I, I, that's a report, and, and again, we, we don't know about the University of Alabama campus. Uh, uh, we don't want to pass along rumor or innuendo here. That's not what we do. We'll tell you what we know, and we will not tell you what we don't know. Uh, but again, we're going to keep John's stream up in the other box while we work these uh, storms. Let's check the one northeast of Birmingham, John. This is the one that caused that damage in Tuscaloosa and the damage in Fultondale and the uh, Birmingham Metro. Uh, this dangerous storm was near Odenville, moving northeast at 50. We got a tornado warning for St. Clair County until 715. I know technically Blunt is involved in this, but really and truly, this is a St. Clair County problem. That thing is uh, wrapped up again, right on 411. Yeah, boy, this is bad. Uh, goodness. All right, that's the tornado right there. This is Asheville. Asheville High School sits here. That's 231 going down to Pelt City. That thing is crossing 231 right now. Uh, it's come across 431. That's 431, or 411, I'm sorry, going down to Odenville. 231 going down to Pell City. Uh, this thing more than likely is on 231, about six miles south of downtown Asheville. Next in line is going to be Raglan, which is right here. If you are in, uh, still, even though I think the tornado circulation is south of Asheville, if you're in Asheville, stay in your safe place. There could be debris falling uh, in this storm that, that could be enough to injure somebody. There's debris falling in Etowah County. County right now in yeah, Gadsden. I believe it. I, I totally believe that, and that's coming from Tuscaloosa. The debris that's falling in Gadsden is from Tuscaloosa or maybe Fultondale on the Birmingham Metro. But uh, Asheville, Raglan, you want to be in a safe place. That's going to keep on moving to the northeast, crossing the Coosa River, and then ultimately scooting over here into the region around the Calhoun Etowah County line from Ohatchee back up to Gadsden. So again, that is a very violent circulation. That is the storm that hit Tuscaloosa that is now located uh, down to the south of uh, Asheville. And, and that continues moving northeast. Uh, this is Rainbow City. That's Alabama Highway 77, goes down to Ohatchee and goes down to Talladega. That's Gadsden, that's Interstate 759 right there. So again, a very dangerous storm just south of Asheville near Raglan. Everybody in St. Clair County should be in their safe place right now. I have debris falling in Helena now. And I'm going to take a quick break to change a mic cable. I'll be right back in just a second. Uh, okay, so we have uh, we have debris falling in Helena. That's likely from this storm that's uh, just southeast of West Blockton in Bibb County. And based on its current path, if you are in Alabaster, Maylene, Montevallo, Wilton, or Calera, you need to be in the safest of safe places that you can get. Uh, we know there is confirmed damage with this. I'm sorry, it, one more thing, Jason. I'm sorry. I you can double box the stream. That is Terry Sasser stream in Fultondale. So as we do a double box, we'll have damage from Fultondale in the current situation. Okay, so uh, again, uh, as James mentioned, you've got damage in one screen, uh, the velocity couplet in the other that is approaching Shelby County, and it's coming very quickly too. Uh, and again, if you're in Pea Ridge, Montevallo, Alabaster, Maylene, or the northwest part of Calera, you need to be in a safe place immediately. Uh, don't wait for this. This is on Cahaba River Road right now. Uh, this is Marvel Road, which uh, eventually becomes Shelby County Highway 10 uh, that runs uh, around through Pea Ridge and then comes down into the, the western edge of Montevallo, around Morris Crossroads, Alabaster, Maylene. You are about 10 to 15 minutes away from a tornadic circulation moving in, and we have had multiple reports of large violent tornadoes today. This one has the same kind of circulation with it. So Shelby County be on guard. This thing is almost on top of you and it's going to continue moving up to the northeast and likely cross I-65 in a matter of just a few minutes. These are moving northeast at roughly 60 miles per hour. So if we uh, extrapolate this out and we'll, we'll put it at 60 and look at that couplet, uh, this would be roughly 17 minutes from crossing I-65 if it stays on its current path. And uh, that would be between the Highway 31 exit and between the Shelby County Airport exit. So between exits 232 and 238, there's a good chance we may have a large tornado crossing. So that would put uh, neighborhoods down in the south end of Alabaster, 
the north end of Montevallo at risk. So if you're uh, around Shelby Farms or Scottsdale or Grandview, Maylene area, China Berry, uh, over toward Lacey's Chapel, you need to be in a safe place immediately. Uh, this is not uh, not something to be taken lightly. We're seeing the velocity update there very quickly, and the circulation is intensifying as it's approaching Marvel Road. It's passing just a little bit north of the community of Marvel, and this will move through southwest Shelby County near Pea Ridge, come across the valley, move right over Shelby County Highway 17, Alabama 119, US 31, and I-65. I think this may stay south of downtown Alabaster. Let me uh, move up to the north just a little bit and uh, let you see the towns that are in line here. Again, our circulation is this one here that's over North Bibb County, and it's moving in a direction just like that. So Smoky Road, Butler Road, uh, Highway 17, Highway 119, County Highway 80, uh, Mission Hills Road, uh, the area around Veterans Park and Alabaster, professional paint and body. You need to be in a safe place right now. Uh, all the folks at the promenade, every business at the Colonial Promenade in Alabaster, you need to go through a tornado safety plan too. The Walmart, the Target, everybody needs to be at the back of the store because we've got a very uh, large, potentially large, I should say, tornado that's moving towards Shelby County. Uh, looking for any kind of reports of damage we've got, and I don't see anything just yet that is um, coming from Bibb County other than the damage at Eoline. Uh, John Talbot's reporting that uh, the damage in Concord is just unbelievable. Concord in West Jefferson County, that's the storm that came through Birmingham. Uh, six patients are in trauma in critical condition. We have multiple injuries, and unfortunately, we believe we may not be able to get away with this without some, some fatalities. I and mean, We already had one fatality confirmed in Tuscaloosa, and if we can only get away with one, it is a miracle set up because we've had these violent tornadoes just rolling across the state all day. So a very strong indication of a tornado approaching the Shelby County line from the southwest. There are also other strong indications of tornadoes in other spots. We want to get to those. There's one that's moving into Asheville right now, one moving into northwest Cullman County right now, and one that's moving into Bibb County from Perry County and Hale County. That's a storm that's been near Greensboro and now is passing a little northeast of there. It's uh, just north of Marion and uh, coming up on Pondville in Bibb County. Uh, we do note one thing, and if you, can, uh, if you can make this out to the northwest of Hamilton, this little wind shift line that, that I'm highlighting right here is a dry line. So once that passes, dew points will drop. The threat of severe weather will fall. The cold front's still far to our northwest, but once we can get rid of this dry line, things are going to start improving, especially west of Jasper and Fayette within about the next hour. But until that passes your location, uh, this is still a very volatile situation, a very dangerous afternoon for uh, much of central Alabama. I say afternoon, it's already, uh, what, after 7 o'clock, almost 7 o'clock, 6.55. And uh, we have these uh, multiple warnings in effect, and we'll start north and go south with them. So let's go to Coleman County, where we have a tornado warning in effect for the northwest side of Coleman, uh, for Jones Chapel, for West Point. And I'm doing my best to zoom in here, so uh, let's, uh, let's look in there. The, uh, the rotation is not quite as substantial as it was just a few minutes ago, and we're looking from the Columbus, Mississippi next rad. So uh, Arley to Addison, Jones Chapel, the northwest side of Coleman, up to Vinemont, there's a possible tornado moving in that direction. We'll move down to the southeast and go into St. Clair County. And a reminder that there is a tornado warning that's in effect for many areas east of that circulation, too. It does include uh, Calhoun, or excuse me, it does include Etowah County and St. Clair County and Blunt County, as well as Calhoun. Uh, they, now the uh, Weather Service has extended that into Calhoun County. A very, very big indication of a tornado here over St. Clair County that's moving up in the direction of Gadsden, and it may clip the far northwestern edge of Calhoun County. We have our supercell that's moving into Shelby County. Here's a closer in look, and there's a very well-defined debris gracious. ball just north of Raglan. So mm. uh, Raglan to Asheville to Ohatchee to Rainbow City, you need to be in a safe place right now. I want to look at the parameters on this from that TVS. And the, uh, the system here suggesting this one may take a bit more of a northerly jog over the next few minutes and head more toward uh, the uh, southern and eastern parts of the city of Gadsden. Uh, the uh, tornado impact number is not visible on the screen. Let me see if I can do that one more time and get that on there. I don't think it's going to work. I, I can guarantee it's high. 
Uh, we've got a, a possible large tornado on the ground just north of Ragland. So north of Alabama 144 that runs from Ragland to Ohatchee and crosses over the dam. Uh, you need to be in a safe place. Rainbow City, you're likely to get some hail, some high wind, and the tornado, given the track that the system wants to take it on, it's going to come awfully close to Rainbow City and Southside. Around the Birmingham metro area, we've got uh, one storm moving through Bibb County into Shelby County, but in Jefferson County, things have really started to settle down. Thankfully, we've got uh, nothing but a little rain falling on the south end of Jefferson County. Strong indication of a tornado here with a supercell that is now on the Bibb Shelby County line. This is approaching Alabaster and Maylene and Saginaw. It looks like it may stay a little northwest of Montevallo, so at the campus of the University of Montevallo, wouldn't be a bad idea to go through your safety plan, but I think this is going to be a mile or two northwest of you. Still, though, it's too close for comfort, so go to that safe place. Our debris ball is right over the community of Marvel in Bibb County. It's crossed the Cahaba River now, and it is sliding over into Shelby. So, again, I can't stress it up. If you live in the south end of Alabaster, the neighborhoods we called out earlier, Scottsdale, Grandview, uh, down toward Shelby Farms, uh, the Wisteria, uh, the, the Wisteria subdivision that's on Highway 26. You need to be in a safe place, and we've said it all day, but I'll go over it one more time because it's, it's, it's useful information. Lowest level of your home, away from windows. Don't stand outside and try to watch this one. We've had some around Alabaster in the past couple of weeks where you were able to watch them from various parking lots, and it didn't do a lot of damage, but this one means business. It's got actual debris being picked up by radar in Bibb County, moving into Shelby County. So I want you to be in a safe place immediately. Maylene, Alabaster, Saginaw, Morris Crossroads, and again, Montevallo, it may be in a little bit north of you, but it's too close. We want you to be in a safe place too. Okay, uh, again, let, let's look at a bit, before we go to this video, I wanna show a big picture, and again, I'm gonna step in the key wall here, uh, Monroe. I wanna show a big picture of where we stand and show the various tornadoes. We're, we're now broadcasting on a number of radio stations across the state. If so many people have, don't have power from this morning, we have one tornado vortex signature near Raglan, moving up in the direction toward the south side, Glencoe, and uh, the eastern part of the Gadsden Metro. We have a possible tornado that is now located uh, approaching uh, uh, Shelby County. From Storm Bibb spotters County. are tracking a large, dangerous tornado moving into Shelby County right now. Right. That, that is uh, uh, northwest, or eight miles west of Montevallo. So again, Montevallo, be in a safe place. Uh, we have other areas of rotation coming up towards Centerville and Brent. Uh, again, if you're in Centerville, Brent, be in a safe place. Uh, now we have severe thunderstorm warnings back up here in parts of northwest Alabama. We've got a tornado warning for northwestern Coleman County for areas north and west of Coleman. But again, the, the most serious storm on the board is this one approaching Shelby County. Montevallo, Alabaster, Maylene, be in a safe place right now. Now, we'll go back to specifics on that in a moment. Very quickly, want to show you what these storms have done today. Uh, first off, a look at Coleman. Uh, this was the first tornado of the day, and uh, this tornado came through downtown Coleman. And uh, let me tell you what. Uh, I know for Jason, who's from Coleman County, and from, um, from my perspective, I've been here for a long time. This is just hard to watch. Again, uh, this is uh, uh, a look at downtown Coleman. If, if you watched our coverage, you saw a, uh, this violent tornado live on the sky cam come right through downtown Coleman. And, uh, you know, that, oh, my goodness. Th th this is, those this are, is, those build that, that's the first United Methodist Church. Yeah, this, this is horrible. Yeah, that, that's got to be EF3 or higher. At, oh, well, look. You know that's an EF3 at least. Yeah. This could be an EF4. But that's, that's um, well, what's the name of that little shop there? A little bit of everything. This a little is bit all, of everything shop. This that's, is uh, that's what that little store was all called. on US 31. And understand it is a total wreck. And, and understand that we have scenes like this in other parts of the state. You can see where that truck was flipped over. Uh, I, I don't know how much loss of life we've had today. I just don't know. There are buildings that were, they're gone. Yeah. They're, there's there's nothing left there. Mm. That's the the old vacuum cleaner place right there at the intersection. You're that, in, that's the Methodist Church, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's First United Methodist Church, which which is just one block west of the Coleman Times, uh, and, and that entire block there is taken up by the First United Methodist Church. It, it used to be a, a, a an, an older building, and they've renovated it over the past couple of years. I believe that is, if I'm not mistaken, that is Fourth and US 278. So it might be fourth and technically, I think it may be the corner of fourth and fourth. If, if you're, I'm, and if if you're I'm not mistaken, on, if you're listening on radio, we, we are looking at uh, video from the uh, severe tornado damage in Coleman, 
It's happened earlier this afternoon. Uh, it's bad. And I, I, I'm not the best at word descriptions, and quite frankly, even the video doesn't do it justice. So we just wanted to show you that. But let's go back to our tornado coverage. Again, you know the deal. We prioritize ongoing severe weather. Let's take a look at our storm coming up into East Alabama. Uh, this is a storm that is moving out of St. Clair County, prompting tornado warnings for parts of Calhoun and uh, Etowah counties. And again, that is a violent tornado circulation that's going to be passing across Highway 77 between Rainbow City and Ohatchee. Uh, so nobody should be on Highway 77 uh, south of Rainbow City or north of Interstate 20. Uh, that will ultimately be crossing uh, U.S. Highway 431 out here around Alexandria and then perhaps affecting uh, uh, areas north of Jacksonville, between Jacksonville and Piedmont. So uh, this is a problem that will be affecting uh, uh, parts of Calhoun, uh, northern Calhoun County. This will not affect Anniston Oxford. This is the northern part of the county. And for Gadsden, it's that far southeastern part of the Gadsden Metro out, out toward uh, 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 Glencoe and Hoax Bluff. And again, you can see the uh, uh, significant tornado index on this thing is a 10.4. So that is a very dangerous storm. It can produce a violent tornado about to cross Highway 77 near Ohatchee. And again, that's moving over into northern Calhoun County. So everybody there need to be in a safe place. We'll check the storm coming into Shelby County. This is, again, as a storm coming up into a very highly populated area. Uh, and again, we've got evidence of strong rotation on this storm right back here in that uh, western flank. This is where the uh, storm, the possible tornado would be. And again, that's going to be crossing Highway 17, Highway 119. Maylene, uh, this is Alabaster, Morris Crossroads, and ultimately uh, Camp Branch, Saginaw, areas near Calera. If you're in any of these places, we want you to be in a safe place. It's a very densely populated part of the Birmingham Metro, the southern suburbs down here. This thing is moving northeast at about 50 miles an hour. Uh, nobody should be traveling along I-65 now between Pelham and uh, the Shelby-Chilton County line. Uh, this storm is a very dangerous storm. All of them are today. So again, this will be affecting uh, Alabaster, Siluria, uh, Morse Crossroads, Maylene, uh, Calera, crossing the interstate, maybe heading over toward Montevallo. And again, if it stays intact, which it probably will, we might be talking about the 280 corridor here in, uh, in just a bit. So, uh, and if we can double box, uh, again, we've got uh, uh, many of our sky watchers uh, out with the uh, live streams today and the sun is beginning to go down we're beginning to lose the uh, uh, sun that we have so that means the night spotting is so much more difficult we have to use lightning to illuminate uh, the, uh, the the features that we look for during the day but uh, if we can maybe double box me and the uh, uh, internet stream uh, we've got uh, believe that's brian peters stream uh, brian peters and we might not have a director back there at the moment uh, if we don't, we'll just keep talking over radar. Do we have a producer at the moment? And apparently, okay, uh, they're working on it right now. I thought they knew something I didn't know. All right, there we go. Thank you very much. Again, uh, uh, we're looking down below, and I'm pretty sure that that is uh, Brian uh, Peters' uh, stream. Uh, Brian is out with uh, Dr. Tim. And uh, again, we, we just kind of like to watch the uh, views in real time to correlate what we see on radar. Uh, but uh, the, the, the troubled spots right now are, are Shelby County, Alabaster, Montevallo, Maylene, Northern Calhoun. And again, we stress this will not affect Oxford. This will not affect Anniston. By Northern Calhoun, we're talking Ohatchee and Alexandria and Piedmont. Uh, areas really north of Jacksonville or close to Jacksonville for this. This is the storm that hit Tuscaloosa, by the way. You talk about a long track tornado. That thing originated in eastern Mississippi and it's been on the ground all the way, all the way through. And, and again, we have another possible tornado. And again, you can see the progression of these things. And these are just like bullets coming out of a gun. It is a horrifying scene, knowing the conditions we have today, knowing probably what's happening underneath that. But uh, again, we have a manageable number of these things. So, uh, and, and let's check this uh, last storm down here if we can. This is the one coming up into Centerville and Brent. Um, and again, I'll kind of run through some of the latest uh, tornado warnings here. Uh, the tornado warning continues in effect for Bibb. Well, I'll tell you what, th this is a, in a, in a case like this, there are so many tornado warnings, we'll just best give you this thing an eyeball. That, that's a potential tornado right there, moving up towards Centerville and Brent. So again, everybody in Brent, Centerville, anywhere close to there, be in a safe place. That's all you need to know. Uh, now let's go upstream. We'll take a look at our storm that's coming through Shelby County. Uh, this is a uh, thunderstorm that is moving into the Alabaster, Maylene, Montevallo area. 
And uh, this storm is certainly dangerous. Uh, and, you know, Jason, we're going to know here in a matter of minutes if there's something there because there's a lot of people live down there. Yeah, that's uh, that's really where the Birmingham metro area begins on the southern edge. And uh, there's a very strong indication of rotation still with this. It may not look quite as good as it did just a few minutes ago. We're getting very, very close to the radar site. I don't have any reports of significant damage, although I'm just seeing something. Alabaster Police Department reports a wall cloud passing over Publix at 119. So uh, if that's the case, then it's not on the ground anymore. If it was on the ground, it may have lifted temporarily. Uh, that would be the best news of all for the city of Alabaster. So Publix, uh, the Publix on Highway 119, which is about as far south in the city of Alabaster as you can go before you get out of it and then get down into Montevallo. Uh, that is a, a wall cloud passing over Publix right now. And from a wall cloud, a tornado can drop at any time. So stay in that safe place in Alabaster. Uh, in uh, Montevallo, you can come out now. It's it, it's past you in Montevallo. It's past Calera, but uh, up into the uh, city of Alabaster, southern half of town, there is a wall cloud moving overhead. Would still recommend no one drive on US 31 uh, between uh, well, but really, really between Calera and Pelham right now, same thing with I-65. But imagine 65 traffic may not be that good on it anyway, so you wouldn't want to wouldn't want to travel that direction at this moment. Uh, there is a possibility if this thing can hold together, if it is producing a tornado, that it may cross uh, Alabama Highway 119, where it is now, U.S. 31, then come up I-65, maybe staying just a little bit south of U.S. 11, and this time it would pass uh, between Chelsea and Columbiana. Uh, over toward uh, uh, Shelby County Highway 4, uh, 47. So uh, if you're in uh, the Chelsea, Columbiana area, uh, especially about halfway between the two cities, about halfway between Chelsea and Columbiana, you need to be in a safe place as a storm that has an obvious wall cloud, an obvious rotation on radar uh, is moving that direction. Uh, we have seen tornadoes spin up very quickly. We've seen wall clouds that all of a sudden we had a violent tornado with a matter of minutes. So uh, just because there's not one there, based on police department reports in Alabaster, uh, doesn't mean that there is not uh, the possibility one could develop. Uh, I tell you what, let's double box this too. I'm going to roll some images from our viewers. Uh, we're going to double box the live radar and images from the, the viewers in the other box. And, uh, you know, I, I probably have 5,000 from today, but I'm just telling you, some of this stuff is very, very uh, dramatic. Uh, so, again, uh, the, the, the images you're seeing and the videos in the lower box down there, that's from you. And uh, again, uh, you can see that looks like that's some guy down in uh, Tuscaloosa, down around the uh, damage on the uh, campus of the University of Alabama. Uh, or I'm sorry, near, near uh, uh, McFarland Boulevard and 15th Street. Uh, and again, that tag, you know, Jason, see that uh, 63 tag? Mm -hmm. Guess where that was found? Graysville. Uh, wow. That was a tag from Tuscaloosa County found in the Birmingham metro area. That's about 50 miles away. And I thought that was extremely uh, interesting. We're getting a lot of reports of debris. And while we're looking at these, uh, pic do we have a live uh, video feed? Uh, okay, let's go to Isaiah Harper live in Tuscaloosa right now for the latest there, Isaiah. Hey, James, well, I'm standing right here where I, where I was when I was talking to you earlier. This is 13th Street that you can see behind me. I'm going to move out of the way so you can see the massive damage here. You can see some of the power crews are already, the crews are already on um, in place here trying to repair some of the down power lines. This, again, is McFarland Boulevard, if you can believe that, at 13th Street. What you're looking at is you're looking at the uh, shopping complex where there used to be a full moon barbecue, um, a, a, a big lot, a Hobby Lobby, those things are no more and right now you, you see crews out here they're trying to work to get these power lines up a lot of people are walking around trying to see now one thing if we look if Madison, Madison can zoom down McFarland Boulevard within the last five minutes we have seen at least 10 ambulances come from that area we believe there may be some injuries down there because they are leaving that area and they are coming past us and behind me is DCH hospital we don't know if that's the case but we we suspect that's the case. Again, massive damage. You're looking at what used to be a shell gas station right here that many students from the University of Alabama use. If we swing on around right here, you can see a number of the homes that students 
even live in and a number of the apartments right here the students live in they are also have been damaged windows blown out that's why you see a lot of students uh, walking around one thing that we've been told James is that right now none of the and that's what we've been telling people that none of the uh, outdoor tornado sirens are working in the county that's what police are telling us and they want us to spread the word to people so they won't expect to hear that siren if more storms come through and they're standing here on the outside James Okay, Isaiah, thank you. And again, we're going to be bouncing back and forth between the damage reports and, and what we have going on here. So uh, I tell you what, uh, we're, we're going to cycle through some of the images you're seeing. And let's zoom into our Shelby County storm, Jason. This is a storm coming through the Alabaster area. We have not heard of any specific reports of damage uh, at this point. We've had reports of a wall cloud. Uh, but again, uh, at this point, we do not have any reports other than a wall cloud passing over the Publix at Highway 119. But this thing is still clearly wrapped up. Uh, and again, right back into here, there could be a tornado down around the weatherly section of Alabaster moving to the northeast. And again, this is Chelsea. And for those of you in Chelsea and around uh, uh, Highland Lakes and uh, some of the Greystone neighborhoods and Mount Laurel, uh, when this heavy rain begins to fall, you might actually have some debris falling from the damage from this storm to the south and, uh, and west of here. So just understand that uh, that might be happening here. But potential for a tornado right now, a little uh, east of I-65, moving northeast about like that and again that's going to be coming up in the direction of Chelsea so we encourage everybody in Chelsea everybody in Westover to be in a good safe place until the storms pass That's Shelby County Highway 11 right there that goes from Chelsea back over to Alabaster County Road 47 goes down to Columbiana that's US 280 right there at Shelby County 43 going up that way so again uh, that is a uh, a very dangerous storm. Even though we have not had reports of any uh, damage here recently, we, we don't want to take away from the serious uh, nature of that. Uh, so again, if you are in Shelby County in the general area between Alabaster and Chelsea, be in a safe place. Now, this is the storm around Centerville and Brent. And again, uh, this is potentially a, a dangerous storm that is in the process of moving through the Centerville Brent area. And again, back here in the southwestern flank, there could be a tornado. Uh, this is in Bibb County, about 45 miles south, southwest uh, of Birmingham, moving northeast. This is not the best looking structure we've seen, but there is clear rotation back in here, and there could be a very significant tornado. Every storm that approaches, we recommend that people go to a safe place. Uh, these storms have been very violent today. We have had loss of life. We have had major injury. Major your damage in many areas so you've got to take these extremely seriously even as we get into the evening hours so we have the Shelby County storm moving out of Alabaster moving up toward Chelsea we have the storm that is in the Centerville Brent area and uh, Jason I guess th that we, the have, third we have is <clears throat> this one is on yeah. the dry line Okay. The one that's coming well, through I'm Marion glad County. I'm glad it's in the state then. Yeah, yeah. the dry line is here. Bring it it's, on. it's coming through Hamilton. It's coming through Vernon. But we have a uh, possible tornado that's uh, on the southwest side of Winston County moving out of Fayette and Marion counties up into southwest Winston. So uh, from uh, about Natural Bridge east over to Double Springs and essentially all of Winston County and northern Coleman County are still under tornado warnings. We uh, had a report that the uh, tornado was near West Point a little while ago. Uh, that would likely be a little farther north here. Not I'm going to switch over to the Columbus, Mississippi next rad and uh, get a little better peek in on this first storm that's coming out of uh, the Winfield area. And that one looks pretty wrapped up. Uh, anytime you have a, a boundary like this, a dry line, that's uh, definitely a place that you have to watch for tornadic development. So we've got all the storms out ahead of this, and now we have the dry line, which will probably induce another few tornadic thunderstorms. Some of them might be just as significant as the ones we've had earlier. But the good news is once the dry line passes, you're stable. You don't have to worry about this threat anymore. So eventually in West Alabama, we will be able to clear county by county uh, where the threat is uh, diminishing. We'll go over to Coleman County briefly. The uh, circulation with this storm is going to pass north of Vinemont, uh, south of Falkville. Actually, it's pretty close to Hurricane Creek Park right now, and uh, that's moving up in the vicinity of Eva. This is the velocity product from Huntsville, which will be a little bit better quality than that Columbus, Mississippi look, and uh, we just don't see a whole lot to that, although it does look like it's in a different place. Looks like it's closer to Fairview than it was uh, to Vinemont, so a little bit of a delay in the Columbus data versus the Huntsville data. And again, in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you are seeing uh, the viewer pictures that have come in. We have had multiple large tornadoes in Alabama today. Uh, this is uh, maybe a once or twice in a lifetime kind of severe weather event. And 
Unfortunately, it happened to us this time. Uh, it, uh, it does that occasionally. You're going to get a tornado outbreak now and then. Uh, this has uh, put some of the more recent severe weather episodes we've had to shame, though, with some of the large, violent tornadoes that have uh, hit central Alabama. Let's go up here to Gadsden very quickly. We've had a, a report of golf ball size hail in the city of Gadsden. Uh, the tornadic part of the storm, though, is south. And look at that. Still looks like we have things wrapped up, maybe man. a debris ball, if nothing else, a strong hook echo that's uh, north of Jacksonville. It's um, south of Hoax Bluff, and that's going to clip the eastern end of Etowah County, and it'll probably move up into Cherokee County, too, and there's really no sign of that thing weakening. And uh, a lot of other severe weather events that we've had recently, there was uh, cooler, drier air in East Alabama. Well, that's not the case this time. Uh, we don't have anything that would really slow this down other than maybe topography uh, in the eastern sections of the state. So uh, as it interacts with some of that terrain, some of the terrain features, the higher mountaintops in Etowah County, Calhoun County and Cherokee County, there may be some uh, some flux in that. But given where that hook is, James, that looks an awful lot like where the uh, Palm Sunday tornado would have gone based on radar. It's reminiscent of that. Uh, and again, you're, you're watching damage images from our viewers and video down in one box. You're watching the ongoing severe weather in the next. And what I want to do is let's take me full for just a moment because this looks like a very serious storm. We'll go back to the damage here in just a moment. But you can see we have a possible debris ball that's located right here. And uh, this is US 278 coming out of Gadsden. There's this a is, confirmed tornado with it now. Yeah, I believe that. This is Piedmont right here. Uh, this will be crossing Roy, uh, Roy Webb Road uh, that runs from 278 down to Jacksonville and that will be ultimately crossing Highway 278, not too far from Piedmont, and crossing Highway 9. And again, as Jason said, this is reminiscent of the March 27, 1994 Palm Sunday tragedy that hit the Goshen United Methodist Church. Uh, that church sits up Highway 9 just across the county line in Cherokee County. This is the county line right here. The uh, Goshen sits about right here, and uh, that killed 20 people inside the church on Palm Sunday morning in 1994. And I'm not saying this will follow that exact track. It probably won't, but boy, it is close to that. So again, we have a very dangerous tornado signature right now that is located south of Hoax Bluff, and that is moving in the general direction of Piedmont and Goshen. If you are in any of these places, uh, please go to a safe place right away. Uh, and if you know somebody that lives over there, call them and tell them to go to a safe place. We have a lot of power outages from this morning, from the big batch of storms we had this morning. And again, uh, this is moving up in the direction of Piedmont and Goshen. Uh, and it's about to cross Roy Webb Road, which is right here. That is a uh, violent tornado, potentially, uh, with a debris ball moving like this. So again, there's Piedmont. Uh, this is the Cherokee County line. And uh, this is going to be straddling the Calhoun-Cherokee County line. This will not affect Anniston, Jacksonville, Oxford. The, the southern and the central part of the county is not involved. This is the northern tip of Calhoun County. And again, look at this thing. Just incredible. It's wrapped up just below Hoax Bluff. And again, that is moving steadily to the northeast. And you know, Jason, this is the one that hit Tuscaloosa. Uh, this yeah. is, it's the same one. That's the uh, uh, that supercell hit uh, northeast Mississippi. There was a confirmed wedge tornado with it there. It came through Sumter and Green and Tuscaloosa and Jefferson, St. Clair. Now mm -hmm. it's uh, moving out of... Uh, not, really, it's out of Etowah County. The tornado looks like it's mainly in Calhoun County uh, and moving over toward Piedmont. Right. Uh, so, again, this is a very, very dangerous storm. Now, let's go to our Shelby County storm. Uh, Piedmont, Goshen, Spring Garden. Go to a safe place. That's the call to action here. Let's go back to Shelby County. We'll take a look at the storm that is coming up between Alabaster and uh, Chelsea. Uh, and, again, it's right down here. So let's take a little closer look at this uh, rotation. Well, kind of in alabaster for, from this one, you were out of the woods from this one storm. But again, that potential circulation is about right in through here. That's uh, County Road 47. That runs down from Chelsea down to Columbiana. The possible tornado is about to cross Highway 47. In fact, it might be closer to Chelsea based on that. Uh, everybody in Chelsea and Westover need to be in a safe place. Uh, this thing is might be pretty close to 280 right now. So Chelsea, Westover, Harpersville, Vincent, that's Highway 25 uh, that goes up to uh, Sterrett and Vandiver. Uh, the community of Calsis is located right there. Uh, everybody in any of these communities we're calling out to just as a course of least regret. The thing to do today is to be in a safe place. Don't wait on us to specifically call your neighborhood. The, these things are large, violent tornadoes today. We've, it has been a tragic day in state history. And again, we don't want any more loss of life. So please, everybody from Chelsea, Westover, Harpersville, Vincent, Calsis, Sterrett, 
Uh, you want to be in a safe place. And of course, ultimately, this will keep on moving over into Talladega County as it crosses the Coosa River. Uh, but again, that's our storm in Shelby. Let's go down to the Bibb County storm. We've got a storm that uh, has been coming up on Centerville and Brent. This is uh, uh, we've had many storms that have uh, followed that same track today. Uh, this one came out of Greensboro, moving up toward uh, Centerville and Brent. And uh, again, um, yeah, we all of the big reports are still coming in from that uh, storm up around Piedmont. But again, this structure, structure does not look as good as some of the other ones we have seen today. But still, we have to uh, take this thing pretty seriously. So again, a, a possible tornado between Brent and West Blockton moving northeast up towards Shelby County. We'll watch that carefully. All right, now uh, let's, uh, I'm sorry, who's on the phone with us? Uh, Okay, uh, Mark Kelly from the Jefferson County EMA is on the line with us. Uh, Mark, and what we're going to do is uh, show some uh, images from our viewers. Tell us what you know about the damage in the Birmingham Metro. And if we can take the viewer images while Mark is talking to us, that would be great. Sure. I would say the, uh, James, uh, the hardest hit area is uh, probably our Pleasant Grove, uh, where there's been some very extensive structural damage. Uh, and some uh, the, the, the numerous reports of, of injuries there. Uh, the same is true of uh, North Birmingham and uh, Pratt City, uh, all the way over to uh, to, uh, to Fultondale and, and, and Pinson. Uh, those probably are the, the hardest hit areas that, based on the number of uh, reports that we've received here. And we have everything from uh, trees and power lines down, as you'd imagine, uh, as well as several uh, gas leaks. Uh, one neighborhood in Birmingham, I left out the Smithfield neighborhood, very hard hit, some houses leveled there. So we just have extremely, extremely widespread uh, damage along the, the path that that uh, tornado took through here. Mark, and again, I, I was listening to a producer for a moment. It, it, the, the most important thing, tell us about fatalities and injuries in Jefferson County. We, uh, the only reports of fatalities uh, we have received, uh, and, and then we've yet to con confirm these, but uh, we've heard that there were numerous uh, fatalities uh, in, in the Pleasant Grove area. Uh, beyond that, uh, injuries... Uh, I'm sorry, Mark had a producer in my ear. I, I, I can't hear you when they're speaking. I'm you sorry. said there were numerous fatalities. In what neighborhood was that? Uh, that was in Pleasant Grove. And again, those that's unconfirmed, but we do have those uh, reports. Um, and then uh, beyond that, uh, injuries uh, in uh, Pratt City, uh, the, the city's uh, fire station in Pratt City received major damage uh, and the, the area just around the fire station and numerous injuries uh, reported there. In Smithfield, you say the fire station in Smithfield has, has been heavily hit? No, uh, the fire station in Pratt City. Pratt City, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you don't at this moment have a fatality or injury count for us at this point? We do not. We do not. We, okay. we have just, you know, we obviously pulled our personnel in as the storm approached. They've been back out in the field for a while, but, uh, you know, there's a lot to deal with. And, and uh, so we're waiting on those, uh, on those reports to, uh, to come back to us. Do, what do you have, Mark, in terms of advice for people that are watching or listening by radio, people that have a need that, that maybe have a tree down or that they can't get out? What, what, what's your advice to those that are in those areas right now that are listening to us by radio or watching by television? Well, you know, in terms of, of, uh, of response with our uh, city and, and county uh, public works folks, the road crews, uh, fire and rescue, law enforcement, you know, it's sort of a uh, it's sort of a triage situation. We have to, to, to respond to the hardest hit areas first. Uh, you know, I think if you've if you've come through this with uh, with 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 your life and uh, with your property fairly intact, uh, you know the watchword is I think just uh, stay where you are. We'll 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 get to you, uh, and you're you know call. Obviously, obviously you need to call and report it uh, so we can respond to it. But uh, I think the best thing, uh, particularly for those who have not been affected uh, much by by damage uh, to, to their property, is, is is stay in, stay out of the way, and uh, let our crews uh, respond to this situation as as quickly and effectively as possible. Okay, uh, Mark, thank you very much for your time. And again, as soon as you get a, an update on injuries and fatalities, we'd appreciate a call back from you. Thank you so much.
All right, let, let's go now to, um, again, the radar. We want to go back to the Piedmont uh, storm, if we can. Uh, I, I do. There, there's a tornado on the ground in Bibb County right now. Okay. Uh, the Weather Service has declared a tornado emergency for Bibb County. Uh, that storm is moving into Shelby County. This one looks to be a little bit farther south than the last one, but the same places, Alabaster, Montevallo, Calera, you need to be in your safe place again, Maylene, Pea Ridge, uh, Morris Crossroads, all those communities in southwest Shelby County. Another intense rotation. Another tornado has been reported on the ground south of West Blockton. This one may stay a mile or two south of the last one. So in Alabaster, the frame of reference was the Publix on Highway 119. This one might be a little bit closer to Veterans Park as it uh, comes up in that direction, coming across 17 and then across uh, Alabama 119 in just a few moments. But uh, James, did you have something about uh, the, the Northeast Alabama storm? Well, we're getting reports of multiple damage around Ohatchee. And again, uh, that's a sign that this thing is down and that storm is pretty much moving through Piedmont right now. And again, uh, this is Piedmont right here and that rotation is gonna be coming up maybe just north of town around Goshen and Spring Gardens. So again, the, the call to action, look at that. Boy, man. Goodness, are you kidding me? Uh, that is a violent tornado that is just west of Piedmont. Everybody in Piedmont, Goshen, Spring Garden, be in a safe place now. This is not the kind of time to go outside and watch this stuff, to look for it. This is a time, a time where you have to go to a safe place now. Children, if you haven't put on a bicycle helmet, uh, that can save somebody's life. It's happened before. It can happen again. Uh, and, and we want you as low as you can go. Underground, if you can get there, no mobile homes and no cars. So, again, a potential a violent tornado just west of Piedmont moving to the east-northeast. This is Highway 9 at US 278. Uh, this is going to pass north of Jacksonville. So again, the call to action is for Piedmont. We have a confirmed tornado on the ground, a very large tornado on the ground near Piedmont. Yep. That, that. So we've got two of them on the ground right now that could be fairly sizable. Right. So again, at this point, we have a tornado emergency for Piedmont, Goshen, and Spring Garden. Look at that debris ball. Yep. And, and this thing is right on the Cherokee uh, Calhoun County line. And ultimately, it's going to wiggle over into uh, Cherokee County up here, just north of Piedmont. But again, uh, Spring Garden, Goshen, you, you know the story. This is very similar to March 27, 1994. This tornado could be just as large, if not larger. That was an EF4. So a tornado emergency for the community of Piedmont, Goshen, Spring Garden, anybody close to those cities. You want to be in a safe place right now. All right, let's go back to our storm coming out of Bibb County. This is one tornado that is down. The second tornado that is down is located uh, in Bibb County that is approaching Shelby County. Uh, so again, we have another storm that will be coming right up toward uh, Shelby County. And uh, again, it is this one right here. There's a TBS, a tornado vortex signature. And back in the southwestern flank of that, we have a potential tornado. And again, it's pretty much the same call to action. Uh, Pea Ridge, Montevallo, Maylene, Alabaster. This is Wilton, uh, Calera. So if you are in Shelby County in those communities, I know this is the second time we've gone through this drill, you need to be in a safe place. Uh, small room, lowest floor near the center away from windows. We encourage no travel along Alabama Highway 119, Shelby County Highway 17, Interstate 65 over the course of the next 30 minutes or U.S. Highway 31 between Helena, Pelham, and the Chilton County line is this uh, tornado comes through. The Weather Service is declaring this as a tornado uh, emergency uh, at this point uh, for Bibb County, and we'll see if that uh, they maintain that designation through Shelby County. The tornado initially was reported on the ground on uh, Highway 25. There is damage in Bibb County with that current storm. Uh, so that is the uh, situation we have there. Uh, and again, this is uh, a deal here, Jason, where we're getting into the uh, darkness now, which is something that we don't like, but uh, we're not able to see the streams from our sky watchers as easily as we can otherwise, but uh, they are still out. And I'll tell you what, if you can maybe double box very quickly. Just got a report uh, from the National Weather Service in Huntsville. A tornado hit a trailer park in West Point in Coleman County. There were injuries, but the number is unknown. Okay, and again, that was the one that clipped that northwestern part right, of that, Coleman that County. That was the most recent tornado in Coleman County. And I'm just telling you, again, it, it is important because we have so many life-threatening tornadoes. It, it, sometimes we might have just the chance to call your community once. Well, we often repeat it over and over again, but because there are so many, it might be a situation where you just hear your community one time. If you are close to any of these places we call out, don't wait on us to call it again. You go to a safe place. Uh, what you're seeing in the other box, that is uh, Terry Sasser's live stream. Again, he's streaming from some of the, the hardest hit areas of Birmingham and, and the reports are very troubling. We just heard from the EMA. Uh, he said he had reports of multiple 
fatalities in Pleasant Grove. He couldn't be more specific, but that was an EMA guy. I don't know. We're just passing on what they're telling us. The bottom line is we don't know how many people have died. We don't know how many people have been injured at this phase. You know how these, it takes the first light of day, the next day for us to see the severity of this whole thing. Uh, but again, this is serious, serious business. So again, uh, for this storm coming out of Bibb County, for those of you in Pea Ridge, Montevallo, Wilton, uh, Maylene, Alabaster, uh, being a safe place. Man, this might be a little closer to Montevallo here, Jason, from looking at this uh, campus of the University of Montevallo, community of Wilton down here, being a very safe place. And again, that's going to move up down Highway 25 toward Calera. And uh, again, the Weather Service, based on their reports, designating this as a tornado emergency. And again, you can clearly see the indication of that strong tornado uh, that is going to be crossing into Shelby County fairly soon. So that's the situation there. Let's go back up to our storm in northeast Alabama. We have two tornadoes that are apparently down right now. The second is the one that's near Piedmont, and we can be thankful we're going to hand this one off to Georgia in about 30 minutes as it crosses out of the state. But again, that thing is totally wrapped up right there. And again, that's Highway 9. This is... There is a large tornado on the ground there. I believe it. Very large. Anybody near the Goshen United Methodist Church be in a safe place. Anybody affected by that 1994 Palm Sunday tornado, be in a safe place now. Uh, as far south as Piedmont, be in a safe place now. Uh, Spring Garden over here in the southeastern part of Cherokee County. This is all way south of Leesburg and Center. This is all way north of Anniston. The problem area, Piedmont, Goshen, Spring Garden. That's the triangle. If you live around there, this is a major violent tornado that is down. And again, we cannot stress enough the urgency in getting to a safe place. So a tornado emergency for southern Cherokee and far northern Calhoun counties. This does not include the cities of Anniston, Oxford, Jacksonville. This is solely for Piedmont in the area near the Cherokee County line and the communities across Cherokee. Cherokee County as well. Here it comes, and this is the one that hit Tuscaloosa and Birmingham. Uh, this is a, uh, a storm that is a killer. Uh, it has produced uh, loss of life in Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, and now it is uh, hopefully not doing the same up here in the far northeastern part of, uh, of Alabama. And I tell you what, I'm going to, uh, you, you can leave the other box up. We're, we're going to uh, go back to some of these images, and it's amazing to me, Jason, we're seeing the debris coming from so many of these uh, hard-hit areas uh, uh, now showing up in various places. I've probably got a hundred pictures of debris from Tuscaloosa. And again, the one thing I want to encourage people to do, if you find debris in your yard, please save it. Uh, this might be precious to somebody uh, in Tuscaloosa or in Birmingham in these hard-hit areas. And they have no other way uh, of getting that back. And they might be very deeply appreciative if you save that and call them. Look at that. Uh, the, the Take that full. The, yeah. Let's, let's, go back to that let's go back to this image. And again, images like that are kind of telling the story. That is downtown Cordova. Now, again, the, the problem we've got, you know, did that happen this morning? Did it happen this afternoon? We've had multiple reports of uh, uh, tornadoes come through there. But again, that's what uh, downtown Cordova uh, looks like this afternoon. And we'll just keep rolling those. We'll go back to the double box. Okay, uh, uh, Nora Gathings is in Pleasant Grove. Uh, Nora, uh, tell us what has happened out there and what do you know about the loss of life out there? Well, James, um, right now we're just hearing initial reports that there have been a few fatalities, but over the last few minutes, I mean, things have just escalated from bad to even worse. We still haven't gotten to where the homes are leveled, but as we were walking in, we saw people being brought out in the back of pickup trucks, um, bruised from head to toe, wet. Their clothes were soaked with water, with blood. Um, and now you see men running back and forth. These are residents that live out here yelling for any able-bodied man that's out here to help carry out bodies. They're bringing out people mm. on doors. Um, many of them appear to still be alive, um, but they're appears, you know, and they've uh, made makeshift slings. They've tried to w wrap up some wounds. But there's a lot of people out here bleeding. There's a lot of people out here that still have not found their loved ones. Um, the last phone call that they had with them was right as the storm came through. The last thing they heard was Big Bang before uh, they lost service. So there's still a lot of missing people and a, a lot of people that are coming out severely injured at this point, James. Mm. And again, I, I, we, we have people watching this worldwide. Um, where Do you know, Anora, where the most concentrated damage in Pleasant Grove is at this point, based on what you know? I am, it's, um, I'm trying to look at a, a sign that's still standing, because I'm not particularly familiar with this part of uh, Pleasant Grove, but it's, a, it's around 10th Place and uh, 10th Street South, um, and apparently it stretches 
further back towards 11th, 12th Terrace. Um, from what the people are, who have been coming out have been telling us is are that there are very few homes that are standing. And by standing, um, they're referring to any home that has some semblance of still being a home. They're telling us there's levels. In addition to some of these people that they're bringing out, they're injured. They said there's more people that are up there moving around um, that have lost arms or legs. Mm. Goodness. Anora, thank you. And, and please keep us up to date. Oh. Like I've said many times, we don't know how many people have died right now. And, and we will know tomorrow. But, but the mission we have for the rest of this evening is to prevent further uh, loss of life. And, and a lot of the objects, by the way, you're seeing in the secondary box down there, those are objects from Tuscaloosa that have landed in Birmingham from the uh, areas hit so hard by the, those are the Birmingham tornadoes you can see in that shot, but th that's debris that's been falling from the sky in uh, the Birmingham metro. And, but again, l we're looking at the radar here, and we've got one violent tornado that is located very close to Spring Garden. Uh, we'll take a look at that, and we're going to go back to the second storm. And really, we're down to two. We're working right now, which is a good thing. This is, but this thing is just incredible. Uh, this is very wrapped up. This is Piedmont right here, and this thing has just crossed Highway 9. And again, it's crossed Highway 9 very close to the Goshen United Methodist Church. That thing was rebuilt. I had the, the privilege of being the first speaker in that church after they rebuilt it, after the 94 tornado, uh, the first Sunday morning in which they had a worship service there. But again, that thing is totally, totally wrapped up moving it to the east it will be out of the county very soon so again uh, in about 10 minutes this large tornado will be in georgia but for the next 10 minutes if you are located along or east of highway 9 in southern cherokee county uh, from goshen back over to spring garden please don't fool with this thing and be in a safe place until this uh, storm passes so that is clearly clearly that is the most violent storm on the board right now look at that absolutely incredible how this whole thing is wrapped up and we're seeing that from so far away right. yeah. the, the radar beam it's is, is five, way up there it's five to eight thousand feet off the ground and uh you know normally you don't see signatures like that unless that beam is a lot lower than that so again this is uh just very serious uh, according to the sheriff's department uh, mobile homes have been has been damaged in the fords valley area of etowah county uh there may be an injury involved in that Okay. And that's with that storm. So, again, the two storms we are currently working. We are working that storm that is a tornadic storm that will be in Georgia in about 15 minutes, but it's located uh, uh, near Spring Garden. The second one is coming up on uh, 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 Shelby County. And, again, on that lead tornado, we, we, we want to clearly say the Weather Service has canceled the warning for Calhoun and Etowah because the thing is exclusively in southern Cherokee right now. But the tornado warning continues in effect for parts of Bibb, Chilton, and Shelby. Uh, a tornado was reported near Wilton, uh, moving uh, to the northeast at 50 miles an hour. Wilton is just down Highway 25 from Montevallo. And uh, again, this is the Shelby County Airport next rad radar. That is the circulation that is wrapped up. And again, uh, Maylene is, or I'm sorry, Wilton is actually down here, but it sure looks like the circulation might be north of there. And it could be a case where people are looking north and they're seeing the circulation. But everybody in Montevallo and Maylene and Alabaster need to be in a safe place. Everybody in Calera needs to be in a safe place. I know this is the second time you've done that. If you've got young children, it's a very challenging thing to do. But uh, in a case like this, you cannot take any chances. You have to respect this because of the loss of life we have had today. And again, that will be crossing over Interstate 65 and U.S. 31. So no travel along Interstate 65 or U.S. 31 between Pelham and the Chilton County line. I know that technically Chilton County is involved in this warning, but more than likely this circulation will stay north of the uh, uh, Chilton County line. This is mainly a problem for southern Shelby County. So once again, uh, we have a potentially violent tornado uh, that is in the process of approaching uh, Alabama Highway 119, Shelby County Highway 17, Alabaster, Maylene, Calera, crossing I-65, very similar to the first one we saw here. Uh, but the and most there's that, that initial storm there that's coming up uh, north of Vincent. Yeah, and again, so is there a tornado warning for this one? Yes, there yeah, is still there, a tornado okay. warning for okay. that. Uh, that. That one is on Highway 231 uh, southwest of Pell City. This one is uh, probably going to stay a little northwest of the city of Talladega. Uh, from Vincent to Pell City, Cropwell on Highway 231, Stinley on uh, Highway 36, crossing over the Coosa River. Uh, you need to be in a safe place right now. That circulation has ramped up a little bit. It's more intense than it was when it passed through Chelsea. So there may be something to that one as well. There could be a tornado down uh, in southern St. Clair County. That'd be south of the Wolf Creek area, south of Pell City now, but it's moving to the northeast, so this very well could clip that southern end of Pell City uh, where a tornado passed through back in 2008. Uh, we had a, 
a derecho event, a long line of thunderstorms that came through and caused a spin up tornado down along Lake Logan Martin in the, that part of Pell City down close to Highway 36. And this is going to be in that same area, except the angle of attack is a little different. This one's coming in from Vincent moving toward Pell City and Stanley. All right, so again, we, we have three circulations we're working with. Again, we, we've got this one that Jason was talking about up here around Vincent that's going to be crossing over into uh, southern St. Clair and Talladega counties. We got the one down here near uh, Alabaster and this big one. This, this is a whopper. I mean, this is the big one. This is about to move into Georgia. This is the Alabama-Georgia line. This is Cherokee County, Alabama. And that uh, large, violent tornado will be exiting the state here in about uh, 15 minutes or so. So, again, the, the good news with that, we're about to get rid of this thing. Uh, but, again, keep in mind there are uh, certainly others that are still to come. But that is a very wrapped-up uh, tornado in the community of Rock Run. This is Sandy Springs. And, again, that's the Georgia border. And this thing will be out of here very soon in just a matter of minutes. So we're about to lose this one over into Georgia. And, of course, uh, that belongs to the Atlanta television market. So uh, let's go back and focus on these two storms, uh, one moving out of Shelby County, one moving into Shelby County. And these are the two that are on the board right now. And uh, uh, we, we are thankful that the dry line is progressing into Alabama. Uh, and I do believe that is our dry line, Jason, right there. That's it. Uh, this is dry mm -hmm. air, stable air. So for Hamilton, Russellville, the Shoals, severe weather risk is over. And we can be thankful for that. And this could be coming through the Birmingham Metro probably within the hour. But down here in advance of that, we have these violent long track supercell thunderstorms. And we should also mention there's a tornado warning in effect for Coosa County. Uh, that's because of a storm uh, near Prattville, uh, west of Montgomery, that's uh, coming up uh, just like that. So Coosa County, southeast Coosa County, you're under a tornado warning. There's a possible tornado near Prattville that will move across Elmore and then cross into Coosa County. But uh, immediately the threat is in St. Clair, Talladega, northeast Shelby, and southwestern Shelby County, James. Yeah, we, we've got the first image coming out of Pleasant Grove. If we can uh, take that, uh, now this is coming from Enora uh, Gathings. Can you guys in the back take that full screen? We're stuck in that. All right, we, we got to get you all a Mac back there. Uh, th again, this, this is uh, uh, a scene uh, that was from uh, uh, Pleasant Grove. And again, we understand that we have multiple fatalities in Pleasant Grove. We don't know how many. Uh, but again, the images that you're seeing are in the other box are, are coming from our viewers. And again, uh, that is uh, uh, an image, uh, a video of the tornado as it uh, came through uh, Birmingham, areas north. Uh, Birmingham, I believe that, or that might be the uh, Tuscaloosa storm. It's the same storm. But again, what we're going to do is just kind of let that run in the uh, other box that you're seeing uh, down below, and we are going to carry on with the uh, tornado warning information in the other box, and, and we will make it perfectly clear that we have potential of circulation right now in Shelby County below Alabaster that's about to cross Interstate 65 and U.S. 31 moving northeast. And again, it's very much like the first rotation that came through Shelby County. We have not heard of any specific damage at this point uh, from Shelby County, which is fantastic news considering the depth of the damage we have seen today. But uh, again, this new circulation will be crossing I-65 around Calera and the Shelby County Airport, moving northeast over here, probably passing north of Columbiana, moving over toward uh, Harpersville and Vincent. So let's move up the line a little bit. We'll check this second rotation. And Jason, the original rotation that came through is now probably around the Coosa River, if I would uh, imagine. And uh, that will be uh, down, uh, down below Cropwell, uh, around the Lake Logan Martin Dam. And that one's intensifying. Yeah. It, it's I mean, right on Highway that, 231. That's nasty looking. Yeah, it's, it's just south of Cropwell. That is very dangerous. And ju just a note to pass along, uh, Birmingham Fire has requested that all off-duty personnel report to their fire stations. Mm. So Birmingham Fire requesting anyone who's off-duty to come to work immediately. The, the National problems. Guard has also been uh, activated coming to Birmingham by Governor uh, Bentley. Uh, to help in this major uh, disaster that has uh, hit our state today. Uh, if you're just joining us, the, the most serious uh, damage so far has been Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. Two big cities were hit uh, with multiple fatalities and injuries. We just don't know the numbers yet. As soon as we get hard numbers, we'll let you know. Uh, but again, that is a very dangerous storm that's down around Cropwell, and uh, that's going to be crossing over Lake Logan Martin. So if you're close to Lake Logan Martin or south of Pell City, you need to be in a safe place. Uh, this will be moving over toward the Talladega Super Speedway. You need to be in a safe place. The good news, this thing is on the way out. Uh, this uh, violent uh, circulation is on the Alabama-Georgia border, and it's gone. So we are going to consider that storm gone. So now we can work uh, really three. Uh, Jason, we should mention we have a new warning for parts of Hale, 
and Marengo counties and Sumter counties. So we do need to go down to the west central part of the state. Uh, Sumter and Marengo counties, those are assigned to other television markets, but hail is ours. And there's debris falling in Sumter County. Oh, great. Uh, all right, let's look right down here. And again, that is, a, that is the storm that has prompted this uh, new tornado warning. And again, uh, the, the circulation has come across uh, uh, the Tom Bigby River. Uh, this is Linden, this is Myrtlewood. Uh, this will be above Nanaflia and Sweetwater. And quite frankly, it looks like this thing is coming right over toward Linden. I know that Hale County is technically in the warning, but this looks like an exclusive Marengo County issue. So again, the call to action here, that, that's Providence, that's Alabama 69 going up to uh, uh, Galleon at US 43 going up to uh, Demopolis, but that is a uh, potential violent tornado approaching Linden. If you are in Linden in Marengo County or Providence or anywhere close, be in a safe place. We had loss of life down here in a big way April 15th around the communities of Octagon. And again, that's that violent circulation that is approaching Linden. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time here because Marengo belongs to the Montgomery television market, but we know a lot of people watch us there. So a violent tornado potentially approaching Linden and Providence up here in uh, Marengo County. Uh, that's US 80. This is Demopolis. This uh, circulation will stay south of Demopolis. And again, that will keep moving northeast, ultimately crossing uh, Alabama Highway 25 which is right here. Fawnsdale is located right here. Uh, there's Thomaston, Dayton is down there below that, and there's Uniontown. So that's our storm down to the south. Now let's take a look at our uh, Shelby County storm and uh, the, the the storm coming up out of Alabaster. We'll see how that looks. Uh, at one point, the Weather Service declared a tornado emergency for uh, Bibb County because they had uh, uh, reports of this being down. We'll put on the that thing looks tight. Yeah, it really does. I mean, th this thing is coming right up through Alabaster. And again, this is a very populated part of the world. But our call to action here is for Alabaster and Calera. And, and really, more than TBS, likely, it's yeah. going to be right down in through here. Uh, this thing will be passing very close to the Shelby County Airport. The National Weather Service more than likely is evacuating their office. Uh, the Weather Service in Birmingham is located down here at the Shelby County Airport. Significant tornado index is an 8.2, and that's a big deal. I know we've seen numbers as high as 15 today, but that is a, a big deal. But again, that is uh, uh, a, a possible tornado approaching the Shelby County Airport, Alabaster, Calera. And if you are anywhere close to those communities, please go to a safe place and stay there until this thing passes. This will traverse the southern part of Shelby County. Uh, more than likely passing near or north of Columbiana and then coming out on the uh, 280 corridor around Westover or uh, uh, Vincent or Harpersville, places like that. So again, we'll take this data off. And uh, again, so that's circulation number one. Uh, Alabaster, Calera, you know the deal. Let's look at circulation number two, south of Pell City. This is about to cross Lake Logan Martin. This is a very dangerous storm. Uh, this circulation you see right here, look at the notch. Uh, it's right here. That's a TVS, a tornado vortex signature moving northeast. And again, uh, this will be passing north of uh, Talladega. The uh, Talladega Super Speedway sits right here. And uh, again, this is Speedway Boulevard. That's Interstate 20. Uh, this rotation will be moving northeast up in the direction of the Super Speedway. Uh, so we don't want anybody traveling on US 78, which is here, Interstate 20, which is here, Alabama 77, which is here. Uh, this will clearly pass north of the city of Talladega. But I'd say, uh, folks, it's about Shaco Springs and points north. You need to be in a safe place. Significant tornado index is a 9.9. Uh, like all of the other ones we have seen today, that is a very significant number. So a major tornado is now below Pell City. It's come through Cropwell. It's crossing Lake Logan Martin right now. It will emerge on the eastern side of Lake Logan Martin, uh, crossing Highway 77 and very close to the Talladega Super Speedway, then ultimately crossing Interstate 20 uh, out here around the East Boga exit. So uh, we advise no travel on Interstate 20 between Pell City and Anniston. We thank our radio partners uh, over on the eastern side of the state. It's uh, Thunder uh, 92.7 WT. TDR. Uh, and let's look at uh, the other one is out. So that the, the good news I have to report, we have three circulations. We have this one, the one near Alabaster, and the one near Linden. Okay, so, you know, three, it's manageable. And there's the big picture. Uh, this is one, two, three. We've also got Coosa County under a tornado warning, a sliver of Coosa County for this uh, tornado that's indicated near Prattville. And we'll, we'll show you that. Uh, again, the core of this more than likely will stay well to the south of Coosa County. This is more of an Atauga, Elmore County problem. We've got a possible tornado located west of Prattville. Uh, but again, a lot of people watch this stream. So if you are in uh, Prattville uh, or Wetumpka, area, the suburbs north of Montgomery, be in a safe place. You know, it actually looks like we have multiple circulations. Look at this on the reflectivity. 
if you look at it carefully, it looks like there are three supercells that are just back to back to back in a line uh, from Prattville up to Pine Level and then right up to the uh, Chilton Coosa County line. I, I know that's not exactly the case, but uh, anywhere in there, we may have one storm that uh, kind of takes over and becomes the more dominant cell, and it will likely be the more southern one, uh, but anywhere within that entire batch of storms, it's coming across Elmore County, and that will cra uh, that will uh, clip the uh, southern edge of Coosa County. You need to be in a safe place right now. There is a uh, potential for some significant damage in this part of the state. It's not been tapped down here at all. It's in the 80s still in the, in the Montgomery area. So we've got a lot of really warm, humid air. Uh, the atmospheric dynamics are just a little bit better to the east right now than they are to the west because with that dry line coming in, the helicity or the amount of uh, rotation that a thunderstorm is able to ingest is going to change a little bit. In fact, it's going to flip around toward uh, where the helicity is almost zero when you get to the other side of that dry line. So things are going to improve really quickly in extreme west Alabama, but we've got a long way to go to get all these storms out of the eastern part of the state. And if we can double box it, I, I'm going to let some of the images roll from our viewers uh, again. Uh, we and, and that is the uh, Tuscaloosa tornado, by the way. Uh, and we have so many photographs. And of course, if you watched our uh, uh, live coverage, you you saw that live with the sky cam. That the sky cam images today have been absolutely uh, riveting. But we are working three specific rotation areas within our television market. Uh, we have one near Linden in Marengo County, and really that's in the Montgomery television market. So we're going to focus on uh, the Shelby County uh, rotation and the St. Clair County rotation. So again, let's go to uh, Shelby County. We have uh, a circulation that is near Alabaster and Calera moving northeast. And uh, that's going to carry this circulation, which interestingly enough is almost right over the next rad radar at the Shelby County Airport. Uh, that's going to be moving up this way. Uh, the greatest threat of a tornado is going to be south of uh, Shelby County 11. This is the road from Alabaster back over to Chelsea High School, and that will be passing uh, through uh, Camp Branch and uh, Saginaw and places like that. Pretty close to Columbiana. Uh, that's 47 coming out of Columbiana, Columbiana back up toward Chelsea. So uh, everybody in the path of this thing should clearly be in a safe place. Uh, everybody from Chelsea down to Columbiana. Uh, you need a lot of residential neighborhoods in through here. Be in a very safe place as this storm passes. And again, this will be coming out Highway 280 down around Harpersville and Vincent. And uh, we'll keep a close eye on that. So the first call to action is for Shelby County for a possible tornado uh, near Calera, uh, moving to the northeast. That's going to take it between Chelsea and Columbiana. Let's check the uh, Shelby County storm or the uh, St. Clair County storm. And man, that looks nasty. The, you Goodness. know, the, the, like I said a minute ago, the dynamics are getting a little better to the east than they are to the west. So as these storms are now crossing I-65, they are running out of an environment where uh, it's a little bit more iffy to a more substantially strong thunderstorm kind of environment over St. Clair County and Talladega County as well as Calhoun County. So this tornado warning that's near Pell City a storm is very likely producing a tornado there just like uh, we've seen with the last couple of these. They've intensified over St. Clair and uh, over Calhoun. Hey, uh, check, check this out. The, the National Weather Service in Mobile is now taking over for Birmingham because Birmingham has taken shelter. Uh, the Weather Service in Birmingham has uh, taken shelter for that rotation near the Shelby County Airport. Isn't that crazy? I mean, don't see that every day. No. So and that's exactly what you need to do. I mean, we, we have done that in, in situations uh, in, in years past. But once again, we have a tornado near the Shelby County Airport that the Weather Service in Mobile is taking over for them uh, for a moment. But again, this is a, uh, a very violent storm that's located uh, uh, near Pell City and Lake Logan Martin approaching uh, the Talladega Super Speedway. That's the second rotation near the Shelby County Airport moving northeast. Uh, that's going to be passing between Chelsea and Columbiana. New tornado warning for Coleman County oh, again. Boy. That's this on the dry had, line. Yeah, this is it's right on the dry line. Uh, there, there's a little bit of an increase in the, uh, the, I mentioned the helicity just a minute ago. When you get west of that dry line, it improves, but right along it and just east of it, it's still significant enough that it could produce a tornado. So downtown Coleman, Good Hope, Vinemont, Holly Pond, you are in line for another one that could come through there uh, with the potential for some damaging winds. A possible tornado may be along with it. I am fairly certain that we do not have our Coleman Skycam available, but I'm going to look and see anyway. 
No, we do not. It's uh, it's been gone since 2:57 this afternoon. So uh, we're still watching as the dry line comes in. There is a possible tornado over the western side of Coleman County. Winston County is under a severe thunderstorm warning for this, but Coleman County has uh, under the National Weather Service and Huntsville's authority uh, been placed under a tornado warning. Possible tornado would be near Arley, moving up toward uh, Crane Hill, uh, moving near the Smith Lake Park, uh, Trimble. Uh, Good Hope, Coleman, Vinemont, West Point, Jones Chapel, Baldwin, uh, Fairview, Bailenton, Simcoe, Holly Pond, uh, Berlin, Hansville. You know where you are here. This is uh, the same kind of thing. And we have uh, we have ne neglected to say this a little bit in the past couple of hours just simply because uh, we said it so many times earlier. But there, I, I, would, I would venture to say almost every power customer in Coleman County is without power. So if you know someone up in Coleman County, if you can get in touch with them, let them know that another tornado is on the way in. This one seems to be ramping up a little bit. We'll take a peek at it from the Columbus, Mississippi next round and look at the velocity product. And let me quickly, Jason, uh, uh, the sad news, CNN is reporting 25 dead in Alabama right now. 25 dead, at least three in Tuscaloosa. Many are in the Birmingham area, Pleasant Grove. So just wanted to pass that on. This is serious business. Most serious loss of life we've had around here in a long, long time, too. And again, we don't know we don't know the numbers, but you go ahead with the Coleman County warning. Yeah, the the, the, uh, the warning for Coleman County uh, is is for a storm that will likely affect the city of Coleman again. There's another pretty heavy thunder shower on the east side of Hansville, and we'll have to watch that one because the atmosphere is still primed for additional development. Uh, the radar out of Birmingham, looking at this, seeing uh, the, the strong hail core right along Highway 278, just southeast of Addison, uh, right around the Baldwin community, and then the rotating part of this storm is a little well, probably about uh, 17, 18 miles southwest of downtown Coleman, and it's moving right toward the city again. So uh, if, if you're in that area, you need to be in a safe place immediately. Uh, we have uh, multiple warnings still in effect. The good news is this storm that's coming through Coleman County represents the back edge of the severe weather threat. Uh, those showers that go down through Walker and Fayette and Pickens, any of those could turn severe and turn tornadic at any moment. A severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect for Walker County, for Winston County, but it uh, looks like the worst of that storm is now well up into Coleman County. We have uh, that storm that came through Cherokee that's now north of Cedartown, Georgia. Uh, a very powerful storm on the east side of Pell City, and it looks like that thing is approaching the Talladega Super Speedway, and we have a bounded weak echo region. Haven't seen one that looked just like that in a while, but that's what the Coleman tornado looked like when it went over about to 3 o'clock this afternoon. We had that little donut hole, and that's what you got right there on I-20, just southwest of downtown Lincoln, south of the uh, Honda plant. That'll come over Speedway Boulevard and then move over toward Anniston and Oxford. So uh, the last tornado for Calhoun County, the last warning was for... The northern part, this one's going to be for the uh, the main Anniston-Oxford metropolitan area in uh, southern Calhoun County, northern Talladega County, too. Well north of Munford and Talladega. If you're Talladega, Sylacauga, this one's not going to bother you, uh, but there's a high potential for a tornado near I-20 and Speedway Boulevard, Highway 77, around the Lincoln area. You need to be in a safe place just as soon as you can get there. We'll look at the parameters here based off of the, uh, the radar system. Uh, that's a TVS, that little red triangle that you see in the uh, left-hand corner. Significant tornado index is still a 10.3. Tornado impact is a 5.2. So these numbers not as high as they were for West Alabama earlier on, but uh, certainly high enough to uh, take these things seriously. Uh, tornado warning remains in effect for Shelby County, and uh, we've also got a tornado warning in effect for Coosa County. Uh, Southern Talladega County, you will likely be affected by the second storm. First storm passes north of Talladega. This one that has just come past Alabaster. I've not seen any reports of damage out of it, but uh, we do know that a, uh, a tornado could form in this thing at any time. It's running into a slightly more favorable environment east of I-65. You know, the Weather Service had to take cover from that one. And, and again, what you're doing, we're double boxing uh, video and images from our viewers uh, in one box and ongoing severe weather in the second box. And again, the uh, EMA has confirmed 25 people have been killed at least. We don't know how many people have been killed in the state. Uh, the latest number is, uh, is 25. I'm afraid that death toll is going to go higher. We'll get a breakdown here shortly. But again, what we're, we're still going to stay with all of these dangerous storms until they are totally gone.
out of our market, and then we'll focus on damage and recovery and tell you what we know and what we do. We won't tell you what we don't know. Uh, a lot of times rumors get flying out, and uh, what we tell you is coming straight from the horse's mouth when it comes to uh, the numbers in terms of fatalities and injuries. All right, so again, we've got one rotation that's on Sh uh, Shelby County 47 between Chelsea and Columbiana. Come over here toward Westover uh, and uh, Harpersville and Vincent. Uh, if you're in any of these communities, be in a safe place right now. Uh, Bill and Vincent, uh, if you're in any of these communities, be in a safe place right now. Uh, let's look at the line down in Clay County, farther to the southeast. We, you know, we've been, we've been focusing on these uh, areas with potential for tornadoes. And again, that's a pretty good-looking rotation right there. Uh, this is in Coosa County, that is north of Rockford and south of Goodwater. And uh, we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, and let's let's tell you what, let's take off the uh, data and let's look at polygons for just a moment. Sometimes when you have multiple tornadoes. Tornado warnings in effect. There's no warning for clay, no warning at all. We've got a tornado warning for parts of Coosa County, which is ours right here uh, for that circulation. This does not include Alexander City or Dadeville, but it does include Rockford and Goodwater and Point South. Uh, so again, uh, for Coosa County, there's a tornado warning for the southeastern half of the county. I want to point that out. Let's go farther north. We'll take a look at these polygons again. Uh, we've got the tornado warning that's in effect for Shelby County, and this is for the uh, rotation that is coming out of uh, the Shelby County Airport region, back up toward Vincent and uh, uh, Harpersville uh, right here and we've got the other tornado warning that's in effect over here for a storm that is along I-20 and, and I think out of all of the storms the most dangerous one is this one that is pretty close to uh, Interstate 20 uh, pretty close to I'd say the uh, uh, maybe the uh, Embry Crossroads exit on Interstate 20. So let's look at that. We'll put the radar data back on here. This is a TVS, a tornado vortex signature. That's the uh, uh, triangle we see here and uh, that is a storm that is uh, Quite all of these storms are dangerous. Uh, and by the way, I should mention in a lot of the uh, images that you're seeing, you're seeing debris that people are shooting. You're getting this stuff from Tuscaloosa found as far away as Gadsden now. Uh, we're getting reports of uh, objects from Tuscaloosa, receipts and check stubs and things like that uh, being found in Etowah County, 115 miles away. Absolutely amazing. All right, but this is our storm that is uh, very wrapped up, and we have a possible tornado crossing the interstate right now, uh, awfully close to the super speedway. And again, that's moving northeast, and of course, that's going to take it. Uh, this is Bynum. That'll be crossing the Anniston Army Depot region, then curving back over into uh, uh, the region around Anniston and Oxford. So, you know, for much of the evening, we have had no issues for Anniston and Oxford, but now we've got a possible tornado coming right in toward the uh, Anniston metro area here. This is Oxford. This is Anniston. So, again, uh, this is a dangerous storm that is in northern Talladega County along Interstate 20, uh, very close to the Alabama 77 exit. That's the uh, Lincoln Talladega exit and that will continue moving to the northeast and that's going to take it in the general direction of Anniston. So again, this is a tornado warning for northern Talladega. This is all north of Talladega in parts of Calhoun counties uh, and this could affect easily uh, Anniston and Oxford. So uh, we want to point out that that's a very dangerous storm. Uh, we've got the storm up in Coleman County. Jason, let's kind of run through that one uh, for we, our friends up north on the dry line. We got a uh, report of another tornado that was east of Hansville moving northeast instead 75 miles per hour. That was local law enforcement in Coleman County reporting that. So we had the initial tornado, uh, which was on the western side of the county. And we mentioned this little uh, little spin up shower here that's uh, south of Holly Pond. Uh, according to Hansville Police or Coleman County Sheriff, not sure which law enforcement that came from, but a possible tornado near the Mulberry River between Bluntsville and Holly Pond that's moving northeast very fast. There is no time to even think about something other than going to a safe place in Holly Pond, Bluntsville, Rock Springs, Rough Edge, Union Grove. There goes Birmingham triggering the warning for that as well. So a tornado on the ground near the Mulberry River east of Hansville moving northeast, Bluntsville, Rainbow Crossing, Holly Pond, Rough Edge, Union Grove. You need to be in a safe place. There has been significant damage in this area already, so call folks. If you can get in touch with them, let them know that uh, you have another tornado on the ground that's moving in that part of Coleman.
and Blount counties. On the western side of Cullman County, we have a more significant looking storm based on the radar presentation. A uh, significant hook echo, possible tornado west of Cullman, moving right toward the city yet again. So a hail core on Highway 78 or Highway 278 near Jones Chapel, possible tornado on the ground on the northern fringe of Smith Lake, just northwest of Smith Lake Park. That will affect the city of Cullman yet again. So another tornado is likely headed into Cullman. Another one just on the east side of Holly Pond and Bluntsville. James. Okay, we're, uh, late note from Alabama Power Company, 375,000 customers are without power in the Birmingham Metro, 173,000. That is why we are asking you to call anybody that you might know. If we call out a certain uh, community that's in the path of a tornado, give them a call on a cell phone, a landline, just try because so many people are without power. Again, statewide, 375,000 people. And many people have been without power since this morning when the storms came through. Keep in mind, you know, we started this uh, uh, coverage early this morning and uh, uh, they've been without all day. So we are still in the midst of a serious, deadly tornado outbreak. At least 25 people have been killed, many more injured. Uh, a lot of fatalities are coming from Tuscaloosa. Now three in Tuscaloosa, that's the latest number I've seen. Three fatalities in Tuscaloosa, many in the Pleasant Grove community in the western part of the Birmingham Metro. Uh, and again, we still have ongoing violent weather in progress. Quickly, let's check the storm down here near Linden. Again, this is the Montgomery market, but there are many that watch us in Marengo County. And again, I just wanted to point out that we have potential for a violent tornado at Linden that's moving to the east-northeast. That'll be crossing Highway 25 around Dayton. So again, if you're in uh, Linden, Dayton, Fawnsdale, be in a safe place. Let's work our way north. Let's start with the Shelby County storm. We, in the, in the, the good encouraging news here, we have not heard of any specific damage reports out of Shelby County with either of these uh, storms as they have come through. But again, uh, this is the storm that prompted the Weather Service to evacuate their office, and it's clearly wrapped up. Uh, there's no doubt that this storm is in circulation. This is Alabama Highway 25. That's U.S. Highway 280. Possible circulation approaching Harpersville. And again, the uh, tornado impact number is very high to 9.1. Uh, so even though we have not had reports of damage, we encourage everybody to take this seriously. We encourage people in Harpersville, Vincent, Calcis to be in a safe place as far south as Wilsonville. Uh, and also that includes the uh, Gaston steam plant of, uh, of Alabama Power Company. Uh, we encourage uh, the uh, power company to go through their safety plan, which they have in place there. Uh, and again, that will be ultimately crossing the Coosa River over into uh, Talladega County. So that's the circulation we have here in Shelby. Let's go up to our circulation near Lincoln, and this is the one that's approaching Anniston and Oxford. Uh, for many people in East Alabama, you've been watching us all day long, wondering when will the stuff get here? Well, it's here. Uh, of course, we had one very violent storm that went uh, right across Piedmont and Goshen and Spring Garden, but again, this thing is all wrapped up, and it's in the process of approaching Anniston and Oxford, so we'll take a closer look at this, and I'm encouraging everybody at the Anniston Army Depot, Sachs, Anniston, Linlock, Weaver, Oxford, Quintard Mall. Uh, all of those places need to go through your tornado plan now. And again, if you're new to the area, that should be a small room on the lowest floor near the center away from windows. Car, the worst place to be. Mobile home, worst place to be. You've got to be in a site-built structure uh, and ride this thing out. They're moving very rapidly. The storm motion is at approximately 50 to 60 miles per hour, so this will be east of Anniston pretty soon. But again, this is the split right here. That's uh, 21 going up to Jacksonville. That's 431 going up to Alexandria. There's downtown Anniston, and we've got a, uh, a tower cam. And, and let me ask you this back in the back, Monroe. Do we have access to the Blue Mountain tower cam that overlooks Anniston? And that is out. Okay, again, we have a lot of infrastructure issues. Uh, okay, it's not visible, which means that, okay, so we do, we do have it. It's just gray, right? Okay, thank you, Vic. Uh, so as soon as this rain gets off of that camera, Vic, I, I want you to kind of keep an eye on that for me, or Jason can do this. And once we get the rain shaft off the Blue Mountain camera, we've got a great shot at this thing coming right into Anniston. Uh, so again, we're going to monitor the uh, uh, sky cam that is on uh, Blue Mountain, and that'll give us an amazing shot of this. And this is uh, a storm that is extremely dangerous, approaching Anniston and Oxford. 
and we encourage everybody to that's in Southern Calhoun County around Anniston to be in a safe place. The possible tornadic circulation is basically right over the Anniston Army Depot right now, continuing to move to the northeast. I'd say the greatest risk will be north of Oxford. Oxford is down here along the interstate, so uh, but still it is close enough to where those of you in Oxford need to be in a safe place, but certainly Anniston and points north. Up here you've got communities like Weaver, Linlock, and Sachs. Uh, look at this thing all wrapped up, and that's moving steadily to the east-northeast, and it's going to go right over these northern suburbs of Anniston. Uh, so let's, let's just take that camera, if we can, uh, maybe in the secondary box. And I forget it's dark outside. You know, we've been here so long. We've been long. here a long time. It's been, it, it is, we were here before yeah, it got light. That's right. You know, it's just like... Uh, it never stops. Um, we're we're going to watch for power flashes on that camera. Again, uh, this is the uh, Blue Mountain uh, Sky Cam in Anniston. And uh, at night, longtime viewers know that we watch for the power flashes. And technically, it's not transformers exploding, it's fuse boxes or breakers exploding that the power company has in place to protect their system. Uh, and that's when, of course, the power goes out. We've seen many of those things. We, we saw those. This morning, when the line came through Birmingham, we saw the power flashes uh, uh, with the straight line winds and the tornadoes that came through. So it's been a long day of this stuff. Uh, but again, uh, uh, so far, we don't see anything specific. Uh, and I'm not so sure that that is overlooking Anniston. What we want to do is position that to be looking over Anniston, maybe a little north of Anniston, uh, over toward Coldwater Mountain. Um, you know, it is so hard looking at that shot where it is. But I'll tell you one thing, it is awfully windy up there, Jason. You see how the thing is shaking. Let, yeah. Let's zoom it all the way out and pan it to the right. Uh, and, and again, the way, the, the way it works, longtime viewers know, with the old tower cams, they have control over in the newsroom. With the new sky cams, we have control here in the office. The sky cam network was built as a result of the Tuscaloosa tornado in uh, 2000, which we caught the tornado. But again, clearly, this is a very, very dangerous storm coming right into Anniston. So again, like I say, Oxford, I still want you in a safe place. If you live in Oxford, you want to be in a safe place, certainly Anniston, certainly Sachs, Weaver, Linlock, the old Fort McClellan property right here. Uh, now, Jacksonville, this is going to be south of you. You might have some hail going on here, and you might see some debris falling, uh, but clearly that is a significant tornado potentially approaching downtown Anniston or perhaps the northern suburbs. Uh, and we encourage everybody to stay in your safe place. This is racing rapidly. Keep in mind these things don't stop at traffic lights. They just keep on going. And uh, this will be ultimately affecting the Highway 9 corridor around White Plains. Uh, so for those of you that are on the Highway 9 corridor, we encourage you to be in a safe place. And uh, again, Jason, this is uh, one that always makes you nervous because it is coming into a very densely populated area right now. Right, but so far we have not heard of any damage reports in Calhoun County. Uh, it's passed just north of Bynum. It's passing into the city of Anniston on the west side right now. It's just north of the uh, Albert P. Brewer Parkway uh, coming across uh, the uh, area just to the southwest of Sachs. So if you're in Sachs, Anniston, Weaver, uh, even Oxford, you still need to be in that safe place. As James mentioned, uh, Quintard Mall, uh, uh, there you're looking toward right in the middle of downtown Anniston. Uh, you see Quintard, that's the McDonald's that sits on Quintard close to Anniston High School right there in the middle of the screen. So let's take from that perspective and zoom straight out from where we are now. We, we, we know exactly what we're looking at. So you're looking right downtown Anniston. So over that mountain is where the possible tornado would be. So let's let's leave it right. Well, don't go too far. We're now we're looking too far south. You're looking toward Oxford, and you get the uh, the darkness there from the other slope of the mountain. Uh, the darkness in the middle of the screen. It's hard to tell a bit of a difference there, but that's cold water. The lights in the middle are from the city of Anniston downtown, and we're looking straight at where a possible tornado would be from that tower camp. I don't see any power flashes. Looks like the lights are still on in Anniston, but there is still a very strong indication on radar that a tornado could be on the ground in uh, Calhoun County. And if it is, we want you to be safe. So go to that lowest floor of your home. Uh, stay away from the windows. The basement, a good place to be. If you can't get to a basement, just the lowest part of the house in the middle, the most walls between you and the outside that you can possibly get, that's where you want to be. All right, and uh, tell you what, let, let's go back and put uh, the uh, MacBook Pro in the office back in the other box. Uh, the, the, the images from our viewers, and boy, that's, uh, 
That was our air signal. If you missed it, uh, we caught that Tuscaloosa tornado coming across town. Somebody grabbed that off their iPhone uh, watching our, uh, our online coverage. But uh, goodness, uh, and the debris that is falling from the sky is stunning. We're finding clothes and uh, personal items uh, from people in Tuscaloosa and Birmingham uh, in various parts of the state tonight. So again, uh, it is uh, uh, just enhances the tragedy uh, that we have had today. And again, uh, the loss of life. I don't know how many people have died, at least 25. We know that. That's been confirmed. And more than likely, that number will go higher. So uh, Jason is monitoring the Blue Mountain uh, Tower Cam. And again, that circulation is about to come right over that spot. If there's something there, we will know it. The good news, we have not had any reports of damage along this track that's been running from near Lincoln back to near Anniston uh, with this particular storm. We did get a lot of reports of damage around Ohatchee with the storm that went up toward uh, Goshen and Raglan. And, and again, that was the one that followed the track similar to the Palm Sunday tornado, March 27, 1994. That storm is long gone. That's in Georgia. But there are others. Uh, uh, let's look at this one here. This is the one that uh, has been coming out of Shelby County. And uh, this storm is, has prompted a tornado warning. And again, it's wrapped up. I mean, this is the tornado that's located near Harpersville. And uh, this is moving over into Talladega County, and that'll be moving about like that. Uh, so uh, this is the city of Talladega. Uh, right here, uh, the tornado is near Harpersville. That is moving to the northeast, and that's going to make a beeline for downtown Talladega. Again, that is a very strong indication of a tornado near Vincent in Harpersville. Uh, that is uh, Alabama Highway 25 and US 231. That's Highway 280. This is now moving north of Highway 280, and again, that'll be out here near Coosa Pines and the uh, paper mill, and then ultimately uh, crossing uh, to a point pretty close to the city of Talladega. This might be clipping the far uh, southern tip of Lake Logan Martin around the Logan Martin Dam or maybe just south of there, but it's going to be crossing the river. And again, that is a very tight circulation. So we have a tornado indicated on radar near the communities of Vincent and Harpersville, moving to the northeast in the general direction of the city of Talladega. So again, for Talladega, you have missed a number of these circulations, but I'm afraid this one is going to be very close to where you are. So we encourage everybody uh, in the city of Talladega as this approaches to be in a safe place uh, over the course of the next uh, 30 minutes or so. That is a very uh, well wrapped up storm you see right there. Uh, so that is the storm that's coming out of Shelby. So the two that we're really focusing on, uh, the three, I should say, the one that's in Coleman. In fact, let's check that one, Jay. I'll let you work that one. Since and remember, that's your we, we, have, we have two different storms, and it looks like maybe a third one is developing. Look at that one in Blunt County. Yeah, and this one doesn't have a warning on it, but just like the one that produced the report of a tornado near Hansville, uh, that one near Nectar, uh, which is in the southwest part of Blunt County that will cross between Aniana and Cleveland on Highway 231. In fact, if I were in Rosa, I'd be going through a tornado safety plan right now. Uh, Rosa to Susan Moore, Highway 75. You're not under a formal tornado warning, but a rapidly developing thunderstorm may drop a tornado at any time uh, north of Highway 150 over toward uh, U.S. Highway 231 and uh, up toward uh, Alabama Highway 75. There's another significant thunderstorm that is crossing over Coleman right now. The Hook Echo is on the southwest side of the city, and it is coming right into downtown again. So hail falling in parts of Vinemont, another possible tornado near downtown Cullman. And if that one's on the ground, it may be just a touch northwest of where the original tornado hit the city uh, about 3 o'clock this afternoon. So um, what, about seven hours ago, six, seven hours ago, we had that major tornado there. Uh, the certainly looks like we may have a debris ball in that. So uh, in, on the west side of Cullman, uh, moving toward the northeast very quickly, there is a possible tornado that will cross through downtown and the northern part of the city over Lake Katoma, uh, over the Cullman Regional Medical Center, and then catch a ride on Highway 69 around Gold Ridge and Simcoe and Fairview yet again. So can't stress it enough, if you know folks who live northeast of Cullman on Highway 69, uh, even as far to the southeast as Holly Pond, especially that northwest side of Holly Pond, up around New Hope and uh, up the uh, Holly Pond Fairview Road, up toward uh, the, the if, if you're in the Holly Pond School District on that northwest side, uh, this is a tornado warning for you. So a potential debris ball showing up over the city of Coleman right now. That means we might have yet another large tornado that's passing through that city at this moment. It's about to cross Lake Katoma near the Coleman Regional Medical Center and then move across Utaka Industries, uh, crossing where Highway 6 
69 and Highway 157 intersect and then move right up uh, there in the direction of Simcoe uh, in the uh, eastern part of the county. So Gold Ridge, Simcoe, Berlin, Holly Pond, Baylitz, and Fairview. You need to be in a safe place right now. A uh, very strong thunderstorm with a possible tornado is moving northeast from the city of Coleman. Let's check in on that Blunt County storm again. And this one actually looks like it might be just a touch stronger than the one that's west of Coleman. Here's a look at the velocity product. And again, we have a strong rotation near Cleveland and easily moving toward Rosa. And that thing on the on the velocity actually looks more intense than the Coleman storm. So uh, in Cleveland, Rosa, Hendricks, Friday's Crossing, Susan Moore, Royal, uh, the southeast side of Bluntsville, down around Fowler Springs, you need to be in a safe place right now. Same thing for North Aniana, up around the uh, covered bridge on Highway they just, 75. They just cancel the warning for Blunt. Okay, well, that was for the uh, that was for the previous storm though. So you're probably that, right. Yeah, that was yeah. the previous storm. This one does not have a warning on it. I'm just saying if. I don't care if there's a warning, really. If there, there's a rotation there, it may drop a tornado. You just need to be in a safe place, regardless of whether there's a warning in place or not. That has n neither here nor there on exactly what's going on. But there's a rotation that's near Cleveland that might produce a tornado. Wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and go through that tornado safety plan. Our storm that is passing through the Anniston area is a little bit weaker than it was based on the, the velocity couplet here. There is still some very strong rotation right over Alexandria and Weaver. This is now passing north of the city of Anniston. So if we can, let's take our tower cam and pan it around to the right. We should be able to see the uh, intersection of U.S. 431 and 21 that goes up from uh, Saks toward Jacksonville and Piedmont. Uh, so if we can take that tower cam from Anniston and pan that around to the right, as far to the right as it will go, we'll see if we can see anything with uh, regard to power outages or anything like that. So uh, circulation sitting over the northern end of Anniston. Uh, you're still looking toward downtown, but there goes the camera slowly to the right. Uh, we'll keep on going. Just take it to it gets to that stop point. Uh, it won't go too far. I can do, you can trust me on that. So uh, we've got a possible tornado in the northern part of the Aniston area near the Pelham Heights, Weaver, uh, Sachs, and that will come in just south of Jacksonville if it's on the ground. So if you're in the Jacksonville area, you need to be in a safe place. Uh, Weaver, uh, the Alexandria Jacksonville Highway area, White's Gap, White Plains, you need to be in a safe place too. Okay, so there is the intersection of Highway 431 and Alabama 21 does not look like we have much of a power outage situation more than what we had earlier. So uh, that, that may be some pretty good news. Uh, this may not be down on the ground. That would be the best news of all. But uh, while we have this kind of rotation and this kind of atmosphere on a historic day like we have had, you don't want to take it for granted that there might not be a tornado there. You want to treat almost everything as if there is. And James, check out Coosa County. Look at this rotation down here in northern Coosa County. That might be the most intense storm on the board right now. Oh, wow. Goodness gracious. Are you kidding me? It's just like this stuff doesn't stop. Uh, this well, technically, is, it's in Elmore, but it's right, coming toward Coosa. To yeah. This is Coosa County right here. This is Elmore County. That's, uh, let's see, this is Alabama Highway 9. Uh, the community of equality is right there. So, again, that is a really, really dangerous storm. This is north of Montgomery. And, again, that's moving to the uh, northeast. And that's uh, probably going to stay mainly in Tallapoosa and Elmore counties. This is Coosa County right here. But, again, that thing is... Uh, uh, that's awfully. That, that's probably the most dangerous storm on the board right now. So an extremely dangerous storm uh, that's located near Eclectic. And again, that's in Elmore County, north of Montgomery. Uh, so let's do a reset here. Let's just kind of take the whole map full and let's show you where we are and what we've got. First off, the dry line. This represents the, the last of the storms right here. Uh, Winston, Marion, Fayette, Lamar, Pickens County. No more severe weather, all clear. Uh, but on the dry line, these storms are trying to spin up. Now, now the Weather Service believes that storms on the dry line would not produce the violent tornadoes like the storms that we saw earlier today, but it doesn't matter. On a day like today, if you're under a tornado warning, Please take that seriously. Uh, we've got uh, a possible tornado touch down near Linden. Uh, Report of that uh, via Twitter. And again, that huge storm down here in Elmore County. That's the storm of the moment. But let's look at this one that's approaching the city of uh, Talladega, Jason. Uh, this is a storm that is south of Interstate 20. Uh, you know, our storm came over Anniston. And uh, uh, normally, if something is happening, uh, Twitter and Facebook will light up like a Christmas tree. And I have not s seen any 
reports of damage from Aniston. And you, you correct me if I'm wrong, if you've seen something I have not. Well, the, the Weather Service says that they've had uh, multiple reports of damage in Calhoun County, uh, but I, I don't know I what think kind that, of damage. I think that's the storm that went north of Piedmont, it, it maybe. It could have been. Uh, you, you know, there, there's not... Uh, there's not a continuity with the statement there, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a southern Calhoun or the northern Calhoun storm, but probably you're right, the northern Calhoun. All right, but anyway, this is a very dangerous storm. I, look, right there's your tornado back in the southwest flank of this thing. This is coming right toward downtown Talladega. Uh, now, uh, again, this is uh, the home of the Alabama Institute for the uh, Deaf and Blind. We, we would encourage... Uh, uh, everybody there at the school to be sure everybody knows what's happening and get the uh, students to a safe place. Uh, we encourage, uh, again, th this is Wednesday night. I think most churches are not holding services this evening. We've been doing this so long, uh, I've seen so many cancellations going across the screen. But if by chance there is a church holding a service this evening, you've got to get people out of the sanctuary and into halls and corridors and bathrooms around that. But again, this is a very dangerous storm coming right for downtown Talladega. Uh, so if you're in the city of Talladega, you want to be in a safe place right now. And no mobile homes, no cars. A car is the worst possible place to be. And uh, again, that will be crossing through Talladega, uh, maybe impacting uh, the community of Munford here, which is up Highway 21 or something close to that. And uh, ultimately, at some point, that might want to cross the uh, interstate. Again, these are the polygon warnings we have in effect now. And uh, again... We've got uh, Clay County added to this as well as Randolph. Yeah, Clay County has been added. Uh, this is within the last uh, couple of moments. Um, okay, and again, uh, I tell you what, uh, for those of you, uh, let's look at the radar again and let's go back into this part of the state. The Weather Service has added uh, Randolph and Clay. There's Wadley and this is uh, Wadawi and this is Roanoke here. So we'll add the radar data back on here. And uh, again, let's take the uh, radar full screen. Uh, we'll uh, lose the double box here for just a moment. All right, uh, this is a large rain mass. There is clearly not the classic signature, but let's look at the velocity display now. Whenever you've got a big, messy rain mass like that, it would be hard to pick out rotation. So now let's check the velocity display. And again, you can see pockets of circulation. Uh, Ashland is here. Lineville is here. Uh, these communities are only about five miles apart. Uh, so Lineville, Ashland, uh, potential for rotation just northeast of Lineville and just southwest of Ashland. So we will add to the roster of people that need to do things. If you are in Ashland or Lineville, we recommend that you go to a safe place. No, the signatures here are nothing like the ones we've seen north and south of there. But again, there's enough evidence of rotation for the Weather Service to go ahead and post a tornado warning. Uh, so we have a tornado warning that is in effect now for Clay County. And again, look at this thing down here. Just scroll, we'll go down a little bit and I'll show you what it would. What we'll go back to the velocity and look at the one down in Elmore County. I'll show you the difference in terms of what this thing looks like. Watch this right now. Yeah, unbelievable. That could be a really violent tornado. This is Tallapoosa, this is Coosa, and this is going to be um, affecting mainly uh, Elmore and Tallapoosa. These counties belong to Montgomery. This is our county, and really that uh, rotation is going to miss Coosa County just Emerg in the southeast. Emergency management just reported a tornado with that storm near Eclectic. Mm. And it's moving to the east, so it looks like it will stay south of Coosa County. But uh, that southern edge of Tallapoosa County, you're going to have to watch out for this. I know a lot of folks are watching down in Tallapoosa, following us on Twitter and Facebook. So uh, southern Tallapoosa County, northern Elmore County, uh, tornado on the ground north of Eclectic. And that will uh, eventually cross the really the entire southern half of uh, Tallapoosa County, probably just a touch south of Dadeville or maybe very near Dadeville and Jackson's Gap. Uh, and uh, again, that's probably the most intense storm that we have out there at this moment, James. All right, and we're going to double box this. In the other box, you've got damage from Coleman. We have damage in so many places. And understand this morning, uh, we had a thunderstorm complex that produced widespread damage. That was at 4, 5, 6 o'clock this morning, and now uh, the tornado damage on top of that. This is downtown Coleman hit very hard by a tornado. If you watched our live coverage, we caught it live. We, we will come in later tonight and show some of the images, uh, the, the video of the multiple 
tornadoes we've caught today on these sky cams, but that one we saw, that was the first tornado of the day this afternoon coming into uh, downtown Coleman. It was remarkable. In fact, there's a, a look at that, and boy, that thing got bigger and bigger and bigger as it went right into downtown Coleman. So that's what that looked like from our Coleman sky cam this afternoon. Uh, and of course, the Tuscaloosa video was just beyond dramatic. It was, it was riveting and heartbreaking at the same time. You know, when you see that, you know that there's a high chance you're going to have people hurt and there's going to be loss of life. And all you can do is tell people to go to a safe place and just, you know, pray for the best. So, uh, again, that was the situation in uh, Cullman uh, this afternoon. That was when we started the afternoon session of, of coverage uh, about 2 o'clock, as I recall, some 2 to 2.30, something like that. But, again, uh, let's go back to our Talladega storm. There's a TVS, a tornado vortex signature here. And uh, this is the... Uh, in our part of the world, our television market, this perhaps is the most dangerous storm on the board. Does it exhibit the same characteristics as the storms earlier today? No, but it doesn't matter. Even if there's an EF0 or an EF1 tornado, that's a big deal. It can be a direct threat to life and property. So again, we encourage everybody in the city of Talladega to be in a safe place as that possible tornado goes right over the city. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 21 that goes up to Munford and Oxford. Uh, this rotation will be uh, pretty much hugging that highway as it heads down the stretch toward uh, Oxford. So again, uh, this is a tornado warning for northern Talladega County with the possibility of a tornado that will impact the city of Talladega and maybe affecting Munford and ultimately uh, the, the Interstate 20 corridor up toward uh, Anniston and Oxford. The only report of damage that's uh, coming from that storm that's moving toward Talladega is a report that some power lines were knocked out by a tornado near Wilsonville at 8.08 p.m. So 20 minutes hey, uh, ago while it was still in Shelby County, and it looked a lot more impressive then, too, near Wilsonville. Weather services look between Jacksonville and Piedmont. So let's go up to northern Calhoun. This is a uh, uh, another storm in that region that uh, the Weather Service believes this could be producing a violent tornado right now. Um, sure looks like it's ramped up again. Yeah, this thing has gotten a lot stronger. So let's look at the uh, reflectivity on this. This is a thunderstorm that is in northern Calhoun County that is between Jacksonville and Piedmont. And again, the Weather Service believes that there could be a significant tornado right here. This just came through Jacksonville, so they've gone ahead and warned on this one. This is for northern Calhoun and northern Cleburne County. So They've also one, included Cherokee in the warning. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, I don't know if it's going to make Cherokee or not. They're, they're kind of making the polygons larger than usual, and I think that's the right thing to do because of the violence of the weather that we've had today. But again, we've got a possible tornado now near or just east of, just east of Jacksonville. Uh, moving northeast, that's going to be crossing Highway 9. So again, nobody should be traveling along Highway 9 uh, or in any part of northern Cleburne County. Uh, so uh, again, uh, Piedmont down to Nance's Chapel. You want to be in a safe place. Let's go down and look at the storm closer to Anniston, Oxford. Uh, the, this is a storm uh, that has come through uh, uh, Anniston. And, okay, that's the one. Okay, that's yeah, that the one was up here. The one. Okay, I got you. That these was the original moving, supercell. These things are moving so fast. That is the one that came through Anniston. So that is up here now near Jacksonville, uh, moving northeast. Now, this is Clay County, and again, uh, that's a large rain mass with thunder and lightning. But we'll take off the. Um, uh, rain data, the reflectivity, and put on the velocity data. And again, there's some evidence of a circulation northeast of Lineville and possibly another one near Ashland. These are clearly not as intense as the ones we have seen throughout the day today. But again, considering the atmospherics and the way things have stacked up, we encourage everybody in Ashland and Lineville and Barfield to be in a safe place until these things pass. And that's going to be crossing over Lake Wadawi. If you're in Randolph County around the lake, and again, uh, it looks like this thing right here might be the most dangerous part of that coming over Highway 431. So again, everybody in Wadawi, uh, you want to be in a safe place until these storms pass. Uh, let's go and check on the, uh, boy, that is nasty. Mm. They're looking at a debris ball here again. Th this, uh, this is the storm that, that's north uh, of Eclectic. Yeah. Right, came through Eclectic and... Uh, that's the same kind of stuff we were seeing with those wedges yeah, right there. You know, right down and through here is where that would be. There's the inflow coming into this thing. And again, this is going to stay mainly in Elmore and Tallapoosa. Those two counties are assigned to the Montgomery television market. Uh, so again, we're not going to focus a lot on that. Uh, but again, uh, uh, on the storm coming into Talladega, uh, the Weather Service tells me they're looking at 104 knots, uh, low-level delta on that. So that's a very significant uh, uh, storm with potential for a very significant tornado. So again, if you're in the city of uh, or Talladega, let's go up to Talladega. We'll look at the storm that's coming into Talladega uh, right here. 
that is a very dangerous storm, and again, we encourage everybody to stay in your safe place until this thing passes, okay? Uh, so again, there's the city of Talladega. Circulation is just west of town. It's about to come right through downtown Talladega. So Let me mention this while, uh, while we're just uh, kind of in a, in a spot here. Uh, the Alabama Department of Transportation has issued an emergency road closure for I-65 through Jefferson County, I-65 northbound and southbound at U.S. 31. That's a milepost 266. That's Fultondale. Fultondale. Yeah. All lanes are closed. Uh, they will be closed due to power lines on the roadway. No no determination, no word on when that will be reopened, but uh, if you're traveling I-65, if you need to try to get up and down I-65, it's closed both directions now at Fultondale where the, the US-31, that main Fultondale exit up there around uh, the big new Colonial Shopping Center. So, again, that, that's not where the storms are right now. The storms are in Talanica County and Clay County and Calhoun County. Uh, the strongest ones on the board seem to be up in the northeast corner of Calhoun and uh, down into really Elmore County, but it's uh, just a little bit south of Coosa County, but the one that's around here that's the closest to the Birmingham metro area, this one that's south of Pell City, does not have the same kind of signature it did a little while ago. Here's the velocity display on it. Uh, the possible tornado would be a little on the northwest side of the city of Talladega. Again, not that impressive with the velocity. The uh, items over in Clay County that are moving into Randolph actually look quite a bit more impressive than that. And then take a look at what's going on up here near south of Piedmont. Uh, a little bit to the uh, north of Heflin in Cleburne County, we've got a possible tornado. Uh, very intense circulation exiting Calhoun County, moving into the northern tip of Cleburne County. That will cross Cleburne County probably within the next 10 minutes, given how fast these are moving. At least 10 to 15 minutes over northern Cleburne. Then this one will be in Georgia, too. Uh, if there's a tornado in this, it'll be a little south of Piedmont, closer to White Plains than Piedmont this time around, James. Let's take the uh, internet computer. I think this photograph kind of maybe tells the story. Uh, again, news will take over when all this is over, and you're going to see some amazing things. Uh, that is some damage, I believe, from Pratt City. Uh, a lady just sitting on a downed tree with that hopeless look in her eyes, not knowing what to do with those apartments behind there just wiped out. And we have so many images like that. But again, let's go back to the radar. What we're going to do, you know, the deal, we have so many stories to tell, but uh, we're going to continue focusing on the ongoing weather emergencies at this point. Uh, so uh, again, we, we have, let's look at our storm down here, by the way, in central Alabama, down there in the southern part of Hale and the one coming out of Marengo County, Jason. Uh, th this is a part of the state where the air is extremely uh, unstable and again uh, this stuff that's coming out of Demopolis uh, that's pretty nasty looking so that again three cells just lined up there yeah, in a row. like like you know cars in a train track here uh, so we're just saying that these storms coming through extreme southern hail are capable of producing tornadoes one two three rotations in through there so that's the US 80 corridor it barely clips Hale County, the southern end of Hale County, down around Galleon, the part of Galleon that's in Hale County. Uh, so again, uh, we just want everybody that is in uh, that part of Hale County, way below Greensboro and way below Newburn, to be aware there could be some tornado circulations down and through there. And I would clearly stay in a safe place until those storms pass. All right, let's go to the storm that is uh, approaching uh, the city of uh, uh, Talladega. And uh, again, uh, uh, we have... And again, by the way, in the one you just saw, the Weather Service has continued a tornado warning until 9.15 for far southern hail, uh, parts of Marengo, Dallas, and Perry counties for that. That's mostly in the Montgomery television market. Um, but again, uh, uh, this is the storm that is uh, near Talladega, and the thing is clearly wrapped up. And again, that circulation is about to come right into Talladega. So, you know, I, I, we don't want anybody to relax their precautions at this point. If you're in Talladega and need to stay in your tornado safe place until this thing passes, give it about 10 or 15 more minutes. It is clear that this circulation is not as strong as it once was. It's pretty noisy. Uh, but again, if you're in Talladega, stay in your safe place. If you're in Munford, stay in your safe place. Hopefully the thing totally fizzles out by the time it reaches Anniston and Oxford. But you know the deal. On a day like today, more than likely that's not going to happen. So let's go back up to our storm that came through Anniston. You know, this thing came through Anniston uh, with hardly, I don't know, of any damage from this. Uh, no, none that we've heard of. Uh, the only thing, I, we got that report of some damage in Calhoun County, but as you said, it's probably from the northern storm that uh, came through Piedmont and Goshen earlier. 
Uh, Weather Service is really concerned about the Elmore County storm, but again, that's the Montgomery television market. So let's take a look at the storm that is up here uh, near Piedmont. This is the one that came through Anniston, uh, did not produce any significant issues as far as we know. And again, that is, uh, again, uh, wrapped up. The circulation is down here below Nance's Chapel moving northeast, and that's going to be clipping Cleburne County. This is northern Cleburne right here, and this is uh, Cherokee. So again, for those folks in northern Cleburne, just be aware that you need to stay in your safe place for about the next 30 minutes. Cleburne County is assigned to the Atlanta television market. And again, we're, we're going to focus on the home counties here. But uh, areas in Cleburne County, north of Heflin, north of Fruithurst, you need to be in a safe place until the storm passes. It's going to be out of Calhoun County in just a matter of moments. Uh, the, the big one everybody is concerned about, it, it is the uh, Elmore County storm. And it, so many people are watching us on the live stream that often the television boundaries don't make a whole lot of sense. So let's go down and look at that. The, the Weather Service says the uh, uh, delta on that Elmore County storm storm is 150 knots. The Tuscaloosa storm was 177. So what that's saying is that the circulation intensity within the radar beam is almost as significant as the one that was uh, coming through Tuscaloosa. And again, we all know that that Tuscaloosa tornado was just absolutely uh, horrific. And again, this is not in our market. I just wanted to show this to you. Uh, and again, right there. This is basically at the point where Elmore and Tallapoosa counties come together. Uh, this is Dadeville. Uh, so again, that is going to be scooting across parts of Lake Martin and then coming out on Highway 280 very close to Dadeville. So uh, Lake Martin over here to Dadeville, just be in a safe place. And again, I know that uh, that is not our, our market, but that is a very violent, dangerous signature right now. Uh, so let's go back up to, and really, you know, with the US 80 storm down here, you see the circulations right down here. That's on Highway 80 in parts of Perry County around Uniontown. That's really the Montgomery television market. The encouraging news, we're, we're down to one tornado warning within our market now. Once we get this uh, uh, storm, well, and, and again, that's in Cleburne County, so we're down to one, and it's this one right here, and this one is coming through Talladega, so, uh, and, and this is the dry line, and again, this is a reason to celebrate here. We've got the dry line running from near Tuscaloosa up to Jasper and Coleman uh, and uh, Lake Gunnersville, uh, and again, once that dry line passes, the dew points drop, and the severe weather threat is over. Uh, so that's fantastic. Uh, uh, we can say for Walker County, no more severe weather. Uh, Tuscaloosa County, no more severe weather. And goodness, that's, that's a good thing. Birmingham, we can give the all clear pretty soon. And Jason, again, we'll check on that uh, uh, storm up there around your neck of the woods in northeastern Coleman. That's still packing a punch. Yeah, and that one being right on the dry line has the uh, potential to be a little bit more of a spinner than some of the others do down to the south. Uh, but uh, now northeast of Holly Pond toward Bailiton, Thrasher's Crossroads, Birdsong, and Arab, you're under the gun for a possible tornado within that storm. It doesn't look as strong as it did from the Birmingham radar, but let's check it from a different view. That other angle can often be a make or break when it comes to determining if a storm has weakened or continued to maintain its strength. And that's a look at the Huntsville high top radar and I think we have lost high top in fact, I remember seeing that note earlier. We don't have high top. Uh, they're having to use Columbus, Mississippi up in Huntsville. Uh, so we'll just take a look at it from Birmingham. Uh, Huntsville has all, had all kinds of problems. At one point, just like we had to, our Birmingham Weather Service had to hand over control to Mobile, Huntsville had to go into cover, too. They're at the campus of UAH. So, uh, the, the, you know, it, it was just as bad up in Huntsville, if not uh, in some cases uh, worse in some communities uh, in the Huntsville area, just as it was here in the Birmingham metro. Uh, but a, tor a tornado, possible tornado moving uh, through the Arab area up towards Scant City and Gunnersville. Uh, that will stay a little bit northwest of Highway 75 through uh, northern Blunt County and uh, northern and southern Marshall County. But uh, still some pretty heavy rain. The threat has ended in Fairview, Holly Pond, Coleman, West Point, Good Hope, Hansville, and uh, Cold Springs area, Brushy Pond, Bremen. It's finally starting to ease up there. We won't see any more severe weather tonight there. And uh, here's the good news. As James was mentioning, this dry line that's coming through the state, the storms that are developing to the south don't seem to have the same kind of intensity uh, toward even Tuscaloosa County and Greene County. You have to get all the way down to Highway 80 around Demopolis and Uniontown and uh, into Perry County. Probably Chilton County still have some concerns here with some of these storms that are farther down to the southwest. But uh, in Tuscaloosa, there's not even any thunder or lightning with the showers that are on the west hey, side of town. Me, here's some good news, too. The, the, the Weather Service has lost the circulation on the Talladega storm, and they are about to cancel that one, which means... If you can believe it, 
uh, we will not have a tornado warning within our designated market area, the DMA. They have not done that yet, but uh, based on the fact that they have lost the uh, circulation on the uh, Talladega storm, the Weather Service will be canceling this warning here in just a matter of moments. So they have canceled the tornado warning now for Calhoun, St. Clair, and Talladega. The warning for Coosa is no longer in effect because it never got into Coosa. That storm is coming up through Tallapoosa. Uh, we do have a tornado warning for a storm near Lineville. So let's go down to Clay County. And again, uh, this is the part of the state where we have to watch this. This is a tornado warning for parts of Clay, Cleburne, Randolph, and Tallapoosa counties until 9 o'clock. And again, uh, that storm... Uh, is clearly east of Lineville. Uh, this is Lineville, this is Ashland, and again, that uh, this is Highway 9, that's Highway 77. Uh, there's the circulation. It's sitting on the county line. This is Clay, and this is Randolph. So again, there's circulation there. We've heard of no damage from that, and that will be moving northeast. And again, if you are around Lake Wadawi, uh, or in the city of Wadawi, the community of Woodland being a safe place as these storms pass through. But again, uh, this is handing, uh, we're kind of handing things off here from the Birmingham market over to the Atlanta market. So as this circulation moves into Randolph, uh, at this point, there is no tornado warning since it's out of clay for our DMA. And we, we are so exhausted, we have to sit back and do a double check on this, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. So this will give us a moment to check in with Brenda Ladon. Our news people have been really working hard. There is widespread, severe damage. We have had at least 25 people killed, probably a lot more than that. We don't know the final number, but Brenda, if you would, tell us what you saw in Coleman today as you went up there. James, people in Coleman are absolutely stunned by the damage. It's widespread for several miles. In the city of Coleman, uh, there's heavy damage. As you can see right there, uh, some buildings just absolutely reduced to rubble, and it is so widespread. I talked to an emergency crew worker who said he'd also worked on uh, Hurricane Andrew many years ago in Miami, and this reminded him of that type of widespread damage. The First Baptist Church of Coleman, the steeple has heavy damage. The, the county courthouse has the roof ripped off of it. And we also saw pieces of metal wrapped around uh, power lines and uh, traffic lights on the ground. Of course, power lines on the ground. As you can see, that building, a lot of the glass... Mac. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll let... Uh, if you can put the... Uh, in just a second, we're going to go to radar scope which is uh, what I'm looking at on my computer here. Uh, it's an excellent radar application, and we can take it to the air if we have to, and that's been a wonderful backup for us today. We, we've had some uh, Internet connectivity issues this morning and then again uh, this afternoon. So again, and just to, let's go to it right now. Okay, this is uh, radar scope. Uh, this is Coosa County. This is Chilton County. This is Bibb County. Let's go down here and look at this storm, Jason. Uh, this is the one uh, that is uh, moving through Perry County, uh, and that is a pretty nasty-looking storm right there. This is Dallas County, and this is going to be moving across the northern part of Dallas County. And again, Jason is going to put on the... Uh, this is Marion right here, and again, that's a very strong indication of a tornado right there, a little south of Marion. So if you're around... And again, Perry County is in the Montgomery DMA. We don't make those assignments. That's based on the viewing habits of the people that uh, that live there. But uh, we'll just say that that's a very dangerous storm south of Marion, moving northeast. That's going to be clipping the northern part of Dallas County, then moving over into uh, maybe extreme southern Chilton counties or Atauga County. This is Atauga. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, how many? Goodness. The death toll in Tuscaloosa is now 15. Uh, just a minute ago, it was three. Now the death toll is 15 in Tuscaloosa. I, I don't know how many have died in the state. Uh, okay, so it's so you're saying, Deborah, at least 40 have been killed. At least 40 people have died in our state today. Uh, five this morning and 35 at least. Uh, Tuscaloosa has just been devastated. Pleasant Grove uh, has been devastated. Uh, Coleman. Uh, there, there's so much, so many issues right here. But again, this is the uh, big picture. And again, there's your dry line. And we do not have any severe weather in association with that dry line. But uh, that's a polygon right there. That is a tornado warning for parts of Perry County. And we'll keep a close eye on that. If that continues moving in that direction, it might be clipping Chilton County. So a tornado warning could be required at some point for uh, uh, Chilton.
And again, what I'm going to do, since we, we had to totally uh, reconfigure the uh, internet connectivity here, uh, we basically have two networks. Uh, get back on these weather service chats so we can uh, all watch this stuff. Uh, is the warning. The, the reason these chats are critical, this is how we communicate with the National Weather Service offices around the state. And again, we get all of the warnings on here. So again, uh, in just a second, we'll kind of scroll back and take a look at the warnings coming from Birmingham. But a warning could be required for Chilton County uh, relatively soon. Um, there's very impressive uh, rotation in southern Perry County. And again, you're looking at that right here. This is in Perry County, south of Marion, uh, just north of U.S. Highway 80. And that is the polygon warning you see right here. Uh, and again, this is the northern part of Dallas County. And so that tornadic circulation is going to be clipping northern Dallas. Uh, this is around the community of Jones and Plantersville. And again, if that keeps up, that will be impacting perhaps uh, the extreme southern part of Chilton County, which is up here, or Atauga County, which is right Right down in here. This is the county line. It's going to be a close call. If it does include Chilton or does bother Chilton, it will be the far southern part of Chilton. It's moving over in the general direction of Billingsley. So again, uh, we're going to keep an eye on that. That is a very impressive circulation that's located in Perry County. And let's look at that other storm over here, Jason, the one that's near Dadeville. This, uh, uh, this thing has been uh, really packing a punch. And again, uh, the circulation is right in through here. This is the polygon warning itself. And again, we stress that this is out of our DMA, but look at that incredible circulation that's located right here not too far from Dadeville moving northeast and again this is in Tallapoosa County so if you know somebody from Dadeville or points north and east in Tallapoosa County I would strongly give them a call uh, that currently is the clearly the most impressive circulation we have on the board uh, at this point so that is a tornado warning for uh, Tallapoosa County in east central Alabama uh, this came right over the Stillwater Resort around Lake Martin still moving steadily to the north and east of about 60 miles an hour. So uh, that's the deal. Let's go back over to the Perry County storm. And again, uh, uh, yeah, the Weather Service in Birmingham is going to reissue a tornado warning for Tallapoosa for the storm you just saw. Uh, but again, right down here, all right, that is that uh, very violent circulation. And uh, this is in the southern part of Perry County moving northeast. This is Dallas County, the city of Selma sits right there. So this tornadic circulation is going to pass north of Selma up here toward the northern part of Dallas County, specifically around the community of Jones and Plantersville. And uh, again, uh, more than likely, if this warning is extended out, it could very well include parts of Chilton County, uh, the southern part of Chilton County, and parts of Atauga County, the northern part of Atauga County. So again, if you're in Clanton or Chilton County, be aware that a warning could be be required for that very impressive circulation that is coming through uh, uh, Perry County right now. That is a very, very impressive couplet that's southeast of Marion. Marion is right here. That's Marion Mi Military Institute. Uh, Judson College is located right there. And again, that's going to be moving northeast just like that. Uh, this is Chilton County. This is Atauga County. This is Dallas County. And that's the Polygon warning right there. So uh, I would fully expect a, a warning for Chilton uh, probably soon. Now it's 9 o'clock. And as we do that, let me reset. Uh, this is Alabama's ABC 3340, WBMA Birmingham, WCFT Tuscaloosa, WJSU Anniston. Uh, we are working a tragic uh, tornado outbreak in Alabama. At least 40 people have been killed in our state today. At least 40. Uh, we are, I do believe that the severe weather will be out of our market at 10 o'clock and we will be able to hit the 10 o'clock news. It's probably going to be a long newscast because of all of the uh, damage that we have. Uh, and, uh, and tomorrow morning at the first light of day, we will be up and out and looking at the damage. A lot of times with the assessment uh, for the tornadoes that occur at night, we don't really know how bad it is until the next morning. But if you're just joining us, clearly the worst damage today was in Cullman in the northern and western suburbs of Birmingham, specifically Pleasant Grove, and uh, Fultondale, and then down in Tuscaloosa. At least 15 people have been killed in Tuscaloosa. This is a very, very serious outbreak, and uh, the injury count, we have no idea at this point. Uh, all of the, the state EMA will do all the tabulations and have the numbers for us tomorrow morning, and as often as the case with a major outbreak like this, uh, understand that uh, we th those that are critically injured oftentimes lose their lives a few days after this. A after the April 8th of 98 event, we had uh, loss of life uh, folks that died as a result of their injuries about two weeks after this. Uh, but again, the most serious storms on the board, this storm in Perry County, 
County and this storm in Tallapoosa County moving into Chambers County. And again, all of this is off in the Atlanta or Montgomery television markets. This is the dry line, and we're back. So there's a look at our radar. Uh, and again, this is the one right down here that is of the greatest concern. And again, you can see how that's coming up toward Chilton County. So uh, for the storm that is located not too far from uh, Marion, south, <laughs> southeast of Marion, uh, this could clearly involve a tornado warning. And get your bearing straight. This is US 82. That's Alabama Highway 22 that goes down to Selma. The significant tornado index is 8.1. That's a big number. Again, we've seen them as high as 15 today. And we didn't know they went past 10. Uh, but uh, that uh, is circulation is in the process of uh, crossing Alabama Highway 219. Uh, that's the road that runs from Brent down to Selma. Uh, obviously, nobody should be traveling on Highway 219. And then next up, it'll be crossing Alabama Highway 22 at some point near Plantersville or Ryderville or Stanton. These are communities in the far southern part of Chilton County and will continue moving toward the Interstate 65 corridor. Uh, so again, that's US 82 right here. Uh, this is downtown Maplesville. That's Alabama 22 that goes to Clanton. 22 South goes down to Selma. Uh, what could be a violent tornado is about to cross Highway 219 in Perry County. And again, that's moving northeast. That's going to carry it right up here towards southern Chilton County. Uh, this is Billingsley. Billingsley basically sits on the Chilton Atauga County line. It's in Atauga County. But if you are watching us in Maplesville, uh, down to Billingsley, be aware that uh, you will probably have to go into your safe place very, very soon. Um, we will watch and see when that warning is uh, issued at this point. Uh, but again, uh, it will be very soon. So I think you have turned... Yeah, you can, you, you can go back okay. to the main internet right, I'll let internet you talk theme. for a minute. We'll get everything connected back up the old-fashioned way here. Okay, we'll kind of go back and look at the uh, the big picture here around the state. Uh, this is the velocity product, so we'll switch back over to reflectivity and outline a couple of things for you. If you're in Hamilton, it's over. If you're in Jasper and Coleman, it is finally over. Uh, Fayette, it's over. In Tuscaloosa, when these last few showers come through, it's over. Uh, in Pickens County, you're finished, too. Uh, we do have the one tornado, and in fact, uh, the Weather Service just issued the warning, and it does include Chilton County, James. So Chilton County now under a warning. It will include the city of Clanton. Uh, that might be a little far north, but uh, again, like we've been saying, the polygons are so broad because these storms are moving quickly, and at times they uh, move in a stair-step pattern. They move to the left, they move a little to the right, so uh, it's a pretty good idea to go to your safe place. If you're anywhere in southern Chilton County, Roughly, I'd say, from about Jemison and Thorsby South down through Clanton, Verbena, Cooper, Stanton, Maplesville, Billingsley, and Otauga County. You should be in a safe place right now because uh, we have a very powerful storm over Perry County and Dallas County that could produce a tornado at almost any time over Chilton. We also have flash flood warnings in effect. Of course, these flash flood warnings may uh, mean some uh, ditches overflowing, some creeks are overflowing in Jefferson, St. Clair, Blunt, Coleman, and Marshall. Severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect for Cherokee County for a strong storm that's uh, pretty much on the DeKalb Cherokee County line right now. And then a severe thunderstorm warning also remains in effect for parts of Southern Green and uh, parts of Sumter County, too, and Marengo County as well. We'll go up here to Cherokee County and look at this one severe thunderstorm warning uh, that's in effect. And that storm looks like it may stay well north of center in Galesville. It does have some rotation associated with it, so uh, there may be a tornado warning that's issued for northern Cherokee. We'll have to watch that one. The uh, Weather Service also watching it very closely. There's that big monster that came across the Aniston area that's over close to Cedar Bluff. Uh, we've heard some reports of uh, some fairly substantial damage. No confirmation on what kind of damage or if there were injuries near Piedmont and Goshen in Cherokee County with that storm that came through earlier. Uh, on the dry line, uh, we've had a couple of storms that have gone into rotation occasionally, and uh, this one that's south of Gadsden, while not severe, Again, we're not going to give you the all-clear in Gadsden or Rainbow City just yet. You'll at least get some wind and some hail as this batch of storms comes in, but it hopefully will not be quite on the level of uh, the active weather that we've had for the past uh, seven or eight hours. Uh, and this line is not severe all the way down. Uh, we've got some uh, fairly gusty winds along it, some thunder and lightning, some heavy downpours running down through Odenville and Moody, uh, down toward the eastern side of Hoover at the intersection of uh, 459 and 280. East Birmingham still seeing some rain. And and then the showers that are coming through Tuscaloosa County, it's raining hard again, downtown Tuscaloosa. Raining hard in Northport. That's going to move into Duncanville and Cottondale and Holt and Peterson. But there are no severe 
implications with that at all. It's just heavy rain. There may be some wind gusts with it. It may hamper some cleanup and rescue efforts that are going on in Tuscaloosa right now. But once this last shower passes, Tuscaloosa is free and clear for the rest of this evening. Same kind of thing up around Metro Birmingham uh, into West Jefferson County out here uh, west of Pleasant Grove. We have one shower. It's pretty heavy rain. That'll pass overhead. Then you will be generally free and clear for the rest of tonight to go about continuing with the uh, tornado cleanup, the search and rescue, obviously the most important part of this. We've got to make sure that we uh, let the rescue workers do their job. Please don't try to go into an area and sightsee. That's what cameras are for. The emergency managers let us in. They, uh, they allow us to sit in a certain spot so that we're out of the way. And if we're in the way, they'll tell our photographers to move. So uh, if you are in the Tuscaloosa, Coleman, Birmingham area, we ask that you just don't go into those areas where uh, significant tornado damage has already happened. Uh, we know that uh, there have been at least 40 fatalities in the state today and tonight. Uh, that started early this morning with four fatalities in the early morning round of storms. And then uh, since then, we've picked up 50 in Tuscaloosa, an unknown number in, metro, in the Birmingham metropolitan area uh, with that giant tornado that passed just north of downtown before sunset this evening. Our tornado warning for Chilton County does include the city of Clanton. Uh, that uh, goes for the, uh, the next uh, several minutes, and we don't really worry so much about the expiration times. We're just going to stay here with you until it's over. Possible tornado approaching the Chilton County line. Basically, it's right over that little finger of Dallas County that sticks up between... Uh, uh, the uh, the Chilton County and uh, the, the the western edge of Chilton County and Perry County. So tornado crossing extreme northern Dallas County, moving into Chilton. This is the most significant storm that we have in this part of the state right now. The velocity display very impressive with it. It has been impressive. We have a bounded weak echo region that shows up on the radar, and there's our couplet, just as strong as it has been the entire time. Wouldn't be surprised if there is a large violent tornado on the ground west of uh, Billingsley and southwest of Maplesville moving northeast. And again, that's going to cross over uh, Highway 82 in about 15 minutes, maybe less than 15 minutes. So you just don't have a lot of time here in southern Chilton County to prepare for this. Uh, it's a fast-moving storm, and if there's a tornado on the ground, which based on the radar presentation and based on what we know from the, the recent history of today, there's a good chance that there is at least uh, some kind of tornado there, if not a very large, strong one. You know, we, we haven't, have not had a lot of time to talk about this, but we got issues in Georgia, too. Just uh, saw in the Atlanta Weather Service chat that uh, in uh, uh, Catoosa County, Georgia, which is up in the northwestern part of the state, uh, a three-story motel has collapsed with multiple victims. Uh, so, again, that is very serious uh, business. Uh, there's been major damage up in uh, Rome, Georgia, around Ringgold, Georgia. So we are not alone as the storms have exited our state. They have caused major damage over in uh, uh, our adjacent state of, uh, of Georgia. But, again, uh, you can see these storm, this thing right here. That's the one that got them, I think. Of course, there are multiple, but this one right there. That's one of them. There's another one coming through northwestern Georgia. But uh, these storms down here in uh, Chambers and Randolph, those are packing a very big punch. But again, those are counties not assigned to us. They are out-of-market counties. So let's go back to Chilton County. We've got, th this is the one tornado warning in effect for our uh, television market. Uh, it is in effect for southern Chilton County. And again, we'll be very specific on this. And uh, this is like all of the other storms that we have uh, talked about today. We encourage everybody to uh, take these very seriously. That is a wrapped up storm. Uh, there's the notch. The possible tornado circulation is right here. It's in the process of moving out of uh, Perry and Dallas up in the far southwestern part of Chilton County. And, and again, you, down below US 82, go down Highway 22. Uh, there's the, some of the numbers. The significant tornado index is 9.1. That's a whopper of a number. Moving northeast at 47. That's the storm motion. But you cross uh, down Highway 22. You've got uh, Stanton right here, uh, Ryderville, and then Plantersville right down through here. And if you are in any of those communities, uh, Stanton, Ryderville, Plantersville, you want to be in a, a safe place. Uh, the Ryderville tornado of March 21st, 1932 is a very famous tornado. This is uh, uh, an area of the state where there's just very... Uh, 
significant tornadoes. It seems like more than some other parts of the state. There's the notch. The, the possible tornado is right back here uh, near the, uh, the line where these three counties come together. So uh, Plantersville, Ryderville, Stanton, everybody in this region, you need to be in a safe place. This is going to be hugging the southern part of Chilton County. This will clearly pass south of Maplesville. I know that Maplesville is up in that polygon, but again, this particular tornado will be passing south of Maplesville, moving about like that. Uh, and, and in terms of the next major highway, once this thing crosses 82, and again, there's a church right here called Hillcrest Baptist Church. Uh, once it crosses at about that spot, uh, the next major highway is Interstate 65. So let's expand this thing out a little bit more, Jason, and show the Interstate 65 corridor. Uh, and again, just kind of follow my finger. And it'll be crossing uh, US 82 around Hillcrest Baptist Church. And then it's going to be, uh, you know, affecting Interstate 65. That's the Peach Park exit right there. The Alabama EMA office is right here. They might have to evacuate that thing. And again, because they built it for this purpose. Uh, they, they, it might be a structure that is designed to withstand a violent tornado. That's the case. They're just going about their business. But you've got the Alabama EMA headquarters right here. Uh, Peach Park is right here. And again, that circulation is going to be coming right up through here. Uh, that's Alabama 22. South of 22, got uh, County Road 37. Goes down through the community of Fairview. Uh, we encourage everybody in Fairview uh, to go to your safe place right now uh, in uh, Chilton County, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows, and then from Fairview and Sunshine Farms, it comes out across uh, uh, almost right at that Peach Park exit, that's US 31 that goes into downtown Clanton, uh, down below that, that goes down to uh, Verbena, and uh, that is a very, very strong indication of a tornado, so we encourage everybody in southern Chilton right now to go into a safe place. Uh, we don't want anybody in vehicles, uh, we are... Uh, that's the worst possible place that you could be. Of course, mobile home, it's the, uh, it's the same thing. And in this same environment, James, uh, extensive damage has been reported in the Dadeville area. Uh, there are also some damage reports coming in from the Tallapoosa Chambers County line at Highway 50 of many trees down. All right, and again, that, that's just... A reminder that these storms still pack a punch. A lot of times, you know, late at night, they start to go downhill, but based on the dynamics, it really doesn't matter uh, in this case. Uh, and again, this I... This thing that's coming into Chilton is ramping up. Oh, Circulation it, it, is tighter. Yeah, it, it, it is nasty. There, there is no doubt about that. Um, tell you what, let, let's take the uh, internet computer, uh, the uh, MacBook Pro. Goodness, uh, that is from Pleasant Grove. Right, let me back this thing up. Uh, the, the image that we saw right there, that is the... Uh, that is an example of the damage in Pleasant Grove. And, and again, you know, I don't know what kind of structure that was, if that was a site-built home, if that was a mobile home, if there were anchors. Uh, but I'm just telling you that that is uh, extreme damage. And we know there's been loss of life in Pleasant Grove. A lot of people hurt. That there were urgent calls for just anybody to help to get people out of there, to pull people out. And it's a bad, bad, bad scene there. Uh, it's Pleasant Grove is a suburb west of Birmingham. And again, uh, one of our reporters has been there, and her stories are just heartbreaking. And we will tell those stories on the news as soon as the tornado emergency settles down. But I just wanted to show that. So let's go back to the uh, radar. And uh, again, uh, we got a very dangerous storm. Uh, in fact, uh, what I'll do is let the uh, images play. Uh, so you can just kind of watch these things for yourself. We'll put some of the storm damage images in the double box and, and weather video from today. But again, this is a potentially very, very dangerous tornado uh, that is approaching Clanton from the south and west. Uh, and again, this is moving very rapidly. Keep in mind, these things are moving at about 55 to 60 miles an hour. Uh, so this thing is, is going to be on Clanton in just a minute. Uh, I think the greatest chance of a tornado is going to be just south of Clanton, but I don't want to take that risk. If you live in the city, City limits of Clanton be in a safe place right now in your home, out of mobile homes, out of cars. Uh, so again, a strong indication of a tornado uh, coming up toward the southern part of the city of Clanton. And unfortunately, uh, our Clanton Skycam is down. Again, it's been a day of very difficult communication because of infrastructure problems, because of the storms we had this morning. And again, let me point out a lot of what you see in those pictures. It doesn't make a lot of sense because typically you're used to seeing damage or tornado pictures. Most of that, that's debris that fell in people's lawn. That, that big piece of wood right there, that's from Tuscaloosa, landed in Helena in Shelby County in the Birmingham Metro. That, that was transported 50 miles 
uh, in the air, and it was deposited. We have uh, items from Tuscaloosa found in Gadsden, 115 miles away. Credible. Uh, and, and that tornado in Tuscaloosa is going to be rated probably at least an EF4. Uh, it's going to be a big one. But again, there's a look at the uh, uh, numbers. The significant tornado impact on this thing is an 8.2. So again, that is a very significant number. So we encourage everybody watching us down here in Chilton County to be in a safe place. Now, as the storm moves out of northern Dallas, it's going to be coming up crossing Highway 82 in a matter of moments. And again, initially, uh, it looks like that will be crossing Highway 82 uh, around the Hillcrest Baptist Church, which is about right in through here. A little place called Pletcher and Sardis. Here's the tornado signature. It's crossing uh, Highway 22 right now near Ryderville. That's going to be crossing uh, US 82. And then again, next it'll be uh, getting up toward that southern part of the city of Clanton. Uh, so everybody in Clanton, uh, everybody in Fairview, you need to be in a safe place now in so the southern part of Chilton County. This will not affect Jemison or Thorsby. And again, the best news I can tell you, it's over. Uh, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, you've got rain and some thunder here, but the, the severe weather threat is over for Interstate 59 and points to the west. And while, while we're on the topic of the uh, severe weather being over in northwest Alabama, I'm not sure if I'm not If we can bring J Jason's mic up, please. All right, we, we will... We'll get you a new battery, so, um... Okay, we, now we want to talk with Joseph Knight. Um, uh, Joseph is up in Hackleburg, and, and Hackleburg took a very hard hit today. Tell us what happened up in Marion County today. Uh, yes, I was uh, up there in Providence Search and Rescue, and just now got to where I could have some phone service to call you, but uh, I would tell you the entire city of Hackleburg has, has been just pretty much destruction. Uh, everything on Highway 43, is pretty much gone everything the school is completely pretty much destroyed the grocery store is gone flattened doctor's office is gone uh, multiple houses that are completely leveled and nothing but splinters left uh, uh, pharmacy everything gone pretty much up 43 i would say i would say a half a mile wide total destruction uh, there's several that are still missing i don't want to give you an exact number on fatalities because it's still it's still a, it's still up in the air to be honest with you about that because it's gotten dark and it's just it's absolutely demolished i am from from Gwen and uh, i know about tornadoes and i would be honest to tell you this is at least an f4 it has to be because total leveled homes nothing left i mean we're talking brick homes block buildings a Wrangler plant which is one of the big businesses there people were trapped in there for many hours i don't know how couldn't get up there myself to see it, but I know it took very serious uh, destruction. So a major, major hit in Heichelberg for a small town pretty much is gone, completely gone. Mm. You, Three you, hospitals. Say, you say that there is some missing. How many people are unaccounted for in Heichelberg? To be honest with you, I don't believe that they're they're able to know right now because of the fire departments. There's so much going on. So many people have come from so many cities up in this area to, to work. I just really believe it. it's just so it's so hard right now i couldn't really tell you an exact number there's there's still i talked with some families that are looking for parents and looking for and they don't know if they've been transported to hospitals or whether they're in other areas that they're they're sheltered right now it's just it's just unbelievable i walked through the the uh, rubble i walked through trying to search and i'm i'm telling you uh i've seen pictures of you and i've seen and it is just total devastation uh, just a swath of devastation. Uh, trees completely uprooted, uh, houses, brick homes, like I said, just scattered across a hillside, nothing, just bits and pieces. And this is from uh, right as you come into the city limits, just behind the city limits of Hackleburg, all the way through town is completely leveled. Mm. Completely and, leveled. and again, for and people I, that are watching us, Hackleburg is north of Hamilton up in Marion County in northwest Alabama. Uh, so you, you, know, you don't even know how many people have been killed there. No, sir. There's... There's no no way of knowing right now because it's just so bad. I just don't believe there's any way to have an account. There's a triage for the hurt, the injured at the First Baptist Church at Hackenberg and shelter. If, if anybody's listening and has family, they need to get. The, there's nurses there. I've been there. They've been bringing them in in church vans. The injured, they're bringing them in in any way they can in in, in personal vehicles. And I've seen the injured. I mean, there've been some very seriously injured people that were thrown from their houses, and I, I witnessed all this and. Uh, and it's continuing to go on uh, right now. It's gotten, of course, very dark, and it's it's really difficult. 
Right now, the, I heard one of the fire firemen that say that their main thing is trying to clear the roads so that at first light they can actually get in and start really doing an extensive search because it has gotten, of course, uh, dark and it's really dangerous. There's The power lines are down everywhere. It's just it is just a total total wreck, and uh, I know no one's probably been able to call in because it's just there's no service there. It's just completely kind of shut out from everything right now because of the shock and the the, the terrible situation. But just want to let you know it, it happened probably between around the four to four thirty time frame. I'm not for sure, but I was watching you and saw the uh, y'all had the warning and saw the the storm go through there, and and I got a call not long after that that, that the town had been had been just, you know, pretty much destroyed. So mm. I tell you what, I, I'm going to leave you on the phone for one more minute. Jason, if you could zoom into the Chilton County storm, we, the, the, the one active tornado in our DMA is a large tornado indication that is in the process of crossing US 82 in a matter of minutes. So uh, again, back to the Hackelberg story, uh, are you, are you going to continue the search and rescue in the darkness tonight, or do you wait until the well, first light of day? The way I understand it, I was just a volunteer, but the way I understood it, they're, they're basically just using their equipment with lights to clear the roadways. Uh, I'm sure there's still some that's going to go on, but it's really almost impossible. It's really more dangerous right now, unless you're just they're absolutely sure of someone that they're looking for, which I'm not sure about any of that. It's better to wait until, until the first light because it's just, I'm telling you, it's so, so much destruction. You, you, you really don't even know where to start right now, where to begin in a lot of areas. It's just complete completely scattered all over town. I, I couldn't describe it uh, uh, enough to tell you. Uh, it's just uh, they need our prayers in that, in that city big time. Were, were, and, were, uh, were, are the, were they injured? Were they taken to the hospital down in Hamilton? Yes, they were taken to, to Hamilton, taken to yeah. taken to Russellville, and then they were starting to transport. I know they transported some in the Hackleburg First Baptist Church van to Winfield all the way because they were filling up in the in the in the Hamilton and Russell hospitals were being filled up and they couldn't take any more. I know in Helen Keller Hospital and Muscle Shoals had brought no, uh, doctors and nurses and, their, and a van full of them to Hackleburg to try to help with the, the injuries and, and whatever else is going to be coming in uh, throughout throughout this this evening. I, I witnessed all of that, so mm. uh, it, it was kind of a small town up here in, in North Marion County. But I'm telling you, it, it was just. I can't describe to you, James. I, I, what, I, can't, what it's I like. can't believe the school is gone. You know, I, I've been in that school so many times. I probably own some bricks in that building. And, and so, yeah, you say the school, the school has been destroyed? It, it is basically gone. There's the elementary school. It's just it's 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 just uh, the whole place is just ripped apart. There was a brand new church just across the road, a Church of God there that the the pretty much it's it's pretty much completely destroyed. Uh, and that is way uh, I mean way away from actually the what I would call the downtown area. In downtown area, and 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 you know within that area, it's just level. It's a wide swath of damage. It's just almost uh, amazing to see. Mm. And uh, I walked through it and and just uh, just really was blown away by by what has what has taken place in Heichelberg. They uh, it's just really people sitting, you know, standing in their yards. You, you've seen this many times. Shocked, you know, they don't know what to do. Everything's gone. Just trying to go through the the rubble of what little bit they find that, that's left and just uh, it's just a sad sad situation and like I said everybody needs to be praying for all these people all over our state but please pray for the people in Hackleburg right now because their entire city is just pretty much turned upside down and uh Okay. Well, well, listen, appreciate, appreciate. Thank, thank you so much for the report. I am so sorry. The, the, the hearing this stuff breaks your heart. Yes, but uh, we'll check back does. tomorrow morning at the first light of day. We'll get a good look at the damage up there. But again, uh, thank you for your work, your volunteer. Yeah. But uh, people like you make the world go round. So thanks for what yeah. you did for those people up there today. Thank you, James, for all that you do. You, you, <laughs> you're one of the best, and we appreciate you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it's 9:25. And uh, at this time, I want to go to uh, Alabama Governor Robert Bentley. Uh, Dr. Bentley, this is James Spann. And uh, I don't know if you're watching this from Tuscaloosa or Montgomery tonight, but uh, uh, the, the, the damage and the death toll is staggering in our state today. Yes, it is, James. Uh, well, actually, we, uh, we monitored it, monitored it uh, up at the EMA headquarters, uh, and then we came back down for a, a press conference around 6 o'clock. And... Uh, uh, yeah, we watched uh, like you did the uh, the the tornado that came through Tuscaloosa there, and of course uh, we were concerned about uh, our own home there and I, my family there that are in Tuscaloosa. So uh, you know, I know that uh, a lot of families across the state are worried about their students, uh, their children, and uh, and so you know our our thoughts and prayers are with with everyone across the state and. 
Um, but uh, we, we have really uh, had great response from our EMA people, all of our uh, first responders. They've done a fantastic job, and, and you all have done such a, f a fantastic job of keeping people updated and the warnings, uh, even though, you know, it's uh, it's been devastating across the state. Dr. Bentley, fr from a state perspective, we, we've heard from places like Hackleburg where, where it has been so bad. What, what will you plan in coming days to assist all of these various municipalities where the damage is so severe? Well, what we've done uh, today, we asked the president first for a declaration, uh, emergency declaration, and uh, they approved it tonight. Uh, the uh, declaration, uh, the the, the part dealing with the cleanup they did not, but they will they'll do that tomorrow. Uh, but as far as rescue, search and rescue, and uh, uh, life type uh, situations, they approve that. And uh, so, and we're also going to send in uh, uh, National Guard uh, troops uh, tonight and in the morning uh, to uh, many of the areas. Uh, we've uh, at least 1,400 troops are, are going in, uh, and so we've already. Uh, uh, ask the um, Major General, our Adjutant General, to uh, to begin deploying those. Uh, and of course, all of our uh, uh, volunteers, our organizations, uh, the Red Cross, the Baptist, uh, all of those have been uh, deployed. And uh, the, from you know EMA, and of course you've been there, and you know what a good job that they do. And so we, we're going to reach out to everyone that uh, that's hurting, and and uh, it's it's going to take days it's not or weeks it's not going to be a a quick response but uh, we're going to we're going to do it as quickly as we possibly can and 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 meet the immediate needs first and of course the immediate need is to make sure people are safe uh, and that uh, we get people the medical help and uh, and then help those families who have lost loved ones you know we, we were together uh, just it seemed like what 10 days ago in Atauga County and, and the one thing we talked about we're both from Tuscaloosa and of course when you were young you lived in Columbiana we have been through so many of these things together but it doesn't make it any easier does it no it does not and uh, I can tell you're a horse just like I'm horse uh, you know but and and you know we've uh, it's 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 very difficult to see this and uh, uh, you know when you see the the massive damage and uh, uh, you know to into and, and to watch like you did and to watch that tornado come in towards Tuscaloosa there uh, and all the others that we've seen and but, but when you see it coming and you know you you can't do a thing. I mean, you just you've got to get out of the way and 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 get to safety. And uh, and again, uh, I just appreciate so much uh, what y'all do, James. Y'all do a wonderful job of, of warning people, and I just appreciate that. Well, well Dr. Bentley, uh, Governor Bentley, thank you so much. And, and again, we'll be talking to you in coming days. But thanks for your being on top of this thing today. And we'll talk again soon. And we'll pray our way through this. Uh, we will, James. And thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Bye bye. All right. Uh, let, let's go back to our, our Chilton County situation and again uh, thanks to, to Governor Bentley for uh, uh, joining us that's the circulation it's crossed US 82 and it's coming up on Clanton that is uh, County Road 37 right there uh, that runs uh, down through Fairview and down to Billingsley anybody on around Fairview and Sunshine Farms you need to be in a safe place right now and again this is moving northeast and that's going to take it very close to Clanton I, you know initially I talked about maybe the southern part but I think the more we look at this thing it might be making a beeline right for downtown Clanton uh, that's U.S. 31. That's Interstate 65 right here. Uh, the uh, significant tornado impact is a 5.4. I know we've seen numbers as high as 15 today, but still, that is a very significant number. So we encourage everybody uh, that is along Alabama 22 between Maplesville and Clanton, down Highway 37, down to Fairview, to be in a safe place until this thing passes. The circulation is not as tight as it was 15 minutes ago, but again, this could reorganize at any time and produce a tornado if it's not doing that right now. So this is the one one storm in our DMA that is producing a, a very strong indication of a tornado. Uh, it has come up through uh, uh, Stanton, and you can wa watch the organization here. Excellent. And then uh, it's broad at this point. So it's possible there might not be anything down, but based on everything that's happened today, you've got to respect the situation, and you've got to go to a safe place right now. So again, everybody in the city limits of Clanton, everybody around Fairview, we want you in a safe place. This is coming right toward downtown Clanton. That's uh, Interstate 65. This is US 31. And of course, is that continues pushing northeast that will be crossing uh, the Coosa River, uh, Lake Michigan.
Mitchell and then crossing over into uh, Coosa County. So again, more than likely the circulation is a little east of US Highway 82. And again, there's a church right here called Hillcrest Baptist Church. That's the Otauga County line. Right there is a place called Jim's Pit Barbecue. This is going to be passing north of Jim's near the church, coming over towards Sunshine Farms, which is right here, and then crossing over into downtown Clanton or just south of there. And again, for those of you that are familiar with Clanton, Peach Park is located right here, and the Alabama Emergency Management Headquarters is located right here, uh, just off the interstate. And of course, downtown Clanton is right here. Uh, that's Alabama Highway 145. The Peach, uh, uh, the Big Peach, the uh, water tower is located right here. You see that off the interstate. Uh, but again, there's the inflow, potential tornado back in that southwestern flank. Any damage reports on this thing, Jason? Uh, no, no damage reports have come in so far. Uh, in fact, I just got a note in from our producer back in the booth, Deborah. She said that uh, there are uh, there are some false messages on Twitter about volunteers being needed in Jefferson County. Jefferson County EMA says we don't need volunteers right now. We've got plenty of folks who are trained to do what they're doing. Uh, we've got folks coming in from the National Guard into Jefferson County, so volunteers aren't needed. Leave them alone for a little while. There's going to be plenty of opportunity for you to volunteer over the next few days to help in the cleanup. Uh, but right now, they're dealing with more search and rescue. Uh, those missions are far and above more important than clearing trees out of the road. So if there's a tree that's in the middle of the road in your street, if you want to cut it out with your own chainsaw, I think you're welcome to do that. But don't call the Jefferson County Emergency Management. And I would imagine Tuscaloosa is the same way. Don't call the EMA office uh, trying to volunteer just yet because uh, there's just so much going on trying to make sure that people are okay. We'll worry about property later. We've got to worry about people at this point, and there are still a lot of folks unaccounted for, not only in Jefferson and Tuscaloosa, but uh, not sure about Coleman County, and we do know that in Hackleburg uh, that there has been uh, a lot of folks that have gone missing, and, and we just don't know how many there are at this point. So let the, uh, let the pros handle it tonight and early tomorrow. Uh, there will be plenty of opportunity for you to put the chainsaw to use and put your truck to use and volunteer to help get Alabama cleaned up and get it back to the way it was before we started this awful, awful day. James. Uh, we're getting uh, reports now of five confirmed deaths from the Argo community in Walker County. The, the, this is not the St. Clair County Argo. So uh, again, uh, Deborah, is that five and five for a total of 10 in Walker County? Is that five, period? Okay, so what's the total death toll in Walker County? Okay, 13 people have been killed in Walker County. Unbelievable. The, the numbers are just going to keep ramping up tonight. Again, uh, the, the total death toll count is 53. Uh, uh, the Alabama death toll is now 53, which is just unbelievable. Uh, and I'm afraid it's going to go higher. Uh, let me tell you what now. Uh, this ain't my first rodeo. Uh, I've been here a long time. You have to go back to April 3rd, 4th, 1974 to find something like this. I was a senior in high school that year, and that night I was dis dispatched north as a volunteer working ham radio duty, and 80 people died that night in Alabama. That was when Ewan was wiped out, and, and this night could easily rival, if not surpass that. Uh, so again, uh, that, that is just uh, incredible. 53 fatalities right now. And we, you, know, you, you heard the, the volunteer from Hackleburg. He doesn't know how many people have died there. Nobody knows at this point. So we have confirmed 53 fatalities. And by this time tomorrow evening, we will probably have a much better idea of where that number stands. But again, before we get into the damage, we've still got business to take care of. Uh, this is an indication of what could be a significant tornado that is in the process of crossing County Road 37 right there. The Fairview Volunteer Fire Department sits right there. Sunshine Farms is here. The, uh, the Strawberry You Pick em, uh, deal is right here. And again, that's going to be crossing 37, coming out right over here toward uh, Clanton, maybe the southern part, but anybody in the city limits of Clanton, you need to be in a safe place. Small room, lowest floor, near the center and away from windows. And uh, that will be crossing US 31, crossing I-65, and then makes a beeline for Lake Mitchell and on the Coosa River, and then it will be crossing over into Coosa County. And remember, these are the long track tornadoes. Uh, most of our tornadoes today have been long track. The, the one that hit Tuscaloosa started in Mississippi, hit Birmingham, and uh, kept causing problems into Georgia. Uh, that's a long track tornado. So this is the kind of thing that will just not go away very easily. I wish we could just wave a magic wand and make it disappear. It will soon. The dry line is coming through Birmingham. Uh, I firmly believe that by 1030, we'll be out of this whole mess. Again, you can see north and west of Birmingham, 
no problems at all. Coleman, your severe weather threat is over. Jasper, Fayette, Hamilton, Hackleburg, Haleyville, Tuscaloosa, no issues. Uh, the, the storms that are in progress up here in northeast Alabama producing a lot of lightning, but there's no evidence of any storm rotation. Uh, you know, you've got heavy rain falling uh, in places like Hoax Bluff and Glencoe with a lot of thunder and lightning here. Uh, up around Weiss Lake is pouring rain, but we've got a severe thunderstorm warning for the far northern part of Cherokee for the storm that's coming out of Fort Payne up on Talk of, uh, Talk of Lookout Mountain. But again, there are no warnings over here. The one tornado warning that's left in our DMA. It's for the storm that is coming or approaching Clanton. And so we're just going to focus on that one storm. And, and again, you can clearly see the lightning output of this thing is absolutely tremendous. It's basically nonstop. Again, there's the notch uh, back in the back flank of the storm. Greatest potential for a tornado right there. Uh, the community of Enterprise sits here. Let me tell you something now that, you know, this storm is showing, it's, it's not tight. Notice how the rotation is not as tight as a lot of the rotation we've seen today. It seemed to be getting better though in those last few frames. Yeah. It had just, it had almost right. gone away completely right. and now it's back. Right, Th these have been cyclical. The, the community of Enterprise, it's right here. And again, it's come through Fairview, but clearly this thing is moving east northeast there's not a lot of northward component of motion here but i want everybody in clanton to stay in your safe place uh i would suggest as far south as verbena you've got cooper and verbena just to be on the safe side i think everybody down highway 31 needs to be in a safe place with this storm it's clearly out of Atauga county and purely a chilton county problem right now but again that is a, a potential for a significant tornado that will be cutting across the southern part of the city of clanton and again cutting across uh uh, again, this uh, Chilton County High School sits about right there. Uh, and again, this is the Peach Park exit. Uh, Peach Park is here. Alabama EMA office is right here. There's a McDonald's right there. Uh, that rotation is going to be awfully close, awfully close to that exit. That's Alabama 22 and US 31. Uh, the first exit for Clanton coming up from the south, last exit for Clanton coming down from the north. And uh, again, that's going to be cutting over the interstate about that exit. But still, everybody in Clanton should be in a safe place. This, the whole city limits of Clanton. But the greatest emphasis on the danger is the southern part of the city of Clanton. Uh, so again, that's your interstate. And again, needless to say, nobody, and I mean nobody, should be driving along Interstate 65 between, uh, say, Microwave Hill uh, in North Otago County and uh, the Thorsby exit. Uh, so from here to here, that's the Otago County line. Don't even think about it. And, and uh, one thing to think about, you know, Boone's Chapel is right here. Uh, they had severe damage. Three people were killed in Boone's Chapel back on the 15th of April. And they're still recovering. Boone's Chapel Baptist Church was destroyed. This one passing north of there. But again, uh, th this thing is just making a beeline for that uh, uh, Peach Park exit. And traditionally, your tornado is going to be back in through here. So uh, oftentimes in a case like now, you, you've seen these debris balls we've had today, and boy, those were easy to pick out. In a situation like this, it is not as easy when the rotation is somewhat broad. Uh, latest numbers, significant tornado index 6.0, tornado impact 7.9, uh, moving east at 43. The system suggesting an east motion, so it seems to be moving to the right of the mean flow. The mean flow carries them northeast. It's a right turner, so again, instead of affecting northeast, Chilton County, it's, it's mainly going to affect this part of Chilton County. So uh, again, from uh, Clanton all the way down to Cooper and Verbena and Enterprise uh, and Fairview, just stay in your safe place until this thing gets out of here. Uh, there's a decent chance this will be the last one of the event for Chilton County. So once we get this thing out of here, just maybe that'll be it. Uh, I can't promise that, but uh, with the dry line so close, um, that, that's an encouraging thing. Uh, I have not seen, Jason, any reports of damage on this one. No, nothing so far. The only damage that we've gotten within the last, uh, I think, what, 45 minutes to an hour that we've been back on, uh, that we've been staying on uh, after the, the, the main threat had ended in uh, the eastern side of the state with the southern storms that developed uh, the uh, Dadeville area in uh, in Tallapoosa County. Uh, I believe that was the town that was, that was uh, struck with a tornado. Uh, some fairly significant damage has been reported in Tallapoosa County. Uh, that storm was the one that was north of Eclectic uh, just before it came across Tallapoosa, and now that's over into Chambers County west of Lynette. Uh, so these storms are moving quickly. The one in Chilton County, though, has just tremendous lightning output on it. Uh, in fact, you can't even see the storm 
for the amount of lightning that's covering this part of Chilton County. So not only do you have the threat from wind and a tornado, but uh, just tremendous cloud to ground lightning. Uh, lightning strikes every few seconds all around the, the Clanton area and then down to the south into parts of Otauga County. This storm will move into Coosa County, so we're probably going to have to stay here, uh, I would say, at least up until 10 o'clock, if not a little bit past 10 o'clock with a tornado warning, most likely for Coosa, provided that this maintains its composure. And considering that the environment over Coosa is just as unstable as it is, as it is over Chilton, there's really not much to suspect that this will weaken before it would cross over southern Coosa County. So uh, if you were in uh, southwest Coosa County along uh, Highway 22, you might want to go ahead and be considering that tornado safety plan. Uh, downtown Clanton south along Highway 31 toward Chilton County High School, down toward the Peach Park exit toward the uh, Alabama State EMA office, a possible tornado moving across that part of Chilton County as we speak. Uh, if you're in Maplesville, Billingsley, uh, Isabella, uh, down toward Ryderville, Stanton, you're clear of this. Uh, there's no more threat of a tornado. This is now focused in on the southern half of the city of Clanton uh, over toward Pletcher and then crossing US 31 and I-65 right there in the central southern part of Chilton County. This will eventually make it into Coosa. It just depends on whether or not that rotation can uh, maintain itself. It doesn't look as good as it did earlier, but it doesn't look that bad either. It's kind of a on a day like this, you might call this a middle of the road kind of couplet. It just doesn't look too bad, doesn't look that great, although that last scan is starting to get a little stronger over the southern half of the city of Clanton. So uh, Chilton County, uh, you're not out of the woods here. I think this uh, is a possibility that there could be uh, at least a small tornado there, if not something bigger. So we want to treat it as if it might be one of those larger ones that happened earlier today. But again, I want to reiterate, uh, there's no damage report just yet, but uh, in Chilton County, a possible tornado moving across the uh, southern half of Clanton will eventually cross the Coosa River. We're talking 10 minutes, and this thing will be across I-65 and approaching the Coosa, and then it'll be over here into Coosa County, uh, southwest of Rockford, maybe a, maybe say due west of Rockford. Uh, communities like Dollar, Traveler's Rest, uh, Wilona probably uh, going to be nearby to this. It's moving almost due east, so as it crosses the river, it may parallel or stay just a little bit to the south of uh, Alabama Highway 22, moving into Rockford. And I'm uh, still looking for any kind of damage reports out of this. There's just nothing coming, and that's a good thing. I, I would, I'm okay with sitting here for the rest of this evening up until 10 or 10.30 talking about the fact that we have rotating thunderstorms with no damage. Uh, Dadeville. Uh, the uh, report uh, is now coming in from Dadeville from uh, Tallapoosa County. A tornado was reported by a train spotter at 9:33. Trees are down, blocking Highway 49 near the near the community of Stillwaters. Uh, there has been uh, apparently a little bit more damage around the Dadeville area, but that seems to be the uh, the storm of the hour at this point. Uh, everything has uh, begun to calm down around the Birmingham area, Tuscaloosa. Uh, there's no other threat of a tornado from Birmingham northwest, but to the southeast we still have a tornado watch in effect and still have a tornado warning here for Chilton County. And until this thing can get out of Chilton and move into Coosa, I think around Clanton, Verbena, Cooper, the state EMA office, the Coosa River, uh, any of the Spots uh, right there in southwest Coosa County around Traveler's Rest, Dollar, Wilona, and Rockford. You need to be in a safe place just as soon as you can get there because even though there's not a warning up yet for Coosa formally, uh, I believe there probably will be one pretty soon. Now, the possible tornado has now passed over County Road 36. The radar image you see here is a little bit delayed. It's not live, so we're, we're looking back into the past about three or four minutes. Here comes the live level two scan, and we'll see where that uh, pendant is now. It's on the interstate it's now. Essentially on the interstate. That's live. That's where it is now. Of course, three or four minutes are going to go by before we get that next scan. So we'll sit here with this kind of image and know that the possible tornado very near I-65 will cross 65 and it'll cross 31 and then parallel Highway 22 through the rest of Chilton County. So east of Clanton, uh, down around the Highway 22, Highway 31, and I-65, you need to be in a safe place. We'll get the uh, latest numbers here off the radar system. We're still showing a tornado impact up there in the high range, uh, 6.9. That number does only go to 10. I'm confident in that. The significant tornado index of 5.9 has come down slightly, but it's still high enough to be very concerned about the situation south of Clanton. Yeah, if we can double box this, uh, I want to go to some uh, video from Mike Wilhelm. Uh, we'll put the uh, uh, MacBook Pro here in the office up in one box, and, and we'll uh, put the uh, 
uh, tornado, or the radar up in the other box. This, this is a video of the Tuscaloosa tornado. This is from Mike Wilhelm. Uh, he's one of our uh, uh, storm, our sky watchers uh, today. And uh, again, this is a look at the uh, tornado approaching. And you know, the thing that just amazes me, look at all those people driving, just like nothing is happening. And uh, I, I don't know what it would take to get people to listen to warnings, those people that are driving, if they're just not paying attention, if they don't care. Uh, but that has always been just one very, very disturbing aspect of all of these deadly days like today. I don't know how many people died in cars today, but I've seen over, uh, overturned 18-wheelers. Uh, I've just seen so many issues. But I'll tell you, we can double box this. We've, we've, we've got active weather. Uh, I want to put the uh, radar in one box and that uh, video in another box. Uh, but again, this is from uh, the video is from Mike Wilhelm, uh, uh, one of the uh, sky uh, watchers we have today. Uh, and again, that is the tornado that killed at least 15 people in Tuscaloosa. Uh, just absolutely incredible. And uh, again, we, we encourage, and it, tell you, if we can't do the double box, we'll just take the radar full because, again, I'm, we, we've got a pretty serious situation down in Chilton County. Uh, there we go. Thank you. If we can double box it, what I'll do is stop that video and we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can uh, bring it back here in just a second. But that is a tornado signature that is very close to the Alabama EMA headquarters in Peach Park. Uh, it is just below Clanton, the southern part of Clanton, moving to the east-northeast, about like that. Uh, we got a tornado warning in effect for Coosa County. Uh, that signature is going to be moving about like that. You can see it's going to be pretty much making a beeline for Rockford. This Alabama Highway 22 right here, that's where 22 forks off at 31. Uh, this is the uh, Mitchell Dam right here. And again, that will be coming right over toward Rockford. So anybody along Alabama 22 between Clanton and Rockford, you need to be in a safe place uh, right away because that is a very... A potentially dangerous storm. Uh, we have not heard of any damage so far. This came through uh, uh, a number of populated areas, uh, but again, at this point, uh, we've heard of no damage, but still, we want you to take this very seriously. Uh, we have a potential tornado that's going to be coming right down Highway 22 toward Rockford. That's U.S. 231. That's Alabama 22. Rockford is the county seat, and uh, again, from uh, Coosa County, it goes over into Tallapoosa County, and just for everybody's planning in the building, once this exits into Tallapoosa County, into the Montgomery television market, uh, we should be able to go on with the 10 o'clock news, and uh, I would imagine it's going to be an extended uh, newscast tonight. We're just going to take our time and tell the stories of what it, what's happened here today. Um, all right, any hope of the double box, or we, um, and if we can't, okay, apparently we, uh, we can't do that, so... Um, Let's go back to the uh, video very quickly uh, on the MacBook Pro here. And uh, again, just wanted to show you the, the, the pictures. I probably have 10,000 pictures today. But again, this is from uh, Mike uh, Wilhelm, who is uh, one of our sky watchers. And of course, you saw the dramatic uh, tower cam video today of this thing. But we just like to give you different perspectives. We showed you one earlier that was shot by, I think, a student at the University of Alabama. It's on Vimeo. But this thing was, uh, and again, this is unedited video, by the way. Uh, so that's the reason that it's a little shaky. Uh, Mike and those guys, they, they, oh, thank you, Vic. You, you got our double box going. That, that's great. But again, this was the tornado that was coming through, producing extensive, extensive damage. And, uh, you know, we, we saw that on that sky cam on top of the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse, and it just, it, it breaks your heart because you know that you know, it, it's a deal where somebody's going to lose your life down there. And you, you've done all you can do, and just sometimes it happens. Uh, but again, that is an amazing scene, just incredible. Uh, I moved to Tuscaloosa when I was in the fourth grade, and uh, before that lived in Greenville. And let me tell you what, uh, I've lived through a lot of these things in Tuscaloosa. I often joke it's the tornado capital of the world, but again, seeing something like that, you never, ever get used to it. I was talking, you know, with Dr. Bentley, our governor, about that. We're both from Tuscaloosa, and, and we've been through so many of these things, but it doesn't make it any easier. Uh, and again, the, the damage is extensive in uh, places like uh, Fultondale and places like Pleasant Grove, and obviously in Tuscaloosa, uh, in Jasper around Argo, uh, the community of Argo, up in Hackleburg, uh, Coleman. Uh, it, it will take a long time to tell all of these stories. Uh, it, it, it is so sad, and, and I've said this many times, you don't know the scope of a tornado tragedy until the funerals begin the following week. That's when it hits home. And unfortunately, there will be at least 53 of those next week because of the loss of life. The death toll is currently 53. Look at the debris on that thing. That is just amazing.
And again, you're watching a very strong tornado signature on radar. It's about to cross uh, uh, around around the Lake Mitchell Dam on the Coosa River. This thing has come on east of Interstate 65, crossing over into Coosa. Boy, that thing's tight. It's amazing how, Jason, the, the structure, I thought it was going away. But, but on a day like today, they're not going away. Well, you know, supercells, they, they go through those cycles. They occlude, and then they wrap back up. And a lot of times uh, when, when we talk about one single supercell that has made the track, like the one that went from northeast Mississippi, or northeast Mississippi through Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Ohatchee, through Piedmont. And by the way, I'm getting some Twitter reports and unconfirmed information that uh, there have been uh, some serious problems up around Ohatchee, too. So if uh, someone in the newsroom wants to get in touch with Calhoun County EMA, I know we've already been doing that, but uh, to get a little official information about what's happened up around Ohatchee, uh, there, there's some things coming in on Twitter that are very concerning about uh, maybe some loss of life in that part of Calhoun County, too. But uh, these supercells, as I was saying, they will occlude, or the, uh, the actual circulation will, will wrap up, and uh, the, the the cool air and the warm air just uh, they they can't uh, they can't interact anymore. So the tornado will dissipate or the circulation will dissipate, and then right south of that point, another circulation will develop. So uh, often you get a family of tornadoes or uh, or a, a supercell that has multiple updrafts, and one just replaces the other. So you have a system of thunderstorms as opposed to one single thunderstorm that lasts a while. So uh, this thing that's just east of Cooper now uh, may end up being something of that nature. It may be the, uh, the cyclical nature of the supercell to see it pulse back and forth, especially now that our dynamics are weakening some. And uh, boy, I tell you what, that that video down in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, that just gets worse and worse. Uh, EF4 tornado, possibly. Um, maybe an EF5, depending, you know, the, the damage in Tuscaloosa was, was just unreal. But what we see in Chilton County, we don't have any reports of damage. I don't take that as a positive sign yet because it took us a long time to get damage reports in from Coleman County and... It took us, uh, what, nine hours to get reports from Marion County because of the fact that we had such a, a damaged infrastructure for morning storms that didn't allow any communication whatsoever. The NOAA weather radio tower was down for a long time up in northwest Alabama, and we just had a worst-case scenario today. You, if When you had that, that line of storms come through this morning, it just provided an, an absolute worst-case scenario for us. Uh, it, it's hard to imagine a situation that could shape up much worse than this. Of course, you know it can always get worse in some degree, but uh, this is just about as bad as, as, as anyone could imagine uh, here in Alabama today. And uh, the possible tornado, the only one left in this television market, is southeast of Clanton. It's east of Cooper, and it's moving quickly over toward the Mitchell Dam, uh, toward Alabama Highway 22 in southern Coosa County. That storm will pass uh, very near Rockford within the next 15 to 20 minutes. It's moving east pretty quickly. Uh, it doesn't seem to have the same forward speed that the storms did earlier. It's not moving at 60 or 70 miles per hour like the others were. Uh, but uh, there you can clearly see we have our reflectivity, and it has intensified again. It's approaching that river, approaching the Coosa River. So very quickly we'll see this move out of Chilton and into Coosa County. We'll check the parameters here based off of the, uh, the radar system. That orange triangle is a TVS signature. And what we see with the statistics from this storm right now, the, uh, the radar estimations are showing a tornado impact of a 7.5, a significant of a 6.3. So uh, sig a tornado impact 7.5, significant tornado impact of 6.3. Those numbers are in that mid-range, which on a typical severe weather day around here, we would be extremely concerned about it. And so we're still concerned about it, even though it's not as high as the uh, extreme values that we had earlier with our large wedge tornadoes. Doesn't mean it can't happen. Uh, the atmosphere is a little bit different tonight than it was in the afternoon hours. The instability may be going down just a little bit. Uh, and the wind fields are changing. It's not quite as, uh, the, the, the wind shear is not quite as strong here in Chilton County and Coosa County as it was a few hours ago. If we'd had these storms about uh, 4 or 5 o'clock, it would have been a much different story, I think. But still, a tornado is a possibility. Moving along Alabama Highway 22 west of Rockford, coming into Coosa County. If you are in Clanton, there's still some heavy rain, some thunder and lightning. Uh, you're in the clear now, though. There's no more threat of a tornado in the city of Clanton. Uh, down toward Maplesville, Isabella, Jemison, Thorsby, you're in the clear as well. Uh, here's the polygon, and it uh, basically covers Coosa County pretty well. 
and it covers Tallapoosa County too. So the Weather Service is warning all of Coosa County for the possibility of a tornado. This uh, may drift a little bit to the left or it may drift a little bit to the right, but I think that fan uh, that the radar has placed on there is a, is a pretty good estimate of where this is going to wind up going. So from uh, Bentleyville down toward Rockford, Wilona, equality and speed, you need to be in a safe place. This is moving east at 48 miles per hour, not as fast as some of the storms were earlier. So let's get a little bit closer look in here on some of these communities. So if it's moving east at about uh, 40 miles per hour, we're looking at this getting to Alexander City uh, at uh, say roughly about uh, 1040 to 1045 and the tornado warnings in effect until 1045. I think we will be able to go to uh, our newscast before that though because this thing will be mainly in Coos in, into Tallapoosa County at that time but uh, it's going to take a few minutes for sure for this to get all the way across Coosa and into Tallapoosa County. So well, we're approaching 10 o'clock right now. It's 957. Uh, we had planned to do an hour-long newscast at 10 o'clock, but uh, the way it stands right now, we're still going to have tornado warnings in effect for parts of central Alabama, for Chilton and for Coosa counties. And it's uh, that southeastern edge of Chilton and southwestern Coosa where we have the immediate threat of a tornado that may be on the ground moving east at about 40 miles per hour. All right, it's coming up on 10 o'clock, and again, we are going to do an extended newscast in just a little bit. We can't do it now because we still have an active tornado warning for the counties in our designated market area, but the minute that we lose these tornado warnings, we will uh, go with a, an extended late news uh, because of this horrible, horrible tragedy in our state today. Uh, the death toll is at least 53, and inevitably that will be going higher. Uh, we have major tornado damage in so many places. And again, in the other box on your screen, you are seeing some of the damage through your eyes and your camera, uh, your cameras today. And we thank everybody for taking the time to send the images. I probably got over 5,000 pictures just today. Look at the damage there. Th th these are strong, violent tornadoes. Uh, the ones we've had this afternoon and tonight, these are the kind uh, that uh, in many cases could be rated EF4 or stronger. Fives are extremely rare, but certainly it sounds like we had a number of EF4s, including the one that maybe hit Hackleberg, but I don't know that for a fact. What, what happens, the Weather Service will be sending in. Look at that. that that is, you know, what we're finding, what, what the deal is, a lot of people have sent in what they're finding in their front yards. Uh, that is a 1982 Crimson Tide uh, football guide that somebody found from Tuscaloosa far, far away. I, I have no idea. We, we, we've had uh, reports. In fact, let me see. Where, this is in Aniana. Uh, they found a prescription and a football program from 1982 from Tuscaloosa. Uh, the, the debris from the Tuscaloosa tornado is, is been all across Birmingham and so many places. So when you see images coming across that don't make sense, uh, a lot of times those are people taking photographs in what we're going to try and do uh, in coming days, we're going to work on posting those images over on the blog to match up people in Tuscaloosa that, that, that want the, that stuff back. And again, in a lot of cases, this stuff is just absolutely, you know, precious. And we hope to and look at that picture. Uh, you know, it's just going to take us a long time to go through this whole thing. But again, the reason we are here, it is a tornado warning for Coosa County. The warning uh, for Chilton County is no longer in effect because the storm is exclusively in Coosa. So let's take a closer look at this. We're going to zoom into this storm. Uh, this is a storm that is capable of producing a violent tornado in uh, Coosa County. Uh, again, Rockford is right here. This is the uh, county seat. And again, right back in through here would be the possible tornado moving to the east-northeast. Uh, it might be a little south of Rockford, but it's going to be very close, so we encourage uh, everybody in the community of Rockford, that's the county seat of Coosa County, to be in a safe place. This will continue moving off to the east, and uh, ultimately this thing is probably going to wind up in Tallapoosa County. Uh, it, the, the rotation is relatively broad uh, at this point. I, I, but the reflectivity is looking more intense. It does. And uh, the, I, th I think we're, we're just in that cycle phase where we, we may just be out of phase enough with the intensity of the rotation and the intensity of the thunderstorm itself. But uh, it, it, at some point, you have to believe that that may catch up and uh, you may get a tornado on the ground somewhere in the vicinity of Rockford soon. Yep. Uh, and again, I'm watching notes coming from the uh, National Weather Service in Birmingham. Uh, 
they're pretty concerned about that. Got a note from our friend Josh Johnson down in Montgomery. They've got people trapped in Santuck. That's in Elmore County. You saw that nasty looking storm that moved through northern Elmore. Uh, there are people trapped and understand their issues down in their part of the state as well uh, through parts of Elmore and Tallapoosa County. So in, in adjacent states in, in Mississippi and in, in Georgia, they have had big problems today as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, in, in coming days, we'll know a final count of how many people lost their life today, how many people were injured, how many tornadoes touched down. But this will be an outbreak of historic uh, proportion. Uh, there's absolutely uh, no doubt about that. So, again, this is Alabama's ABC 3340, WBMA Birmingham, uh, WCFT Tuscaloosa, WJSU Anniston. I'm James Spann with Jason Simpson. Uh, we are starting our 10 o'clock news that begins now, but for the beginning of the news, we're going to stay with weather uh, in that we have an active tornado warning. The warning for Coosa and Tallapoosa is technically until 1045, but again, as soon as this circulation exits Coosa County, we'll be able to start our uh, coverage of this tragedy in our state today. Again, this is Rockford, and, and I'm telling you, this is going to be pretty close to the city of Rockford. Uh, it seems like the tornado wants to go right along Highway 22. Highway 22 crosses the uh, Lake Mitchell Dam and winds up in uh, Rockford, so anybody close to Alabama 22 need to be in a safe place. Nobody should be driving along U.S. 231. Uh, in Coosa County, just period. Uh, so we'll just put it that way. The next north-south highway in Coosa County is Alabama Highway 9. Nobody should be driving along Highway 9. So uh, 231 and 9 are basically uh, off limits in terms of travel for about the next 20 minutes. And again, this storm will be exiting Coosa County, going over into uh, uh, Tallapoosa County. But again, clearly this storm is out of Chilton County. There is no longer a tornado warning in effect for uh, Chilton County at this time. Um, I tell you what, let me reload this, uh, the, the Flickr feed. I, I think Olshu just sent us uh, some, uh, some damage. Uh, th this is going to be from John uh, Olshu. John has done a great job for us today. Uh, John uh, was on that Tuscaloosa storm when he was down at the Knoxville exit on uh, Interstate 5920. And uh, uh, if we can, let, let's go back to the double box. And again, what you've got, uh, that's some a video from John. We're going to roll. John was one of the first on the scene. You know, he has this uncanny ability to uh, just get on these tornado scenes. John was on the, the scene in so many of these outbreaks over the years. And again, that is the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center. Somewhere in that parking lot, there used to be a full moon barbecue. This is in Tuscaloosa. I don't know where it is. You know, you, you look at that and you don't even recognize anything. That's DCH uh, Regional Medical Center. So John's got the camera looking north. He's doing a full pan. But again, uh, that was the, the way it looked immediately after the tornado, just pure chaos out there. And, and what's amazing to me, that they said that from uh, that particular spot, you, you could actually see Coleman Coliseum. And normally with all the trees and everything else, you couldn't see Coleman. There's no way. So Tuscaloosa has been hit very hard. Uh, we, we talked with Mayor Maddox. We talked with Governor Bentley here. And uh, we're all uh, so saddened at the loss of life in our state today. Uh, so again, uh, we're probably about, f for, for logistical planning purposes in the building, uh, it looks like this storm will probably be exiting Coosa County, uh, I would say, in about 15 minutes or so. So I, would, I, I believe that we're going to wind up starting the newscast around 1020 uh, tonight. And again, we'll probably just stay on for a while because there is so much to report. And of course, what's going to happen tomorrow, uh, we will have uh, everybody in the newsroom uh, flooding the state to, to bring back stories on what has happened. And uh, as I said before, the, the true scope of a tornado tragedy like this, you don't know really until the funerals begin next week. That's when you learn who these people are. There could be children, they could be uh, maybe somebody you go to church with, somebody you know from the ballpark. It, it is so sad when you learn the specific stories. Uh, and so many of my best friends are the survivors of these kind of things and, and the pain is is so significant so again the, the news department we we kind of hand it off to the news department as soon as the event is over and uh, they'll be doing the reporting and the follow-ups and everything in coming days but again uh, this is rockford right here tornadic circulation approaching rockford from the west everybody in rockford you need to be in a safe place that's a small room on the lowest floor near the center away from windows no mobile homes no cars, nobody should be driving along US 231, nobody should be driving along Alabama Highway 9. And again, this will be exiting Coosa County, moving over into Tallapoosa. And uh, soon, uh, Jason, I think this, this just might be it for us for the night. And this has been a day that started with a pre-dawn 
mesoscale convective system that was just unbelievable. It that, was. That, uh, that, that, that was historic to me. I don't think I've seen widespread damage like that from this morning, not today, for, compared to these big hurricanes we've had blow through here back yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah, we had, we had a quarter of a million people without power before the tornado outbreak began, which was uh, incredible on its own right. Uh, we had uh, significant damage in Jasper, in, the, in Coleman County, around Holly Pond and Hansville. Uh, it's going to be really tough to determine if we had straight line wind damage or tornado damage because we had so many storms crossing the same areas. And if you think about the number of tornado warnings, the number of severe thunderstorms that crossed through Walker, Coleman, and Tuscaloosa counties, it's going to be really tough to figure out which storm did what. Uh, we may even have tornadoes that crossed paths because they were hitting on a different angle. Uh, we, we do know that there was uh, significant damage up around Hackleburg earlier, and uh, damage reports are starting to trickle in from northern Calhoun County, and uh, there may have been uh, some significant uh, injuries or some loss of life up around the Ohatchee area. We're still trying to get information about that, but uh, there, there's no confirmation on if that's uh, if, if there are actually some fatalities there or if it's uh, if it's just a, a triage station that's been set up to deal with some injured folks. But uh, something significant has happened around Ohatchee, and uh, that is the storm that hey, Vin, began in Tuscaloosa, let's, let's came double, through Birmingham. Well, Jason's talking. Let's double box again. Jason, you go ahead. I just want to roll some more video here. Okay, and uh, you know what you're seeing there again is a video of the the tornadoes as they came through. The first tornado that we saw of the entire day hit Coleman, and some of the video from Coleman was just incredible for the size tornado it looked like from the sky cam. Of course, we knew it would be a very strong tornado, but some buildings have just completely flattened in Coleman. Tuscaloosa and Jefferson counties, though, it seemed like they have uh, gotten the worst of it in all. Uh, fatalities up to 10 in Jefferson County, 15 in Tuscaloosa County, and uh, we do not know how high those numbers are actually going to go. Uh, and again, uh, still looking for anything. If, you know, if you have some information about what's going on in Calhoun County tonight, Calhoun or Cherokee, uh, you can send that to us on Twitter. I'm at, I'm at Simpson3340. James is at Span. Uh, that's a quick way to shoot information to us, and uh, we can then kind of put some of the pieces together that we're hearing. Uh, just get little bits and pieces here and there of uh, something significant that happened up around Roy Webb Road, Piedmont, and Ohatchee. Uh, so if you've got information about that you'd like to send to us, shoot it to us over Twitter and, or, or write it on the Facebook wall or something of that nature, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll pass that stuff along. Uh, we're looking in the upper right-hand box at a possible tornado that's very near the community of Kelly's Cross, or, uh, excuse me, near Traveler's Rest in Coosa County. Uh, that one looks a lot better from the Montgomery radar. Uh, from Maxwell Air Force Base radar. So uh, what we can't see from Birmingham here is that uh, there is a uh, there's a much more intense circulation that's developed with that storm, and uh, it's uh, just a little bit to the south of where it uh, appears here. So uh, south of Highway 22, there's still a pretty good chance that there is a circulating mesocyclone, a rotating mesocyclone that could produce a tornado at just about any time. So uh, if you're in Coosa County, we still want you to be in a safe place. It's going to take until probably 1025 or 1030 at the very least for this storm to get across Coosa County the entire way. So we're going to be here with you until the storm has passed Rockford, until it's passed uh, uh, equality and speed. Uh, it will likely move into Alexander City, but uh, we don't see any reports of damage coming from it. But... I say that with, you know, you got to take information like that with a grain of salt because sometimes it can take a long time to get the emergency channels fed into the media. Uh, sometimes we can go as much as 30 minutes to an hour before we actually hear about something that might have happened. Of course, when the uh, storm hit Daveville a little while ago, we heard about it quickly, but occasionally it can take uh, a little while longer. Uh, there was a, uh, there's one person confirmed dead in the Glencoe area, in the Silver Lakes area just south of Glencoe. Uh, that's uh, around Etowah County. Uh, that would be with that main storm, that one main supercell that uh, blew through Tuscaloosa and Birmingham and then went up across northern Calhoun, uh, southern Etowah and Cherokee County. Uh, I would imagine that there has been some significant damage in St. Clair too, but uh, uh, with the way things are working, uh, with so much damage that happened earlier this morning and then with the damage with this afternoon's tornado outbreak, it has just been almost impossible to get timely information about what has happened. Of course, uh, it, we, we beg you, don't go sightseeing in these areas. Let the emergency workers do their jobs. 
Uh, it's a very important time. This first 24 hours, first 12 hours, especially after the significant damage happens, these folks have to be able to do the search and rescue. Cleanup will happen later. There's plenty of opportunity for you to volunteer your time, your chainsaw, your truck, your muscles. You can get to work all you want sometime later tomorrow or on Friday, but for today and for tonight and for early tomorrow morning, you need to let the search and rescue folks do their jobs and, uh, and see, see about making sure that everybody's okay. And again, we want to thank everybody for the reports today. And, and again, the, the good news, you know, that this thing approaching Rockford, again, that looks more like straight line wind damage. Still, I want everybody to stay in your tornado safe place in Rockford until this thing passes. Once we clear this on in the far eastern part of the county, we'll start the 10 o'clock news. Uh, let me check the timing here. It is about uh, 10, 11. It's probably going to be somewhere around 10, 15 to 10, 20 when we're going to start the uh, newscast. Uh, uh, but again, uh, we want to thank everybody for their uh, wealth of reports today. Of course, we, and speaking we, of reports, James, yeah. uh, since I mentioned sending those in by Twitter, I've gotten several. Uh, many homes in the Pleasant Valley, Wellington area destroyed on New Liberty Road. Uh, that's Calhoun County. Uh, one, uh, one report here is that friends on R Roy Webb Road in Calhoun County lost an entire house. And get this, they clung to tree roots under their house. And that's how they survived. Mm. Hanging on to tree roots in the crawl space under a house. Uh, Webster's Chapel Volunteer Fire Department was destroyed. Uh, there is a report that a baby was trapped in a house in Webster's Chapel, and several houses were destroyed in the Roy Webb Road area, uh, Webster's Chapel Road area, at least one injury in, in, at, uh, around uh, Roy Webb Road. The fire department at Webster's Chapel is gone. Those reports all coming in by Twitter. Yep. So it seems like the situation up there in Calhoun may have been, you know, we got, we mentioned uh, when we were talking about the storm that was going over Anniston, uh, that we were hearing reports of damage from Calhoun County. It sounds like it was much more significant than just some reports of damage. It sounds like we had a very large tornado up there between Ohatchee and Piedmont and Jacksonville. Yeah, uh, it, it's, we won't know the scope of this tragedy until uh, at some point tomorrow, uh, it, it is going to take a lot of work to compile the number of deaths, the number of injuries, the number of tornadoes, the, the number of communities that have been just totally, totally uh, hit so hard uh, uh, today. Uh, and again, uh, you know, the Weather Service guys with their survey teams, they're exhausted from just, they, they just completed the work from the April uh, 15th event. Here we are April 27th with uh, one that is of historic proportion. And it will take a long time to get these storm surveys done. But again, as we get set to start the news, and again, we just want to clearly say again, there's hardly uh, any strong evidence of a tornado here, but I would still stay in your safe place. You, you, we have to have a very strong respect for any storm in this deal. So again, if you're in Rockford, give it about three or four more minutes and that will be on to the east of you. That will be sweeping over here into Tallapoosa County. Uh, but again, the tornado signature is clearly faded from this. It's in Coosa County, but because there could be strong straight line winds enough to knock down trees and power lines, if not a tornado still there, we encourage everybody to stay in their safe place. Uh, the warning extends over into Tallapoosa County that does include Alexander City and Dadeville, but you know the deal, Tallapoosa County belongs to the uh, Montgomery television market. But again, I wanted to thank everybody for the reports via uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook uh, today. The reports have been outstanding. Our Sky Watcher team, they're unbelievable. Uh, we have 700 trained spotters. We have done training every November for, I believe, eight years. We call it Storm Alert Extreme. Brian Peters, our associate trains, he, he's a retired Weather Service meteorologist, and uh, they are invaluable in terms of what they do. Uh, and thanks to all those that were out in the field today, and of course, the, internally here, everybody else. Uh, uh, but again, especially the public uh, for all the reports via Twitter and Facebook. Uh, and again, uh, of course, during these events, we can't respond a lot on those two media, but we can certainly watch. And boy, we got a lot of really good information off that today. So again, thanks to all of you that uh, followed along with Twitter and Facebook and gave us reports. And again, that video you're seeing of the Tuscaloosa tornado, that's from Mike Wilhelm, one of our sky watchers. Uh, so now that we've got the tornado signature that is faded, but still, again, it's important to note here that if you are in Coosa County, east of Rockford to the Tallapoosa County line, we encourage everybody to stay in a safe place for the next five or 10 minutes or so. Uh, this is a storm that is still capable of producing a tornado very close to Rockford that is moving east. So again, nobody should be driving on US 231. Nobody should be driving along Alabama Highway 9. And uh, in a matter of minutes, that will be exiting Coosa County and moving over into uh, Tallapoosa County.
Uh, so uh, again, it's about 10, 15. Uh, we'll probably hit the newscast about 10, 20. So that's about uh, 10, 60 now, about four minutes uh, from now. And um, again, tomorrow, you know, this is a whole issue about tomorrow morning in schools and just watch the ribbon at the bottom of your screen. I know that many of you are sitting in the dark and that is so frustrating when you hear us say watch the crawl and you're listening to us on the radio in the dark. Uh, we will do our best to audibly provide this information, but I do want to encourage everybody. It's on our website, uh, abc3340.com. Look for the closings and the information about schools tomorrow. It's there if you are in the dark. And so many people have sat through this watching our live stream on a smartphone uh, tonight. Uh, technology is fantastic. We can only dream of doing this 10 or 15 years ago. But uh, again, it is on abc3340.com. And uh, like I said this morning, or sometimes, some point today, I guess it was this morning. I, I lose track of what hour of the day it is here. Um, be safe tomorrow morning driving to work. Understand there's a lot of trees and lines down. Power is out. I, I know I saw a tweet from Alabama Power Company uh, indicating that uh, uh, over 350,000 people are in the dark. So you're going to have a lot of traffic lights tomorrow morning that are out. Remember, treat those things like a four-way stop. If you go into work, take some extra time to get there. And that doesn't include the Tennessee Valley Authority who has, they've had transmission right. line problems, TVA in North Mississippi and North Alabama. Uh, I've been watching some, uh, some tweets coming in from Starkville and uh, the campus of Mississippi State's completely dark uh, and they don't expect to have power back maybe until sometime on Friday. And that's because of transmission lines from the, the main source at TVA. Uh, and I have seen not official TVA reports, mind you, but I've seen reports on Twitter of folks saying that uh, TVA has said. So it's a secondhand report. Uh, sometimes it's better not to even say it, but uh, considering how, how these things are working today and how significant some of the damage has been, that some folks in North Alabama are easily going to be without power for a week that were uh, under TVA uh, electricity. So uh, the TVA has had some significant problems, too. The uh, 300 some thousand were just from Alabama Power. I don't even have a count from TVA. So uh, North Alabama, Central Alabama, we may have more than a half million people in all without power right now because we weren't the only ones in the state that dealt with this. They had it up around Huntsville, too. Uh, there was a fatality reported in Tony up uh, around the Huntsville area uh, a little bit earlier on with some storms that came through there. So the entire state, basically north of Highway 80, has just been rocked by these storms over the last 18 hours. Fortunately, it's going to calm down around this part of the state, but there will still be a risk of severe weather down to our southeast in the southeast corner of the state and into northwest Florida through early tomorrow morning. Got a note here that uh, Mayor Maddox down in Tuscaloosa, he's confirming 15 killed and well over 100 injured. You know, what's amazing uh, is, is the fact that DCH Regional Medical Center had to treat all of these injuries while they were in the midst of this tornado. That, that tornado was so close to the hospital that there was some damage at the hospital. And of course, they're in emergency power. But again, uh, the, you know, there will be stories of, of so many heroes that came out of this thing today that, that often don't get told. And, and I, I hope we have time to tell a lot of those stories. Uh, there is tragic, horrible news. But again, there's some good news in the midst of all of this, of these people that have been so brave and so uh, heroic. So uh, again, the situation is, this storm is exiting Coosa County, moving into Tallapoosa County, and that is moving out of our television market. Therefore, as it moves out of Coosa, we have no additional tornadic storms within our market. So we're going to stop our weather coverage, uh, and we're going to hit the 10 o'clock news. It's going to be a long newscast. We're going to take our time and tell all the stories. But again, it is uh, 1020. Uh, so on behalf of the... Okay, I'm sorry. Ben Benny Miles. Benny, I'm so sorry. How could I forget you? You're my friend. <laughs> Hi, James. How are you? Uh, and we're so excited to, to talk to you because we've got some information that we need to get out, and I'm not going to take up much time. Yeah, please. You, you, you tell us what's happening with the waterworks, please. Okay, what has happened, James, is because of the storms this afternoon, power is out at Mulberry and Sipsy intakes. Now, these intakes provide water, as you know, to a large part of the system. And we've been informed that power may not be restored to these two locations until late Thursday or even as early as Friday. Now, also because of um, the uh, numerous broken water lines as a result of the storms and trees falling in the western area of the water system, uh, Birmingham Waterworks, our board of directors, is asking all customers to reduce their water uses and their consumption to critical use only. And we expect this emergency to uh, last from 24 to 48 hours or at least until power can be restored in our intakes and until we can resolve. 
Okay, I think we just lost Benny, but you clearly heard what she was saying. Uh, due to the uh, these big intake valves up on the, the forks of the Black Quarry River, they got no power, and they've got water leaks and other issues. So what, what she's asking you to do, if you are a customer of the Birmingham Water Works, is to uh, use only the water that you need. Kind of get it down to an emergency level. Do, don't water your lawn. Don't do anything unnecessary. Grab you a quick shower. You know, use whatever water you have to, but don't go beyond that. So, again, uh, that was Benny Miles with the Birmingham Water Works asking all of their customers to please, please, please conserve water. Don't use a lot. Use as little as possible until the power is restored to those big intake valves up uh, on the uh, Mulberry Fork and on the Locust Fork of the Black Warrior River. So that was the message there. All right, at 1021, we are going to to start ABC 3340 News at 10 o'clock that starts now. Good evening, everyone. James, thank you and your weather team. You guys are amazing. I'm Dave Baird. And I'm Brenda Ledun. Thank you for joining us tonight. Dozens of people are dead across Alabama, at least 53 tonight after a major outbreak of tornadoes. The storm started before sunrise, then just got worse throughout the day. Severe storms slammed into West Alabama at first light and worked their way east in just that first round of storms. Six people died. Afternoon storms left a wider path of damage with homes and businesses flattened and many people killed. The survivors, one of the tornadoes touched down west of Tuscaloosa and tore up the ground. And we want to also tell you about what happened in other parts of central Alabama. Yeah, right now are where we are, Thomas. Okay, uh, Chris Harris joins us from Pratt City. Sorry, Chris, uh, you were a surprise to us right there. You are in one of the triage areas. Yeah, that's right, Dave. I am in a triage area. Dugan Avenue and Avenue W is uh, kind of where I am in the Inslee area. Uh, the scene now is a little bit more serene than it was when we got here uh, a couple of hours ago. But I will tell you that I was able to talk to uh, Fire and Rescue Chief uh, C.W. Martis, and he said that basically what they're doing is they're, they're bringing in the injured from the area and treating them as best they can. They have had one fatality. He didn't get into any specifics as to how many people they have seen. But once they get them treated up, they're either sending them on to the hospital or if they're able to go uh, somewhere else uh, without further medical attention, then they're putting them on buses and sending them to Boutwell Auditorium uh, to give them a place to stay for the night. But it's all hands on deck really out here. We have EMA officials, fire and rescue, city, county medical technicians, basically whoever they could find to come out here and help has been out here. He did want me to stress that uh, any members of the public who aren't injured and who just may be you know, curious to see what's going on, please stay away. Let the officials here do their job um, because it's going to be a long process. As we all know, they're still in the search and rescue mode. Uh, so they didn't have any specifics to give to us tonight other than the fact that they do have one fatality and many, many injured this evening. We'll have more uh, to report once we know more, Dave, but for now, we'll send it back to you. Certainly is all hands on deck. We thank you, Chris, for being out there for us tonight as well. One of the tornadoes touched down west of Tuscaloosa and tore up the ground through Birmingham. Pleasant Grove and Concord were two of the hardest hit areas in the metro area. At least one person dead in Pleasant Grove, eight in Concord, and dozens severely wounded. ABC 3340's Anora Gathings is in the area, and uh, let's go straight to her story. Survivors wore the pain on their faces, in their strides, and on their clothing. That's when all hell just broke loose. Everything. Bricks fell on my leg. I'm blessed that I'm still even walking. And everything. We... Dozens of families lost their homes. It was like bare land, just debris everywhere. You can't. I mean, there's no my bathroom houses. Was across the street. Like, my bathroom was across the street. But they consider themselves the lucky ones. Go, go right the ones not being carried out on doors by any and all able-bodied men. It's the best happiness in the world for helping somebody and the worst sadness and thing at what you're looking at. For three hours, crews tried to make 10th Street passable for ambulances. Families watched to see if their loved ones would be lifted from beneath the rubble. And for some, there were a few moments of happiness. Well, Alabama power crews will be working around the clock to restore power to residents across the viewing area. 
Right now, 180,000 residents are without power in Birmingham, 158,000 residents without power in the western part of the viewing area, 61,000 residents, no power in the eastern part of the viewing area. And in a reminder, if you need to report a power outage, you're asked to call 1-800-888-2726. Now, the power outages are also affecting operations at uh, Birmingham Waterworks. We heard Benny Miles just a few minutes ago. Officials tell IBC 3340 that the water intake stations are without power. And if the problem is not fixed soon, and it could be 24 to 48 hours, the water supply could be affected. That could affect the water supply all over our area. And customers are being asked to conserve water only for critical needs while crews work to get the problem fixed. The same situation is in place for Jacksonville. Power outages are putting a strain on the pumping system for the city water utility, and Jacksonville city leaders ask that people there conserve water as well. Today's storms also left massive damage behind in the Forestdale area. The line of storms were demolished numerous homes there and leveled an apartment complex. A lot of people were hurt, and rescue workers set up a triage area on the scene to prioritize treatment of the injured. One family told ABC 3340 how they huddled together in their apartment as the storm passed. We were over here looking for my, for my wife, my old lady's looking for her sister. She lost all her stuff, lost everything over here. We're just trying to find her. These one and two. And these are all the neighbors, all us in 800 building. Her house is completely gone. I mean, you look up outside, you was, when you came in her house, you were still outside. Now, a huge tornado swept through the Tuscaloosa area, skirting downtown and the University of Alabama. The storm left minimal damage on campus, but it demolished some areas around University Mall. There are 15 confirmed fatalities and hundreds are feared injured. The night team's Isaiah Harper is live in the Druid City. And Isaiah Walt Maddox, Mayor Walt Maddox, says there's unspeakable devastation there. That's right, and, and we're told that there is still a search and rescue effort that's going on all around the city. We're standing here on the corner of 13th Street and McFarland Boulevard. If we pan over here, you see this is a shopping center that was just leveled today. Restaurants and stores, Hobby Lobby, Big Lots. And down that street, right next to there, is a community called uh, Alberta. And a number of uh, college students from the University of Alabama live down there. I actually talked with one this afternoon, and she told me that she she was in her bathroom when that tornado came through. She says only the bathroom was left standing in their house, and thankfully they were able to get out. Many people around here tell me that once that huge, humongous tornado came through here, there was just no escaping it. Like a mountain dropping from the sky, the tornado ripped across central Tuscaloosa, essentially wiping out a third of businesses on McFarland Boulevard. By the time I had locked the front door, the glass had shattered. Everything just went down here for nothing. Shamika Robinson was in what used to be a shell gas station. The ceiling collapsed on me. The door slammed back on me. I was pinned against the wall. How did you get out? By the grace of God, some girls heard me hollering, and they came in and got me. Her car and others were blown and stacked up, some like blocks. We're told dozens of people were buried and leveled in buildings and homes, many of those off-campus housing for students. You saw it swirl and swirl about maybe 200 yards away. It's now utter chaos for parents and relatives showing up to look for their loved ones. So sad to see something like this happen, and I've, it's a nightmare. And again, you're taking a look at that shopping center that was leveled here on the corner. Several neighborhoods, houses were leveled. Alberta, we're told Rosedale Courts, that's one of the housing communities here in the city of Tuscaloosa. We're told, sadly, these areas in the Rosedale Courts, that's where they're pulling some of the bodies from. Also, we should tell you that the city has also opened up a couple of shelters for people who have been forced out of their homes by the storm. We're told that the rec center on the University of Alabama campus, as well as Coleman Coliseum and all of the all of the para uh, county recreation centers are acting as shelters tonight reporting here in tuscaloosa isaiah harper abc 3340.
Isaiah, thank you so much. Well, no structural damage at the University of Alabama, but many students who live off campus have been impacted by the massive tornado that passed through near McFarland Boulevard and 15th. Now, classes and normal operations are suspended tomorrow. UA has opened an emergency call center for parents who have students at the university. Students can also call if they need a place to stay tonight. The number is 205 348 1001 or you can call toll free at 1-877-408-1001. Parents and students can also get updated information by going to ua.edu. Debris is being spread all around central Alabama, even in areas not directly hit by tornadoes. We have reports of debris from Tuscaloosa showing up in Bessemer, Birmingham, and even as far away as Itala. The storm sucked up shingles, paper, even pieces of buildings and spread them all across the state. And Coleman is one of the hardest hit areas this afternoon in these storms. A series of tornadoes hit the downtown area, doing major damage to numerous buildings. And a little more than an hour later, another tornado touched down in the area. The night team's Ebony Hall was in Coleman when the storms moved in. She is in our newsroom with more on what happened. Ebony? Well, you know, to say that it was a very scary afternoon is a bit of an understatement. We ran into a hell storm and then arrived at City Hall for shelter just in time. No more than five minutes later after we got inside, that tornado destroyed much of the downtown area. What, what it? Okay, obviously there's no audio there, but what you were seeing is video from um, one of our photographers, our promotions photographer rather, Don Ward, who was on the ground when that tornado touched down. Now, photographer Marcus Stroud and I, as I said, we had been on the street in downtown Coleman no more than five minutes before that tornado came through, and as we saw it coming towards us, we were very frightened. Um, thankfully, the Coleman City Department there let us get inside the city vault and um, huddle with them. That is their safe place. So we thank them tonight. And also, uh, we want to pray for the people who are so devastated by these uh, tornadoes that hit in Coleman County today, especially in Hansville and also downtown Coleman. Back to you guys. All right, Ebony, and we certainly are so thankful that you and Marcus are okay. I know uh, later I met you in Coleman today, and the approach of the storm, as you described, was certainly terrifying, and the aftermath was heartbreaking. We saw the pieces of a broken town after the storm rolled through. Many people looking at their hometown were stunned by the destruction. It's uh, devastating. It's just, um, I'm in shock. Many people perused the town of Coleman and couldn't believe their eyes. Twisted metal power lines down all throughout the town. Much of the historic areas of town reduced to rubble. Several buildings in Coleman have been destroyed. You can see roofs ripped off. There's rubble surrounding the downtown area. Here along 3rd Avenue South, some major damage. But this isn't the only place that we saw that received major damage. We saw the destruction for miles in Coleman. And you can see that there's metal wrapped around power lines. Lines. Trees snapped in half. There's damage along First Avenue Southwest. You can see over here behind me the courthouse. The roof has been ripped off. And just behind it, the First Baptist of Coleman. Major damage. I've seen roofs off of buildings, trees on cars. Um, it's the worst I've ever seen in Coleman County. And this young man had just signed up to join the Army today. Little did he know later he would encounter what looked like a war zone in not just one, but two cities. He came home to Coleman after a tornado hit his place of work in Tuscaloosa. And I work at a Mercedes dealership in uh, Tuscaloosa. And on the way down there, we had to stop in the middle of the interstate and let a tornado come across. It flattened everything. And when he came home, he found half his home destroyed and his town crushed. I mean, storm, you know, hit half my house. Uh, uh, I was thinking, uh, I really don't know what to think about it. I mean, look around, seeing it all, uh, just chaos, really. 
Our prayers certainly with him and everyone who's been affected today. Crews from Huntsville and the National Guard were on hand to help. Even between storm cells, people tried to patch up broken windows to protect what was left to prepare for the next rebuilding process. And we've also received word Coleman Regional Medical Center has canceled all outpatient and elective procedures on Thursday. If you have an emergency in Coleman, call 911. Well, authorities in Calhoun County are searching for a number of people unaccounted for in Ohatchee. Emergency crews swarmed onto the Virgil Drive and Eagle Cove area off Highway 77 searching for survivors. Now, homes are heavily damaged. Some ripped off their foundations. EMA says the heaviest damage is in an area near the Coosa River. The Sheriff's Department says a man was tossed into the river. He survived, but he is still looking for his wife. Crews are still trying to clear debris to get into neighborhoods. Well, dozens of homes have been destroyed in the Smithfield area. That's right. It's a section of the metro area that bore the brunt of a tornado outbreak 30 years ago. The night team's Jeremy King is live along Daniel Payne Drive with more there. Jeremy. Brenda, right now we are on Daniel Payne, right next to Interstate 65, and the reason we are here is, as you can tell by the sheriff's deputy behind us there, it is very difficult to get into the actual neighborhoods that were simply destroyed earlier this evening. However, we do have some video from Chief Photographer Bill Castle that we want to take a look at right now. This is video from the Smithfield Estates community just after that very large tornado tore through northern sections of Metro Birmingham earlier, the, earlier this evening. These are areas off of Campbell Lane into the West, not far from Daniel Payne Drive. We've seen houses demolished. In some cases, we've seen where roofs are gone, other damage has taken place. This is the same area that was wiped out back in the latter 1970s. It is wiped out again tonight. We are told 40 to 50 houses destroyed, although it's unconfirmed on any fatalities or injuries. We have been told that there were apparently no injuries in this area, although we have seen a couple ambulances leave the neighborhood over the last little while. These images that you're seeing here simply tell the story all on their own. This is damage that was caused by that massive tornado that we all saw on the ALDOT cameras and the ABC 3340 sky cams earlier this evening. And some people told us that the damage tonight is worse than the damage that they saw back in the 70s. Let's listen to a couple of people who live in the community. It's almost as if a bomb went off in the neighborhood. You know, this happened years back when I was a kid, back in 1977. And uh, this pretty much the same thing. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. And uh, we tracked it as much as we could. And when the power went off, we uh, went down in the basement. About 10 minutes later, uh, everything just started crashing in on us. We could hear the wind, we could hear the house ripping apart. and. It lasted maybe a couple of minutes. And uh, we waited a little while and then we came out and started, you know, assessing, assessing what was going on. Of course, the real assessments will begin in earnest once the sun rises early tomorrow morning. For now, a lot of people have left the neighborhood. Essentially, they've made sure that they, their relatives, and their neighbors are okay. They've packed up what they've needed for the night, and they've gone on and left for the moment. However, there is a very heavy law enforcement presence throughout the community, not just here along Daniel Payne, but back into Smithfield Estates as well. And of course, we will probably be back there. We expect tomorrow morning to see the additional uh, look at the damage and to assess exactly what has happened, and we'll bring you any further updates from Smithfield Estates as that information becomes available. For now, reporting live in Birmingham, Jeremy King, ABC 3340. Thank you, Jeremy. Another person died in Pell City this morning. Meteorologist Ashley Brand continues our team coverage. It was in this mobile home park in Pell City where unfortunately one person lost their life. This is why it is so important when you live in a mobile home to get out. That's going to be the best way to stay safe. Large trees are down all along 2nd, 3rd and 4th Avenues. This house was split open and a bedroom was cut in half when a large tree fell in the corner of the home. Looking around at the damage, most residents feel lucky that they are safe. It is a blessing that I was not here. And God can do with it as he will. This young mother was with her daughter when the storms moved through. I was just holding my little girl in the closet as tight as I could, and she had no idea what was going on. She was just saying, Mama, Mama. And I was just, oh, God, I can't even imagine. Neighbors began working on the cleanup as soon as the rain moved out. You can replace a car and house, but it's hard to replace a soul. Many volunteers that don't even know people in this town have come over to help clean up. 
Um, it makes me sick to my stomach to know that some of these people are losing their houses, that some of them are destroyed, and it's kind of hard to understand. The American Red Cross has set up a shelter at First Baptist Church in Pell City if you need a place to stay or a place to go when more storms arrive. In Pell City, Ashley Brand, ABC 3340. In Birmingham, trees fell on this Inslee home missing a mother and her son, but forced her outside of it. Now, my part of the tree also fell on her car. The front part of Judith Keeby's house is basically destroyed. She and her son stayed towards the back of the house and were able to get out okay. You know what I'm saying? It's lucky that no one was hurt. You know what I'm saying? Me and my mom was, was nobody hurt or anything. You know, material stuff could be replaced, but you know, a life is more valuable than that. <laughs> well, and uh, take a look at this video we have from Veterans Park in Hoover. That's where the city is getting ready to celebrate Hoover Day this weekend. Tents for the event were thrown for yards. Winds ripped them from their stakes in the ground. Now, this is the second year Celebrate Hoover has been damaged by severe weather. Well, down the street on Caldwell Mill Road, trees and power lines fell, blocking the road, but that didn't keep people from taking a look at the scene. Many gathered on Caldwell Mill Bridge. One man who lives nearby says he could hear the trees and power poles snap. Well, at this point, many school systems across central Alabama have canceled classes for tomorrow. There are too many to name right now, but we will highlight a few. Tuscaloosa schools will be closed Thursday and Friday. Jefferson County schools and offices are closed tomorrow. Hoover is running on a two-hour delay. Anniston is also on a two-hour delay. We have a full list running at the bottom of the screen, as well as on our website at abc3340.com. Others will also certainly be closing, so check with your child's school system in the morning to be absolutely sure. Well, Governor Benley has activated 1,300 National Guard soldiers to respond to storm-damaged areas all across the state. Even while the storms were still tearing through the state, Benley assured Alabamians aid would be on the way as they start to rebuild. We, we're going to reach out to everyone that uh, that's hurting, and and uh, it's it's going to take days. It's not or weeks. It's not going to be a a quick response. But uh, we're going to we're going to do it as quickly as we possibly can, and 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 meet the immediate needs first. And of course, the immediate need is to make sure people are safe, uh, and that uh, we get people the medical help, and uh, and then help those families who have lost loved ones. And we can tell you that President Obama has signed a disaster declaration for Alabama tonight. Bentley says EMA crews will get into storm path areas as soon as possible to evaluate the severity of the damage and make a plan to provide recovery assistance. But Bentley also spoke to the people of Alabama and he thanked them for helping their neighbors in a time of need. Well, as we go to break, we want to share pictures with you from our viewers from today's storms. And some of them are amazing. Reporters have been told us for a long time that they never witnessed anything like this and I hope they never do again. Take a look at Coleman, where a huge tornado moved through this afternoon, causing severe damage to the downtown area. As you can see, it's just total devastation. Ebony Hall was in Coleman as the storm was approaching, and we want to go to her live in the newsroom now. And Ebony, we were frightened for you when we heard you were there as the storm was approaching. Yeah, you know, and as I said earlier, we got to Coleman City Hall not a moment too soon because right after we got there and got into the safe place, that tornado came barreling through downtown Coleman. Ricky Gilliland says he saw this tornado coming, barreling its way towards downtown Coleman. What he did next is not recommended. I looked up and right in my face, about two, three hundred feet in front of me, the, the tornado's there coming straight toward my house and me. So I, I run to my truck as quick as I can and jumped in it and tried to outrun it. Uh, it stayed with me for about a half a mile or so, just right on my tail. But 
I was able to get away from it. We saw it too, taking shelter inside Coleman City Hall as it seemed to make a beeline to the heart of the city. Photographer Marcus Stroud captured it on video as the strong tornado would weaken and then regain strength. Oops, starting back up. But ABC 3340 Promotions photographer Don Ward was on the ground as the twister made its way down First Avenue. And when it was over, the devastation was everywhere. Several city blocks rendered almost unrecognizable with storefronts blown out, businesses collapsed, several houses of worship destroyed. We ain't had a bad storm, a real bad storm like this in a long time. The Coleman tornado hit several hours after another strong tornado struck Hansville. David Blackwell saw three 75-year-old trees fall onto his house. Uh, we were actually... Uh in the center point of the house in a little storm shelter in the center of the house, but we could actually see the uh, rotation coming through. Now, we reported earlier today about one fatality out of Coleman early this morning. A 20-year-old man who had died after three trees fell on the vehicle he was a passenger in. Coleman County EMA has not been able to update if there are more deaths as a result of today's numerous tornadoes, but they do know there are more than 40 injuries across the county. We're live in the newsroom tonight. Ebony Hall, ABC 3340. Yeah, Ebony, we have to remind ourselves that there were two rounds of this today. Uh, uh, most of what you've seen so far has been from round two, but the governor declared a state of emergency early today after widespread devastation from storms that passed in the early morning hours. We captured these exclusive images from Coaling to Pell City in Airlink 3340. From above the storm tracks, you can clearly see the destructive power of the wind. Look at this neighborhood in Coaling. The tight path of a probable tornado moved from home to home, ripping them to the ground, blowing debris and possessions across the landscape. The damage was widespread across the Birmingham metro area, from Moody, where roofs were torn off of buildings and homes. Hundreds of trees snapped off like matchsticks. To Pell City, where there was roof damage to O.D. Durant Junior High School, part of the field house blown down. In Tannehill, a metal building lost its entire roof, and there was more roof damage at Tannehill Valley Baptist Church. In Cahaba Heights, entire neighborhoods covered in downed trees. We counted four trees that crashed into this one home alone. And this story is repeated in neighborhood after neighborhood, like Eastlake. Trees and power lines down, roofs ripped off, damage to homes and people's lives. Incredible images. And the storm system that plowed through Alabama also caused eight deaths in Mississippi today. This is video from the Jackson area. A three-year-old girl was killed when a tree fell onto his house. It happened when the storm line passed through early this morning. The girl was in the same bed with her parents, sleeping between them. The parents had just some minor injuries. A ninth person was killed in Mississippi in storms on Tuesday. Well, James Spann joins us with weather now. Glad to see you finally getting a chance to sit down. You have been doing this mm. almost 40 years. Have you ever seen a day like today? It, it's reminiscent of the 70s. Uh, you know, Dave and I lived through the 70s, and, <laughs> and, and the, the April 3rd, 1974 super outbreak was, right. was uh, the big one. And it will be interesting to see how this correlates to that in terms of the number of tornadoes, number of deaths. We don't know right now mm -hmm. how many tornadoes. We don't know how many deaths. Mm -hmm. uh, that night, 80 Alabamians died, and it could be that this death toll will be higher. But we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, let's uh, take a look at some of the images. Uh, again, these shots are coming from our uh, viewers. And let me tell you, I, I, th th these are basically just coming in in chronological order tonight. I've had probably 5,000 uh, images uh, today, images and video, and we want to thank everybody for taking the time to send those into us. We've been, and you know the deal, we see those in real time, and boy, it is extremely helpful during a big event like this because as we see this in real time, we, it's giving us a window to the world. Everybody's got a camera phone now, and it's just extremely helpful. So, again, for all of you that, that took the time to send images or video or send reports via Facebook or Twitter, we are so thankful. It is just crucial on this tragic uh, Alabama weather day. Uh, let's go to our—by the way, before we do that, you see all that debris. That's one of the most amazing stories 
is how debris from Tuscaloosa is all over this state. Uh, we've had debris from Tuscaloosa up at the Gadsden, uh, which is like over 115 miles away. And again, I ask that if you see something that might be a personal belonging, uh, please hang on to that. And we're going to do our best in coming days to kind of reunite uh, uh, the, the missing papers and the missing mementos and books and pictures with the people that own them in Tuscaloosa. So just hang on to that. Not the first time it's ever happened, but uh, again, just amazing the debris falling out of those storms coming from uh, places like Tuscaloosa and Hackleburg. And, you know, we really haven't told the Hackleburg story. That town is uh, wiped out uh, that is in Marion County, north of uh, Hamilton. And uh, from all, everybody we've talked to, they say that the damage in Hackleburg is uh, somewhat in the same league as the damage to Guin in the 1974 super outbreak. So just a lot of stories to tell. Let's go to the Skycam network. Uh, this is the uh, shot coming from downtown Birmingham. Severe weather threat is over for Birmingham. The dew point is 60 and dropping. Uh, the dry line is coming through. Uh, and again, for a pretty good chunk of the state, uh, this whole episode is finally winding down. We'll go to the uh, radar this evening, and again, we still have active storms that are still uh, clearly in progress now through parts of uh, central and uh, east Alabama. The counties in yellow, these are severe thunderstorm warnings. There are no tornado warnings in Alabama for the first time in I don't know when, uh, but all of these counties are under severe thunderstorm warnings for storms along the dry line. Now, we have uh, uh, some counties across the state line in Georgia under tornado warnings, but again, this dry line pushes south. All of this should be out of our area uh, by midnight tonight. Weather in coming days will be much, much more serene. We'll check the temperatures around the state this evening. Uh, beginning to cool down a little bit to the north and west, mid-60s up in the Shoals and uh, Tupelo. will be cooler tomorrow with talking highs only around 70 with a pretty cool breeze. Well, that's what happened today. Uh, just unbelievable. Supercell storms, violent tornadoes. We will know much more tomorrow about the loss of life. But again, the good news in the wake of this storm, gorgeous weather. Sunny days, fair nights. We'll be in good shape through most of the weekend. Uh, here's the seven-day planner. Uh, and again, uh, 73 tomorrow. Uh, 79 on Saturday. Uh, Sunday looks like it will stay dry as well. And I tell you what, uh, let me explain how that works. That, that is actually the graphic that we did last night, and that is one day off, okay? So uh, amuse your imagination, Dave and Brenda. We got to slide those days uh, where it says Friday, that's actually Thursday. So tomorrow, 73, Friday, 79, Saturday, 84. We think the next chance of showers will come late Sunday night and Monday. We had no time to prepare any graphics. Mm -hmm. and what happens sure. is the system automatically <laughs> bumps to the next day. Okay. But the bu gorgeous <laughs> weather for the next several days, and we can sit back and enjoy that. Catch my forecast tomorrow morning with the uh, Rick and Bubba Show on Birmingham's 104.7. WZZK. Gee, maybe after 18 straight hours, we can forgive you for a messed up graphic. And it was messed up bad. <laughs> right. Thank you, James, okay. for your commitment. Well, this morning's storm spared few areas across our viewing area. Storms slammed from west to east Alabama, including in Calhoun County. The Angel area and neighborhoods near Pleasant Valley High School were hard hit, as well as Webster Chapel. Trees covered homes, power poles, and roads. Wind damage at the high school baseball field. Downtown Anniston's Victoria Inn also suffered damage. In Glencoe, fallen trees littered the area. Several homes were hit, including this one, and the homeowner was not at home at the time. Right now, we are going to take a look at a few more viewer pictures. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Morning storms packing a roundhouse punch in the key community in Cherokee County, knocking off New Bethel Baptist Church's steeple. Crews raced to prep the 21-year-old building for tonight's storms, hoping to water and debris from or get it from getting inside the church. And the pastor says that the congregation won't let anything, not even this damage, destroy their faith. And if we have to meet out in the yard or if we have to meet in our barn, we'll do what we need to. And We'll continue to meet and worship the Lord. And homes from around Weiss Lake, just off Highway 411, also suffered some damage. Well, on the other side of the state, in Tuscaloosa County, coaling is also struggling to recover. The people who live in those neighborhoods say they've always known they had a close-knit community, but what happened today showed them the strength in their numbers. ABC 3340's Yanua Adagio has their story. And I just saw like a flash of lightning and my husband said, don't panic, turn your alarm off. I'm going to run and get our baby. You need to go to the closet. 
In that moment, Karen Davis and her family knew destruction was headed their way. I got there as quick as I could, and by the time he got that baby, I just started hearing stuff flying, and glass was breaking, and um, I knew it was pretty bad. Karen ran to her bedroom closet, a storm shelter they built in their house. It would be the part of the house least damaged by the storm. Her husband ran the opposite way. He went to the front door and he, I heard him yell to my neighbors, get over here now. Karen Davis says her neighbors ran across the street barefoot to her house, but then moments later, this is what was left. Two cars in the driveway, but no house. It's sad. It's sad. Nothing left but their lives. Bishop immediately drove over to help salvage what was left of her friend's belongings. She says Reggie Bishop and his son were both hurt but alive and both Davis and Bishop say that is the blessing in the midst of their destruction. And I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm alive. My baby's alive. My husband's alive. We made it. He saved them. No alarm, no, no newscaster, no, no radio, no it was God. Reginald Epps is a Northport firefighter. He did undergo surgery this morning. His fellow firefighters have set up a fund for his family. The Fayette County town of Berry took a hard hit from the storms early this morning. ABC 3340's Isaiah Harper has that part of our coverage. It looks like the morning storm whipped through downtown Berry like a mixer. Plenty of rough wind. I didn't, didn't hear it too bad because it was down the basement in the house. James Shepard had just arrived at his brother's house to take shelter. Moments later, the home and his pickup were crushed by this giant tree. I knew that one went in the house, but I didn't know it was out here on the truck. See, that one had come this way, and it's still dark. I didn't see it. Pretty strong storm. Winds yanked up fuel pumps, knocked this building into the street, lifted part of the roof at Berry Elementary, and blew off roll-up doors at the fire department. Well, I mean, it's scary. It's a good thing Tommy Haley stayed at a friend's house last night. His mobile home is gone. Nothing is left but the steps and floor. I was going to come home about 10 o'clock last night, but I'm glad I didn't come home. I'm demolished. I don't have nothing. No food, no, no home. I don't have nowhere to go or nowhere. No one could imagine more storms would follow. What do you think about it? What can I do about it? It's coming in. I can't help it. In Barry, Isaiah Harper, ABC 3340. Amazingly, no one was hurt in Barry. And we're going to take another break. We want to show you more pictures that our viewers sent us from today's storms. Well, today's severe weather outbreak is like a recurring nightmare for some people in Centerpoint. That's right. There's even more storm damage to clean up there. Trees are down and cars and homes. Thank God my family is okay. In Centerpoint, near 26th Avenue and 5th Street Northeast, there were power lines on cars, power poles snapped, and dozens of trees down in yards and homes. The overwhelming sentiment, the damage the storm left behind, is minor compared to loved ones' lives. It woke us up about 6 and we headed downstairs to the basement. Adrian Pickett had a tree down on her home. It's, it's a wonder of God, I tell you. Um, no one can say that there's not a God because only God can do something like that. This is what I'm most worried about right here. Blaine Winstead says he was at work when his home was hit by the storm. Everybody's okay. I mean, that's the main thing, you know, loss of life. That's something that's irreplaceable. Uh, everything else, you know, can be replaced. Uh, cars, houses, that's all minor. Inconvenience of not having power today, maybe tomorrow, you know, that's just part of it. Cindy Bankston rushed to her mother-in-law's home after an early morning call. The tree crashed through the ceiling. So I was pretty shocked when we saw it. I was afraid uh, that it was just going to be kind of leaning on it, and then when I saw that it's actually come through the roof, it, it's pretty bad on the inside. Brenda Ledun, ABC 3340. 
And this is the second time many in Center Point have endured storm damage within the last week. And one of the tornadoes touched down west of Tuscaloosa and tore through parts of Birmingham. Right now, there are 10 confirmed deaths in Jefferson County and even more expected. Thomas, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, as the search continues uh, this evening and we will uh, continue to follow all those stories and we're going to toss a break right now with uh, more of your images. Well, uh, one of the tornadoes that touched down west of Tuscaloosa also tore through parts of Birmingham. And right now there are 10 confirmed deaths in Jefferson County and even more expected as the search continues this evening. ABC 3340's Anora Gathings is in that area right now. And Anora, what's the very latest from there? Well, Brenda, crews will search throughout the night for any survivors pinned beneath the rubble just down the street here in Pleasant Grove and in Concord. They're also removing tagging and leaving any bodies that they can get a positive ID on until the morning. And by the minute, more and more people are reporting loved ones missing. So people are being asked if you have a loved one that's missing out here in Pleasant Grove, come out here. Okay any news and even police believe that more people will be found alive tonight, but there's also a sense that even more will be found dead. Police would not let us pass this tree to get video of the houses on 10th Street where downed trees prevented cars and even ambulances from passing. But the destruction was evident by the looks on survivors faces and the need for any and all able bodied men to help carry out injured people on stretchers and even doors. It, I'm, it's just a nightmare that I know that I cannot wake up from. Now, only emergency crews are being allowed into those neighborhoods. Those are, that's a neighborhood over here in Pleasant Grove and another one in Concord. And for the last few hours, there's been a steady flow of ambulances going between this Pleasant Grove neighborhood and UAB Hospital, transporting people that have pretty severe injuries from head traumas to even uh, missing arms and legs. Um, now, Sheriff Mike Hale was out surveying this area earlier this evening, and tomorrow morning he'll provide us the very latest on the fatalities and the extent of the damage. Live in Pleasant Grove, Anora Gathings, ABC 3340. Certainly our thoughts and prayers are with those families and those people tonight there. And just a few miles away from the devastation of Pleasant Grove, that same storm caused major damage in Pratt City. A triage area has been set up to make it easier for emergency responders to treat the victims. ABC 3340's Chris Harris is outside that center right now. And Chris, tell us what you see. Yeah, it's pretty much the culmination of the day for the people here in Pratt City and the Inslee area. Just over my right shoulder is that makeshift triage center that's been set up. The good news, I imagine, from what we can deduce at least tonight, is that many ambulances and fire trucks have actually left this evening. I can only believe that that means that there are less and less people in the triage area who need work. So we can deduce that that is good news. However, the people that have been leaving, we've seen some of them carrying many belongings, pillows, bags, sleeping bags, whatever, all loading up on buses to head out to Boutwell Auditorium uh, to spend the night, and then from there, who knows? But uh, C.W. Martis, the uh, battalion chief here for the Birmingham Fire and Rescue told me that they're still in a search and rescue mode, uh, search and recover mode, really. Uh, they don't know how many people really came through here. I can imagine it was at least 100, uh, judging by the people who have been coming and going for the past couple of hours that I've been here. They did report on one fatality, but still much, much more uh, to be learned. And as the daylight comes tomorrow, I'm sure we'll have uh, plenty more to see. But for now, reporting here from Pratt City, I'm Chris Harris, ABC 3340. Uh, Chris, we help. We appreciate the help from our sports team tonight. It's hard to just keep track of all the areas that were devastated by the storms today, both this evening and this morning. Now, this morning, Moody was the recipient of severe storms. ABC 3340's Jeremy King was there earlier. This is where a 56-year-old St. Clair County woman lost her life. Her family says Sandra McCrory was in bed when the tree crashed through her roof. She was caught underneath and was found dead by relatives. 
In many places, the damage appears to be the result of straight line winds. In other places, we found some classic signs of actual tornado damage, like at this brick house in Odenville. We're told a man and woman were inside. He opened the door and saw total black and shut it and turned around and told her it's coming. And by the time he said that is when she went flying. She was blown through the house along with furniture and debris. And they think she has some broken ribs, but we're not sure yet. From what we can tell, the man and woman who live in this house should be okay. What we don't know just yet, though, is exactly what type of storm caused this specific damage. It looks like the damage of a small tornado. You've got the twisted metal over there. You have bricks that have been shattered and spread in all different directions. Vehicles that have been picked up like that truck and then dropped into the pool. But neighbors have little damage. Back in Moody, everywhere you go, you find scenes like this. It got really still, and I called my sister at 6, and I said, y'all get up. I ran to get my kids up out of the bed, and we went downstairs, and it hit so fast. They're already cleaning up and worried about what else might come. Jeremy King reporting, as we reported earlier, another person died in Pell City this morning. It's unbelievable how widespread this was, and we've received thousands of viewer images and videos from all across the state today. And I just want to roll some video off my computer, if we can take that, uh, Vic. I think Vic's, I don't even know who's directing tonight. Vic, is this you? It is Vic. If you can take my computer this time. Uh, again, this is, this is from uh, Mike Wilhelm. Uh, Mike is one of our sky watchers, and if you watched our long-form coverage today, they did a tremendous job. And, of course, these are the guys with the uh, dash cams that go out in the field, and uh, Mike was very close. This is the Tuscaloosa tornado, and, uh, you know, the deal, what's going to happen, the Weather Service survey teams will be in, uh, will start their work tomorrow going out to assess the damage. And, again, one big story, there's wow. so many stories to tell. Uh, Hackleburg, up north of Hamilton, that town was hit so, so hard. The school, they say, is gone. And, and, you know, for a place where I've been so many times, it's just hard to believe. But, again, that is the tornado coming up on uh, uh, Tuscaloosa. And, again, that, that's about where it goes halfway between University Mall and DCH Regional Medical Center. And uh, last time I spoke with uh, Mayor Maddox, the death toll in Tuscaloosa is 15. Could be more. We just don't know. It's over 100 injured uh, in Tuscaloosa alone. And... Uh, uh, again, as was the case on April 3rd, 1974, uh, we really didn't know how many died and how many tornadoes we had until probably a week after the event. Uh, and I'm afraid it's going to be days before we know. Of course, communication is better now. But again, uh, I can't thank uh, our volunteers in the field enough for the uh, images they provided today. And the well, I was just going to say, you know, we, we have gotten so many images from, from so many people across the state. We've lost at least 53 people we know of, James. How many more could it have been if we hadn't, with our technology, managed to get the, the warnings out today? I mean, right. I, I don't know. That, that's a great question, Dave. And, and you know, the tornado, you, you look back on the state's worst tornado tragedy in terms of the loss of human life. That was in 1932, March 21st. Now, we think over 500 people died probably from an event just like this. So with that, you had 500-plus deaths. Today, we have at least 53, and I'm afraid the death toll will climb higher tomorrow. But uh, again, I think on a day like today, the death toll could have easily been over 500. As far-fetched as that sounds, it happened with a similar event back on March 21st, 1932. So we are blessed in that regard. Uh, and again, the good news I also want to stress that this thing is over. We still have some strong storms in East Alabama, nothing tornadic. The dry line has come through Birmingham. Uh, for those folks that are working cleanup, search, rescue in Tuscaloosa, in Cullman, in Hackleburg, uh, in East Alabama. We understand Ohatchee was hit so hard. Uh, the areas around Piedmont, the severe weather threat is over. And as often as the case, you know, Dave and Brenda, the day after an event like this, it is the most gorgeous weather you will ever see. Tomorrow we'll have a gentle north breeze. Humidity will be low. The sky will be as blue. It will be so blue you have to squint. Uh, to see it, and uh, it's going to be that kind of day tomorrow. And uh, again, look, look, yes. look out, look out, close, transformer. Look how close Mike is to this thing. And, and, my, and, and, and the thing is, you know, we train these guys. They know where they are in relation to the storm. They are perfectly safe, uh, so they're fine. But what you know, of course, concerns us. Everybody else driving during this stuff. You just you got no business driving. So again, uh, this is a red letter day in state weather history. Uh, we, we congratulate the the Storm Prediction Center for identifying the high risk. We congratulate the National Weather Service in Birmingham. As far as I know, every single tornado had a, an excellent warning uh, today. 
uh, in advance of 20 minutes. And even this morning during those uh, horrible storms, the severe thunderstorm warnings were issued a good uh, 15, 20, 25 minutes in advance. And people that have weather radios, you, your alarm should have sounded this morning before those storms got there. And that's why those things are critical. You, you know my position on sirens. I don't like them. You can't hear them inside a building. You can't hear them inside a home. Mm -hmm. There are days I wish you'd just take them down. But, and I know they serve a purpose. But, uh, again, this brings back the importance of getting the warning, having a plan, and doing the right thing. So uh, we, we have a tragic loss of life. But I do think in coming days we're going to hear stories of heroes people that went so far above the call of duty to to make people safe and those are the stories I can't wait for y'all to, to tell and y'all are great, great storytellers so I look forward to that and we're already getting calls from people offering to help and wanting to know where they can help people uh, repair damage and and cut trees and remove trees but you also mentioned traffic and driving in these things Ooh, boy, yeah. when, when I was in Coleman tonight just looking at some of the cars and and how twisted and torn they were what you tell us to get out of the car and get into shelter is absolutely true it was frightening to see how this metal was simply twisted right. and also I want to say you know people should not have a phobia of storms these days are rare I, I've yeah. been doing this since the Civil War That's true. The, the 1974 outbreak I was still in high school I right. was not doing this for a living so I technically did not work that I worked it as a volunteer but in my career I would say this is the one day this has happened and I started doing this here in 1979 so don't be afraid of storms. This is a very, what we experience today Rare. is probably a generational type event. Rare. Uh, well, which that's in goodness. a way is good, but for most mm -hmm. of us, the next generation will deal with it the next time it happens. But we do have to have a healthy respect for storms and uh, hopefully this will remind everybody that warnings are important and, and this is serious business. And uh, But generally speaking, I think we got through it okay today. Hey, congratulations you. to you and Jason and Ashley, the, the, the entire group, our, our whole weather team. We, we appreciate it so much. You warned us it was going to be a red letter day far in advance and, and it was and, and enough can't be said. It's our pleasure. Thank you, James. Well, as we go to break, uh, we want to show you some more of our pictures. Promotions Director Photographer Don Ward was in Coleman when the storm hit and went right over his head. We want to show you. Holy oh, Coleman was one of the hardest hit areas this afternoon in the storms. A series of tornadoes hit the downtown area doing major damage to numerous buildings and little more than an hour later another tornado touched down in the area. The night team's Ebony Hall was in the Coleman area when the storms moved in in Coleman. She's in our newsroom right now with more on what happened. Ebony? Yeah, you know, we were there and thank goodness Coleman City Hall was open. We took shelter in the city vault there. Now, photographer Marcus Stroud got video as the huge tornado would form, break up and then reform even stronger. We watched as it came right towards City Hall, but then made a sharp turn and headed towards the heart of the downtown area. And that tornado was devastating, not only to that area, but everywhere it went. Now, while we were at City Hall, promotions photographer Don Ward was on the street downtown getting video of the tornado. He and another coworker, Gina Womack, took shelter in a parking deck downtown. The tornado destroyed several churches, including First Baptist of Coleman. Now, Gina told us that the steeple of that church was really leaning against those high winds. And it's a miracle to report that when we left this evening, that steeple was still standing. But live in the newsroom, Ebony Hall, ABC 3340. I'm glad you're okay. At this point, many school systems across central Alabama have canceled classes for tomorrow. And there are too many to name right now, but we will highlight a few. Tuscaloosa schools will be closed Thursday and Friday. Jefferson County schools and offices are closed tomorrow. Hoover is running on a two-hour delay. Anniston is also on a two-hour delay. And we have a full list running at the bottom of the screen, as well as on our website at abc3340.com. Others will almost certainly be closing, so check with your child's school system in the morning to be absolutely sure.
There wasn't much good news today, but we can tell you there was no structural damage at the University of Alabama. However, many of the students who live off campus have been impacted by the massive tornado that passed through near McFarland Boulevard and 15th Street. Now, UA has opened an emergency call center for parents who have students at the university. Now, students can also call if they need a place to stay tonight. That number, 205 348 1001 or you can call toll free at 1-877-408-1001. Parents and students can also get updated information by going to ua.edu. Today's storms are even affecting one city's water system. Authorities in Jacksonville say power outages are putting a strain on the pumping system for the city water utility. Jacksonville city leaders ask that people conserve water. Well, dozens of homes have been destroyed in the Smithfield area of Birmingham. Now, it's a section of the metro area that bore the brunt of a tornado outbreak 30 years ago. The night team's Jeremy King is live along Daniel Payne Drive with more there. Jeremy, how is it out there? Uh, Brenda, this is specifically the Smithfield Estates area just north of Daniel Payne. And, you know, a few minutes ago, we had something that happens that happens on nights like this whenever you have had severe weather that just reminds you of the human toll that has been taken. Everything's been calm for the last little while. Everything's been relatively uh, quiet for the last little while. And then all of a sudden, coming from the direction of Highway 78, another several ambulances, out-of-town ambulances, racing through, trying to make it toward downtown Birmingham. And you are reminded immediately of the toll that's been taken in several different counties tonight and the injuries and the fatalities that we've seen. Let's go on and show you some more video. These are additional images from Chief Photographer Bill Castle, who was able to get back into the Smithfield Estates area just moments after that massive tornado tore through northern sections of the Birmingham metro area. You can see many homes were simply leveled. Others, half the house might be gone. In all, about 40 to 50 houses around the Smithfield Estates area this is off the Campbell Lane area, back in that area to the west of I-65, have been destroyed with tonight's storm. And yes, this is the same neighborhood that suffered severe damage back in the late 1970s when a similar storm blew through. Although some people tell us that the storm tonight was worse than the storm that they had back in the 70s. We have some additional comments from the people who witnessed tonight's storm, some of whom remember the storm back in the 1970s. Let's listen to what they told us this evening. The sirens went off and uh, the wind picked up, the rain started blowing and, you know, I stood on the porch as long as I could before I went to take shelter myself and uh, it came in from the south, I guess southwest and by the time I got downstairs to take cover, it's like the house just started to shake. Well, my family has been here for 40 years. This house was bought when I was, uh, we moved here when I was a week old. Um, everybody pretty much knows each other and the only thing I can say is we're just going to try to have to pull through. And certainly this community will be pulling through, although it'll be probably sunrise tomorrow morning before we're able to get that better assessment of the damage in this area. As for injuries in Smithfield Estates, we had been told earlier that there were no reports of injuries, although we have seen a couple of ambulances come down Tracks Drive earlier this evening, which would indicate they were coming out of the Smithfield Estates neighborhood. We'll have more information from that neighborhood as it becomes available. For now, reporting live in Birmingham, Jeremy King, ABC 3340. And we want to thank you, Jeremy, again. Be careful on the highway in the morning. Debris could be uh, strewn across the highway and many roadways in the area. And we want to take a quick break and take a look at a few more of the pictures, amazing pictures that our viewers sent us today.
Hey, check this out. Uh, this is some video coming from Tuscaloosa. And uh, again, uh, Dave and Brenda, we've seen, we've seen a lot of amazing tornado video. I believe a student uh, shot that. He put that up on Vimeo. Uh, and of course, we had it on the tower cam, the sky cam, and uh, Mike Wilhelm had it. But that's the Tuscaloosa tornado that came through today. Uh, at least 15 people were killed by that tornado. Mm, and uh, headed the straight for him, too. It really is. And, and you know, uh, I think it was in the parking lot of uh, University Mall. And that's uh, pretty amazing stuff. And uh, we're going to sort through all the video and the images, and I'm sure we'll see even more amazing video in coming days from this whole thing. But, uh, again, the good news, severe weather over. Tomorrow, clearing, sunshine returns. Beautiful with a high in the low 70s. Just gorgeous weather tomorrow. And, and of course, we want to thank the weather team for all they've done today, but also our news team. Right. Uh, some folks already work double shifts and are starting on triple shifts. I mean, uh, we're awful proud of the reporters, producers, and everyone who took part in, in this effort and today. production. Don't forget and production. Engine, uh, they really make Vic, it happen. we love you back there, man. <laughs> Denise. Everyone uh, that helped. Uh, the, uh, we start calling names, we'll leave somebody Ooh, yes, out. We, but the, we the, already uh, left Sid out. And I know. They're, Tina out. They're already, Sid and Tina are mad over here, but l listen. Uh, it's a big team effort. That's what we're Engineering saying. to keep this thing on the air. This is a complicated TV station. <laughs> And now yes. with, with three transmitters and the internet and everything else, they were just fantastic. So again, thanks to everybody. Yeah, that's why we call it a team, right? Yep. And we also thank you for joining us for, for just an amazing day that will live on in history books, certainly. Also, tomorrow morning, be careful as you get out and about and you're traveling. There are still a lot of downed power lines. And as I was traveling back from Coleman tonight, I noticed a lot of debris on the highway. So please, as you're traveling in the morning, use extreme caution. What a day, and tomorrow we begin to cover the aftermath. Our next news tomorrow morning at 4.30 on Good Morning Alabama. Please join us then and throughout the day. Good night from all of us here on the night team. Thank you for watching ABC 3340, winner of the Associated Press Award for Most Outstanding News Operation.